Over the past two years, I've survived over 1,000 days inside of hardcore Minecraft across a whole range of different worlds and challenges, and this video is essentially the best of the best of them. So sit back, grab a snack, and enjoy this 1,000 days hardcore Minecraft extravaganza of a video. Starting off with our venture out into the middle of an infinite ocean, stranded on a tiny little raft. Alright, and here we are in the middle of absolutely nowhere on a little tiny bit of wood that's going to act as our raft. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the ocean myself, and this is uh, not doing that phobia any favours. But hey, at least I've got a fishing rod, and at least there's some supplies. Although, to be fair, there was the one supply, and then there's no more. Okay. How am I supposed to build anything without them coming in? Wh wh where's my... Hello? Is there anything out there? Hello, I've got a leaf and one block of cobblestone to my name. Like, what? what is this? I guess I'll read my an animal dictionary whilst waiting, you know? I I'll look at some, some animals that I'm never going to see. Ah, yes, the days of being able to see roadrunners. Yeah. Oh, I do miss the bone serpents, you know? Oh, wait, is that some string? Yeah, come here. There we go. All right, got some string. We're going up in the world. I do really hope that these supplies oh, start spawning in faster is literally what I was about to say, but then I got a whole bunch of them. Okay, great. Yeah, I don't really see me using the fishing rod all too much. What's that? Is that a barrel? Ooh, come here. Yes. Have I got you? No, come here. I don't want to go swim for you. I'm determined to get you, buddy. Come here. Ah, come here. All right. What sweet, sweet goodies have you got in you, my good fellow? Ooh. Oh, no. The sapling. It gave me an acacia sapling. Some puffer fish, too. Do they poison you if you eat them? I, th I think they do. Why would I want to eat those? Oh, another barrel. What have you got, good sir? Another acacia sapling, birch sapling. What I really want is a jungle sapling. I feel like that's going to be the, the go-to wood this time. Let's get a little tree farm going then. I guess we can just place down some dirt like right here and just throw the birch sapling on it. There we go. There we go. All right, two saplings down. Hopefully we get something growing pretty soon because, well, I, I kind of need to expand this out. This is, this is not big enough for one person. Ooh, another barrel. Damn, dude, these things are common. These are a lot more common than I was expecting. Holy. All right, what has this barrel got for me? A bunch more dirt, which is always good. Uh, some more coal. Obsidian? What are we going to use that for right now? Uh, okay, you know what? I'll take it. All right, so we have six wood, uh, one jungle wood, a piece of iron that's really not going to get used for a while, and some coal. I may as well make some torches with this, um, and that's about it. We really don't have much else. Four string, though, which means we got one wool. Let's go. Um, and that's about it. I guess we've just got to fish for things. I don't know. Fish for fish at this point. Like, there's no supplies. I got, like, three barrels, but now there's... There's absolutely nothing out here. So I spent the rest of day one just fishing away due to the utter lack of blocks coming my way. However, when they eventually did, I spent some time working on my aim, as well as finding a couple more barrels throughout the evening, and having our very first tree grow, as well as using some salvaged jungle wood to expand out the raft a little, before then continuing to fish throughout the night, finding even more barrels. <sighs> Alright, thank god the sun's finally back up. Now, I want to introduce you to my wall of barrels, okay? Last night, we got a whole bunch more of them. They gave us quite a lot of things. Um, these things are really common, so if they keep being this common, I think I may have to go and turn them down. But, hey, you know what? So far, I'm not complaining. I think what we're going to want to tackle right now is a little dainty tree farm, because, well, these two just aren't cutting it right now. So, I want to bring this out a few blocks just back here. And boom, there we go. Now, I'm not really too fussed on how it looks right now. I just want them to grow, okay? I just need wood. I'm thinking we should probably start, like, a food farm as well at some point soon because I'm not fishing these things all the time. I mean, they're just... It's annoying to hit them. Maybe I'm just a terrible shop. I'm probably just a terrible shop. Okay, another barrel with a whole bunch of coal, man. we got so much coal. I think I'll just make a little, little farm along the side of this, you know? There we go. All right, look at this. We're becoming self-sufficient over here. Day two is looking so much better. All right. Right, and we've got a couple, I think we've got eight string in there. That's enough for the bed, I'm pretty sure. Yep, there we go. All right, let me throw you down. Throw you, that's not a bed, okay. Okay, well now I don't have to spend any more time up at night just fishing off into the ocean in hopes of catching, well, pretty much anything. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these guys because they're kind of in the way. And I guess I'll just throw them down here. What is that? Hello? Um, ew, what is that thing? Ew. Oh, it's an octopus. Okay, that's much cooler. I'm much less disgusted by it now. <laughs> oh, look at that guy. He's so cool. Oh, I want to go say hello to him, but I don't know if he's friendly. Yeah, I'm not going to risk that. I'm, I'm just going to stay on my raft, okay? I'm, I'm a land mammal for a reason. Oh, he is cool, though. 
Oh, that's not cool, though. Okay, uh, stay away from that. Okay, looking at what we have, there's not really too much I can do at the second, except maybe make a furnace and... Well, I can't even make a smoker because I don't have the wood. Because I'll just throw that down there, maybe cook up some of this raw cod I've got. Uh, I don't think you can cook tropical fish, so I'll eat that first. Ooh, another barrel. Gimme, gimme. Jungle sapling, please. No, not acacia. Okay, I feel like cold is really not going to be a problem here because we've just got so much of it. We've got 42. In like a normal hardcore playthrough, I don't have this much by this point. I also got a jellyfish last night whilst fishing. I have no clue what I can do with it, but I have it. All right, well, we're not doing too bad. You know, humble beginnings, humble beginnings. We've, uh, we've got a little area going. We've got a little farm going. We've got a tree farm up and running. Severely lacking on the wood that I want to build with, or in fact, any wood for that matter at all. But we are further along than we were yesterday. I guess I'll just make like an identical farm on the other side. Like, I guess that looks cool. This isn't staying as the base. This is just like a... I don't even know what this is. I don't know why I've put leaves next to it, but... You know what? It is what it is. Do a little bit more aim training today, you know? There we go. Give me that. Hit this one first try. Okay, a little bit overshot. It's okay. This way. Nope, a little bit overshot. Okay, again. There we go. Okay, third try. Eh, come here. Oh, come on, man. Jeez. Oh, hello? Okay, give me that. No, give me that. Oh, it's underwater. I don't fish in this game, all right? Leave me alone. Once again, I spent the evening fishing as well as waiting for some trees to grow and crafting up some stone tools before then finally catching some Zs. I tell you, it's a really lonely life out here in the middle of the murky depths, you know, there's not really much around. Not even the fish want to come talk to me. Oh, but at least we have a tree, even though it's a birch tree. Is there any more barrels out there? Hello? <gasps> what is that? What is that? What was that? Where'd it go? What? Did it die? Oh. My. What is that? Is it coming? Oh, it's coming over here. No, 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 no. Oh my god, I love the fact that my first instinct when I see something that looks potentially dangerous is to just jump in the water and go over to it. Like, what? <laughs> this is why I'd never survive this IRL. Ooh, look, another barrel. What have you got for me this time, good sir? Where's the... Oh, there is a jungle sapling. Yes, okay, great. Uh, I guess go away, birch, and hello, jungle. Now, do I have a way to make a composter just yet? Yep, there we go. All right, I guess throw some of these in here. Oh, not the spruce saplings. Jesus, no. Too valuable. Okay, two bone meal. Is that going to give me a... Oh, hello, birch tree. Is this going to give me a jungle tree? Come on. No. Add you to the wall. There we go. Ooh, I'm going to be careful going in the uh, water now because I, I don't want the weird deformed lobster thing coming for me. I don't even know where he is. I lost eye contact with him. Okay, so there's a shark over there. There's two sharks over there. Oh, there he is. He's still around, man. What is... I, I don't know what it is, but it killed something. I know it killed something. I saw the particles. Oh, he's coming over. He's coming over. Hello? Hello, buddy? Don't tell me you can come on land. Oh, okay. You don't see him. He seems chill. He seems chill. He's... He looks terrifying, but he... L seems chill oh there's a barrel right there oh the sharks are coming over no um can i just go and grab this uh, oh my god it's like a sea caterpillar you know oh he's going for something he's going for something i think yellow yeah, oh oh it's a i think it's a mantis shrimp i think he just punched them out of the water oh my god this guy yeah watch him watch him it's gonna go punch him <laughs> oh <laughs> he's just punching up fish okay all right, you have fun, buddy. You have fun. He's just enjoying life, you know? Oh, I kind of want to keep the uh, the mantis shrimp around. If I can get, like, a lead or something, I'll put him on it and kind of attach him to a fence. He could be my personal protector. Guy should probably go and punch a shark, you know? I want to I go see what happens if these sharks come over. I want to see if he'll punch those. That Mike Tyson down there in the ocean below me. Holy. There appears to be a lot more sea life gathering around me at the minute. I'm liking it. It's, it's feeling a lot less, I don't know, lonely. Where's my friend Mike? Where's Mike gone? No, don't tell me Mike despawned. I shouldn't really go in the water with the jellyfish around, but... Mike? Oh, okay. Out of the water. Out of the water. Go, 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 go. Not dealing with those guys. Oh, we have 18 iron. Uh, as well as... Oh, with some ore as well. I'll just smell that down real quick. Um, and then we'll craft these into some ingots, as well as have another birch tree grow. Beautiful. I see now why it's a good idea to utilize the fishing rod instead of going in the water. There is a lot of stuff spawning around here now. Okay, do leaves really do much in the composter? Oh, they they, they kind of do, I guess. Can I put like the, can I put these fish in there? Oh, I can. Oh, oh, oh my. Hello. Um, you're a big tree. Let me just get rid of you real quick. Oh, oh, the beautiful oak wood. Oh, it's oh. Okay, we can get rid of you now. I don't want birch wood for a while. I really just want the jungle. I really don't care about any other wood. All right, let's just expand out the tree farm a little bit so we've got a little bit more room for the trees to grow. Who knows? Maybe one of these days we can grow a big jungle tree. Does Mike come back yet? Hello, buddy. You still around? You gone away completely. Well, I had a friend for a day. Now it's just back to just sadness. 
Ah, now I've run into a problem. I have the expanded tree farm, but I have no saplings because I turned them all into bone meal. Okay, I'm gonna have this stuff cook up and then by the time it's probably done, the sun will be down and I'll head to bed. Okay, so I want that jungle tree to grow. This is literally my main thing. I don't care about anything else other than that tree. I don't care about you. And you know what? I'm that desperate to get it to grow. I'm going to make some shears and shear off all of these leaves so I can turn them into compost. All I want is a bunch of jungle saplings. That's literally my entire life goal right here. I don't usually build with jungle wood anymore, but hey, this is a one-off occasion. It looks good for a raft. Casually wasting the precious iron just to get some leaves, you know? Truly, truly a big brain move right here. Okay, five bone meal. One, two, three. Yes! Oh, oh my god, that's a tall one too. Give me, like, three saplings. I'll be so happy. How many you give me? One, two, three. Yes! Oh, my days. And that means, oh, yes, we can grow a big one. Now, it would be amazing if you four immediately grew with this two bone meal. Okay, so what can we do with this 12? Turns it to 54, and then slab-wise turns into a st oh, almost two stacks. Okay, so I guess let's start out right here then. So we'll do one, two, three, four... Now, I don't exactly know what I'm going for down to the T, but I have a rough idea of what kind of build I want out here. So we're just going to try it out, and if things go the way I'm hoping they do, then it's going to look pretty good. So I want it slightly elevated, okay? I want it to go boom, bing, boom, like that, I think, is correct, I hope. I think that's all right. And then we'll do the same for this side. Oh, come on. The second I put some land down, a squid obviously beaches itself and dies. All right, you know what? It's survival of the fittest out here, but oh, I didn't even get to finish my sentence. Okay. You saw what your friend did. Don't go and do it. Okay, pretty productive day. I still want that tree to grow over there, but we can wait a little while because we've made a, a little start on our actual base. Um, I do want this floor here to be glass, but... Oh, well, I was going to say I can't really get the stuff for it right now, but I can. I'll go and get it in the morning. Ooh, another barrel. Okay, so let me just make a couple of you. Probably don't need six, but that'll do. And then we're going to head down after grabbing this barrel, of course, uh, and hope that no sharks spawn in whilst we're down here trying to grab up some sand. Nothing to worry about, you know, just chilling in a door under the ocean. No sharks around. No weird punching fish around. Just take this over and get it smelted down, and then we can put down our first glass floor. <gasps> oh my god, hello! Oh, things are going just so well. Just so well. Plus, we have an extra barrel too. Let's see what it has in it. Uh, it's some pretty mid stuff, but I'll take the iron. You can join my army of barrels. There we go. <laughs> How many have we got now? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, does this axe have enough durability to take down that tree in one hit? I highly doubt that, so let me just... I guess I could craft up an iron one? Yeah, let me craft up an iron one. There you go! Oh my god, it's beautiful. Oh, it's raining jungle wood. Oh, it truly is, it truly is a miracle having this much wood. Th that should keep us going for a little while, you know? That's uh, more than enough jungle wood to suffice my urges for now. Uh, let's take some of this glass and just have it placed down here. Yeah, I think. I think this is big enough. I'm not too sure. I've got a design idea in my head, but I don't know if the circle's large enough. I guess I can just make it bigger if not. <laughs> what is that? Hello? <laughs> that is the most pathetic spruce tree I think I've ever seen in my life. Oh my days. Oh god, I've never seen one so stubby. It was such a small tree. Oh, already? B um, okay. Okay, give me, give me a second. Let me just chop you down again. Okay, what's that? Like, almost four stacks now? That should be. Or maybe just over? I don't know. It is two, three, uh, just under four stacks. Wow, okay. And a bit... Huh? What? Can I... I can eat this? Let's go! Um, I, I don't know where that came from, but I'll, I'll take it. Thinking about it now, hindsight is twenty twenty. Um, We didn't need this farm at all. This farm is... It doesn't really serve much purpose, let's be real. I'm just living off of the copious amounts of fish I get from the barrels. Is that another barrel? It is. It is. Come here, my friend. Join my family. All right, we're going to have to start organizing some of these things up as well. Also, I don't really think I'm a great fan of everything spawning underneath my beautiful glass floor. That might look a little bit ugly. 
Now, I spent the rest of day 5 cooking up all the remaining glass and finishing off the floor. Then, decided to take some time and sort out the storage problem that had very quickly been getting worse. I'm a firm believer in the fact that storage needs to stay organised, and if it isn't, it just bothers me. Alright, the floor's nice and finished off now. It looks really nice. I really like the way glass looks with complementary shaders. It looks uh, it looks super cool. I don't know really if I'm a big fan of the half slabs for the, you know, the visible sides of the circle. They kind of, I don't know, they kind of bug me to some degree. I don't even think I can waterlog them. No, we're in 1.16, so I can't waterlog them. Oh, and also we have uh, another giant jungle tree that I think I'm going to leave there for the time being because we've got more than enough wood. Okay, so I think I may continue on with the actual expanding of this area today. I'm not too sure. I want to go and get a couple things in check first, and then we'll see where we go from there. Yeah, so all of that I just said to you was a complete lie, and instead I spent the entire day fishing. Immediately finding a saddle, which some use that's gonna be out here, you know, just oh, give me a sec guys, let me just go ride my fish punching mantis shrimp. Like, what am I actually gonna use this on? After spending the majority of the day fishing, and not really finding much other than some fish, but I know right, what a surprise, I decided to actually chop down the big jungle tree because it was only halting progress whilst it was there, because if I chop it down and get the wood, then I can immediately start growing another one and just make more progress. Then, after taking down that behemoth of a tree, I headed to bed. Alright, so needless to say, yesterday didn't go as I planned it. I was going to say that we got uh, some good stuff, but we really didn't. We got a bunch of these red groupers that I can't even cook up. Um, we got like one salmon and like five cod, so we didn't get too much at all. And I have no clue what I can use this saddle on, so yeah, pretty strange day. However, I did realize that this needs to be 11 blocks wide total, so hopefully I've got it correct. I pray I do. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, yeah, right, so it is 11 blocks, so this is perfect. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go around and just add a little bit of a, a layout of how I'm going to have things set up right here. Now, I'm also thinking that for these sides here, I don't want to just put, like, logs or planks. I kind of want to have, like, a little design going. Like, however that looks, that looks okay. Um, but then what we want to do over the top of that design, if I can find the oak planks, is I want to make a bunch of trapdoors, which is going to be extremely expensive. And then I want to go across here like that and go boom, boom, boom. And then it'll just add a little bit of detail, I guess. Not too much, but it adds kind of like a, I don't know, raft feel, <laughs> if, if you can describe it as that. I don't know. Uh, okay, I was literally just about to say that I like the way this is coming out and, you know, it looks really good, but um, I don't because I built it one too big, so these aren't going to connect the way I want them to and I need to just move everything in back by one because this is four blocks until the middle and it needs to be three blocks to the middle for these to be connected by two leaves together. But I'm, I'm not fixing that right now. Okay, that's... It, 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 I'm taking it as a sign. All right, it's enough. It's enough house building for today. Let's head down and see if we can find anything underground. Do I have enough iron to make an iron pickaxe? I do not. Okay. Guess let's just head down here. We'll make a very simple mine, all right? Nothing too fancy schmancy. I just want something that goes down um, and doesn't have water in it. Ooh, coal immediately. One thing that we really don't need. Beautiful. Look at that lovely little entrance down here. Uh, I'm not going to mine up that coal because I don't need it. Um, and instead, we're just going to go and check out if any caves lurk below. Ooh, hello. Even more. Okay, I'll take you. I'll take you. Okay, I guess I'll go until my pick breaks. If I don't find a cave, I'm just going to head up to the surface with my 31 iron, smelt it down, and then, I don't know, fix the house tomorrow. All right, let me get you in there. Boom, boom. Lovely. All right, uh, I guess head to bed, and then in the morning, fix the abomination I caused here. Okay, so where do I even begin with this? Uh, let me first off make a new axe, because this one's going to go bye-bye within seconds. And then I guess we'll move these in by one. Then bring that forward. Uh, bring these forward. Then get rid of all these. All right, there we go. Problem is now solved and it looks so much cleaner. Now, the design I'm going for is we're going to have kind of like a central area here. And then there's going to be a bridge over to another like copy of this with the little ones in the middle and then we'll probably build our house further down there probably over the coral reef would look really nice it might sound a little strange it might be a little bit confusing and that's because it is but um it'll look good all right i have faith in my building skills this time just get rid of this tree stop casting a shadow over my lovely build thank you very much you very rude jungle tree uh, hello are you gonna uh, what i've been scammed oh i just thought as well we can get the vines from the trees too that's probably pretty good so now I think we don't really have too much oak wood, do we? No, we've got four trapdoors and then 14 
logs. That'll go to 56 and then into 22 trapdoors. All right, that'll finish off what we have here. But then I also need oak for fences and fence gates as well, I think, maybe. So what I'm going to focus on now is just expanding it out this way a little bit and then out this way a little bit so that we can build another circle here to work as kind of like a path down the middle because it's going to go back there a little bit too. Yeah, it's, it's a weird looking base, I'll tell you this. Okay, so the main focus of today will be to just add a couple more of these right here. Just bring it out a little bit. Okay, so now that we've got our initial logs placed down, let me bring them up by a couple of blocks. That's not what I wanted to do. I'm going for like kind of like a beach cabana. Is it cabana? Like kind of like a beach house style to things where we're going to have it very open, you know, very breezy. If the that's the way to describe it, you know, a lot of gaps in the in the framework, you know, to let the air just flow through, you know, get that lovely sea air as if I can't get enough of it right now, you know, just in the middle of it. You know what, the best way to describe it, right, the best thing that I'm imagining in my head right now for this is like the Dead Island beach houses. I don't know if you ever played Dead Island, but the beach houses in that game is kind of how I'm basing this to some degree. Not completely, but to some degree. All right, so here we want to add uh, some stairs down. Okay, there we go. That looks, <laughs> well, just like a wooden bridge right now, but it will look really good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down one and then we're going to bring it over. And then we're going to have that side connect to it also. And then that should connect perfectly over. There we go. All right. And now we've got another little perfect circle right here. And then we just add the stairs here. Look at that. All right. Uh, it doesn't look great right now, but it will do. It'll look so much better once we get some glass in there. Um, and I think this is where I'm going to do the jungle trapdoors. Let me just show you my idea real quick. Okay. Because they kind of look different to the other ones. I think they'll look nice here. All right. Hear me out. Hear me out. And then we put some logs here i don't know whether i want them too high or one high right here but we'll figure it out real quick maybe one high is the the sweet spot for that uh but i want then some fences in between all of these to make it look really good now i wish we had some like bamboo fences i wish they were a thing i don't think that we have bamboo fences in this uh let me check oh we have bamboo oh, the bamboo spikes we don't want them no um yeah okay we don't have them fences but we can make it look good nonetheless all right and i don't think think that I have enough glass to finish off the floor. I don't think I have anywhere near enough glass. Uh, let me... That's iron. Where's my glass? It's in here. Yeah, I have seven. That's <laughs> that's not going to cut it. Nowhere near enough. But you can see the idea now, all right? It's just going to connect in things like this. It's going to look really good. We're going to add a little roof over the top of this. It's going to look nice, all right? It's going to look real good. I think what we should do is... I don't think there's really any way we can set up like an auto-fishing thing. Is that raw salmon? We'll cook that bad boy up. Ooh, we can make... Actually, we can make a smoker now. Oh, it's all coming together. Yes. Okay, I want to go and upgrade all my tools to iron. Combine these two for whatever it's worth. And there we go. All right. Uh, the stone ones can just... Yeah, there we go. All right. Oh, no, what was that? What did I just drop there? Oh, it was a beetroot. Oh, I don't care about that. I'll throw the other one. Eh, there we go. Go away. Better off in the ocean. So I spent some of the night harvesting some crops from the farm and cooking up some food, as well as fishing in another couple of barrels containing the standard barrelly themed loot that I've come to love at this point. All right, so one of the goals I actually want to do is build a mob farm, but I don't want to do it where I can actually see it, if that makes any sense. I don't want it to be visible from my actual house because they just look awful. But what I think I might do is I might take all these and I might just head out that way like 50 blocks and just do it just outside the render distance for this area. So I'll throw you down, uh, grab this cobblestone, make sure to miss the beetroot that I threw down yesterday. Uh, and I guess let's just take a little look-see over here and... Uh, Where's my... Okay, I'm missing half my body, but it's it's fine. We're going to have to be kind of smart while building this as well, because I kind of forgot about the sharks. There's a... What was that? It was a shark tooth. Oh, my. Yeah, we want to be smart with building this thing then. Oh, wait. This is part of a shipwreck, right? Possibly. It looks like... Yeah, okay, it is. Okay, well, we'll build from this then. That works fine. We don't need to be careful. We're completely fine. Okay, got a little platform going. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And I guess before we go and actually build the farm, let's go check out down here. See what uh, see what loot's down here for us. A couple pieces of iron. I'll take it. Okay, not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, I'm stuck in here, though. Let me out, please. I'm gonna drown. Let me out! Ah. Ooh, an empty map. Okay, nothing really. 
of use in there. Maybe the bucks, to be fair, the bucks would be pretty big. Purple pickle, what? I don't know what that was. I don't want it. So I guess let's just get to work on expanding out this platform a little bit and then actually building up the farm. I've never really made one of these out of wood before, or at least I don't remember doing. I don't usually make them out of wood. I usually do it with stone. It might look really funky with wood. I don't think I've ever made one out of jungle wood to be precise. All right, that'll do. Uh, we want the little platform in the middle. So just one, two, three, four. I understand it's off center, but I don't care. So I'm pretty sure it's 21 blocks high we make it, or 22. I'm just gonna double check to be sure, but I think it's 22. Okay, so apparently it's 21. So we'll do one, two, three, four. Okay, so now we just need to go and rinse and repeat the process for all four of these sides. And then we're going to go and build a two block high wall all the way around all four of them. Now, a load of you got really, like, annoyed the last time I built one of these farms with slabs here. But mobs can spawn on the top part of, like, these slabs. So it shouldn't affect the spawning of them. I think what I did wrong last time is maybe I did the roof too low. Or maybe they just don't spawn in one lucky block. But it, I don't know. But the bottom part shouldn't make a difference. They're still just, like, full blocks, essentially. They're just half underneath. So mobs can still spawn on them. But I guess I'll just do the roof as two full blocks instead of one and a half. Now, I actually want to go and light this up because I do not want any ghoulies spawning in while I'm trying to build this because the sun's going down and I'm not planning on going to bed until this is finished. Now, I spent the entire rest of the night building up the mob farm and things went pretty smoothly for the most part other than me having to head back home and grab some more wood to make some trap doors. But other than that, it was a really nice chill night up here just looking down at the coral reefs below. Now, there was also supposed to be a really nice cinematic shot to accompany this audio, but uh, sadly, replay mod said no and I lost the footage. So, uh, yeah, now it's just me placing blocks. But finally, after crafting and placing down the trapdoors and adding some of the final details, the farm was finished by the morning of day 11. There we go. The farm is now done. Um, and hopefully it works fine. It should do. Okay, I see absolutely no reason for this farm not to work. So hopefully it starts working soon. Hello? Is there, is there anything going to spawn in here? Now, I ended up spending the rest of day 11 spawn-proofing the top of the mob farm that I forgot to do the night prior. Then, heading back down and farming it out all day to see how well it worked, if at all. And oh boy, let me tell you, I was so surprised when night fell and this thing just went into overdrive, spawning in things every couple of seconds. It was wacky and it worked so, so well. So, of course, I had to spend the night here playing Whack-A-Mob. Wowee, okay, what an eventful night. What an extremely eventful night oh hello goodbye look at this all right we've got 61 bones 64 and 4 gunpowder we just got a whole bunch of stuff including a bow and some gucci leggings it's pretty good pretty nice night so we're gonna head back home now uh we're gonna grab a bunch more wood because <laughs> well i am bankrupt on the stuff what a lovely sight to come back to mm -mm -mm. i'm gonna chop you down Okay, so I'm just going to make... Do I have a chest for mob stuff? No. Okay, so I'm just going to throw all of this in here for now. Okay, and down you come. There we go. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Give me all the wood. I really need to start checking the water before jumping in because of the shark right there. Ooh. Okay, hello, buddy. Stay away. I don't know if they're instantly aggressive, but you would assume so, right? You would assume so. Alright, so this is nowhere near enough wood, but we're at least stacking back up on it now. And also, I can just break some of these down into bone meal and have a real good time with these trees. So let's see how much we can get from just this stack and half of bone meal. Okay, so about being broke on wood, um, we have quite a lot now. And it didn't even use that much bone meal. I still have 48 left, but I ran out of axes. So I'm just going to throw it in this uh, farming chest right here. And now we've got, like, oh my god, it's like half a chest full of jungle logs. Oh my days. Okay, jungle trees are definitely the way to go. Mainly for just the utter speed of which you can just mine them down and stuff. And the amount of wood they give you is just wacky. Ooh, I've just noticed as well, we've got a whole bunch of bananas too. That's always nice. Okay, well I guess I'll spend this evening, I'll take this time to uh, go and dig up a bunch more uh, sand. Because we're going to need an absolute ton of glass. And I know mining it is going to be slightly annoying, so I may as well just get it out of the way. Hey, big shark! Okay, bye-bye. Okay, I've been down here risking it with a shark long enough for now, I think. I'm just going to grab all the sand that I can get right here, and then we're going home. So now considering that we have a little bulk of sand and we have like a whole bunch of actual logs that we're going to need to build with, although we still don't have oak. I've not been focusing on oak. No, it's fine. We'll do the details later, but I think with what we have now, I can number one, finish off this floor. 
There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. And we can also go and expand things out a little bit more. Because this little area over here is just its just not big enough anymore. That center was even big enough to begin with, which it, it really wasn't. Now, I still don't know how, like, big I want this to be. I would assume not too massive, because just down to the sheer amount of time I'll spend building it. But I'm thinking maybe two or three of these more would be okay it's gonna be longer than it is wide it's gonna be like i said it's gonna be a strange base but i like where it's going i mean at this point it is pretty much just copying the pattern from the framework that we already have because it doesn't really get much more complex or anything it's just the same shapes repeating there we go you see it's already getting a little bit of size to it now it's already looking good I think what I'm going to do when I'm done with this little segment over here and connected this up is I'm going to go and expand out the tree farm as well. Just because I don't think this base really has an area for a tree farm. So maybe what I'll do is I'll have this side connect out to like a giant tree farm over this way. Yeah, actually, I think that's a really good idea. Let me just um, take you down. Maybe use stairs here so we can pull it down to a, a nice water level block, you know? And then it can just lead out to a lovely tree farm spanning the expanses of the ocean. It does kind of make that step right there useless, but it is what it is. There we go. All right. Uh, the floor's looking a little bit janky right now. Let me just tidy that up real quick. All right. And there we go. That'll do for now, at least. We're making some pretty nice progress. It, it's coming along. It's coming along. The remainder of day 13 was spent with me building out a new, very basic looking tree farm. Although I don't really know how you can make these things not look basic, it's literally just a group of trees, but either way, this floating slab should hopefully make getting wood so much faster. Now also during the night, I was pleasantly surprised to find that my new friend had come and visited me again. Or at least, I think he's my friend. I kind of just call him it and hope that he is, but I really don't know if he's friendly towards me or if he even likes me. Kind of like the way I go about my actual life. That was a joke, because my life is literally this game and I I speak to no one. <gasps> hey, buddy. Hey, 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 welcome back, my friend. Hello, you creepy little bugger. How's it going? Go punch that fish. Go on, you know you want to punch that fish. Go on, go on. Yes. Oh, I love him. I love him. I'm too scared to go near him, though, because he will punch me to death, probably. Oh, I missed you, buddy. I want to make like a little tank for you, you know? Where'd you go? Oh, he's gone. So elusive. After Mike practiced his wizardry once again and vanished back into thin air, I got back to work on the farm and had it finished off by sunrise. Ugh, what a, what a miserable morning. It's raining, but there's no rain. I think that might be my shaders. I'm not too sure what's happening. So, good sir, we no longer need you to grow over here. Let me politely just move you over to the other side. Thank you very much for your wood. I will put it to good use. Throw you fellas down at the back here. And then I'm hoping to fill the rest up with oak. I don't know how many saplings I'm going to get from this tree. I'm not expecting to get enough to cover the whole the whole farm, but at least, you know, three. Three is fine. Three is fine. Why do they keep auto planting? Hello? And I think what I'll do is I'll put the bone meal to use on them so that we can actually start filling this place up pretty soon. There we go. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Big tree too. Big tree. I'm saying we get 10 saplings from all that. Ooh, 11. I was close. Oh, 13. No, I was less close. Literally one shot. Are you kidding me? Are you going give me, to give me one sapling? Give me one singular sapling and I'll be happy. <gasps> Ooh, there's a bunch of the water. Let's go. All right. We've got our oak tree farm now situated. I would say we just need to wait for them to grow, but we really don't. I've got a whole bunch of bone meal, but I don't want to really spend the day mining trees. I'm not going to lie to you. And what I want to do instead is craft myself some iron armor real quick. You know, just a couple pieces. Sorry, Gucci leggings. I really don't need you anymore. And what I want to do is I want to set sail out maybe this direction. I don't know, because I want to go out and explore to see if I can find a ship. Not a shipwreck, like an actual ship, because there's a mod in here that has them in it, um, and they can have decent loot, I hope. I don't know. I just, I, I know that they have chests on them. Although, before I set out, let me just real quick grab some string, and then we'll go boom, boom, boom. Wait, wait, I've just made it inverted. That's not, wait, no, this, the string goes there, the bow goes there. What an absolute idiot. <laughs> okay. All right, axe is ready. The shovel seem better days. Oh, I guess I could just combine the two. All right, and I guess maybe a shield as well, just to be safe. Just to be safe. You can never be too safe out here in the uh, the ocean. And off we go. All right, let's see if we can find ourselves some scallywags out here. Now, hopefully, we don't come across like a, a kraken or something out here. I don't actually remember what mods I have in this, so there may just be like a kraken up here out of nowhere and one shot us, but I highly doubt it. 
Oh, what's that? Oh, that's a ship, all right. Hello. Uh, are you a friendly ship or are you foe? Are you friendly or foe? Am I going to get shot by you or are we okay to enter? You don't look very friendly. Oh, what's that? That's a, Oh, yeah, no, that's not friendly at all. Okay, what happens if I shoot one of those targets? Okay, did nothing. Oh, it did. Oh, it blew it up. Hello, buddy. Don't shoot me. Don't shoot me. Don't shoot. <laughs> Look, they're all gathering down there. What's the matter, buddy? Is your ship get a hole in it? Hey, it sucks to be you, pillagers. Yeah. It's going to be my ship soon enough. Oh, my God. There's so many. Oh, my God. There's so many. Look at them. Why is there so many? <laughs> they keep going in. I don't think I have enough arrows to deal with them all. How am I supposed to do this? Maybe not attack a ship this size with no armor, pretty much. I have 36 arrows left. I'm going to run out. Hopefully, there's not a spawner on there. If I see more jumping down from nowhere, then I'll assume that there is. But I don't think there is. I don't see more spawning in. So, I'll go over and take a look. Okay. Oh! 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 God it. Okay, maybe there's a few more waiting for me in there. <laughs> just a few. Uh, can I go over and, like, thwack them? Can I just... Wait, if I put, like, a... A piece of wood here, right? Uh, have these got arrows in them? No, nothing. Okay. Ow! Okay, stop, stop, stop. I'm going to hit you cheaply. I'm going to hit you cheaply, all right? I don't care. Come on, fight me. No, don't actually fight me. That would be... No, don't. I'm scared. Oh, my God. My sword is, like, gonzo. I think that's because of the mob farm. Um, okay, how many of you are still in there? Uh, okay, there's a good bunch of you. There's not too many, though. Oh, you just, you're dealing with yourself. This is beautiful. All right, yeah, you keep doing that. Keep doing that. There we go. I'm just going to block you in there. All right, I'm going to... Oops, I don't want to put that there right now. I guess we'll take a little look inside, see if there's... Okay, there's some, some normal mobs in there. They're not really too scary. Oh, I may have spoke too soon. This skeleton's absolutely destroying me. There doesn't appear to be spawners, but... Oh, wait, no, that's a spawner back there, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there's a spawner back there. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe not the smartest decision. Maybe not the smartest decision to board that ship. We'll check up top. If there's spawners and stuff up top, then we're leaving. Hello? Any... Anything up here that shouldn't be? Hello? Oh, there's a couple of creepers. Ooh, a couple of chests. I know I did not do all this for some maps. What about in here? Oh, nope. Okay, we don't want to go in there. Okay. Yeah, no, home time for now, I think. Home time for now. We'll check out the front of the ship. There's nothing over here. Then it's home time for now. Oh! Okay, yep. No, we're going. That was too close. That was too close. Okay, back home. Maybe not the big ships. Maybe leave the big ships alone, you know? Not a good ship. Okay. After coming to the conclusion that I was not going to be able to take on that whole ship right now, and it was not the way that I wanted to go out trying, I sailed my way back home and over to the mob farm to hopefully try and replenish on some arrows that I'd just completely wasted on that ship. Okay, so after yesterday's escapades and losing horrendously on that ship, I feel like we really need to gear ourselves up. Now, I have restocked on arrows, um, got the leather cap, I'm sure that's going to help a load, um, and also a potion of healing. I think that came from a witch. Well, that's nice to have. But the arrows and the leather cap are not really going to do much against those uh, very unfriendly fellows over by the ship. So what I think we're going to do today is head down into the mine that I made and go a little bit deeper in hopes of finding some caves or at least a cave. I don't really care if it's multiple. That way we can gear up a little bit and not be so squishy to everything. Okay, so we'll just keep heading down in hopes of finding a cave. But if not, we'll go down to Y12 and then just check what we can find down there, I guess. Oh, okay. We're already like bang on bedrock. Okay. Well, here's Y11. Ooh, I hear lava to the right of me. It's over here. Hello? I hear you bubbling away over here. It's like to the... Oh, it's right here. Okay. Uh, is this a cave or is this just like a little area? Uh, it looks like a little area, but could potentially be a cave? Maybe up here? Hello? You're not going to be a cave? You're just going to make me sad? Yeah, you're just going to make me sad. All right. Well, I mean, at least we have lava for whatever reason we'd need lava for. I don't even want diamonds at this point. I literally just want more iron. That way I can finish off my drip. I don't feel like we're going to be getting too much luck with caves down here. Oh, I don't have enough iron to make a pickaxe. I need to smelt some down. But as I was saying, I, I really don't think we'll have too much luck with the caves not being waterlogged. I hear one with a bat and some water there, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be a big cave at all. It could just be like a tiny little chunk and then the rest could be underwater or just no cave at all. Cave, are you up or are you down? Are you straight across? Like, what, what what's happening? It sounds like it's on my level. Oh, it's right there. Oh, hello. 
Oh my days. Okay, this is a potentially very dangerous place, but there is a lot of iron in here. All right. Um, okay, be cautious, be careful. Probably pull out the shield for this part. Let's be real. Uh, creepers can drop down from anywhere and just blow up immediately. Something we really don't want happening. Oh! <laughs> she got jump scared by a bat. Maybe we'll find some diamonds in here. I mean, it'd be nice if we could, but I'm not holding out hope on it. Zombie with a shovel. Oh, crispy zombie with a shovel. Ooh, I want that big chunk up there. Yeah, so far, I'm not really seeing much down here other than iron and coal and the odd piece of lapis. All right, I'll grab this last vein right here, and then that should be it. Hello? And then that should be enough to go back to the surface and deck ourselves out with having a little bit left over as well. Pick up the eight in there, grab the furnace, and then back to the top we go. And night, I think, is just starting to fall, yeah? Yeah, okay, right, so it's just turning night. We've got 41 iron. All right, that's, that's not bad. And then this should be enough to finish off all our armor boom boom there we go all right full iron isn't the best but it's better than what we had wow man this place is really starting to come together i've just noticed we've got a little area set up right here we've got the trees over there it, it's coming along good there's still a load more work to be done but it's it's looking good so far How's it going, buddy? You just punching some fish up down there? Always a lovely way to start the day. Look at him. Oh, my God. He just deletes them all. Oh, my days. <laughs> Anyways, what I was thinking of right now is this is all going to have a roof on it from here all the way down to the end and even further. It's going to have a roof on it. Then these middle bits are going to be kind of open and outside, giving kind of like a, like I say, a beach house vibe, like an outside area. Uh, and then we're going to do the same on this side with the roof going all the way down. But what I'm thinking is we can have subsections of it that come off to the side and lead to areas such as like a tree farm, the, a normal actual farm, maybe some animals if we can find any. I, I don't really know if we're going to be able to do that. Now, I basically spent the entirety of day 16 working on the raft and adding a little bit more structure to it. Now, there were a few setbacks due to me not being able to count for some reason and making some really stupid mistakes when it comes to the size of circles, but other than that, things went really well, and we ended up making some really good progress. Now, I realize that things look kind of basic and blocky right now, but trust me, okay? Once I've got all the wooden supplies that I need, I'll go around and add all the details with trapdoors, fences, leaves, you name it, it'll be on there and it'll look really, really good. So just trust the process, all right? That's what I'm doing, so <laughs> let's hope it works out. The only other thing to happen on day 16 that wasn't me placing wood, glass, or stone was the fact that I didn't light up some areas of the raft with it being bigger now, and we did have some guests coming throughout the night. However, they were dealt with easy enough, and by sunrise of day 17, our raft was now considerably bigger. Sheesh, look at this. This is, this is looking great now. We made some real nice progress. Uh, I'm really liking how it's... Uh, forming, I guess. It, it's coming together really well. What I think I want to go and do today is that ravine down there still intrigues me, so I kind of want to go pay it another visit. I'm feeling much stronger with the iron armor. Um, just grab my bow, grab this. There we go. All right, let's head back down. I want to check out the ravine, and hopefully I'd like to find a diamond. I'm not too sure if we actually will, but it's worth the look because I do want to go to the nether at some point, and, well, I don't really fancy bringing up this lava down here all the way up top to Oh, well, no, I could, te I could technically do it right now. I, I want to go to the nether without doing it in a speedrun way, okay? Leave me alone. Okay, great. Immediately getting attacked as soon as I get down here. Um, I want to see what's up there. Ow, stop it. Why is there so many of you? Why is this? Stop it. Oh, God, there's like three of you. Okay. Grow an entire forest with the amount of bones I just got. All right, so what secrets do you hold for me, my friend? Oh, you're an underwater cave. I should have guessed that. Oh! Oh! Okay, maybe maybe the underwater cave isn't a good place. Oh my god, why is there so many things down here? Hey, yo, I don't want to stay over here. I do not want to stay over here. Maybe maybe this side's much more chill, you know? Let's see if I can actually go down here without getting jumped by an army of mobs. Is it because we're, like, in ocean, so, like, they don't really have much more place to spawn, so they just kind of all cramp down into, like, the smallest place they can? I feel like that's the reason. Okay, this side literally just leads to a dead end, I'm pretty sure. Um, does this go anywhere? Hello? I guess I'll head back over the other side um, and try and sneak past them, I guess, because that looks like the only way to get to a cave system from here. 
<laughs> he got one tapped by the lava. Okay, so we just want to be cautious. Okay, what's with everything over here, man? Why have I already come over here and there's like 10 things? Okay, I'm just going to run for it. I'm just going to run for it. We're going to go. Okay, well, I guess I'll just take everything that this place has to offer me. And then, I don't know, maybe strip mine a little bit. I, I really wanted to mine or go cave exploring today, but there really doesn't seem to be too much down here. Let's check out this water cave. Doesn't seem to really lead anywhere. I don't have any doors, so if I get trapped down here, I'm pretty screwed. Okay, yeah, I need to make a door before coming in here. This is way too, uh, too far. So I spent the rest of the night down here in the cave searching for diamonds, but only ended up finding myself getting lost in the endless, jankily rendered water caverns. Until I ended up just getting too turned around and confused down here and decided to just make my way back up top, surfacing just next to the raft. I ended up spending the entirety of day 18 chopping away at trees. That ended up mainly being oak ones, because I need an absolute ton of their wood so they can actually start going around and adding details to the raft. Now, for some reason, I only ended up using the bone meal that I had in my farming chest and not like the copious amounts of bones I have in the mob drops chest. I, I think I just forgot about them. But yeah, I would have got a load more trees if it wasn't for me just being an idiot. However, I did also put the iron that I got from the mines yesterday to use and crafted up some hoppers to use on the mob grinder, as well as having to go and harvest some potatoes from the farm because, well, I was running pretty low on food. And whilst they were cooking, I headed back down to the ocean floor and grabbed a whole bunch more sand to start smelting down into glass. Alright, so now we have a little bit more oak wood. We still don't have like anywhere near enough to do all the things that I'm wanting to, but we'll focus on getting a whole bunch of it later on. Now, one of the things I want to do today is I want to take these hoppers and these chests over to the mob farm over here. Then I want to throw these down probably here. Can I still use a crafting table? I can still use the crafting table. Okay, great. Um, I want to throw them right here and then just link them up to the chest. There we go. Lovely. And now because they're slabs, things should go through them. Beautiful. All right. Oh, God. Hello. Now, I do kind of want to go out in the opposite direction of where I went last time. So I went over that way last time. So I kind of want to go over to the right here just to really see what we can find out there. If there is anything of use to us, because I know in this mod pack that there's like ocean dungeons and, and I really want to find one because even if I can't take it on right now, it's something to look forward to later. And from what I've seen of them, they look kind of cool. We also want to keep an eye out for any smaller ships than the one that we saw the other day, because them ones are just a little bit too big right now. Oh, actually, in fact, no, let's head over to the one we saw the other day, because it's daytime now. So there should hopefully be no mobs over there. Is that coming for me? I think that's coming for me, you know? Is that shark coming for me? Oh, he is. No, stay away. He's, oh, he's trying. He's trying to gain on me. No, go away. Go away. Why is it here? I'm getting off. I'm going to my boat, uh, my raft. Oi, come here. Come on. Let's go, buddy. Come on. You want to chase after me? Yeah, that's what I thought. Overgrown fish. Oh, I did not like that. I didn't know that the sharks could do that. I don't know why it did. Maybe because I'm in a boat. I know that they attack things IRL because they think they're seals, but I ain't really seen many seals look like this. Okay, buddies. Uh, you are most definitely a different ship. I don't understand how I found a different one and not the one I was at, but hey-ho. Yeah, <laughs> hit the shark with it too. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, filter down, filter down. Come on. Okay, these guys are jumping off the boat. I don't want this one. I want the one that I found the other day. I don't remember where it is. Let me blast a hole here too. Oh, I completely missed that one second. Slightly embarrassing on my part. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, you know, just misfiring. There we go. Hey, are. I'll sink ye ship. Oh, they're, they're coming out. <laughs> Why were you stood there, you idiot? <laughs> okay, can I just lure them all out to the shark? Will it eat them? Shark, have them. Oh my God, there's so many. Why are there so many? All right, what's happening? Over, oh, hi. These guys will deal with themselves for the most part. Like, big groups of them will just end up hitting them each other. But I'm scared that there's more than them down here, such as that creeper. Okay, come on. Deal with everything. There we go. Lovely. Did you blow up the spawner? No, you didn't. That kind of sucks, though. Okay, just get rid of it. Just get rid of it. There we go. Lovely. Making our way through here is slightly dangerous. Hello? Why is there water in here? This place is in disarray, man. Barrel. Ooh, some gunpowder and an emerald. Lovely. Definitely worth all the trouble I've been through to get here. Wow, this place is 100% worth it. Oh my, one golden apple. Oh, I'll take the melon and pumpkin seeds. We can make iron golems and stuff. I'll take them. Uh, I guess I'll take the emerald. I don't really know when I'm ever going to use it, but I'll take it. Things are happening. Things are happening on the ship. Oh, God. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, we need out. We need out. We need out. Everything's coming down here now. Everything's coming down here now. Okay, leave, leave, leave. Oh, God, it's blown up. Let me out. Let me out. 
I'd take the shark over this. Yeah, look at this guy. He's just out here. How'd he get out here? Weird man. Okay, them ships are not worth it. We're not coming back to another one of those. I was in the belly of the beast and it had like one gapple. Like that's... No, that's not worth the trade-off, man. Okay, we'll take a scenic route home tonight. See if we can find anything and hopefully not get chased by a shark. Okay, we're back home. I successfully didn't get chased by a shark, I don't think. And we also didn't find anything out there. So I'm just gonna store all the loot we got away. All the two things I think we got and then head to bed. On day 20, I actually did decide to go out sailing in the opposite direction of last time to see what I could find out there. Oh, what's that? Hello? Is that an ocean monument? I don't want to go too close to it if it's an ocean monument. That is indeed an ocean monument. I'm pretty sure. Hello, buddy. I almost jumped out of the boat then. That would have been... <laughs> that would have gone bad. Um, are you an ocean monument? You seem to be, but I don't know. You don't really look like one. It kind of looks like a run-down ocean monument. You know, see what I mean? Like, it doesn't look like a full one. Yeah, no, that does not look like a normal one. That looks like it's been... Oh, well, this isn't an ocean monument, but it has got drowns in it. Okay, I guess we can go and check this place out. I don't know what's going to wait for me down there, but... Real quick, make a couple doors for my own safety. Okay, hello, friends. Okay, is there a way I can just hop in there and... Oh, there's a load of mantis shrimp around here, too. Okay, I'm just gonna real quick take a look in, see if there's anything worth my time in here. If not, I'm gone. Okay, barrel with gunpowder. Okay, great, a cookie. Oh, my God. Oh, the spawners of them. That's... Okay, yeah, no. This thing is... I need, like, some water-breathing stuff for this. No, my boat! No, where's it gone? Where's my boat? No! <laughs> Run! Run! No! Oh, no. They stole my boat. They broke it. Oh, no, I really no, oh, don't like this. Oh, my God, they're still trying to shoot me. I need to, I need to real quick, crafting table, make a boat. Go, 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 go. Okay, they're not even the big problem. I just didn't want a shark to start coming out of nowhere. Okay, yeah, so that is definitely one of the big ships that I tried to take on and failed miserably at. I don't want one of those. Is that another one of the big ships? It is. I don't want you guys. I want, like, something smaller. I know they exist, damn it. Yeah, look, this one's so much smaller. Yeah, this is it. This is perfect. A tiny little ship. Oh, this is much more my size. Oh, it's a it's an evoker up there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not going close to him then. Uh, let me just kind of snipe him from here. Yes, I can. He needs to die. Is he gone? I think he's gone. Okay, much better. I am more than happy to go and try and take on this ship now. Okay, there we go. That should be all of them. It seems safe to me. Uh, did you drop me a totem, my good friend? You didn't drop me anything. All right. Okay, I'm going to cautiously go and loot your ship now. Oh, Two diamonds! Let's go! And some bookshelves as well. They're going to be amazing for an enchantment table. I'll take all this. I'll take all of this. Any of you in here? No? You're all you're all gone? Oh, and another diamond! Let's go! Curse of Vanishing can go away. I really don't want that. Damn, man. These things have got bigger loot than the actual giant ships. What is this? Okay, all right. Well, this is a cool place. If we see any more of these, I'll be sure to take them on. Probably want to head back home, though, for now. Just solely down to the fact that I want to go and get more arrows. So I might spend tomorrow at the mob farm just to try and grind them out as much as possible. Because we keep running out of them pretty quickly and, well, I just kind of want to eliminate that problem. Oh, what's that over there? I saw some smoke. Oh, <gasps> is there another raft? Hello? Sorry, I've got a shark chasing me as well at the minute. Um, what's going on? Oh, <gasps> hello, buddies. How's it going? Um, you guys... You guys are set over here. Look at this bucket of salmon, some gold. Oh my days, you guys are doing good. Okay, no, no, no. I don't know if they can turn them. I don't know if drowns can turn villagers. You won't be turning my villagers, damn it. Go away. Okay, no, they're going to get hit by the tridents and stuff. I'm just going to leave. I'm just going to leave. I'm just going to leave. Leave, 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 leave. We'll come back here later. Oh my god, yes. And we've got two villagers over there as well. Now, getting them back is going to be like a little bit annoying just because they are quite far away. But, I mean, you know, two boat trips and it's all over. However, we're going to make sure we do it in the day though because there's a lot of things over there right then. Ooh, that's another small ship too. Am I even going back the right way? Like, what is this? Okay, all right. I'll mark the coordinates down for this as well, and we'll come and loot it uh, when we've got the arrows. Okay, we should be coming up on home soon enough. Up, oh, yep, there it is. Okay, beautiful. All right, absolutely massive day right there. Now, on day 21, I actually ended up spending the entire day over at the mob grinder just farming it out to replenish on arrows because I'm sick to death of running out of them after every single fight. And, well, I'm also pretty sure that this is the only way I can get them, never mind the fastest. Now, it did feel like the farm was working a little bit slower this time around. However, once night fell, things did speed up a little bit. And by the morning of day 22, we were ending the farming session with just under two stacks of arrows. So, definitely 
definitely not too shabby. They're not going to last us forever, but it's more than I was carrying before. So what I want to do today is probably, I don't know, maybe start work on a little area to contain the villagers when we do bring them over just because i don't want to bring them over and then have them i don't know get eaten by a shark or turned into a zombie or something okay i don't really know how i want this place to look so i guess i'll throw them in a circle why not you know circles solve all problems All right, and there we go. Nice little circle going on here. It's not too big. I don't really want them to take up too much land mass, but I can build them a nice little beach hut in here, similar to the one that I'm probably going to be living in. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm thinking the actual way I want to block them in is probably to add some fences and mix it in with some leaves around the side. I don't know. I'll figure something out. I'll figure something out. On the topic of leaves, though, I do need to go and get some jungle leaves. However, that does mean that the tree won't cut down. But hey, I actually do need the leaves, so I guess I'm going to have to just go through the tedious process of manually chopping a tree down. Ugh. Okay, so three and a half stacks should be more than enough than what I need to do with it. So let me test out if this will actually look any good or whether it'll look just poo-poo. Okay, so something like that. Now, I might... Ooh, maybe when we go to the nether, I might even add glowstone underneath them. They'll look really nice. Oh, um, okay. Oh, yeah, that does not look uh, too good right there. Yeah, I don't really like that. That does not look that great. Maybe if instead we use these at the bottom, maybe... Would that look better? But then they can just jump on them, right? No? No, apparently not. Let's try this out. Hopefully this works out better. I mean, it does look better overall, but like, I don't know. I don't think I like the fact that there's leaves on top of them like that. Okay, looking at this in my hand, I don't think that this is going to look too great. Oh, no. Cause it, uh, what happened here? Oh, and you have to hit them on the... What is that? Hello? Okay, you know what? I think we're not going to use those fence gates. Get get rid of those. They uh, <laughs> don't really work too well. What if I just... You, oh, they, they, they don't connect. No. All right, beautiful. There's the <laughs> villager area. Not my proudest build, but it'll work. I guess let's have another building day today. I'm in a, I'm in a very uh, buildy mood right now. So let's get a whole bunch of sticks. We'll break down a whole bunch of these logs into actual planks and make a whole bunch of... Well, we want some fence gates and then make a whole bunch of fences. Uh, what else do we need? What else do we need? We need... Uh, oh, trapdoors. Trapdoors, that's it. Okay, and then here's the plan for these. These go boom, boom, boom like that all the way around here and then this goes boom 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 and then you replace the wait why have i why is the two separate fence gates hello okay and there we go there's a good day's work right there that's looking really nice now with the little details added on now there's still a whole bunch more stuff that i want to add on to this just little bits and pieces that i want to you know add details wise but this is coming along really nice it's starting to feel pretty cozy up in here you know it definitely feels like a raft i'm not gonna lie so i want to real quick go and grab these jungle leaves and then just finish off the day by replacing these leaves on every single one of the platforms with jungle ones okay back off out we go yeah i do think that that looks better from the outside than it does the end that definitely looks it looks okay it looks okay so we're gonna move over this way about 450 blocks because we did go quite far last time we went exploring over here so we got a little sailing ahead of us all right and there it is along with a ruin thing underneath it let me go check that out real quick what is down here my good fellows okay really not worth it looks cool though right i'm assuming that there's gonna be another yeah i see him up top right there let me just try and snipe him from a distance i do not want to deal with the vex See, no problem. Hello, did you drop a totem for me this time? No, so, something makes me feel like they don't drop them. I feel like because they're like, I guess, custom mobs, they don't drop them. I don't know, the guy down here had a sword, so that's why I'm assuming. <gasps> Three more diamonds! Bane of Arthropods and Protection 2, I'll take it over nothing. Ooh, more emeralds, a lure 2 fishing rod. Make sure not to forget the bookcases. Right, is that all of your hidden loot, my good friends? I think it is. Let's go and, I guess, kidnap a villager. Are they even still there? Hello? <gasps> okay, you are. Oh my god, I thought I lost you guys. You gotta be careful, man. You're the most valuable thing out here. No! Stay away! Stay away! Get in the boat. 
Get in the boat now. Get in the boat. Yes. Um, I would bring both of you, but then I can't get in the boat. So that kind of sucks. Okay, buddy. Um, I will return for you. Okay, I promise. I'll, I'll come back for you. Right, my friend. It's back home with you then. Alrighty, and back in time for sunset. Now, I want to throw away this paper, and I want to throw away these shears real quick, just so that then I can get... Oh, how am I going to get him on land? Oh, wait, no, I have an idea. So if I break this and have him come in, I can trap him in here, and then he'll run out of the boat, right? Then I throw those down there, and now you shouldn't hopefully go under the water. I don't even know if you can go under the water. Okay, now you exit the water. Yes! Oh, yes, you smart boy. Smart, smart boy. So, can you actually change your job? Oh, wait, no, I don't even need these guys to change their job. I just need to breathe them. If I lose just one of these guys, I am going to sink into the deepest depression you have ever seen a man sink. On day 25, I focused all my efforts on building up a little villager trading hut. That way I can go and grab the other guy and bring him over and then start breeding them to farm out their trades. And also to just have a nice cool looking trading hub. Now the actual build itself didn't take me too long and ended up coming out looking really really nice. Huge shout out to Pinterest though, I'm telling you that site is a Minecraft YouTuber's best friend. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I'm really liking this thing. It looks really, uh, strange, may I say? But, uh, quite nice. It's very quaint. Now, this guy's still a fisherman. However, I'm gonna go grab his friend and bring him over here so that we can have a little baby that is not a fisherman. One of my big problems at the minute is the fact that I don't have enough wool to make multiple beds for them. So, I, I don't really know how I'm gonna get it. Maybe kill spiders? My mob farm doesn't do spiders, so that might be a problem. I don't know. I'm sure I'll figure it out. Hello, my friend. I've come to rescue you. I told you I'd come back. Uh, right. Just go in there. There we go. Look at that. You all right back there, buddy? You just chilling? Looking off into the ocean? Oh, there it is, my friend. Your new home. Right here. Now, I don't actually know how I'm going to get him in there. I think I might try and do some kind of janky move right here. And can I... Will, will the boat go... Oh, no! R no! Get out of the boat! Run! Oh, my God. Get, get on land. Get on land. There's a shark! Quickly, come back here. No, don't go all the way over there. I can't get you over here if you do that. No, he's gone. Ah, oh, of course you want the bloody barrels. All right, I'm just going to make him a pathway so that we can I can go all the way over in the boat and not have to deal with getting him out of it. All right, there we go. Look, see, it's your friend. You remember him from earlier. Look at him. He's just chilling in here. He's loving his life. Right, okay. Uh, I have some food for you. Uh, oh, wait, no, you don't like cooked ones, do what the hell are you doing? There we go. All right. Okay, here you go, friend. Look, there's some potatoes right there. You want to eat them? Yummy, 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 you know? All right, the next time I'll come over here, I want a third villager. Although I don't know if they can even breed with only the two beds because they need a third one for the kid, right? I'm not too sure. I don't really know how that works. But just for the purpose of me thinking that they can't, I'll just donate my bed and I'll sleep over there. All right, look at this. You two have got a, a lovely little bed right here. Look, an extra bed. An extra bed all for the child that you better goddamn make. Yes, 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 go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 yes. Oh, sorry. I uh, look away. Sorry, sorry. Ooh, look at his nose. Oh, my day. Look at that nose moving. I never knew they did that. Holy. Is there a baby now? Oh, there is. Yes. Oh, the miracle of life. So beautiful. Okay, great. We are massively stepping things up in this world now. So what I want to do is I need to finish off placing the glass on this platform. And then I want to expand it out. Maybe. I don't know. Do we do one more? Should we do one more and just... Okay, so we'll expand out one more this way. Uh, just so then when I actually build my house, it will be above a coral reef. So we'll do another one of these circular areas right here. And then expand out the sides one more, and then we'll build our house right at the end. Alright, so I guess while we wait for that little fella over there to grow up, I mean, I may as well just expand out things over this way then a little bit. Just so then we have the base layer of the actual raft itself done. And then we can start on the actual build coming off the sides of it pretty soon. So the rest of day 27 was spent expanding out the raft some more, following the exact same pattern as before. Because I wanted it to look symmetrical, and to also be longer rather than wider. But yeah, the expansion took me all the way through the day, and deep into the night, until the following morning, when I decided to call it quits for now. Alright, there we go, the new areas are built up now, it's looking really good. Uh, I just want to go check up on the villager real quick, first off today, to see if he's grown up. I doubt he will have, because it's like- Oh, no, I'm wrong! He's right there. Okay, group in a day. All right. Well, I'll take that. Uh, my good friend, I don't really want you to be a librarian. I want you to be a Fletcher, but I don't think that I have any uh, flint. Do I have any gravel at all in here? I have one gravel. Uh, and is there any flint in there? 
There is not. Okay. You are not gravel, my good sir. Please step back. Please step back. Okay, you have been warned. Now you are getting beaten. I don't think I have actually come across any gravel down here. I clearly have come across gravel somewhere. Oh, I don't really fancy fighting all those. Oh, run, just run, just run. Oh, gravel's right here. Gravel's right here. Okay. You, oh, God, fight each other down there, man. Oh, God, it's going off down there. Just block it off. Just block it all off. All I want is the gravel. Leave me alone. Okay, there we go. Three flint. Beautiful. That means that we've got enough flint for a flint and steel as well as the table. Alrighty, my fine sir. Let's uh, throw this down right here. That's not what I wanted to throw down. Let's throw this down right here, and then let's get rid of both of these tables. So then you become a Fletcher, and I can just go boom. There you go. Now you are my literal bank, so this is going to go great. I'm just going to break down like a few stacks of the jungle logs, because we just we have so many, and we can get them so quickly. And I'm just going to see how many emeralds and stuff we can stack up on, and then hopefully breed them again soon, so that we can start stacking up on enchanted books and and really just other things like I'm sure there's certain blocks and stuff that we can't get other than getting from villagers I guess or at least I think is there anything that these guys really trade what is that for 20 emeralds I don't even know what that is okay 14 you want 14 and 13 fish respectively are you insane for one emerald. He's out of his mind. Absolutely whack job over there. Holy. 13 fish for one emerald. Does he think I am? Is there one that can trade wool or at least string or something? I can get string from the mob farm, but it's like insanely rare because the spiders aren't supposed to actually go there. Okay, so let me feed you greedy goobers right now. Uh, there's 20 potatoes and 37 carrots. You know, go, go ham with them. And then I'll head over to the mob farm and actually check if there is any string in the chest over there. There is one singular string over here. But I think with this one string, what we can do, if I can find the right chest, hello, is it this one? Yeah, there we go. We should have, wait, what? How have we got, huh? Where did the other stuff come from? Oh, I opened up a bunch of barrels. Oh, well, I don't even need to go over there then. But now with this, we can make one more bed. So that could at least equal one more villager. I'm really not too sure whether or not they need it, but I'm making it anyway, just to be safe. They seem to be gathered. Uh, here's another bed, fellas. There you go enjoy so today is finally going to be the day that i put these diamonds in here that i completely forgot about to use and make ourselves a diamond pickaxe there it is beautiful look at that thing mm -mm -mm. now what i want to go and do with the rest of them is i want to make an enchantment table and get enough obsidian to go to the nether but i don't really want to go to the nether just yet so let's just head back down to the obsidian pool which i think was down the mine i don't think i've really been underground anywhere else Pick up some coal too while we're down here, you know, we're running a little bit low on it. Oh, what the? Hello? Oh, well, it's a good thing we mined the coal. Oh my. All right. We've got an eight vein right here. Mm mm mm. Delicious. Mm mm mm. That was good. Just throw this down so I don't get deep fried. <sighs> okay, see you in about five years. Okay, the year is now 3060 and I'm finally done mining the obsidian. I only got 13 because there was actually one upstairs that we got from a barrel. Okay, so now with our lovely obsidian and our extra diamonds, I think we should have the books somewhere here. There we go. And boom, there we go. All right, enchanting table. I think I might make the enchantment area, I would say one of these, but then it, it kind of blocks one of the things off. So I'll probably throw it over here. However, for right now, I don't really think that I have enough books to fill up like a full level 30 enchant table. Let me see, nine, yeah, no, close, but not, not enough. Okay, I'll just throw that in there for now then. Uh, and then we also have 10 diamonds left over, which could work for, uh, should I make a diamond chest plate? Like I could make a diamond chest plate and a sword. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to make a diamond chest plate and I'm going to make a diamond sword too. Throw that bad boy on. Mm -mm -mm. Look at that. Get rid of the stinky iron stuff. There we go. Okay, feeling better. Got my lovely shiny diamond sword. Do I have a lovely shiny new villager as well? Perhaps? No? Are you stuck up there, buddy? You don't seem to have moved. Oh, were they? Were they oh, they were gazing in each other's eyes. I'm sorry. I ruined a moment. I'm sorry. Uh, I guess I'll give them more food then. I, I don't know. Are they greedy or something? Like, damn it, man. I gave you like an entire farm harvest. Hello, good fellows. Uh, here's three potatoes and 12 beets. Do you want the beets? 
Yes! Oh, thank God they take them for vile things. And I think now the time has finally come to get rid of this god-awful looking platform right here because it's serving no purpose. It's literally just clutter at this point. There we go. Much better. Now, I'm going to keep the farms here for now just solely because of the fact of I don't have any other place to grow the crops at the minute. So, I will eventually build out another farm, probably next to the tree farm and have them connect in some way. I don't know. I really do want to redo the tree farm, but I, I guess for now it's fine. But I think right here is where we'll throw down like a uh, potato and carrot farm. I would say wheat, but we don't have any of the seeds, so... All right, today I am in an exploring mood again. I kind of want to go and check out if there's anything around the mob farm, because it's literally the only way I don't think I've explored yet. Ooh, what's that? Oh, it's a shipwreck, I think. Is that a shipwreck? Always worth checking these bad boys out. Some more paper. There's some feathers. I can actually craft some arrows. You know, just get some extra arrows up in here with them. Okay, and what do you have for me in here? Final chest. Ooh, a diamond. Oh, my. And a, a globe? Huh? What? What's that? I, I, I mean, I know what a globe is, but I don't know what it does in this game. Although, wait, this is heresy. The globe in this game is circular. I may have started a whole debate down in the comic session with that, but uh, I'm not sorry. It's a square. Just deal with it. Now, this is a nice area, man. I wish I lived over here. Look at all this. Although it does fade out into the dark abyss really quickly, but still, there's a nice little coral reef right there. I'm still yet to... Oh, hello. Is this... Ah, this is an enemy ship. Uh, I'm not going to take it on, but I am just going to shoot out the sides because it doesn't mean that I can't grief them real quick. There we go. See you in a bit, boys. <laughs> is there anything? I haven't even really found one of the ocean dungeons yet, other than the one that looks like an ocean monument, and I'm not really too interested in going down there, considering it's like my least favorite structure in the game. Is this land? Hey, this is technically land. Two little blocks of sand out here. All right. Ooh, another ship. Hello. Is that got iron golem on it? <gasps> there's a battle. What is going off here? Oh my god. Wait, no, there's villagers on this ship. Hello. Um, okay. Uh-oh. Uh what was that? What just happened to the ship? What is happening up there? Hello? There's a whole iron golem on there. Now he's gone. Okay, you know what? Not dealing with that. I thought it was a lovely, nice villager ship. It was not. Yeah, I'm just going to take that as a sign to uh, return home because there is absolutely nothing out this way. <gasps> what is that? Is that land? Is that land? There's sugar cane too. Ooh. Okay. Um, I don't think that I'm going the right way home though. Uh, I feel like I've gone a little bit off the beaten path. However, I'm not going to complain at sugar cane. I don't think I've got any at home. Yeah, I really have no clue where I am right now, but I'm going to take advantage of the situation and just keep sailing around. You know, there's no harm in this. Definitely not going to go thousands of blocks away from my home. Ooh, another villager ship. Is it actually a villager ship this time? You going to juke me out? Hmm? Ooh, no. However, there is some drowns down here shooting tridents at me. Let me on. Let me on the ship. Let me on the ship. Oh, thank God you guys are friendly. I would have been, uh, I would have been pretty screwed then. How's it going on here, guys? How you doing? We all good? Uh, what loot you got in here? Some emeralds. Lovely. Why is there a beehive? Why do you have a beehive? I'll take that, actually. I, I kind of want some bees. Although, I don't know how I'm going to get bees when I can't even get flowers. <gasps> the beds! The beds! I can get the beds from here! Oh my god, that solved my problem, like, massively. I guess just give me all your beds, you know? Oh, wait! <gasps> These guys have insane trades! Uh, let's have a look. So, we can get some coral. I don't really need that. Uh, we can get an ocean protector. Is that a banner? <gasps> wait, hang on a minute. So, wait, a flower... Flower power chicken. I, okay, I'll get this. What? what? They have some firework rockets too. I don't really know what I can use them for because I don't have an elytra, but... Illager's Mansion? Librarian's favorite. I'm going get that as well. Um, and I guess I'll buy the Mushroom Island too. All right, I guess I'll head to bed and then we'll check out Flower Power Chicken in the morning. All righty, it's an early morning this time because I have no clue where we're going or what we're even looking for. So we're just going to head out and hopefully be able to find this i don't know is it, is it this way seems like it might be this way yeah Ooh, another small ship although this one looks abandoned could this is this the thing it wants me to find like i i'm starting to think that the map might be bugged out yeah this is like a zombie ship this is no uh certainly no chicken so what's on there just a husk a normal zombie these guys are going to be completely pointless when they like try and attack me okay what you got for me gunpowder okay not really great Instant damage. I uh, don't really need one of those. Okay, so let me just check if this map is the exact same as this map. Yeah, okay, I think... Uh, I really think they're bugged out. I don't think that they work properly due to, I don't know, mods or the map itself. Uh, let's just throw them away. We'll take the extra beds and then we'll try heading home again because, yeah, there's nothing out here for us right now. Oh, there it is. 
It feels like I've been away for so long. It's literally just been like a, a whole day. Oh, but it is so good to be back. Uh, I'm never going to chase down one of those random maps ever again. It was very, very useless and led me on a wild, well, chicken chase. All right, so uh, we don't really have a place to farm out the sugar cane just yet. I could place it down on dirt. It bothers me down to my core placing it on dirt, but I guess I will. Uh, throw the villager beds in here for now because we do have quite a few of them. I guess I'll place down one of these globes. I don't really know what they do. I'll just throw it down here. Can I, sp I can spin it. Wow. This is what I can do with it. I can spin the globe. All right, let's go check up on the villagers then to end things off today. Uh, and I kind of just want to chill out for the rest of the day. You still haven't given me another villager. Here's some more food. And after checking up on the villagers, I spent the rest of the night chopping down trees and stacking up on wood. As well as adding some more details to the rafts, such as the trap doors and fences. And then I went around making all of the outside pillars one block taller, so that that way they're actually high enough to add a roof onto. Okay, so I think today's goal is going to be to try and get some more dirt to actually expand out our farm right here and maybe even give it its own little like segment over here just solely down to the fact of i may need a lot of sugarcane for like paper trades or whatever and also the crops i wanted a load of villagers so we're gonna need a load of like other crops as well so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take a quick look down the mine don't come after me sharky thank you very much and see if there's any dirt down here at all i think that might literally be dirt right there yeah it is oh Wow, I never really paid attention to this before. All right, so we'll grab all of this up. Hopefully there's a uh, nice amount here. I'm hoping for a few stacks. Probably not gonna be that much in this little chunk of it, but hoping for at least a stack from this. And, ooh, okay, just under two stacks. That's really not bad from here. That's really good, actually. And I guess we'll just go search for some more because I do want to make a uh, slightly bigger farm than that's going to give me. Also, I'm just thinking about it now. I really would like to get a friend in this 100 days, you know, like a pet dog or something. It's probably not going to happen. Ow, why? I'm speaking. Why? Yeah, it's probably not going to happen, but I would like it to. Okay, all right, let's check over. Okay, there's some dirt right there, but it's underwater. I don't really fancy, you know, grabbing that. Ooh, there's some dirt up there. Ah! Uh, Oh, dude, why do I not have my bow on me, man? Can I can I fish this guy? Hello? Come here. Uh-oh. Uh oh oh He fished himself. It's fine. Okay, so build a little platform right here so that we don't get bonked off. And grab the rest of this dirt. Okay, okay, not bad at all. That was uh, that was pretty good. Around about the same amount we got from the other place. Oh wow, I actually I was expecting it to be nighttime, but it's oh it's becoming night. Oh my days. Hello. Oh my days. Look at him. So I'm thinking we'll go for a circular farm, um, and we can separate it into four sections so we can have like, well, we don't really have any of these seeds except maybe melon, but we could have it as in like carrots, potatoes, sugarcane on one part, and then like wheat seeds if we eventually get some on the other. So I'll just stack up on the materials that we're going to need now, and then in the morning we shall get to work on the farm. Oh, wow, would you look at this? We've got, like, a little family of villagers coming along now. We've got our librarian, who I do need to actually farm out to get... I don't know whether I want to go for mending first. It probably would make sense, right? I don't know. We'll figure it out. But, um... Yeah, I do kind of want to get an armorer as well, because I think it's going to be just easier for me to deck myself out with pre made armor from one of those guys than it would be to go and mine up the diamonds myself anyways enough about those they've got enough beds to uh, breed some more let's actually get to work on building out this farm now i don't know if i'm gonna have enough space with the tree farm right next to it so we may need to change uh, what is going off over there hello yeah so we might need to change where the tree farm's located or at least slim it down a little bit but i'm not gonna change it until i 100 percent know that i'm gonna have to I guess what I can do is I could make... Oh, this is actually a pretty good idea. I could make two tree farms, slightly smaller than this, right? And I could have it symmetrical on both sides, and that'd look really good, right? I think that'd look good. It'd be less, I guess, overall efficient. And that's, to be fair, that's really all I care about is it looking good. It can be super inefficient, but as long as it looks good, I like it. All right, there we go. That's That should be big enough for a farm, surely. Yeah, that's more than big enough. That's that's fine. That's fine. All right. So I don't think I have enough dirt to accommodate this amount of land, but we're going to really quickly find out. Okay. All right. I like this to some degree. It's a little bit weird. Don't get me wrong. It's a little bit weird, but then I'm going to... Oh, I want to get some oak slabs probably. Okay. They do look pretty good, but they, do they look better? I'm gonna go with the jungle ones. Yeah, the jungle ones look a little bit better than the oak ones. Okay, that's looking pretty decent now. Although I may need to change the dirt to sand instead and just put like some stone bricks underneath just so that number one, we save on dirt and number two, I always think that sugarcane looks better on sand. Okay, so after spending like 
almost the entire night deliberating on how I want this to look and how I want it to be laid out. I think I finally found a pattern that works for the farms itself. So we've got the little layers coming at the back here and then the layers at the front here. I think it looks good. It works and then it's going to all look symmetrical when it comes down to this stuff right here anyway. Yeah, that looks significantly worse than I was expecting. That looks really bad. Um, We'll leave it like that for now and change it a little bit later, okay? That's future Popper's problem right there. That is uh, not a problem current Popper's wants to deal with. It looks so bad. Oh, my God. Okay, so I'll copy this pattern around all the other sides, making it look nice and neat. And then I'll go around and add all the seeds as well. So I spent the rest of the night improving and trying to finish off as much of the farm as possible. Also, I know the sugarcane area looks, uh, well, really bad right now. But don't worry, I, I do fix it. It just it stays bad for a little while. Okay, so starting the day off bright and early. The uh, actual farm itself is done for the most part. I do need to move the sugar cane, but other than that, it's uh, pretty much done. I do need to plant some more things, but yeah, it's good for now. So now it comes down to the tree farms, which hopefully shouldn't take as long. Uh, I don't really know how I want them to look. I don't really know what design I'm going for. It is probably just going to be a rectangular slab, but hopefully it's a slightly better looking one. I really don't know how I'm going to do this. Okay, and there goes all the trees. Uh, you know what? I do love that this mod replants the saplings as well, but right now I uh, don't really want the replanting, believe it or not. This little bit here is taking its time, but for now, what we want to do is I kind of want to bring it out to three, four, maybe? Maybe five? Five's okay. Leaves a little bit of a gap between. Yeah, I guess I guess we can work with five. Now, I'm thinking I might put some, like, little fancy walls up around the tree farm itself. Um, kind of like how we have going on the bridges there. Not exactly the same as the ones on the bridges, but, but close enough. So, we want to put one of those here. Um, probably, like, here as well, I guess. And then we'll leave two between each. Would that work fine? No, okay, maybe three. Okay, four between each works brilliantly. And then we'll do three there so that we can leave a little path. All right, and there we go. That looks a little bit better. Now, I don't exactly know how I'm going to grow the trees on here. Still don't know where I'm wanting to put the sugar cane just yet. I think I might do a little barrier around the whole thing and then start filling it all up with sugar cane. I think that'd look pretty good, actually. It'd be really good if there was, like, above water sand. Like, just like a tiny little island would be so useful because I'm sick of going underwater and having to mine it up. It's, it's so annoying. Okay, all right, now they're all looking pretty good, and then we'll just throw one down in the middle of every one of these. Lovely, lovely, lovely. There we go. That's looking pretty good. That's looking really nice. Throw these down, and then I want to go around with the oak fences, um, but the upgraded ones, so I don't know. Oh, they need um, stripped oak logs, don't they? So let me just go and get a bunch of those real quick. Then want to place these down here. I don't know whether or not I want to double them up. That does look pretty good. But I don't know whether or not I want to do that around the whole thing. Because it will make it feel a little bit more enclosed. There we go. All right. Yeah, okay. This is, this is nice. This is nice. I need to do the exact same over that side of it. But I think this will look good. Especially from like an aerial point of view. This is going to look pretty nice. All right. For tonight, I'll go and I'll place the last bit of glass in the center of the farm. So I didn't manage to get that finished off. And then I guess tomorrow we'll focus on getting some sugar cane around the sides of it just to see how that comes out. Hey, look at this. We've got an iron golem just chilling over here. Look at him. Hello, buddy. It's an iron farm. Okay, so let's get to placing an entire layer of these around here. Hopefully not getting attacked by a shark while I do so. Okay, so I don't know whether or not I want to bring it all the way around to like around the little circle farm we have here but i'll bring it to at least the beginning of the farm just so that way it covers the whole area and well then if i want to expand it around the farm i can okay so i'm thinking right now okay we have four books in there we have some paper in here um i think we have some more books somewhere yeah 59 in there did i not make the bookshelves am i completely imagining this Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll make a whole bunch of bookshelves. However many we can actually make. Just 21. Oh, okay, no, we don't. Okay, yeah, we really don't need to worry about it then. We, we've got enough here. Okay, and with those out of the way, let me just throw down the enchantment table temporarily because I want to throw like an efficiency enchant on my shovel before I go and get some sand. Uh, I'll just throw it down just right here for now. It's fine. Okay, level 30. Beautiful. Right, let's make a diamond shovel and then we shall go and absolutely decimate some of this ocean floor. Okay, boom, boom, please give me... Oh, efficiency four on breaking three. Beautiful. What a beautiful enchant right there. Mm-mm-mm. 
Okay, I clear up my inventory and then it's time for ocean decimation. Oh, that is so much better. Oh my days, yes. Oh my god, there's a lot of iron under here too. Oh, this just makes life so much easier. Finally, gone are the days spending like three minutes under the water mining up like a 20 sand. Okay, that should be enough sand for now. It's not like coming back and getting more is really going to be a problem ever again. But that should be, you know, at least enough to fill out this little area here. Hey, who knows? Maybe I'll even have a little bit left over to uh, make some more glass. Okay, now just throw you down. Oh, wow. I don't even think I needed a stack to do this. Right now, I want to go and harvest all the sugar cane. And now I just want to go over and throw it all down. There we go. Looking good. Now, it's not really going to look like too much until it all grows fully. But that's, that's not bad. That's not bad. I didn't have enough to finish it all off. I'm like seven or eight blocks off okay so with the sugar cane out of the way now i can go and replant all these oak saplings as well as go and place down like a load of lanterns around the sides but i don't actually have any lanterns on me oh i didn't even know these can hang i didn't know about this wow okay that looks good i guess i'll throw some hanging lanterns right there then look at that Ooh. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm probably going to keep all the lanterns like that they do look all right but i do want to use some fairy lights i just don't have the materials for them yet Oh, wow, well, look at that, a little rainbow. Oh, that's nice. It was uh, apparently raining. It just looks wet. There's still no rain in this world. It's kind of weird. I also didn't know that rainbows were a thing with the shader pack, so yeah, that's nice. Nice little surprise. So, because we've spent a few days now doing some building, I think I want to go out and conquer some more stuff. Now, what I mean by this is I want to enchant a bow, and then I want to go and absolutely decimate everything in my path. For now, what I want to do is I want to take... Uh, should I just make a... No, I'll take this set of iron armor because I'm not really too fussed about it breaking. We're going to throw some enchants on our armor currently. Okay, just to get a little bit more protected and feel a little bit more safe. Oh, that is beautiful. Look at that. Unbreaking flame and power four. Oh, and then once we've got some things protecting us, then we'll head out and start decimating some creatures. Smite four. That's... Ooh, that's a pretty yucky enchantment right there. That's, ooh, that's not great. Okay, there we go. I'm feeling much better now. I don't care about this armor because we're going to be buying some stuff from the villagers anyway. So instead, this way, I'm going to go diagonally kind of this way uh, and see see what we can find. I know that there's some big ships over there. Ooh, I didn't make a new shield. Uh, I'll go back and do that real quick. Lovely. Okay, there we go. Okay, so apparently coming over this way was a terrible idea because there is absolutely nothing around here, like at all, anywhere. So I'm going to go off to the left a little bit more and hopefully stumble across one of the previously found ships. Oh, there's something there. Wait, is that where I got the villagers from? Oh, okay. Well, then I know that there's a ship near here then. Oh, I see something back there. Watch it be like a friendly villager ship. Probably something I've already... Oh, no. There we go. We've got some boyos on there. All right, let's go. Oh, and there's a big one back there, too. Okay, I'm taking them all on this time. They're all going down. I'm telling you, that big one does is not worth what you get for it. I'm telling you. Okay, let's go take on whatever's on here. Get away. Get away. Why is there always spiders in here, man? I'll take my arrow back. Thank you very much. Any more critters on this boat? Protection 3. I'll take it. Hello. How much damage do you do? Okay, you really do not do much. Some more emeralds and some gold. Wow. Okay, pretty lackluster loot on this. All right, let's go take on the bigger bigger ship. Okay, I'm just worried about how many pillagers are actually going to be on here because there's like a lot that go in here. Oh, yeah, because there's literal spawners. Yeah, I forget. There's actual spawners for them in there. Any blowy uppies on this side? Yeah, there's one right there. Boom. And one right there. Boom. Okay, am I going to regret this decision? I could quite quickly regret this decision. Oh, there's a lot of them coming. I think I have sweeping edge on my sword, though. So, so long as I... Oh! Okay, okay, go, 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 go. We need to leave. Oh, God. There's so many there. Oh, there were so many. Okay, all right. Uh, let's, I guess, just carefully work our way into the ship. Get rid of that spawner. There we go. There we go. Just all of you come to the back of the ship. All right, I'll deal with you well. Oh, they're coming around the side. Oh, I'm getting attacked by sea things as well. What is this? Go away. All right, let me teach you lot not to mess with me, you know? There we go. Oh, my God. The things in the ocean are being things in the ocean and being creepy, man. Leave me alone. Okay, bunch of stuff in here. Was that? Is that a spawn? That's a spawn egg. A wolf. <gasps> yes. Oh, my God, we can get a friend. Uh-oh. Hi. The main problem I have with this place isn't necessarily just the, the pillagers in here. It's all the mobs that spawn too. There's a load of... Look, I'm getting bombarded by arrows. 
I forget that I've got smite on this, so all these guys are just going to get deleted pretty easily, but... Damn, why are you strafing like that, buddy? You learn those moves. Okay, progress is being made, just slowly. Oh, God, it's an all-out brawl over here. <gasps> There's so much stuff over there. Oh, my God, it's all going off over there. What? Oh, they're coming up. They're coming up. Oh, God. Oh, here they come. <laughs> it's just an endless cycle of running and hiding, man. <laughs> Okay, I'm securing myself an entrance and exit right here, okay? Only I can use fence gates, I'm pretty sure. So, <laughs> none of these guys should be able to get through. Oh, it's all going off. <gasps> oh, my days. It's all going off over there. You know what? I think maybe blowing areas of it up was a bad idea. I have no clue how I'm supposed to deal with things coming from, like, literally everywhere at this point. How is there still so much stuff? I've been killing it for five minutes. Yeah, they're, they're spawning at the top deck, so it's it's kind of hard to deal with the things down here when they just keep dropping down. What if I just mine my way down to the lower level and deal with them from there? Okay, I think the sun's rising. I think we've been here, like, a whole day almost. There's so much stuff down here, man. Can make a quick run. Just quick run. Quick run. Quick run. All the way down here. Light it all up. Light it all up. Right. Okay. They're fighting. They're fighting. There we go. Woo. Okay. Spawner and stuff is dealt with on this floor. Huh. Okay. A diamond. Wow. Oh my. What am I going to do without that diamond? Huh. <sighs> okay. I think. I think we've finally, finally gotten through this ship. <laughs> it took us like an entire day. I think the only thing I got from it that I really care about is... Oh, hello, buddy. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Was the uh, wolf egg. Like, nothing else on here was that good at all. I guess I'll grab some of this wheat because, I mean, use for the villagers to breed them. Why not? It doesn't seem like there's any hidden loot on this floor, at least. But we'll check top deck, and if there's nothing up there, then I guess we'll head out. Okay, what we got up here? A compass. Lovely. Some bread. I don't care. Uh, okay, I, I don't care. Is this just leading downstairs? Oh, wait, I didn't see this. Some barrels, some more wheat seeds, and a bunch of buckets. Okay. Okay, I'll grab the remaining stuff on here, then mainly the TNT. I can make a bomb? I can make a bomb. <gasps> I can make a bomb and just some other mediocre stuff. Okay, nothing too insane from this, but definitely got some nice stuff, I'll say. Okay, so my boat is not this side. I think it's over here. Yeah, it's right. Do you mind? Good sire, get out of my vessel. Thank you. Kind of just left the uh, the other guys out here to drown. How did he get all the way out there? What? what? Hello? What? <laughs> Why are you going away from the ship? Go back to the ship. I'm done now. There's still a couple of your friends over there, I'm pretty sure. Now, was that entire ship worth me going and decking myself out with enchanted armor? No. No. Did we have fun? Yes. Was the loot that great? No. However, I did get a dog, so that does mean that I did complete the goal of wanting and getting a friend in this. As well as some wheat seeds now that we can use to get some wheat on the farm. Yeah. Put these down here. What? <gasps> they work for grass! They work for grass. Oh, my days. I'm going to grow so many of you. We can have grass. Oh, I love that mud. So what I'm going to do for tonight is I'm going to make a whole bunch of bread. Um, also, have some food. I'm going to separate it into 16s, and then you can get one. Uh, you can get... Oh, my God. They did the laying down movement thing. It terrifies me every time. Okay, so coming off the back of yesterday, I think that I'm going to take a chill little day right here. I want to get some grass growing now that I know that the wheat seeds can do it. So I'm going to make a whole bunch of this. I'm going to grow a whole bunch of wheat and yoink the seeds real quick. Just because I want to get some dyes and then I want to make some lights. Because I'm really curious how the fairy lights are going to look. I installed the mod specifically because I had the idea of wanting a longer base. Um, and I want to run them down the like inner walls in there i think they'll look really good you'll see what i mean once i actually get around to doing it but i think it'll look really nice and make give it a real nice cozy feel in the evenings you know so i'm gonna make a whole bunch of grass on here i don't want the actual grass go away uh and then i guess we'll try and get some flowers i don't want red i want yellow um it would be nice okay so we'll break a yellow one down break a red one down get us some orange dye there we go glass pane three iron ingots, and some orange. Oh, wait, no, is it like that? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so how do these work then? Wait, oh, wait, do I need them on the rope? Do I, do I have to do I make the wrong ones? Oh, okay, they just work like that. Can I put these on there? <gasps> oh, 
That's how it works. Oh my days. Okay, that, that, that looks pretty good actually. Now I'm gonna save us both some time here. I uh, actually ended up spending the rest of the day just messing around with the fairy lights and not really saying much because I got really confused by them. So uh, yeah, great content right here, poppers. Let's move on. Oh my God, there's three, four kids. Sheesh. All right, there's some stuff going off over here, I'll tell you. Okay, all right. Uh, we do want to focus on the villager trading at some point soon, but we still are early days. I'm surprised we've made this much progress so far. It's not even day 40. It's going good. Okay, I think I might spend some of the night then throwing down some roof. Um, I don't really have too much jungle wood left over other than the whole bunch I just took over to the villagers. But I think I'll spend the night working on the roof a little bit, just adding a little bit to it, just so then I can test out the lights on it as well. And also, you know, we get a little bit more progress of the build and it's night, so I don't really do much else anyway. Ooh, they do oak blinds. Uh, ooh, ooh, okay, I'll try that, I'll try that. Uh, gimme, gimme. We'll make, oh, I made 20 of, damn, they're expensive. Oh, god, they're expensive. Right, what if I did them, okay, there looks, yeah, like that's good, like that's pretty good, actually. And then we'll have the stairs come in like that. That's nice, that's nice. Let's have a look at it from the outside. Oh, that is beautiful, yeah, that's, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. I don't know whether or not I'm gonna keep these fairy lights, though. Uh, looking at them now, I'm not a big fan. Uh, that's slightly better. I, I really don't know. I really don't know. I think I might get rid of the fairy lights altogether and just go with lanterns. All right, enough rambling about the house for tonight. I'll just, I'll deal with some stuff and then I'll see you in the morning. Okay, so I built up the roof a little bit more during the night and I really like how it's coming out. It looks really good. It's very uh, beach house themed, I feel. Anyways, today I wanted to go and maybe do some stuff with the villagers because I mean, th there's getting a lot of them now and yeah, there's not really too much space for them. So what I want to do is I want to go and grab some more flints to get maybe one or two more fletchers and then make the librarians actually trade me like bucks I want or just say screw it and change them into armorers instead, which I I think I need a blast furnace for. Yeah, actually, the armorers are probably a better shout. So let me just throw some stone in a furnace right now. Um, I think it's, is it? I'm pretty sure it's blast furnaces that you need for armorers. Or is it smithing tables? It might be smithing tables. Hello, my good friends. Uh, I have this. It's his gift. Take it. Toolsmith. Okay, no, the toolsmith's the, okay, no, that's fine. So I'll trade what stuff I have right here. Get some sticks. We also have a emerald for arrows trade, which is amazing. Damn, we're stacking up on emeralds today. Oh my. Okay, so now I think I might take whatever remaining jungle wood and stuff we have uh, and build out the jungle tree platform just because then we can actually farm out them trade so much quicker. Okay, we're going to use the slabs for stairs just at this second because I'm too lazy to go and get more stairs. Um, and then we'll just build it out like that one, I guess. Okay, so here's how things are looking on the jungle tree farming front. Um, I messed up the platform a couple of times, but overall we're going to end up with eight trees on here, which is more than we had over there. Now, I don't have enough dirt to finish things off right now, but this will do. This, they're going to grow. It's going to be more trees than we had before, so we're just going to let them do their thing. I want to go around and fill in as much of this glass as I can right here. Ooh, actually, do I have... Oh, I don't have any diamonds, do I? I only have iron. Mm. All right, so I'll make a new iron axe, and then what I'll do is I'll throw a couple enchants on it real quick. If I can just get some lapis, there we go. Uh, I'm not really hoping for it to last forever. I just, oh, why would I do that? It does nothing. Fortune 2 does nothing. That was a bad one. That was a bad one. Uh, I don't really want to waste any more stuff on it. Okay, well, as I was saying, I'm going to use this stack of bone meal, and I'm going to grow a whole bunch of jungle trees real quick. Oh, I just said that in one group. All right, let's go and make some more bank. Hello, fellows. How's it going? This area is getting really cramped for you guys. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, I need to go and get the uh, stone from the furnace as well to make the armor. These are going to be the best work ethic villagers I think I've ever seen. Come here, buddy. I guess there's not really much else to do when you're out in the middle of the ocean. Okay, so we've got 63. Oh, my days. Okay, so two and a half stacks. Oh, and you did restock. Okay, lovely. Boom. Okay, now we're probably going to need a couple of these, but for now, I just want to get one of the villagers all the way leveled up to give me some diamond gear. Yucky, 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 paying these prices for iron. I can smelt the armor down into, like, uh, nuggets, I think you get from them. I don't know really know if it's worth it. You know, this many emeralds for so 35 emeralds for a bell! Man is insane. This man is actually insane. He's lost it. Okay, okay, nice. You give me a bunch of shields, I'll take them. All right, there we go. Protection two, I'll take you. Um, should we get prop four on them? Maybe? We'd have to buy a couple. We'll, we'll come back and, and, and do it. How dare you charge 43? Are you insane? Okay, 
Um, I guess I'll spend the night down in the mines. Let me just throw some enchants on this pick real quick. See if we can get, uh, like, efficiency or something. And then I guess we'll go and head down the mines and, I don't know, see what we can get. Literally just got efficiency four. Okay, that's kind of sucky. So I made my way back down the mines and spent the night mining up as much iron as possible in hopes of getting enough to make an anvil. Now, whilst I was down here, I did almost suffer an early demise due to creepers dropping down and just detonating on me, but, uh, we made it through. Okay, and just back up by morning. Oh, God, there's something coming for me okay okay not a not a good morning not a good morning at all okay get me up here please what is that thing hello uh, anyway we have like almost two stacks of iron so that should keep us going for a little while i'm gonna go and throw them in this furnace over here because well it's just faster to cook it this way um i also picked up some gold as well whilst down there because i did remember that i do want to go to the nether and there's piggies to trade with in there if we want to so let me just clear out some stuff real quick and then we will check up on these fine fellows trades are they all refreshed oh my god the villages are literally doubling by the day there's so many we shouldn't need to trade for too much longer i don't think at least on the armor front Tools, I'm not really too fussed about. I mean, my sword is is doing good enough anyway because it's smite. Half the things I've run into are like undead anyway, so it, it's working quite well. Okay, I guess I'll chop down a couple more jungle trees and then we'll see where we stand with the villagers afterwards. Oh my days, why is it? Oh, it's a double. What the? I've never seen that before. All right, that should be enough again for now. We can easily, I think, max out all their trades for the day. Um, speaking of the day, I don't know where it's gone. I think I came up a little bit late from the mines. Okay, my good fellow, gimme, gimme, gimme. I need to buy one more pair of diamond pantaloons. There he is, okay, there we go. 64? He's scamming me, he's scamming me something chronic right now. That is bad, that is bad. 64 for one emerald. Oh my days, you are not gonna be in business soon, my good fellow, I'm gonna run you out of town. And by that, I mean you'll be in the water with that weird eel thing that tried attacking me this morning. Okay, so if I grab the iron from in there, and then get out my way, please, thank you, uh, and then the iron from in there. Now, that should give us enough to make an anvil, and then with said anvil, we shall craft up some protection for diamond leggings. There you go, and then boom, boom. Protection four, there we go. Bankrupt me slightly, but it's it's all good. There we go. Now, I spent the night chopping down more trees and stacking up on a whole bunch more wood, as well as witnessing a shark fight. You know what? I kind of felt bad for the guy, okay? He was down there just one minute minding his own business, and then the next minute he's getting chomped. It kind of sucks. All right, so last night I focused my efforts on the tree farm, and well, we got a little bit of jungle wood in here, and a little bit of jungle wood in here. We have, uh, like, I think it was like 12 iron axes worth of big jungle trees, so yeah, I don't think we're gonna run out too soon, although I do tear through it pretty quickly. So I guess what I want to do today then is take this... I do want to go and finish off doing some trades, but I'll probably do that passively throughout the day. Why are you still sleeping? It's the sun is up. Wake up. Also, how are you guys still breeding? I've not fed you in like a week. Oh, they're becoming self-sufficient. <laughs> Anyways, what I want to do is I want to go and finish off the roof. I want to go the roof that side and the roof this side, as well as trade with the villagers passively throughout the day because I want to get the emeralds and I want to finish off the roof because it looks kind of weird just having one side partly finished. So yeah, that's exactly what I did. I spent the main part of the day working on building up and finishing off the first parts of the roof. However, I did take a couple minutes to stop off and do some trading with the villagers to make even more bank. But then it was straight back to building all the way into the night until I finally finished off placing all the stairs. And oh boy, was this a absolutely tedious job. I absolutely despise building with stairs. It is so annoying, but they were finally done. And with that awful tedious bit done and out of the way, I focused my efforts for the rest of the night on working on the interior and making things a little bit better in there, such as the roof transition being a bit smoother, and finally going around and adding a whole bunch of blinds along the sides of them just as the sun was coming up. Whew, all right, and uh, it's daybreak again. The roofs are semi-done, not completely, but they're looking... Well, more like an actual roof. I kind of want to go into the nether. I don't really know why, but it's kind of like an option we've had for a little while now and I've not used it. So I don't really know where I want to make the portal. I don't even know if I'm going to make a little portal area because I don't really know what there is for me in the nether. Maybe like, like I say, piglin trades, but that's probably about it. Okay, I think for now, I guess I'll just throw it over here at the back. I mean, this area is not staying anyway, so it can act as a temporary spot if I really don't want to keep it. There we go. And boom, in we go. Oh, actually, wait. Oh, no, I've got my gold on. Okay, right, we're good. Ooh, I guess there is quartz in here, but there's nothing I really want to build out of it. Is there any way out of this place? Okay, there it is. Lovely, lovely. Oh, oh, there's a flying thing, and it's coming for me, and I don't want that to happen. Oh, no. 
This area is completely barren. Okay, there's like no one around here. Oh, actually, I do want glowstone to use on the roof of my house. So that is a block that I want from here. Wow, there is really like no guys anywhere. There's, there's, there's nothing in here. I guess... If I wanted to get glowstone, is it? It's more efficient to get it with silk touch, right? So if I just, if I head back home and try and get some silk touch and then come back here because it, it doesn't look like there's any, oh God, I hate those things. Look at it. It's so creepy. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that then. I'll head home. I'll get silk touch on a pick and then we'll come back and I guess grab some glowstone. That's literally the only thing I can think of wanting other than maybe blaze powder for potions, but like I'm not really too fussed about getting potions. Okay. Right. So I don't have enough diamonds to make another diamond pickaxe. So, uh, I probably have to make a tool smith then. I guess I'll do that then. I guess I'll trade for a diamond pickaxe. Hopefully it already has silk touch on it but if not that's fine and then we'll see where we go from there yay even more trading let's go we love trading he oh he's offering him a rose that's nice that's nice of you can i take that i don't want no don't give him that i want that oh it doesn't even have a pickaxe <laughs> doesn't even have one are you kidding me i'll, I'll take the diamond axe though the, actually yeah uh, the diamond axe is like really good like I, I could go and just get the glowstone dust but i feel like that's super just inefficient Okay, well, I guess I'll make an iron pickaxe and then try and enchant that then with uh, silk touch. Ooh, fortune three. I'll keep that for if I get any diamonds. Fortune three again? And you can, it's literally the exact same enchant, just in a different order. Okay, I guess with all this turn of events, then we'll just grab what materials we can and head in to hopefully get as much as we can from dust. Okay, back in we go. So I spent the entirety of day 46 just here in the nether, hunting down and digging up as much glowstone as I could get my hands on. However, due to the flying, face-hugging buzzy boys, I uh, refused to go in or anywhere near a crimson biome. So getting the glowstone was made slightly slower, especially because my nether just seems to have a whole bunch of the crimson biomes for some reason. This was also one of my worst nether experiences because there was just like a whole bunch more mobs that I didn't know were in this that just kept attacking me, but nothing was too terrible. They were just more so annoying, but it wasn't fun. But anyways, due to all those reasons, I ended up spending the entirety of day 46 in here too, until I finally managed to gather enough glowstone and return back home. Okay, the nether, not a fun place at all. Not doing that again, I do not want to step one more foot into that absolutely atrocious place right there. It was not fun, it was not fun. We do have an absolute ton of glowstone and a little bit of dust left over, but I'll keep that for now. So what we're going to do with this is I'm thinking about lining the roof with it, hence why I needed so much, because I want it to go all the way across the roof. Um, not not completely, in like a little pattern kind of design thing, I think. Um, I also want some leaves up here as well to add a little bit of greenery up there. That'd be quite nice. So as for now, we've got the villagers trading stuff over there. I still don't actually have a house. I literally just have the floating slab. Okay, I think what I want to do is I want to go grab some sand from the ocean floor again, because we... Uh, are pretty much out of that and then we can smelt it down into glass finally finish off the glass floors and then do pretty much anything else i've just thought we haven't been over to the mob farm in a good while i i won't have got any mobs in it but we just haven't been there for a while i don't really think i have too much of a use for it now get out of the way why are you all gathered here Oh, there we go. All right, lovely. Lantern trade. Exactly what I wanted. Also, I'm pretty sure that the lantern trades deck you out with, like, uh, XP as well. Let me grab some of this glass, and then we'll go and finish off these. Now, I don't really think that there's too much left. I think all that glass in the, the furnaces will do it. And then we can finally stop worrying about just falling through the floor and down to our shark-chomped demise. Wait, hang on a minute. I'm smelting down all this glass and stuff, right? Where there's some emeralds over here, right? So, I'm smelting down all of this glass when I could literally just go over here to this guy right here this librarian and i guarantee he'll trade me glass wait a second where are you buddy where are you my good friend oh my date it's right there it's right there i'm sorry <gasps> oh he's got a good mending trade too holy i did not even see that okay well just give me your glass then there we go i have no use to smelt down all that sand oh no go rescue it i can use it for the sugarcane floor go Ooh, it looks so good being over this coral reef right here. That looks really nice. I like that. I really like that. However, for tonight, I am going to go and make some more shears and chop down a whole bunch of leaves from those jungle trees over there because I want to test out a pattern for the roof. Damn, okay, look at this. This is looking, this is looking real nice right here. So I'm not too sure what I want to do around these sides. I think I may just bring it around like this. Now, I'm really not sure what I want to do with these parts because this is kind of strange. I think I may just call it a day and just cover it in glass. Like, that might be okay for the underneath, at least. 
yeah, that works fine for the underneath. That's 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 completely fine. Now, one of the other problems that I have a struggle I'm struggling with at the minute is oh well, no, I've just fixed it. Okay, I just want to run this all the way down so that it nullifies the light a little bit, but doesn't completely take it out of the equation. I don't know. I'm liking how it's coming out. I'm going to trust the process. Hopefully, it looks really good. It, it, it doesn't look bad so far. It's just there's just a couple of things with these rooms that I'm not too sure of how I'm going to do. Like, I do really like how this bit looks. This bit flows really well. I like it. Um, but it's just here that's kind of janky. I'm thinking maybe we do just go and be like, what's up? Let me just put an entire trim around the side. Yeah, that looks good. That's good enough for me. Honestly, that is good enough for me. Now, lighting wise, I don't really think that there needs to be much more lighting in here. I think I can get rid of the torches on the floor and things shouldn't spawn in. Correct? Now, there's just something so therapeutic about building this time. I don't know what it is, but it's super just chill out here. You know, middle of the ocean, nothing to worry about, not a care in the world. Well, except the sharks, but, you know, I don't really see them frequently. So I'm going to go around and place the rest of these stairs. I'll not bore you with any more stair placing today. So um, if I do anything else interesting, I'll let you know. But otherwise, I'm just placing stairs. Okay, so last night I actually ended up doing the full roof instead of just the stairs, but I didn't think it was interesting enough to fully document. So yeah, I just went around adding the leaves and the glowstone, as well as moving these out just one block, so it looks a lot better than just having a square in the middle. I think this looks so, so, so much better. Now, we are still severely lacking in the wooden trapdoors, if you can't tell. The oak trapdoors are just non-existent right now. So I'm just going to chop down a whole bunch of these trees, see how many we can get from them, and then hopefully finish all those off. Yeah, that should hopefully be enough, I think, to finish it all off. Remember, I've got to do the inside and outside as well. Yeah, okay, we're really not going to get all these placed down with this batch of them because I have to put like nine around each one of these and, uh, well, there's only this one that's done prior. So, yeah, no, not getting them all done. However, we are making some pretty good progress. Whoo, look at this. This is feeling real cozy now. Look at that. I guess for the rest of the day, I'll go around and build up as much of the other tree farm as I can. I really don't have enough fences and I sure as hell don't have the wood. But hey, you know what? I'll do what I can. Yeah, okay, that's about all I can do today for this tree farm. Uh, there's another giant octopod right over there. Oh, well. Nope, there he goes. Okay, no, it disappears. Um, I think that what I'll do is I'll just finish off the farm. I'll, you know, I'll replant the crops, make sure everything's covered. Um, and I might do something with that area as well because it looks absolutely abysmal. I am so sorry. I am so sorry for having you look so bad for so long. I do deeply apologize. Okay, I'll add the lanterns at a later date, but for now, uh, you're just going to be uh, potatoes. Okay, so I'll just plant all this with potatoes, and then we'll call it a day. Okay, so last night I was thinking, and hear me out, okay, hear me out. The farm is currently a bigger circle than what the villagers have to live. And, well, there's a lot more villagers in there than there is probably farm things in there. Okay, so what I'm thinking is, we copy-paste the villagers over here into the middle, okay, build the exact same structure, but make it 25 blocks wide, I think it is over there. And then we build the strip, like, rectangular structures next to it i can use one for storage one for whatever the hell i want to and then it looks symmetrical it's visually pleasing and the villagers get like a like 10 blocks more space so what i'm gonna do today is i'm gonna start work on the outline of the circle itself all right let's get to building this bad boy up you stay away buddy you stay away Okay, and there we go. The outline's looking pretty good. Now, I uh, noticed that it connects directly to the villagers, so that works kind of in our favor um, because we can just kind of open it up and have them, you know, run out to their beds or whatever at night. Now, I do need to go around and add the design exactly as it is over there. Oh, no, I think I slightly messed it up. I think I built it one block too close in, and that's going to be noticeable. Oh dear, I did. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, no, it's fine. I'll just go and just expand it in one block. It, it, it's fine. Okay, and there we go. All right, that's much better. It actually works now and it actually looks good. So we have the... Oh, it's going to be kind of weird because I had this all lined up perfectly. I think it was two gaps between each one, was it? Uh, Somewhat. Okay, we'll try and do a similar pattern around here. I don't know how, exactly how well it's going to go, but we'll try and we'll try and make it work. 
Let me just go around and add a couple torches so nothing spawns on here during the night. But this is, I, I feel like they'll be much happier on here. I'll rebuild that and I'll make it slightly bigger. But I think they'll have a much better time over on this little island. I wasn't expecting to spend the entire day building this out, but I did mess it up. But either way, I'm going to fill this in and then I guess I'll see you guys in the morning and we'll do something with the villagers or something completely different. I don't know. Day 51 was spent finishing off the new villager island and basically copy pasting the trade hub I built for them on the smaller one over onto the new one as well as planning on making it bigger. However, I didn't actually end up having enough spruce wood, so I had to spend a little bit of time farming that out, then ended up taking this build over to day 52, when I finally finished off the new and improved trading hub. Well, I, I guess it's not really improved, it's just slightly bigger, but anyways. It was finally done, so I got to work on moving all the villagers over there. But oh my god, these guys just for some reason decided to fall into a vegetative state and were just not moving or complying with anything I tried to do with them. So I ended up doing things the hard way and spent the entire night ferrying them all round on boats to get them over to the new area. Oh my god, last night was not fun in any regards to the word. These guys, uh, well they're still broken, they're not moving. But there's something wrong with them. I don't know what happened since moving them to this island, but they just seem to not want to move anymore. Oh, well, I say that and now they're all moving. Okay, you know what, prove me wrong. Now I'm still not too sure what I want to do with the side ones. Um, I know that I can't keep them circular because it'll not look as good as that side. Or maybe it will, I don't know, I'll have a look. But I think one of the main objectives I want to focus on soon is building up a house because I have all of this but still don't have a house. I literally live on this crappy little platform all the way over at the back. It looks awful and uh, it's just not good enough. So there's quite a few things that we still need to do. However, before we start progressing some more, I just want to take a minute to say I really appreciate you guys um, and thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoy this new style of video um, and it really does mean the world to me that you guys have uh, stuck around and make what I do possible. Anyways, with that out of the way, I think maybe the first thing I want to focus on is the sugarcane today, just because we can get a whole bunch of it, and I think we have some sand somewhere. But this should hopefully be enough sugarcane to maybe go around, like, all of it, including the farm. Let's have a look. So... Yeah, like two and a half stacks almost, plus some in a chest. Yeah, that should be more than enough to go around, but we need the glass now. Uh, not glass, sorry, sand. Do I have any sand around here? I think the answer to this question is, oh, yes, I do have a little bit, not too much, but that'll do, I guess. And then I guess I'll take some jungle slabs and just go to town with filling up as much as I possibly can then. Oh, I also need to get a full set of, oh, well, I say a full set of armor. I'm literally just missing the helmet. That's, uh, yeah, okay, that's not going to take too long to do. Oh, I also never finished off the jungle tree farm. I just kind of left it like this. I have all the fences to put down. I've just not done it. All right, well, we might as well knock out two tasks today then, and I'll go around and finish off placing the rest of the fences around the jungle tree farm. If I can find them, 64, 39. That should be more than enough. All right, there we are, looking good. Um, I'm glad that that's all finished off now, but the only problem I still have with the tree farms is the lanterns. I don't know how I want them because if I place them on the side there, you see how they look, but if I place them on the floor, they're so much brighter. So I don't really know what way I want to do that, but I guess if that's my biggest concern right now is how bright a lantern is, then we're doing pretty well. Uh, just get rid of these spruce trees because they're taking up my jungle tree farm. Don't need you anymore, buddies, and the wood you give me is probably going to be enough to last me a lifetime anyway. No, don't replant. Go away. Bad trees. Okay, and then I guess what I'll do to finish off the day is go around and place the rest of the sand, or as much as I can. I've only got 49 around the jungle tree farm. Also, I forgot to say, if I sound slightly different, it's because I took like a week off in between recording up to day 50 and past this point, and I ended up like getting like a slight cold. So yeah, if I sound a little bit weird, that's that's why. Okay, last night was a pretty good success, but I think today, before we do anything, I want to go and trade for a new axe because this one has uh, definitely seen better days. So we'll buy the axe and then I think I want to go over to the mob farm because I don't think I have any bones and then we can eventually finally tame that dog that I got from the pirate ship ages ago. Thinking about it now, it probably wasn't actually that long ago, but either way, it needs, it needs taming, all right? I'm, I'm lonely out here. I mean, I have these guys, but well, they anger me more than they help me, to be fair. Okay, 21 bones, and then I'll throw you down here, my good fellow. And now be my friend. Oh, well, I literally needed one bone. That never happens. All right. Uh, I don't think I have a name tag. I can get one pretty easily. Okay, so now that we have our little friend who appears to not be following me. Okay, fair enough. 
I don't know what I want to do about storage because it's becoming a problem now, all right? It's all cluttered up and I don't really think that I want to build it on a circular island just solely down to the fact of it's a little bit annoying to organize storage in a circular form, you know what I mean? Well, you know what? We'll do what we can. We'll see how it comes out. We'll see how it comes out. Okay, one thing I am sure on, though, is the fact that I want to build it out of oak wood, probably, because we don't really have many things built out of oak, and I want it to have one pillar specifically in the middle. Um, and Oh, right, okay. Design has come to me. Okay, genius. There you go. You see, you, you start doing it, that's it. We want this pillar to support, like, a dome. Um, we can have like a little dome here in a circular formation, leaving a little gap just so you can walk around it. Um, and then this will work as our storage area. We'll put a little glass roof on here. We'll have like this wooden building with like support beams and stuff. Um, hopefully we can make that happen. I, <laughs> I actually don't know. Looking at that now, um, yeah, my idea kind of just fizzled away. But uh, we'll, we'll figure something out. We'll figure something out. Surely it won't be too tedious. Yeah, I'm just going to do some trial and error right now and uh, see if we can come up with anything that works in circular formation. I didn't actually realize how small this circle was. All right, well, today was supposed to be a good day, all right? A happy day because, you know, look at this. I've got a structure for the build, okay? It took me half the night to do it. And I also chopped down some oak wood as well so that we can actually start building it. So, yeah, it was supposed to be a good day, but uh, my dog died last night. And now you may be wondering... How? Did it fall in the water and get eaten by a shark? Did you accidentally hit it whilst chopping down the trees? I don't know, did Poseidon himself smite down my wolf? And, well, the answer to all those three is no. He got stuck in this stair right here, I don't understand how, and died. He suffocated in this step. I have no clue how it happened, I don't know why it happened, but it did, and he's dead now. So, uh, yeah, uh, we no longer have a companion, I don't think I'm gonna find another one of those eggs, but I will go hunting for one at some point. But anyways, he wasn't around long enough, okay, he wasn't around long enough to become, like, a, uh, a, a cared about guy, you know, alright? He was, he was only around, he was a little rookie, alright? He's a rookie on this raft, so we're just gonna let him be, uh, it sucks but I'm sure I can find another wolf. For now, it's time to get to work on building up this structure. Okay, I am liking this. It does look a little bit, like, strange right now. It doesn't look as good as it did when I did it on my one-block house, but I'm kind of liking it. I'm not too sure. What I want to do is I want to add, like, a little entrance right here uh, because I do want the roof to be domed, but I'm not too sure how I'm going to do that because, hmm... Okay, maybe I want the roof to be that high. Okay, we'll we'll start with the... Oh, wait, no, because that'll, that'll have to be the peak, won't it? So that's not high enough. Okay, uh, the roof, I think, is going to be the hardest part. I'm not going to lie to you. And then maybe, what if we run, like, a layer of stripped oak around? Would that look good, maybe? Okay, so now that we've got that outlined, um, I don't know really how to do the roof. I'm really not sure. I probably need to look at some... Kind of wooden glass dome designs because this is gonna be kind of strange i think i may need to like oh i don't know mm, i don't know about that man that looks kind of bad not gonna lie uh okay i guess it's another night of trying to figure out what i want to do with this then okay i think i've come up with a solution for all this and it's to tear it all down now you may be wondering why why you wanted a storage island why are you tearing it down well i'm gonna build my house over there and I thought to myself, wouldn't it be cool if I could also have my storage area be out of sight, out of mind? Uh, so I may build it under my house over the coral reefs there. So I don't know. I'll figure something out, but it's not going there. It's not going there like that. I'll tell you that. That it, There's nothing I can do to make that look good. The roof's weird. It looks all bulky. I don't even know how it looks from high up. Let me go check. Yeah, like that's not that good. That's really not. Oh, wait, hang on a minute. I say this and then I just come up with a rough idea, I think. I don't know how well this will look, but let me let me try it out anyway. Um, instead of putting a roof and doming it, why don't I just do support beams at the top and do trapdoors to make it look like a jungly place? Uh, not jungly place, beachy kind of place. You know what I mean? Like the rest of the build. I'm telling you, the amount of crafting tables I've unnecessarily crafted in this video is actually insane. Okay, so this is my plan, right? You ready? So we go all the way across with these, and then the areas that get left between, uh, we fill in with trapdoors. I don't know how this is going to look. This could just be another wasted day, but you know what? It's worth the waste if it looks good. If it doesn't look good, then, well, I'll cry, but you know, it should be fine. 
Okay, and another night later, and here we are. Now, it's not the best build I think I've ever done, but I think I managed to salvage it just enough for it to work nicely. Now, there's still a couple things that I'm not too sure of, such as the leaves in the roof and what I want to do with the leaves here, because I do want them kind of like standing on some oak logs or something, just so it looks, I don't know, a little bit more green in here, because there's a lot of uh, a lot of brown, all right? We want, we want a little bit more color in here. There's going to be a lot of brown. So I'm going to go chop down some more leaves off of a jungle tree, and then we'll see what I can do with them, and then we can actually start moving the storage over. Okay, so what I'm thinking of is them coming down here like this, and then we put some oak there. Uh, I really don't know how that looks, to be fair. That doesn't look too great. Um, Maybe we just do something in the middle instead? I really don't know. Uh, to be fair, that doesn't look too bad, actually. Let me just grab these two here, get rid of these. Throw them down there. Boom, 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 boom. And then they match up on the roof as well. That looks, uh, that looks okay. That can stay... I'm fine with that. Uh, just make a couple buttons, see if they look good just thrown on there like that. Yeah, that looks okay. That looks all right. There's not a problem with that. Okay, so now I guess it's time for everyone's favorite day. Okay, and if you're new around here and you don't know what everyone's favorite day is, it's storage day. All right, it's storage day. It's the day that's completely dedicated to moving all my crap to somewhere else. It's such an exciting day. Everyone loves it. Anyways... Enough blabbering on, let me make up a bunch of chests, and then it's time for the beloved day to commence. No, actually, no, it's not beloved, it's a sacred day, alright? Storage day is one of the best. I should, I could have really used barrels with this that had looked cool as well, but I like just the absolute overkill of amount of storage. There we go, look at that, that's... <laughs> Yes, look at that. Uh, maybe we can throw... Oh, we can incorporate the barrels into it, and we can throw them in the middle there on each side. Yeah. Oh, that's going to look awesome. Okay, yeah, great. And now it's officially time for storage day to commence. So I will see you all if anything interesting happens other than me storing things away, or I'm finished moving everything over. Alrighty, and here we are. Now, it did take me literally all night to store this stuff away, but we've got all the things organized neatly into chests of, well, I mean, it doesn't look really neat, but they're organized into, like, their own things, okay? And now we can finally, finally, after all this time, get rid of this awful, awful area at the back of the base. No, actually, no, we can't get rid of it yet because I need to build a home to put the rest of my stuff in because I don't want it laying around. Okay, but either way, today I think that I want to try and focus on getting another armorer to uh, level up and give me my helmet because it's the only piece of armor that I'm missing and I only have one diamond to my name, so I'm not going to craft it. Now, I am kind of low on emeralds again, like I'm pretty bankrupt, so we'll also get some of those today as well if they're not all spent on trading with this guy okay good fellows good friends hello 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 um anybody without a job come get a job yeah okay oh my god what a scam okay and now my good fellow level up Ooh, amazing deal there we go lovely lovely i really hope that this guy does actually give me a helmet and doesn't like screw me and give me like leggings and boots again okay what are you gonna give me buddy come on come on Go bubbly. There we go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Buy some of them up. And what are you going to give me next? Come on. Oh, 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 wait. It's only expert. Okay, that's fine. Better be a helmet, buddy. Better be a helmet. Yes. Oh, it's only protection one, but you know what? That's fine. Uh, right. Where's the other Fletcher? If you restocked, you'll do 12 emeralds. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And I'm now just realizing that the other guy wasn't fully leveled up, so we didn't need this trader because he would have probably done the other trades for me. He would have probably sold me a helmet. What about this guy? Yeah, he wasn't even fully leveled up either. And I already had another armor. Okay, that was a waste of a, a guy right there because these guys would have given me it. I don't know. I thought they were maxed out for some reason. All this time. Oh my god, I'm such an idiot. I am such an idiot. How do I even play this game? So I think what I might want to do is maybe build out a circle for the house um, and definitely get rid of this portal. Um, but I may... Oh, God, that scared me. Um, I may build out a circle for the house. I don't actually know how big I need the circle to be, though, so I, I don't know. But I'm definitely going to go and get rid of this island right now um, because it's an eyesore and I, I want it gone. All right, there we go. It's gone. It's gone. Look at that. Beautiful. All right. Um, I do still need to fix up this log. I accidentally stripped it, so I got rid of it, but I I've still not replaced it. Okay, so I feel like next what we'll do is we'll start work on a bee farm because uh, I could do the house, but I'm thinking because the dog died and everything, 
I'm kind of lonely still, and we have access to grass and flowers now, so we may as well. Plus, I still have, if I can find it, it should be in here, I still have the beehive, so that's another reason why I want it as well. Now, real quick, before we get on to day 59, um, during the night, I witnessed Mike absolutely go to town on this poor octopod right here, and just start chasing him down, slapping him over and over and over again. This guy really didn't stand a chance, and I kind of feel bad for him. So, uh, yeah, kind of eventful night. Now, as for the bee farm, I need to start things off by going out and building a 19 block wide circle. So let me just get that up and running real quick. Okay, there we go. Um, but now I have actually just noticed the fact that these aren't lined up with the villager farm, I think, at all. Because they, what, do they come out too far? Like what? I think it's just the fact that it's a bigger circle to be fair, but uh, either way I don't think it looks bad from the roof so we're gonna keep it. Um, now I do need to go and fill all of this in with dirt and uh, I don't think that we have anywhere near enough dirt to uh, actually do that. Let's have a look, shall we? 39. Wow. Uh, do we have any gravel? We have 10 gravel. Okay, well that can get us like a little bit more dirt. So yeah, we may have to run into the nether briefly um, if we can't find enough stuff underground, but hope we should be good. We should be good. There, there is a lot of like stuff that needs covering but we should be okay for the most part i feel all right so let's just head down to the mine if i remember where it is right over here hello flying fish thing you look like a flying fish i'm really hoping that we ran past like a massive just chunk of dirt down here and i don't have to be looking for ages or have to mine it underwater because that really suck but i've got a funny feeling that it's probably gonna take around like maybe I don't know, five or six stacks to fill it in? No, actually no, it's only 19 wide, so I'd say like three stacks. I feel like it'll take three stacks. Even that, it's three stacks more than what we actually have, so uh, yeah, let's hope we can find some. Oh, found some. Okay, got a grilly. Oh, hello, buddy. I don't have my shield. Sorry, one sec. There we go. Oh, thank you, bat. Your sacrifice is uh, remembered. That bat literally threw himself in front of me. Holy. Oh, hello. Stop, please. Stop, please. I don't have a bat to protect me this time, or at least I do, but you're not doing your job properly. Okay, how much dirt are we looking at here? Not that much at all. Okay. The dirt is a bit slow today, I'm not going to lie. It's uh, not going too great. There we go. That's more like it. I don't care if water comes in. So long as I can get my dirt, I am completely fine with it. Okay, is that all the dirt? Uh, just under three stacks. I feel like this might be enough, so I'll take it upstairs. We've, we've got some up there as well. Actually, wait, wait, wait. Before I go up, I'll grab the rest of that gravel that's over here. So then we can make some coarse dirt and just, you know double some of our dirt okay and now with that out of the way let's head back to the surface and see how much dirt we can end up with so after picking up all of my newly acquired dirt i spent the night placing it down and managed to finish off the floor with just under a stack and a half left okay so now with the floor out of the way i think i need to go and grab as many wheat seeds as i can get so probably just harvest the entire farm and then we'll go around and fill in as much grass as possible that way we just don't have to wait for it to tick and spread all the way around okay so a stack and a half of seeds should i think should probably cover the majority of it okay there we go i think that's that'll spread pretty quickly right okay and now i need to mirror the first island so i think it was like Oh, how was it? How was the first one over here? Ah, oh no, oh no. Oh, I messed up. I messed up again. Oh no, I did. Oh no, I built the circle one, two forward again. Look, the stairs are here and they're not in here. Oh God. Okay, no, you know what? It's actually an easy fix. It's fine. Um, I'll go and fix that real quick and then I'll do the outside. It really shouldn't take long. Okay, there we go. Now it's fixed. And now we can actually get on with building up the sides. Oh, God, I don't know why I keep building things wrong in this. It's really bothering me. All right, didn't have enough leaves, but that's fine. I can go and grab some more. Now, what I'm thinking is each one of these sides, so that side and this side, both have an adjoining kind of little area like this. So I think I might go throw down like one of the fancy gates on it. And I can go into the village or trading hub by like either side. I understand that this doesn't have a door over that side, but I can I can make that happen. I can make the a door appear there. Okay, so yeah, get rid of these two here and then just go boom boom. Oh no, I didn't mean to do that. Wait. Boom boom. No what hello? Can you connect properly please? Hello? Why won't they connect properly? Why is it busted like that? What's it doing? Oh, there we go. There we go. All right, look at that. Wow. Okay, that looks 
kind of weird. Uh, very weird, actually. <laughs> but it is what it is. It's fine. It's fine. So I think it has to be within, like, I think it's like five blocks of a flower or something strange like that. But, uh, yeah, we'll plant it down here and just keep going back and forth until we get one. Oh, this entire process is so much quicker due to this tree chopping mod I was about to say. There's our beehive. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, so I want one tree in the middle that's going to act as kind of like one of the main things. Oh, beautiful. I wanted it tall as well. Um, so now we get to throw down... I don't know if this is going to really work too well. But I can throw this down here. Oh, yeah, it's on top of the water. It's fine. And boom, there we go. They've got a little beehive. Now, I'll go and add a couple more flowers around this area if I can. And we'll add some more trees and stuff. But this is going to look really nice. Okay, I'll try and get another beehive then up in here. So let's just throw one down. Uh, let's see here. We are not having luck with a second beehive. Oh, my days. I would very much so love to have a second beehive. But it doesn't look like it's going to happen tonight. I have one more bow meal. And it did nothing. Okay. Good morning, my good servants. How is it going? So, what I want to purchase from you, my good fellows, is a new axe. All right, I need to repair my equipment. And look, I even brought you gifts. Look, I brought you chests. Wow, look at those. Oh my days, look at those. Okay, so I'm just going to pre-make all the sticks out of all this jungle wood right here, and then we'll get to trading with them. Oh, also, I see a load of people comment on, like, every single video I do where I trade with villagers. How do I trade so fast? Um, if you hold shift and then spam spacebar when you're on the trade, um, it just, like, automatically puts it in for you, and then you just have to click on the emeralds to get them. So, yeah, that's how you do it. You're welcome if you're asking that question. All right, it's literally the best thing in the game. It's so fast. Oh, my days. Look at that. You're going to eat up all my sticks. Look at that. Wow. I'm, like, out of trade sticks now, and we've got a stack of emeralds. How amazing is that? Um, I'm going to buy two of them because oh, that, that's actually stupid that was so stupid of me i was gonna say because i want to combine them but they're still gonna break the same amount like it, the upgrade from efficiency three to efficiency four i don't really think is worth it when we're chopping down trees at the rate we do either way i have it i've done it i don't care so what i also want to get today is i'm gonna let the bees kind of oh they're out they're out okay um is there two out or is there only one there's only one of you hello other bee I hear you in there. Come out. If there's only one out, I'm not going to do anything. But um, if I get another tree over there and we... Oh, there's two. Hello. Boom. Boom. Baby bee. Let's go. There it is. How's it going, buddy? Yeah. All right. Got some bees up in here. They're probably going to... Yep, there they go. Off they go. Probably going to get eaten by a shark or something or punched by the mantis shrimp. Oh, yeah. Watch out for Mike, guys. Watch out for Mike. He's not very friendly to pretty much anyone. I don't even know if he's friendly towards me still. Anyways, what I was saying is I want to get a bunch more glass because... Oh, you don't trade glass, do you? You're a stinky man. But yeah, I wanted to get glass because I feel like the floor in the storage room could look a lot better. So we just want to go around and take out, like, all of this. Okay, and boom, 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 boom. All right, look at that. <laughs> it's a little bit bright. Just a, just a little tiny smidge, a little bit bright. This might be a little bit overkill. I'm not going to lie. This might be just a little bit overboard right here. But it looks really cool. You know, we've got the ocean down there. That looks nice. I was debating doing that for these, but now that I see how bright it is with just that one, uh, yeah, I'm not doing that. Oh, what I needed to do was go and trade for lanterns as well. Luckily, I have enough emeralds left over because I need to go and light up the bee farm. Not you, you're the stinky librarian. Where's the non-stinky librarian? You, my good fellow. How's it going? Uh, give me lanterns. <gasps> oh my god, the fairy lights would look so good in here. The fairy lights would look so good in the in the bee farm. Oh, I gotta go grab them. Okay, so let's just, I don't know. Let's say we get rid of these, all right? These stinky, smelly lanterns. We don't want them around there. Thank you very much. And then we just run this from up there to up there, right? And then we throw boom. I mean, they're kind of nice. Maybe... The orange ones, perhaps? Yeah, I think I like those better. And then we can run these down here like that, maybe. Oh, you see, I like the lanterns. Can I make the orange lanterns? Okay, here's praying. It looks good. Boom. Uh, you know what? I can't make up my mind. I really can't. I think, ooh, maybe the flowers? Yeah, 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 the flowers. How do I make the... Oh, my days. Okay, I can't make those. I cannot make those at all. I don't think I can get the uh, blue orchids because of maybe biome specific or i don't know if you can grow them 
Okay, well, we're probably just going to stick with what we have here then. This looks this looks nice. This looks nice. I like it. Hang it down from like around here like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There we go. And then throw some orange lanterns on that bad boy. There we go. Oh, this is coming together. We need another tree over here. And we can line them up like that. And then over here. Oh, yeah. This is going to look so good. Well, it's that time again to go and grab a whole bunch of sand and try and expand out as much sugar cane as we can uh, really move around. Because it's all grown now. And we literally just need a tiny bit to finish off the other side over there. And then I think I might throw it down around these ones too. Just so the fact that then the greenery goes all the way around. Also, I've not looked at this from the top level yet. This one looks kind of goofy, but the rest looks kind of nice. I, I kind of like it. It's, it's all over the place, but it looks good. B, what are you doing out here, man? I told you they'd fly away. Why are you out here? Idiot, idiot, idiot. See, I knew the bees would fly away. They always do. Uh-oh. Uh, that's an eel thing. I don't want that to come and attack me. It probably will. Damn, what's with all the eels out here in the ocean now? So many of them. Surely I can tank a few hits from an eel. Like, how how bad can it be, you know? I'm, I'm full diamond. I'm decked out. But I'm not going to test it out, though. Ha <laughs> ha! Bye-bye. Okay, I didn't get that much sand right there. Uh, I kind of want to wait for the eels to go away. I don't want to deal with that. But what I will do is I will go and harvest up the sugar cane and finish off planting it around these islands. And then I guess we can start on the other ones. Probably not even going to harvest up all the sugar cane because there is way too much. Okay, you know, as I said, I wouldn't harvest all the sugar cane. Well, I did, excluding that little tiny bit over there. But I did. Um, some bits fell in the water, but that is so much sugar cane. Oh, my God. Okay, so let me just line the sides of this with slabs. Okay. Okay, and there we are. It didn't really make it look much better, but you know what? It's fine. It works as a storage area. I'm going to stop complaining about it. So we really didn't need that much sugar cane. Um, I would go around and do more, but I really don't want to because instead what I want to do is get that other birch tree over in the tree farm and then we can actually start... Where's the birch saplings? There we go. And then we can actually go and finish off the fairy lights over there as well and just have everything tied together. Ooh, I do like the white icicle ones though. Okay, you know what? That'll do. That'll do there. And then we'll throw one over here, right here, where this flower was. Uh, maybe boop, boop, like that. Make them orange. There we go. And then the orange icicles. Ooh, they're kind of nice, actually. Uh, can I harvest this yet? I can. Yeah, again, making a new pair of shears to do something that I can go and grab the other shears for. Okay, now where is my crafting table over here? Right here. Oh, he's giving them a rose again. That's cute. The bee area does look very nice, though. I'll give it this. It does look very nice. Anyways, that is the bee farm finished off, so I can now rest easy knowing that I have a couple bees that I'll probably have to keep breeding because they'll just keep flying out to sea and getting lost. Now, over the following few days, I finally decided to get to work on building up a house. And I'm also going to combine all these three days together because my OBS audio decided to just stop working, so I'll just talk you through what I did. So, starting things off on day 63, I began building out the platform where I was going to build my house. Now, I did think that whilst building this, that it was going to come out bigger than it actually did, but it's fine, I can make it work, and if it ends up being too small, I can just expand it later. But either way, once the platform was done, it came time to start work on the house. Now, if you like this house and you want to build it yourself, then check the link in the top right of the screen or down in the description below to watch the tutorial. It's a really cool beach house and it really fits the theme we're going for here. Anyways, the only thing that was really holding me back for the first day of this build was quite a severe lack of wood. So I spent the night of day 63 farming out a bunch of oak trees so that that way I could hopefully get all of the oak parts of the build finished off in the morning. Then after grabbing a bunch of wood on day 64 and day 65. I did a bunch more work on the house, but slightly slower this time, considering I needed a whole bunch of campfires and was really unprepared to make them, so that took a little while. And then I needed to go and get a bunch of spruce logs, because, well, now I need a whole bunch of trapdoors as well. Man, I'm telling you, I have, like, a lot of wood, but it's just the wrong types for what this build wants. But either way, after finishing off the trapdoors, I got to work on the top floor and the roof that was a little bit finicky at first, but after getting one of the sides done, all I had to do was copy-paste it onto the other one. And finally, after finishing off the roof, it was time to start adding some colour and decoration. So I just went round making things look good by adding leaves, walls and lanterns. And finally, day 66 was just spent adding some smaller little details and tidying up some things around the house. And boom, there we go. Now, I specifically picked this house because I really felt like it fit 
fits the raft theme and well I'm really happy with the way it came out it looks really cozy up in here now now after all the hard days work of building up the house I spent day 67 over at the mob farm because I completely ran out of bone meal whilst building the house and I just know that I'm gonna need a whole bunch of it for trees soon enough so I may as well get it now so yeah I took it easy on day 67 and just spent the entire day whacking mobs Hey, would you look at that? That looks, uh, that looks pretty good. Now, there is still quite a few things that I want to get done in this video. One of which now I'm thinking is to go and dig up a complete coral reef and bring it over here. So that that way we can expand this one all the way. I don't know necessarily if I want to go all the way up here, but at least cover this platform as well. Because it looks weird it just ending there, you know? We could just bring it down here and build our own little coral reef down there. I think that'd look really nice. I also want to upgrade my tool a little bit as well as trying to get another wolf spawn egg and then maybe actually make an actual enchantment area not just have it you know laying here like this is this the fastest way to grab you it is most definitely not okay what about an axe pickaxe oh pickaxe oh no it oh i need silk touch oh i'm an idiot yeah i'm an absolute idiot of course i need silk touch Okay, all right, well then that's the, I guess that's the objective now, is we need to go and get Silk Touch to actually dig up the coral reef with a pickaxe. So what I'll do is, I don't know if that guy sells diamond picks, I think he does, maybe, perhaps over here? Hello, friend? You? You, uh, you do not sell a diamond pickaxe. Hmm, okay, all right, uh, another toolsmith then, maybe? I mean, I could just go and try and find some diamonds, but, and oh, well, I don't even have iron! Oh, well, this is a slight problem. Um, should we try our luck trying to get some diamonds? I feel like if we've got the Fortune 3 pick, we may as well. We may as well. I'm, uh, I'm geared enough to take on the mine now, so. Or do we want to try and go somewhere else? Because I feel like I've cleared those caves out down there pretty well. Um, we can just go out a little bit into the ocean. Maybe over by the mob farm and dig up some land over there to see if we can find a cave system. Alright, so I think I'm going to use this ship underneath here as a staging ground for our new mine. I feel like this door right here will come in perfect. Wow, okay, the ship really didn't do much, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> All right, well, let's hope that we can find some caves or diamonds down here. If there's no caves, I'll strip mine, but I'd much prefer to get caves over strip mining just because I don't fancy going in a straight line for like an hour. Ooh, I think I may have just heard a skeleton in a cave next to me. Yep, I did. Hello, good fellow. There we go. All right. Uh, this cave is... Ah, hello, buddy. You almost got me there. You almost got me there. Now, this cave, as I was saying, is um, around diamond level, so we should be able to hopefully get our hands on some. It would be very much so appreciated. Ah, okay. That's the uh, entirety of the cave then, I guess. Ooh, what is that? Oh, what is this? Hello. Wow, okay, this is kind of a cool area. Okay, there is a slight problem. I don't remember which way I came in here, so this is gonna suck to get out. I don't know, let me know down in the comments. Do you actually, like, mine in the water caves, or do you, like, avoid them like the plague like I do? Because, honest to God, I couldn't imagine really many things worse than having to mine underwater here. It's, oh, it's just awful. Oh, my God, there is not a single diamond down here. This is Y11, all right? The, the base floor here is Y11. That is nuts. Oh, there is. There we go. Woo. All right. That actually didn't take too long. You know what? I take everything back I said about water caves. I love them. I Actually, I was just I was just joking. I actually really like them, you know? Oh, is that a mine shaft? It is. Oh, my God. Anything of use to me in here, perhaps? Any cool loot? Okay, there we go. This place looks really nice during sunrise. I really like the uh, the sun rays blasting through it. It looks good. But now that we have the stuff that we need, I need to now go and get a librarian villager to trade me silk touch. And then we'll throw the pickaxe in the enchantment table, try and get efficiency on it, get silk touch on it, and then go and dig up like a whole coral reef. Okay, all right. Well, we'll see what we can do over here. It shouldn't really take me too long, I don't think. Silk touch is what we're looking for, my good fellow. Silk touch. Last time I tried getting silk touch, it took me like an hour, so... <gasps> there we go. 11. Ooh, that's a cheap trade, I tell you. That's a very cheap trade. Okay, you just wait there, my good fellow. Do not change that trade while I'm gone. I was going to say, I don't even know if I've got enough XP to enchant it and um, add the book on top, but I realize that I have more than enough XP to pretty much do anything. Go and make the pickaxe. And hopefully we can get some pretty nice enchants on it the first roll. If it says Silk Touch, I will cry. If I literally get Silk Touch first roll... Oh, God! God. <laughs> no, there's no shot that that just happened. 
<laughs> okay, well, look, it didn't take me that long to get the villagers to trade it, so it's fine, but... Oh, if I'd have known, if I'd have known, I don't know why I didn't test out just doing it first, but it is what it is. We've got Silk Touch and we also have a book. Oh God, I knew that was going to happen. I knew that was going to happen. All right, so with our newly acquired Silk Touch pickaxe, actually, I want to get, um, I guess we can just do this then anyway. I want to get Respiration on my helmet. Respiration 3. Oh my God, these enchants are popping off. Okay, so now that we've got all that out of the way, Hopefully, there's no sharks down there ready to uh, nibble on me. And we'll just head over to this coral reef and dig up as much of it as we possibly can. And so, I spent the rest of day 69 and the entirety of day 70 just grabbing as much coral as I could get my hands on. Making sure to try and get a good variety of colors as well as a whole bunch of sea pickles. And obviously, you know, being sure to keep an eye out for sharks so that I don't end up a little midnight snack. But luckily for me, there were really none around and these days ended up going by pretty smoothly without any trouble. Okay, so now that we've amassed quite a nice amount of coral, there's some more over in the chest over there. I think it's time to start work on this reef. Now, I don't really know how I want it to look. I build these semi-frequently, I'd like to say, but they always come out looking goofy because I don't really know how to build coral. I know it's kind of random in a sense. Like, we'll do, um, like a... I don't even know. Like, look, see, these are so weird. We'll do like a, a purple one like that there. Does that look good? That looks, well, it brightens the area up. I can definitely say that. Okay, I want to do something with, uh, is there a red one near here? Yeah, okay, the blue is the one that's lackluster around here. Now, I'm going to go and add these things, I think, last, because they need to be on there, but they're kind of finicky. Oh, oh there we go, okay. That's looking pretty good. It's a little bit bright, though. It's the shader that kind of bugs out a little bit with these. Okay, I'll go and throw a few down. Hopefully, I don't get chomped by a shark once again. And then, I guess we'll see how it comes out. All right, so we're nearing the end of the day now. But I think that that was, uh, that's pretty good, okay? I didn't bring it down too far because I didn't really want it going all the way to the end. Plus, I didn't have the right amount of coral to do so nor the mental capacity to place this atrocious block underwater. But overall, I think that went pretty well. We probably do want to go down there with a little bit of bone meal just to bring out some greenery. But other than that, it's looking really nice. I'm happy with this. So let's just store all this coral away. We had way too many sea pickles, but we may need more later on. And then I think over the next couple of days, we're going to do a little bit more trading and hopefully try and get, I, I guess, better armor. I, I don't really know. I've got protection four, so I don't really need to worry about it too much. I guess I could get a couple more helmets and try and get protection four on them the boots are fine i could maybe try and get depth strider and then i want to head out and see if i can find another dog because i'm kind of sad i lost my dog to a bug and it upsets me daily i also don't think i've shown you but the inside of my house is currently uh, a little bit empty because i didn't actually put anything in here so that's also something that we're gonna have to do I mean, the upstairs is slightly more decorated, but it's literally just the lone bed just sat there. I also think at some point as well, we still got quite a lot of things to do now thinking about it, but at some point as well, I think we need to go around and finally finish off adding the details because there's places like this where there's no trapdoors on the sides and there's no fences. So I could literally just fall into the ocean where there's a giant eel waiting for me. What is that? What is that meat? Can I, can I grab that with my fishing rod? Can I grab that? Is that grabbable? It is. Oh. Okay, it's the eel's food now. Okay, my good fellows, I don't know if I have any emeralds in my chest. I should have probably checked that before coming over here. But I need to make more bank because I need better helmet. I'm really only doing this because I can. There's no real reason for me to get protection for on the helmet. I'm already, like, decked out as is. Um, but I'm only doing it because I have the villagers, I have the resources, so, well, you know, why would I not? Now, hopefully as well, the pirate ships aren't as bad as they used to be. I mean, the last one I took on really wasn't too bad. Although, saying that, I might want to upgrade my bow because... I don't know. I actually don't remember the enchants it has on it. Let me have a look. Um, where is uh, power four and breaking three and four? Oh, no, the, but the bow's fine. The bow's fine. We could probably get power five, but uh, other than that, it's fine. Okay, so I have 60 emeralds. I have 63 emeralds, good sir. Are you the boyo with protection one? Okay, and what is your helmet? Uh, you don't have one just yet, so let me just uh, real quick change that. Projectile protection? Ew, that's stinky. I don't want that. Protection two, and then boom, boom. Ooh, that's expensive. What about the other way? Eight. Ooh, what a bargain. There we go. Okay, you know what? I'll stay with protection three. That's good enough for me. Um, I do want to try and get Depth Strider on my diamond boots, though, because, you know, I literally live in the ocean. Was there anything on here? Oh, what? Oh, no. This was literally a protection three book. Oh, wait, but that means if I put this on my helmet, it goes to prop four, right? I know I don't have the XP, but that should go to prop four. No. What? Why not? 
Huh? Protection 3. Oh, protect. Wait, did I mess up? Protection 2 plus protection 2 is supposed to be protection 3. Oh, wait, you only have protection 1. Oh, I'm an idiot. Oh my god, I am such an idiot. How, how do I play this game for a living? How do I do that? I have no clue. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Why? Damn it, man. Okay, all right. Well, I guess I'm harvesting the sugar cane and we're going to do some paper trades because I'm out of wood. Hello, good fellow. Are you my paper man? You are not. You are my silk touch man. Are you my paper? You are not my paper man. What about you? Yes, you are. Yeah. Oh, wow. They really do scam me for that. Okay, and now that should be enough emeralds to purchase the last one from you. Okay, lovely, lovely. But then if I then go boom, boom. And then this is where it's going to get a little bit expensive. Ooh, 11. Okay. 11. Then what? What's it going to be? It's going to be like 26. 19. Uh, that's actually not too bad. That's pretty reasonable. I can try and get that tonight. Don't know if I'll be able to, though, considering that these guys just really do not want to trade at the minute. 11. 11 is what we got. Well, you know what? At least we have access to do it now. For now, I guess we'll just head to bed and then in the morning finish off the sugar cane finally. Okay, so how much sand do I actually have? Ah, Okay, uh, well, I guess first things first, we need to go and get a bunch more sand. Now, I don't think that we're going to need more than two stacks. So I'll just do one more dig and then we will head back up and get it placed down. Okay, so we've got a little over two stacks. That should be enough. Let me just grab the jungle slabs. Okay, and once again, let me go around and place all of the wood. You know what, though? I really think that we got like pretty much precisely the amount of sand that we needed, oh, excluding the one, because this was just under like two stacks of planks. So yeah, we were pretty close. We actually had like almost a stack more than we actually needed. Wow. Ooh, that looks very green over there now. Um, I, I really don't like the way that the other circles join on to the, the main one, but it's okay. I'll, I'll take this small, small sacrifice for how good it actually does look to some degree. Now, I still don't know whether or not I want to put sugarcane in these areas. Oh, I may even throw it in the middle bits here actually how would that look let me just let me do a little 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 quick test right here i like that i actually do like that i'm gonna do that um you just need to kind of overlook the fact that there's you know slabs there but other than that yeah i like that okay so i'll go around and get as many of those done then as i can you know what? I'm actually kind of liking the sugarcane placement right here. It's kind of growing on me. It's going to make the rooms feel a little bit more enclosed, so it's quite nice. Now, last night, I also discovered that I can place these lights that I made ages ago just down on the floor and blocks like this. So we may use these to light up the actual little mini circles in the middle. But for now, we're not doing absolutely anything with lights because I'm going to go and head back out to sea. We're going to go over this way this time, and we're going to hopefully, hopefully try and recover another dog because i don't feel right leaving it at that okay the man died trapped in a step it, it it shouldn't have happened so i would really very much so like to go and recover another one is this only half a ship where's the oh there's the front okay i didn't know how big it was so it's my render distance bugging out ah well now he's stuck in the boat so that's really not a problem listen to me good fellows i need a dog spawn egg okay ow jesus calm down it's all going off up there Right, calm yourselves. This time, we're doing it without blowing up the ship, so hopefully we can go through here relatively hassle-free and just go and get what we wanted. Now, I think the dog spawn egg was in one of these chests last time. I think it was might have been in this one because it was quite early on. But we'll check the rest of the ship. Okay, we'll go through cautiously with a bunch of torches and we'll see what we can get done. Hello, boyos. Where are you at? Oh, there you are. Hello. Oh, there's a lot of you down there too. Yeah, clearing this one out has gone substantially faster than the last time. It doesn't look like we're going to get a dog from this one. Oh, oh my God. There is so many up there. <laughs> oh my God. Wolf spawn egg. Nope. Wolf spawn egg. Nope. And wolf spawn egg. No. Okay. Oh, wait, there's another ship back there. Hey, we're saved. Okay, you salty sea boys. You better have some dogs on this ship for me. I want a dog. Hello. Can I get rid of the spawner, please? Thank you. Okay. Should be in this one. No, I feel like we got it really rare. I feel like it was like a rare thing. One at a time. Remember, your friends on the ship over the road already tried this, all right? One at a time. Just chill out. Just chill out, man. Just just calm down. Look, you'll end up killing each other before you kill me, okay? Just calm down, man. What is happening? Ew, I don't want the fish. I want a dog. No, nothing. Zilch. There's nothing on these ships, man. Well, there goes that. Is that the enchanted gapple? Ooh, sheesh, I'll take that. Damn. 
Bam! Okay. Um, well, I don't really need the rest of the stuff because it's just farming stuff. So I guess back out we go. My hopes of finding a dog are diminishing by the second right now. It's, it's truly sad. Right, you already know what I'm going to ask. You know the routine right now. Does this chest, does this chest, does the ship have a chest containing a dog? Probable answer, no. Hopeful answer, yes. Right, if we wanted to throw, if we wanted to throw some, some shots up in here, then come on, let's go. Let's go. You two, come on. Right, I'm only checking the useful chests. The ones up top never have anything good in them at all. I've got a couple diamonds, that's okay, I'll take those. Okay, in final attempts to get a dog, well, does this chest down here have any- Oh my god! Forget about you guys, I'm sorry. And absolutely zero dog. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, right, well, I'm just gonna take it as a sign we're not getting a dog. It is what it is, it sucks, but there's nothing I can really do about it. I don't want to spend the remainder of my time here just going through constant amounts of ships in hopes of finding one lone dog. All right, for the dog's sake, okay, for the dog's sake, we'll check out this last ship, and if there's nothing there, then I'll just head back home. Yep, okay, no, uh, did not have a wolf spawn egg. It did have another enchanted gapple, though, so that was good, but yeah, no dog, so we remain lonely with just bees and a couple of cats. I'll tell you this, it's good to be back home. Now, one of the things I was thinking of is maybe if I can't have a dog, okay, maybe I could build, like, a mural for it. And I understand that, like, I had it for, like, a day, and uh, it didn't last long at all, but I really wanted that dog, damn it, all right? I wanted that dog. Anyways, um, what I'm thinking is we might, for mutual benefit, okay, I might not even build the, the wolf thing from this, but I kind of just want to have it. I want to build, like, a giant island out here. Uh, I don't know whether or not I want it in a circle. Uh, it'll be substantially bigger than the one that my house is in, but we'll have it down there at the bottom. We'll make it really big and we'll fill it with dirt and grass. And then that should, okay, should spawn in some wildlife like cows, sheep, and pigs. I don't know whether or not it actually will, but we can try it. However, what we're actually going to need for this is an absolute ton of dirt. And this 63 is just not going to cut it. Actually, come to think of it now, I don't actually want to do the circle thing. Instead, I want to build up just a really big island. And by really big, I mean as big as I can within my limits right now. Okay, so this is roughly, I think, how big I want it. I want it to loop around there. We can make a big, like, weird-shaped island. I don't know what shape I'm going for. I just tried to do it kind of random, but kind of within reason. But now we need to go and get oh, just so much dirt. This is going to take so much. I need to go all the way around here and loop it in. I don't know exactly how big I want it, but it is going to be pretty big. So I guess one of the things we could do is we could just go into the nether, grab some gravel, and then just dupe some dirt. I know that, that means I have to go to the nether, and I absolutely hate that place, but it does save me a ton of time having to go around and mine up dirt. What is that? What is, is that an octopus in the nether? There's no shot this guy's in here. There's absolutely no shot this guy's in here. Buddy, no, did he die? Is he changing colors? Oh my god, he's so cool. Oh god, he's coming for me. Sorry, man. I just, I was curious. Oh, you were an octopus. Okay, sorry. I thought you were like a nether mob for a second. I couldn't tell. I kind of feel bad now. He was just in here vibing. Just switched his RGB on and was just going mad. Is he safe? He seems safe. Ah, no! It's there! God damn it, man. I hate these things. Am I wrong where to find gravel? Like, I thought it was really common in these biomes. Maybe I've just not found a chunk of it yet, you know? Okay, there's a bastion over there. There's this claw thing I think I got from one of the bears on the roof. I'm glad to know that they're around here. Oh my god, where's the gravel? Hello? What I ask is not hard. I think I might just end up getting it from the underground in the overworld. To be fair, I think that might be faster. I can't find a single bit down here. So, for the following couple of days, I headed back down to the ravine in the mine and dug up any and all gravel and dirt that I could find. That ended up proving significantly faster than the nether. I mean, I'm convinced that the nether has absolutely nothing for me at this point, okay? It can't even supply me with gravel. After being down here a little while and gathering quite a hefty amount of both gravel and dirt, I headed back to the surface and began filtering through the coarse dirt to finish things off. Now, over the next two days, I got to work on building out the island with all the dirt that I gathered over the past couple of days. Now, I think I may have gone just a little bit too big with the sizing of this thing because the first batch of dirt got just over the outline done. So I uh, grabbed some more and just continued on. Now, I'm also kind of thinking that I might want to maybe build like some ruined structures or some like ruined temple kind of things on this island, but I'm not really too sure. Now, I actually didn't end up making as much progress as I thought I would over the past couple of days, but I'm going to put that down to the island being quite a bit bigger than I was actually anticipating it coming out. 
yeah, so I really think that I may have gone a little bit overboard with the sizing of the island. Now, it's going to look good, it's going to look really nice, but um, yeah, we're going to need just a little bit more dirt. Although, looking at it now, we do have some pretty good progress on it, but yeah, it, it wasn't meant to be this big. Now, I do intend on doing some little beaches around the sides of it, but other than that, it's mainly going to be dirt that we need. I've also just realized that I didn't place the trapdoors on top of these bits, which is now really annoying me. Now, I'm thinking we can use the island for a kind of... I don't know if I want to use it for the nether portal or for the enchantment area or for what, but I do want, hopefully, some animals to spawn on it. I, I don't really think they will, but it'd be nice if they did. Um, but I think I might build up some, like, ruins over there and have the portal in ruins and then have, like, an enchantment area as well and kind of, like, a ruined little mini temple area. I don't know. But to do that, I'm going to need a bunch of stone. But luckily for me, I have silk touch on my pickaxe. So we want to go and grab a bunch of normal stone. We will also want to get a bunch of cobblestone as well. All right, and that should do for the stone front for now. I don't think we're going to need much more than this, if anywhere near this mount. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to build a decent amount of stuff over there. Now, I did also discover this little vein of dirt on here, which I wouldn't really usually pay attention to, but my eyes and senses have been heightened to the actual existence of this block right now. So we'll see how much we get from this little chunk right here. Okay, over a stack and a half. That's not bad at all. Okay, so we'll store this stuff away. I'll go and smelt down this iron, and then I kind of need to uh, start up a little vine farm. I don't ever think I've made one of them before. I don't even know how to make one of those now, thinking about it. I know I can just farm them out through jungle trees. I don't know. Whichever way seems easier. And at this point, actually realizing how vastly densely populated that the oak tree farm is, I'm thinking I'm just going to get them from jungle trees. Okay, so I'm going to go grab some more bone meal. I'll put them bones that I got earlier to use. I told you I'd need them. And then I guess I'll spend my night just mindlessly chopping away at vines, hoping to get enough to cover up all the blocks that we're going to need into mossy versions. Okay, so this should be enough vines now. I'm going to start another chest right here that's going to be like island material. Oh, no. Didn't mean to shave that wood off. I feel bad now. But as I was saying before I accidentally scalped the wood, I'm going to make this chest over here for island materials. Okay, ruined materials, stuff that I want to build with over on the island. So today what I want to do is I want to head back down here and we need to get a little bit more dirt. And by a little bit, I mean like a bunch of gravel and a bunch more dirt. So hopefully get like, I'm going to say six stacks is what I'll do the rest of the island. Maybe more. I'm feeling more like 10, but I'm going to take the guess and say 6. Ah, oh, yeah, I forgot how infested it was down here. As soon as I get down here, there's just zombies everywhere. Now, I'm hoping that I didn't clear this place completely out of dirt, mainly. I know that there's a whole bunch of gravel left in here, made evident by that just falling on me. I'm just really hoping that it's not all underwater. Like, I won't be against going and getting it if it is, but I just, I don't want to deal with that. Oh, God. Yep, well, it looks like we're going underwater for dirt. I've looked around the caves, and I can't find a single piece. So I guess it's just underwater for us from now on. It really isn't the end of the world, but I just, uh, I hate mining underwater. Okay, I think this much combined with the amount of gravel we have combined with the stuff upstairs should hopefully, I believe, be enough to finish off at the very least the base layer of the island without adding like any extra details, lumps or bumps on there. I think it should be fine. So I'll head back down this ravine, I'll head back up home, and then I'll spend the night making more dirt and then in the morning hopefully having enough dirt to finish off the floor of the island. Okay, so after uh, digging up dirt all night, we have a fair few stacks, which I'm hoping will actually finish off the build over here. Now, if I sound a little bit different, I don't know what's happened. Apparently, overnight, I lost part of my voice or something. I don't even know. Um, but yeah, I sound kind of funky now, so that's fun. But anyways, let's go around and try and get this thing finished off. Okay, so there we go. That's all the dirt that we have currently placed down. And now we only have this little center bit to finish off. So I'm thinking maybe like two or three stacks, probably not even that. And we should be good to go. Now I do need to go and light up this island a little bit more because more ghoulies are going to be able to spawn on here now. And then once we've done that, I guess we can go and try and grab a little bit more dirt to finish this off. And then hopefully either finish it off tonight or in the morning. Okay, so now hopefully... This is enough dirt. It's just under four stacks, so I think it will be, or at least I hope it will be. But now I'm going to go back up. I'm going to see how many mobs, if any, have spawned on the island. If there's none, I'll go and place it all tonight. If there's a few, then I'll just, I'll not deal with that and we'll go and do it in the morning. 
Okay, yeah, there's absolutely zero on there, so we'll just head over, we'll place the rest of this dirt, and then we will head to bed. Hopefully finishing off the island. All right, and it was enough. Okay, there's literally one last block to place, and boom, there it is. Island is, well, at least for the base layer, complete, and it's looking pretty nice. I kind of struggle building things that, oh, I was literally, okay, no, it's not done. I take it back. I lied. I lied. I'm sorry. I bamboozled you. I apologize. So, as I was saying, I'm pretty impressed with it because I kind of struggle to build natural looking things. It, I don't know why it's kind of like a pain for me. I can't do like natural inclines and stuff. It's kind of annoying. But that came out looking pretty good. I'm, I'm really happy with it. So, I am going to go and grab some more wheat seeds and then I'll just throw down some more grass for tonight, head to bed, and then in the morning, well, I don't even know what we're going to do in the morning. So, now while we're waiting for the island to kind of do its thing and the grass to spread all over it i think today we'll have a pretty chill day we'll go and breed up the bees a little bit more and we'll also go around the entire base or as much as possible and go and finish off just all the little details that we're yet to add such as like the little trapdoors there and the fences and stuff here just because i've been meaning to do it for like i don't know like 20 days now and still haven't done it so it's never gonna get done unless i force myself to do it so we want to start out by getting just a whole bunch of please tell me we have some oak wood we have some logs uh we don't really have much but that's fine i think i've got like a full farm's worth so it's it's okay i don't think we have any trapdoors either because i think i gobbled them oh no i do i do have some trapdoors oh, that's fine I'm still not sure how I want to do these end bits here. I think I might just, like, throw down some fences, like, floor this off and then throw down some fences. I don't really know. Okay, and how's this side looking? That side's done. Here needs doing. Okay, so we need six there. The whole nine there. Do these need it? No, that's fine. So, okay, we need quite a bit of trapdoors, so I'll go trap down the farm real quick. Now, that should be all the trapdoors down with five to spare, so we didn't do too bad. And now I'm just going to go finish off the fences, and then I think we might have time to do the lights. Okay, wow, so the fences did not take me that long to place at all. There was like 12 to place, so that wasn't bad. And now we want to go in here and search incandescent. There we go. A one torch, three iron, and a glass pane for four. They are a little bit pricey, but at least we get four from them. So I don't have any glass panes left, I'm pretty sure, so we'll just grab some of that and break it down. Okay, how many of these bad boys can we make? We can make 16 bang on, actually, precisely, which is pretty good. Oh, you can only hold stacks of 16. Okay, well, we'll get two stacks of 16. We'll leave it there, and then we'll go around and see how much they do. I just think that they look better than the torches. Like, I can get rid of the torches, and it'll still be bright here at night. I don't necessarily know what to do with the rest of them now. I might use them as decorations over on the island, or, like, I, I don't know where to put them. Okay, well, we literally just needed less than 16 of them then. But that's that's okay. Now that I can get rid of the torches, I'll feel much better about how that area looks. Okay, today is the day it starts. Finally, after... I don't even know how long I've been working on this island. It hasn't been too long. Right, so let's grab some of these vines. I'll grab only two stacks for now because I don't think we're going to need that many. Oh, I should have made some stone bricks and cracked them in the time that we've been like messing about here. Okay, so I'm thinking that we do the main build. I don't know whether or not I want it to be either a place to enchant, which would probably be more beneficial to me than a nether portal that I'll probably never use. So I think if we want to do that, we want to build kind of like a somewhat circular temple. Not even temple, but just like a little, little kind of shrine looking thing. Now, I don't have an exact idea in mind, but we'll try out some stuff and see how it goes. So let's just dive straight in and see what we can come up with. Now, I actually found like a really nice looking build from another YouTuber named It's Marlow. So I decided to go with that because it just fits here so perfectly. And of course, if this build interests you or you're looking for inspiration for an enchantment area, then definitely go check out the video in the top right. There's a bunch of really cool ones in there. So yeah, I spent the rest of day 86 just working on building up a tiny dilapidated shrine. And once the main area of the build was done, on day 87, I added the enchanting table to it and voila, it's done and it just looks so perfect. On this little island okay there we go that's looking pretty nice now i'm probably going to go and add some vines and stuff to it and maybe even right i'm ready for this maybe even some string lights that would be that'd be quite nice but now what i need to do is i need to go around the whole island add some trees add some more details and whatnot and just really make this place come together i think over there if i want to i'll build like a little arch a little mini like ruined arch for the nether portal not really too fussed i'm not going back in there so it'll probably just be for aesthetic purposes but yeah, let me head over here, grab a bunch of bone meal and some saplings, and then we'll get to work on making that place look even more dilapidated. There we go, and then we'll start working on some grass. I'll also have this path come off over this way as well, 
just over to the portal if I want to build it over here. I don't know how I'm feeling about flowers. Uh, probably will have them. They do just add a little bit of vibrance to the island itself. But we want like a load of this long grass as well. Like, we need this place to be overkill covered in stuff. And there we go. Look at that, man. It looks so nice over here. I kind of wish I built my house here. I'm not going to lie. Now, there are still a few details I want to go and add, such as like the lights around there and a few more lanterns around the place because I didn't really want to waste all my iron on them right now. So for the minute, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back home. We'll probably craft up some string lights tonight. And then in the morning, I'll go and try and finish off everything I can and maybe even build up the nether portal. But I'm not too sure about that. However, what I am sure about is that that looks awesome from a distance that looks so cool so i'm gonna craft up some string lights and then i will see you guys in the morning when we go and try and add just a little bit of the final touches over there all right this should be enough string lights i think i don't want to overdo it i uh, i really don't want to make too many and then have it look kind of ruin the aesthetic of it so this should be enough i think this even might be overkill to some extent but if i just run these from like you to you right oh that is oh it's so beautiful oh and then from the oh oh god it's too beautiful it's too nice it's actually not like that amazing but it is quite good i'm actually so excited for night to fall now this is gonna be oh it's gonna be super cozy over here now so let me go around and add just a couple more lanterns so that we can get rid of some of these torches that are just laying around this is really really coming together now i like this so i think i will throw down a portal as well um it'll only have to be a small one i mean i don't really have much more obsidian and i don't fancy going and spending nine more years mining it up i don't know exactly what pattern i'm gonna go for either but i'm sure i'll figure that out as well i'm sure i'll find something that i like pinterest strikes once again so let's just get to work on trying to build this up i don't know how well it's going to go in the space we have now looking at it but we should be we should be okay thinking about it now it might even look better if i do it at the back here instead i think it probably will look better if i do it at the back here instead so let's just get rid of this real quick and then yeah i think back here is going to work so much better so if we just start from then probably here then would be a better call yeah that'll work fine okay there we go so that's pretty much how it's gonna be there's like the front and the side finished so i just need to copy and paste that on the back and then the other side and then we should be good to go so i guess i'll spend the rest of the night working on this and then i guess i'll see you all when i've finished it off it really shouldn't take too long but don't want to waste your time with any more tedious stone brick placing all right and now with that finished off i need to number one probably get rid of this tree it's kind of blocking it a little bit there we go that's better but now with that finished off i'm gonna grab some of this mossy cracked and chiseled stone and then we're just gonna go at this thing adding a load of details Okay, and that should be enough. That looks really good, actually. I'm surprised how well it fits. Now, I do need to go down the mine and grab myself seven more pieces of obsidian. So let me just go and run and do that real quick. All right, there we go. Let me just add these. I ended up getting a little bit more for in case I underestimated, but no, I did indeed just need exactly seven. But there we go. Let me just light this bad boy up. Boom. Ooh, sheesh. That does look pretty nice. All right. You know what it is missing, though? It's missing some lanterns, or it's missing some fairy lights. I'm not too sure which one I want to put on there, you know? Maybe... Ooh, ew! Ew! No! Get off! I didn't want to put you there. Like, they look kind of good, but it doesn't fit the theme. I'm thinking... All right, let me check. Let me check how expensive they are. I'm thinking something like these ghoulie lights. These, like, skull lights right here. Um, or maybe even the pumpkin ones. Oh, I know. I can't do the pumpkin ones. Okay, that sucks. What about the skull ones? I can do those. Ooh, what about the... Ooh, there's so many options! Okay, I think what we'll go with is some kind of black skulls, maybe. Or gray skulls. Can I even make gray dye? I can make black dye? I need ink sacs, so I need to try and find some squid. Oh, wait, actually, I think I have some ink sacs from all the barrels and stuff. I think I may have some in here. Let's please just pray I do. Please pray I do. Ink sac. Yes, I have two. And then we'll make ourselves some gray skull lights. Oh, I'm missing... Oh, it's light gray. Oh, wait, no. That was light gray one I clicked on. There we go. Gray. Oh! Oh, my God. I almost set my entire house on fire. Okay. How will you look, my good fellow? It... Hello? Ew. What... Why aren't they facing the way I need them to? No, I can't see those. Maybe do them at the back then? I still can't see them. What? what? Oh, that kind of sucks. Yeah, this is not really working out the way I thought it would. That kind of sucks. Can I just place the skulls down on their own? Ooh. Ooh, I like that. I kind of regret putting them on the strings now. Can I take them back off? I cannot. So, let me throw the gray one there. Boom. Ooh, 
Ooh, and then maybe some... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Woo! Okay, okay. I like that. Damn, man, this island has really come along. I kind of prefer it to the actual base. I've not seen this thing from, like, an aerial point of view yet, so when I'm going back and doing these replay shots, I'm really looking forward to seeing this thing. Okay, so the list of things that we still need to do over this part is we need to grow a couple more trees, add a path to the nether portal, and then just overall do some... Like, maybe add some leaves in places and some vines on the builds, just so they look a little bit more old. But the problem I have with doing the trees and stuff is I'm running out of bones. So I think I might spend tomorrow with the mob grinder, get the bones up, finish off this island the day after, and then do whatever for the last few days. Okay, apparently there's a zombie on my island somewhere. Is he, is he on top of my house? Hello? I think he's up there. Where is he? Buddy, is he on my roof? My roof isn't lit up, like, at all, so that's not surprising. I was going to start today off by saying I don't really know what to do, but I guess with that whole incident with the zombie, uh, we could decorate the inside. I am still technically living down here with the smokers and the furnaces and stuff, so we should really move all this stuff over into the house. Yeah, okay, that's, that's today's task, then. We're actually going to start living in our house, but to do that, I do need to actually build the floor in the bottom part because it's still grass and for that I'm gonna need a little bit of wood okay and I'll break some of this down into probably slabs because I need to place a layer of things under this because yep it just goes straight down to ocean ah I don't want to be in here there'll probably be a shark get me out I think I'm gonna do the same pattern from the outside inside although I'm pretty sure the video that I saw did that anyway so it's just being built the way it was intended all right there we go that's much better it's looking so much nicer I think maybe we could even add some string lights in here you know maybe just outside these windows going well it'd be across here and then across there and then we can get rid of that lantern I think that would look quite nice so I think we'll have this downstairs area right here be where I put the furnaces and the anvil and stuff and then maybe a little chest down there just to put things like um I don't know what do I need for the anvil I don't know maybe we'll just throw a barrel down there instead I would really like some flower pots and stuff but I don't think that I have the clay to make them uh, and I don't think that there's any clay that I've seen on the ocean floor so okay so let's grab these two and then we'll grab the where are the incandescent lights there we go we'll bring these over here so you go bye bye and then you go boom boom and then you go boom boom and then you throw them on instead and boom would you look at that that's actually quite nice to be fair how's that look from the inside that looks pretty nice i guess we'll throw oh my god that's so expensive why is that so expensive i mean i have the wood for it but i'm still not happy about that okay so i'll make one of these tables then these ones look cool but i think they're a little bit too wide like that yeah they're coffee tables so they're a little bit smaller but we can build we can build one of each and see how they could turn out oh you see now i think that one's going to be perfect already oh that one is perfect look at that look at that bad boy i can sit here and spin my globe all day if i wish what about the coffee tables yeah they're a little bit too small Ooh, you know what though that looks kind of good looks a, looks a little bench watch benches already be a thing yeah <laughs> Ooh, you know, that'd look really good, though. Let me let me try some of this. I'm, I'm now just discovering the furniture mod within my last 10 days. How have I missed this this entire time? This cool at all? Can I place this, like, outside my house? Uh, and we'll have, I guess we'll have a little bench around the side of the house here as well. Right there. Lovely. Look at that. That's... Oh. All right, I'm going to have a look through this and see if there's anything that I want to build tomorrow. All right, so I'm going to strip down a bunch of logs, and then we're going to test out some of this furniture, because I didn't know that this even existed. Well, I mean, I did. I just completely forgot that I added it. Okay, so I want to make, um, like, one more of these, or at least four more, let's say. Um, and I want to try and see if these cabinets, not them ones, where, like, the drawers, these things, I want to see if... Oh, bedside. Oh, okay. Well, I want to see if I can actually use them for storage, because that'd be pretty cool. I also think that they look really nice just at the sides there. It looks it looks good. So if I, let's say I got these bedside drawers, okay, these bedside cabinets, and I put one there, one there, don't really know. <gasps> oh, my God. I, are they in? Oh, I thought they were individually addressable. Oh my god, that is so cool. I don't know how I feel about that particularly, but um, it looks okay. I don't know. I'm just amazed that I can access them as storage. That's insane to me. Um, in this case, then, can we throw some downstairs maybe to to match the area? Oh my god, look at that. That looks beautiful. We need a whole row of these. We want a whole kitchen down here. Boom, boom. Oh my, look at that. That's beautiful. And you know what the best thing is? I can put things on top of them. Oh, ho, 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 look at that. I'm liking this. Uh, this is kind of becoming annoying slightly now. So let me just kind of, uh, I'll throw you over here and hopefully you still look good. 
Yeah, it looks alright. It also gives me a little step outside as well, you know? I don't have to... <gasps> oh, wait, that actually works really well. These kind of get in the way, but other than that... And then we can grab the globe, and we can throw you over here. Boom. Oh, <laughs> look at this. This is amazing. Yeah, can I have a desk chair, or are they just normal normal chairs? I don't think I have the wool for these. Yeah, they were, they're pretty expensive. I don't think you can have a desk chair, which kind of sucks, but that's, that's fine. Wait, no way I can make a doormat. I'm going to go make this. Yes. Yes. Although it should probably be on the outside. Yeah, just throw it on the... There we go. Right here. There we go. Look at that. Oh, my God. Everything's coming together. This is this is beautiful. We can have a little path going around here. Look at that. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'm impressed with that one. That one's, that one's nice. Uh, a trampoline? Oh, I can't build that either. I don't have a slime ball. Okay, let's try something right here then. What if I just completely... Ooh, you know what? I like that. And then does it work that I can't jump over them? I do like that, but it means that I have to get rid of the little, like, lanterns that I've got going on here. But either way, that was a pretty good... Uh, that was a pretty good day with the furniture mod right there. I love this thing. It's so good. Okay, make... Oh, why am I in a chest? No, make some of these. See how they look. We'll make We'll make two. Okay, do they look Christmassy? Ooh, that's very Christmassy. That is... Yeah, no. That is... Yeah, that is way too Christmassy. I don't think that I can get away with doing such things at this time of the year. All right, well, I'm glad I didn't waste more than two iron on those. Um, Yeah, they're going in the chest. We're never touching them again. They're never seeing the light of day. Okay, well, I don't really know what we can do then with the whole flower thing. We can make... Ooh, we can make a flower box. <gasps> ooh, wait, we've got supplementaries up in here as well, so... Oh, supplementaries doesn't do too much, actually, by the look of it. No, it adds spruce hanging signs, a deep slate lamp. Okay, maybe they do add some things. That's kind of cool. But no, I think we want to make some flower boxes, and then I kind of want to have some flowers maybe outside my house in this little area here. Maybe right between here would be would be quite nice if they can join together. Ooh, we can also make item shelves as well, which I think would look pretty nice. Okay, all right, how do they look? Oh, okay, they're very, like, yeah, they're very thin. Okay, well, they might make nice little oops. They might make nice little details, I don't know. Uh, we'll make a couple of them, though. Oh, they're a lot smaller than I thought they were. Okay, well, we can Can we put them on things? Oh, you can. Oh, this is going to be amazing. All right, so let me actually grab a couple of flowers then. We'll see what we can put in them. Oh, you can put three in. Oh, two, apparently. Oh, there we go. Yeah, three. All right, so is it possible then for me to get more flowers? I know that I've, like, grown some stuff before and managed to get, like, the blue ones. I'll go over here. I'll go over to the back right segment of this island and I'll just farm out because I'm pretty sure that I can get, like, multiple different ones. Okay, I did not get any different ones, but I do have a bunch of poppies now. Oh, no, there's a shark right there. Please stay away. Don't come over here. He's coming over here. He's coming over here. He's coming over here. <gasps> go away. Okay, well, I guess I'll use what I have and just kind of place down these planters then. There's not really too much else I can do. Put a red one there and a red one there. That looks nice. And then maybe a couple here as well. So we'll do yellow, 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 and then red, red, red. There we go. That looks nice. So let's have a little quick look to see if there's anything. A crimson lantern. Hello. Um, I'm not going in the nether, so that's not happening. Okay, well, I think that was a good couple of days messing around with decorations and stuff. That was, uh, pretty good. But I think now we have gone through and cleared up, like, everything I wanted to use. I'll have a little quick look through, but I don't think that there's too much else that A, I can make, or B, that I want to make. You see, there's all the Neptunium stuff, and I kind of want to get, like, a... You get the loot boxes, right? Yeah, look, Neptunium's bounty. You get them from... Oh, the ingots. How do I get the ingots? Yeah, I know that. How do I get the nuggets, then? From the ingots. Where do they come from, though? Let me enchant a fishing rod. I think we already have one. Uh, yeah, it has lure two. So we'll make another fishing rod. Actually, I'll make two. Uh, and then we'll enchant these and see how they go. And I think we'll spend probably like a day fishing. Because we've not really fished too much for anything really other than materials. Oh, I'm not even level 30. Oh, uh, in that case, then, let me go get some trading done. Let me just grab all this up and then uh, I guess I'll make some bank. Okay, so I traded pretty much all night. Didn't get as much XP as I was expecting, though. Um, apparently, they're all, like, broke right now, and their trades are all buggy because they won't refresh because they're not sleeping and stuff. Uh, they're not even moving half of them. I really don't know what moving them islands did to them, but it really messed them up. Now, we're hoping to try and get, I think, it's Luck of the C3. That's not what I wanted. Okay, well, we'll try again. We'll try again here. 
And uh, nope, and I can't enchant this one. Or maybe I can't. What happens if I enchant that? Oh, well, that's gone, and so are my levels. Okay, you know what? We'll do with what we have. I'll combine these three together, and then we'll just spend the day fishing. Now, shortly after starting to fish, I ended up finding a fishing rod that ended up putting mine to shame and was just so much better. However, it did eventually break, but that's fine because I immediately found another one that ended up having mending on it. So that's even better. Okay, come here, and then I think we're going to leave it there for today. That is also a really nice sunset. Look at that. Ooh. All right, so we didn't really get much of anything during the day. I got multiple fishing rods uh, and free name tag, which is nice, and a message in a bottle. What do you have for me, good sir? Okay, great. You know, lovely message. Thank you very much. That was so useful to me. Um, I also got a goldfish, which said that I can turn it into a golden nugget, uh, which is amazing. Can I eat this? I honestly, I don't want to eat it. Can I put it back in the water? Like, uh, I don't want this. I don't want this poor thing. I, I don't want to turn him into gold, man. But yeah, so that was the uh, the day. Pretty uneventful, not gonna lie. Did not get much of anything. Although we did get some tuna. That was, that was pretty good. Now, the next couple of days were spent finishing off some little details and tidying up some areas just to add the finishing touches to the build. And I also did find a way to end off the, like, exit areas of the raft that I'm not using at the very far end. Um, I just put a hedge there, and it ended up looking pretty good. So, now after doing a little bit of tidying, I think I want to... Oh, I was going to say focus on you guys, but I think I fixed the problem. I organized all the beds to that side, and I also blocked off the ways they can get in here so that they hopefully don't bug out as much when they're trying to get in. Because I think that they think that they're fences, and I think that they know that they can't get past them. I don't know. But either way, it seems like everybody's in here now. Oh, well, he's... Okay, you know, yeah. I didn't fix anything. Okay. What is that noise? What was that? Hello? Oh, God. Hello, buddy. Uh, that's not what I wanted to find over there. Oh, it's because there's, there's an octopus in my boat. That's what the noise is. Look at him. He's just chilling in there. How's it going, buddy? Hey, you know what? I'm going to give you a name tag. You're going to you're gonna stay. You're going to be my pet now. I want an aquarium for the villagers. Like, put a little aquarium under here for the villagers. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, actually. Um, Do you guys still sell me that axe? Have you refreshed your trade yet? You have, but it's not... Oh, okay, I don't have the emeralds for it. I guess I'm just going to have to go and try and repair it with diamonds again then. Won't have enough XP to repair it very much, but it should hopefully be able to cover the cost of part of the floor that I'm going to rip up. Okay, so boom, boom. That's going to be way too expensive. Oh, no, it's not actually. It's only seven. Damn. There we go. All right. Fully decked out diamond axe. Is that good? Oh, wait, no, that's a little bit too... That's too far, right? It's not on the stair, is it? No, it's in. Okay, and then we'll go around the sides with glass. Yeah, yeah, that would be pretty good. All right, let's just hope that there's no, like... I don't know, sharks and stuff down here. And also, let's hope that we have enough glass, because I feel like this is going to be... Uh, okay, we have enough for now, but I guarantee that that won't remain enough. Oh, yeah, we do not have anywhere near enough glass to do this. Yeah, no, that is... Uh... Yeah, we're severely lacking on that front. Okay. Okay, so I think I'm going to go and do some trades real quick to try and stack up on as much as I can from them. And then if that is just not going to be that efficient... I will go and grab just a bunch from the ocean floor. All right, not bad at all, actually. We only need just a little bit more, and then we should be good. So I'm going to hope that he restocks his trade. If not, what I'll do is I'll immediately go tonight and grab the sand and then just smelt it down overnight so that it's not just a boring task tomorrow. Okay, so I've still got about a stack smelting down between two furnaces, but this, I think, should at the very least finish off the sides and most of the floor. Okay, there we go. That did uh, that did pretty well, actually. We've only got, like, maybe, I'd say, like, 20 more for the bottom and then, like, maybe half a stack for the top, so that's not too bad. Now, how does this thing actually look from up here now? Eh, it don't look bad, to be fair. It looks, it looks quite nice. Now, if I place water down there, will that, like, then sort it out? It will, okay. But yeah, overall, that's pretty good, actually. Um, hopefully, they can't escape through this. I don't want to leave it open just for if. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wait for the rest of the glass to smelt down, and then we'll go, we'll finish that off, and then try the tedious task of trying to get that octopus in there. How am I going to get... Oh, God, how am I going to get him in there? Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to do this, then. Wait, he's green? What? Why is he changing color? What? What's happening to him? Is he an RGB octopus? <gasps> Oh, wait, no, octopus can change color, right? They go between, like, brownie, orange, then to, like, white, I think. I, I don't know. I know that they, some of them can. I don't know if all of them can. But I know that there's at least one that I have seen that has changed color. Didn't know they were RGB, though. I'm curious. If I make a piston, can I then just, like, push him onto land? <gasps> oh, my God, it worked. Oh, my God, it worked. Okay. Yes! Oh, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. Right, got to line you up properly. 
There we go, and boom, up we go. Hey, 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 there we go. It wasn't even that hard. I thought this was going to be a real pain, but no. Hello, friends. I have brought you, well, essentially, I would say entertainment, but he's a pet, not entertainment. Although he can work as both. Okay, there we go. Go in there. Go in there. Go in the water, damn it. No, water. In the water. Don't make me attack you. Get in the water. It's there, man. Get in the water. No. I am going to lose it with you, my good friend. Get in the boat. Get in the boat. If that didn't work, this will. There we go. He's in the water now. And he's straight back out. Ooh, you fiend. You absolute fiend. Where's he going? Oi. Oi, don't go over there. Get in the boat. Get. I've had it with you. Get in. Jesus. You don't make any more noise. He's getting trapped in there. He's going to have to go in like at the last second. I'm going to have to block him in real quick. I'm stuck. I'm literally stuck. Let me out. Okay, right. Will you fall in the water here? In, in. No. Son of a... Okay, you know what? He's a land octopus. He's a land octopus. I'm sure he's definitely gonna go... Actually, wait. Can I just... Wait, 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 wait. Go in there. No, no, no. Go in. 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 No. Oh, I hate this guy so much. Fine. Fine. Have it your way. Stay out. See if I care. I don't care anymore. I'm done with him. I'm done with him. He's dead to me. You know what I'm actually gonna do first today? You know what I'm gonna do first? Just straight away, straight off the bat. Where's that name tag? Wait, I had a name tag. Where is it? There it is. Right. I'm going to name this octopus something absolutely atrocious, all right? I'm going to name him a name that nobody wants to be named. I'm going to name him a name so foul that he'll wish that he went in the water. His name is Slug. That's his name. His name is Slug. Sluggy, where you at, buddy? There you are. Hello. Here, there you go, Slug. There you go, yeah, you slimy little guy. No one loves you, Slug. No one loves you. You know what, actually, the name's kind of cute. I actually like him again now. It's your own fault, though. You have access to the water. You just won't go in it. You can go in whenever you want. I'll leave it open. Maybe he'll go in at some point, but I highly doubt that. Okay, so let me go and replace these couple bits of leaf here. There we go. And then we'll head over to the island, and I kind of want to put a little shrine down for my doggy. Don't know how I'm going to build this thing. Don't know how it's going to look, um, but it'll be something. Okay, there we go. There's a shrine to my dog. It doesn't look like anything, but it's... I know what it means, okay? I know what it means. I, I understand the, the deeper meaning, the connection behind it, all right? I'm not even going to put a sign down for him. I, I didn't even have a name. I didn't even have a name. He literally just suffocated in a step over here, man. Like, you clearly wasn't destined to be with us. Okay, well, reflecting back on things, all right, us being on day 100 right now, I feel like we made some pretty wacky progress this video. Uh, a lot of wood used, if you couldn't tell. An absolute ton of wood used. We have a couple bees. I didn't expect to get these fellas. There is still the odd one or two that flew off over into the ocean, just into the great unknown abyss. We have a octopus named Slug, wherever he's gone. Hello, buddy. There he is. Look at him. That's Slug for you. But yeah, to end things off this time, I guess I'll open this last barrel that I found on the way over to the island. Ooh, actually, that was a pretty decent barrel. Got some obsidian and some iron. Not bad at all. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this new style of video and you want to see more, then please be sure to let me know by dropping a like and a comment down below. If things seemed a little weird pacing-wise or if the commentary was a little bit janky this time around, um, there was like a week break in between day 50 and like the rest of it. And it is my first attempt at this new style, so please let me know if you want to see more of it. And hopefully all the videos won't be as long as this one, but they should be pretty long. But yeah, there we have it. There's a hundred days on a raft. I think this was a pretty good one, all right? We built some pretty good stuff. It looks really nice, very symmetrical, very pleasing to the eye. And so with the end of that, it concludes our time in the oceans for now. And let's move on to something far, far above that feels just a little bit more claustrophobic. I'm, of course, talking about the time I spent in the never-ending blocky void known as One Block Skyblock. Okay, so on day one in this desolate void, I got started on breaking this magical block for the first time. And there was also some magical text telling me exactly what to do as well, so that was quite nice. Then all of a sudden a pig spawned and proceeded to very quickly despawn. I'm very sorry, buddy, but this block just isn't big enough for the both of us. Anyways, after the pig incident, I decided that it'd probably be a good idea to expand out the island a little bit so things weren't as cramped. I went back to mining the block after the expansion and ended up getting myself a water bucket, which I would then use to Spider-Man, I, I guess it'd be more like Aquaman my way down underneath the magic block to place another block. That way I can pick up all the gravity blocks that spawn such as sand and gravel. Anyway, I succeeded in my block placing mission and returned to mining when boom, 
I was now done with the tutorial and we were in the first of many phases. Now at this point I made myself some basic tools and came to the realization that I'll probably be stuck with these for a while so I decided to give them names. Meet Dave, Steve and Sir Alphonse the third. These lot are going to be my friends on this journey until I inevitably forget about them or worst case break them. After a little while longer breaking the block I ended up with a second chance of having a pig pet so I uh, put a little pen together for him and I'm sure he's happy with all the room he has in there. He's 100% free range and a happy pig. Don't question it. Oh wow, would you look at that? It's getting dark and I don't have a bed, so I guess it's time for me to stay up all night breaking this block. Oh look, there's a cow. Sorry buddy, I don't have any wood to make you a pen for now, so just chill over here like a good moo moo. So, after tirelessly mining for most of the night and going up a phase or something, I really don't know what happened, I think the block bugged out. Um, on the morning of day two, the island was starting to get a little bit crowded, so I started on some big expansion. You see, my plan for this 100 days is to make all my islands separate and connected in a grid-like pattern with bridges and each one having their own Theme. So I got to work on making my island the right size and then bridging out to start making the second island that I was going to use as a tree farm. Anyways, after using up most of my wood expanding, I uh, made some more fences and finally gave the pig some more room, as well as a couple of friends, which must be nice, because out of the two, I only have room. Uh, I do have Sir Alphonse, but he really doesn't talk to me much, he's more of a listening guy. God, I think I'm going crazy on day two. Anyways, back to mining and waiting for my trees to go, and oh boy, mine I did, until Steve met an untimely end by me breaking one too many dirt blocks with him. Goodbye, my good friend, you will be remembered. One pig and a cow late and I finally had a tree grow, then I promptly chopped it all down and now I have no trees again. How sad. It's okay though, because two blocks later I had a sheep and was one step closer to having a bed and never having to encounter phantoms. I also had a big brain idea to put a barrier around my block for in case it decided to turn on me and spawn mobs. I hoped that my slabs would keep them at bay and after another round of mining, some chickens and a pigo spawned and I was feeling too lazy to put them in the pen, so I let Sir Alphonse III do what he does best. And then he was back to mining all night because I don't have a bed still and I'd rather be productive than just sit here and do nothing. On day three, I started work on the tree farm island and managed to get the floor part done but didn't really get to finish adding the fences due to a severe lack of wood. But that's okay because now we have an infinite water source that will come in very, very useful later on. But for now, it's back to mining because I think I only have one more day to get a bed before the phantoms come and pay me a visit. Oh look, another pig. I, I swear these things are taking over my island. I'm, you know, I, I'm going to put a stop to it. Okay, back to mining. Oh look, another chest with a water bucket. I have four now and really don't know why I'm getting so many, but I'm not going to complain about it. Also, why does my block keep turning to bedrock and counting down and then not upgrading? Is it broken? I really hope not. Anyways, I got a second sheep, but there was no way for me to get the wool for a bed, so I just made a little shelter underneath this tree right here for in case the phantoms came. I also decided to block off the second island because it was dark over there and I really didn't want anything coming over here to mess my day up. And to be honest with you, it's lucky I did because this little guy tried to get the drop on me, but Alphonse dealt with him pretty swiftly and we got back to mining. Just as I was about to start getting really worried about the map being bugged, it finally happened. We went up a phase and now we can get stone. I was extremely happy about this, so I decided to kill a few of the animals around the area. I don't really know why, it's quite a stupid decision, but anyways, my happiness was quite short-lived because I started to get sniped by this skelly boy, so I just ran away and cowered until sunrise, and in the morning, I watched them all burn, except the lucky few that decided to hide under trees and didn't die, so now there's no way I'm going over there today. Now, day four, let me tell you, day four was a pretty productive day. I started out by making two more islands, one that I would use for my house area and the other one that I'd use for my animals. After a little wood gathering later, the islands were done and they started to feel a lot more secure with fences all around them. But by the time I was done expanding everything and placing fences, it was starting to get dark. So I decided to mine for a little bit and ended up getting our first piece of iron. So that was quite cool. But then I saw this skelly boy with an enchanted bow and didn't really want to take the chance of him having flame or knock back on it and killing me. So I decided to hide in my little tree fort for the rest of the night. On the morning of day five, after all the mobs were nice and crispy, I went out to try and deal with all the creepers that were still about. And well, <laughs> it went terribly. So then I had to basically spend the rest of the day repairing and lighting up all the islands so that this never happens again. And after wasting most of the day cleaning up the mess, the islands were starting to look a lot tidier. And then I decided to make some progress on my home island area. It was mainly just moving my chests over there, but hey, progress is progress. Anyways, I decided to end off this hectic day by making myself a bow, planting a few saplings, and then making up for last night's laziness by mining the block all night. 
After the shenanigans that went off on day 5, I wanted to feel productive, so on day 6 I chopped down my trees and made some more fences to go around the sides of the islands. After getting jumped by two zombies but quickly and easily dealing with them, I felt much safer. So I built myself a little hut on my home island and got to work on smelting down my iron so that I could make a shield. And now I'd feel a lot better about fighting creepers or anything for that matter. And also I know that the hut looks bad, trust me, I'll make it look a lot better later but for now it'll do. I also made a bed as well so that I can finally sleep and never have to deal with phantoms and let me tell you this was the best night's sleep I ever had. So I spent the entirety of day 7 just mining my way through the underground phase, collecting as much ore and cobble as possible, and I did almost die to a creeper, but you know, what's new? Anyways, by the end of the day, we had advanced to the next stage, the icy tundra, or whatever it's called, it was the icy snowy biome, and I wasn't really too fussed about mining anymore, so I went to bed. And on the following days, I started work on a brand new island that would be known as Griderlands. Uh, ooh, uh, well, maybe not. Maybe uh, it, it's Mobland. Or, uh, I'm building a mob farm with all the cobble I got yesterday. Okay, and the only reason I'm doing this is because I want a load of arrows to shoot at things, and also I wouldn't mind the random piece of iron dropping from killing a zombie. But anyway, I worked on the farm all throughout the day, into the night, and until the morning of the following day, when I went and chopped down some trees to get the last bit of wood I'd needed to finish placing the trapdoors, and boom! The farm was now done, so I headed down to test it, and oh boy, this thing works like a charm. It is so good. But after the success of building the mob farm, I uh, went to bed, and on the morning of day 10, I did what any logical person with a brand new mob farm would do. I used it for most of the day, mainly to test it out, and to also get some arrows and XP for in case I enchant later. I also finished securing the sides of the mob farm, as well as all the bridges connecting to it, and then um, when I went back to killing mobs, I ended up getting an enchanted bow that was pretty nice, it didn't have the best enchants, but hey, it was free, I can't complain. But then I noticed that the mob farm had suddenly stopped working, so I went to take a look at what the problem was, and I almost had a heart attack. You see, there was a bunch of creepers up there, blocking it all up so that nothing would drop down, and I really needed to fix this. So I towered my way up there, and ended up spending all night fixing it, so I got no sleep. And on the morning of day 11, I was feeling pretty groggy about that, so uh, I decided that I was sick of hearing the animals while mining the magic block, so it's time to get to work on moving them. So uh, I finally made an island for farming wheat, carrots, and potatoes, and with the help of some bone meal, I uh, had some crops ready immediately to start luring the animals to their new forever home, aka a small grid in which they cannot escape to spend all eternity. And by nightfall, all my animals were in their new home, so uh, I cleaned up the block island a little bit and then went to bed. Day 12 was a block breaking day, so not really much happened except me finding a wolf and then promptly taming it. His name is Duke, by the way, and I'm sure he will play a massive part in this video. Anyways, after making a friend, I decided to mine some more and ended up getting jumped by this very chilly boy that slowed me, but I killed him. And then my spirit animal came into existence, two arctic foxes that were then promptly attacked by two polar bears that just seemed to disappear. How, how strange. More mining later and a zombie moans in my ear signaling a monster party. It's okay though because I fought them like a man and then returned to mining for the rest of the night. Hey, look at that, it's a new phase. We can now get sand, which is very cool, I guess. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna bed. On days 13 to 16, I went out on a big island expansion spree because I had like four different types of saplings and I wanted to grow them all individually, so that's exactly what I set out to do. I started out by making an island for birch trees on the right and then an island for spruce trees in the middle and finally on the left should be dark oak trees, but I didn't have enough saplings to grow on, so it, it, it'll come later on. Anyways, I finished them all off by adding fences all around them and I also did a little bit of work on the farm in this time, but I really didn't do that much. Now, day 17 was spent at the mob grind. I needed more bones after growing all those trees, and well, I was also planning on making my house out of spruce and dark oak, and I was gonna need a lot of it. So, uh, yeah, pretty boring day for day 17, except the point where I almost died to a creeper. On day 18, after having a very successful day at the mob grinder, I almost had full leather armor, and I also noticed that I did have an extra dark oak sapling in my chest, so uh, I spent the day growing and chopping down as many spruce and dark oak trees as possible so that I could start work on my house soon. I also decided to take the time and add a new attraction to the theme park that I called Storage Island. Can you guess what's over there? That's right, it's a load of chests ready to be filled with my crap. I think it's going to be quite the popular attraction. Anyways, after my pockets were filled up with wood and my home was less filled with crap, I went to bed. And on the following three days, I got to work on my house. Now, I don't really know what I was going for, but I think it came out pretty good. Just, just take a look. 
And by the end of day 22, my house was done, and well, I'm really impressed with it. I didn't follow a tutorial or anything, and I'm quite bad at building, so I think it looks quite nice. With the house now being complete, day 23 was another block-breaking day, because we're now in the ocean phase, and well, I really wanted to get some fishies, and maybe even make a little aquarium area. And I also wanted to deal with killing the Guardians ASAP, because I hate them so much with a burning passion. They are the worst thing to grace this blocky void, and I wish hellfire upon them. Sorry, I really don't like Guardians. Anyway, not too long after starting the phase, some squid spawned that I tried to keep alive, but they're notoriously stupid and just didn't stay in the water, so they died anyway. Some time later, I ended up getting my first actual fish to spawn. It was a salmon, but hey, I'll take what I can get. I placed him in this little 2x2 two two area for now until I could make him a real home. And then it happened. My first Guardian fight, and they really messed me up. Alright, I'll tell you, they got a few good hits in, but I came out victorious and went straight back to mining my block. And soon after, some more fishy spawned, which I quickly added to the family. And as I was just beginning to forget about the Guardians, Big Papa came in and ruined my day by just existing. But not to worry though, because he doesn't exist anymore. And as night fell, so did a dolphin straight off the side of the island. Don't worry, it was 100% his choice, he wanted to go. But then just as I started relaxing, there was the zombie moan again, followed by three drowns. Bang, bang, each one hits me with their trident. I'm on half a heart and I tried to get away, but they're relentless. They're charging at me through the barricades. This is it, I am dead. There's no way out of this. I'm on half a heart. Boom, I block the trident with my shield and I run to my house. If I can just get up the ladder, I'm safe. I make it up there and I cower until my health returns, and now it's my turn. I easily pick up the one at the back that was separated from the rest of his friends. He's gone now, it's time for the other two. I slide down on my roof to the lower floors. This is it. I casually pop down, drop the first guy with ease, and finally end the final drowned, reclaiming my island. They never stood a chance anyways. Anyways, now that that's over, I continue to mine for the rest of the night, and not really much happened except an Elder Guardian coming unalive. By the morning of day 24, I was still mining trying to get out of the ocean phase when I found a chest with a music disc and three books that was quite nice to find. And I also ended up finding another diamond, but finally, after a day and a half straight of mining, I finally progressed to the next phase, and I spent the rest of the day organizing all my storage and just taking it easy. On day 25, I had a lot of fishies just chilling in a very small area, so I wanted to make them a nice place to live, so I got to work on building Aqua Island, the paradise for all fish. So here's the time lapse of that now, but let me tell you, it was very scary to build at first because I was terrified of falling and just dying. Also, I wasn't sure if the dead coral I had in my chest would be able to be saved if I put it in water, so I just I didn't do anything with it. But I did use this nice looking alive coral, which I placed down while I was waiting for the glass to smell. And when the glass was ready, I placed it all down, moved the fish over, and boom! Halfway through day 26, the aqua island was done, and it was looking pretty nice if I do say so myself. And now you may be wondering, hey poppers, what about the turtles? Well, don't worry, I have a plan for them very soon, but for now, I just need to go and get some more fences around my island, so I spent the rest of the day chopping wood and placing them down. Now, we're just over a quarter of the way done with this 100 days, and I've got to say, the islands are coming along pretty nice. They look quite good, and I can't wait to see how they look at the end. Anyways, on to day 27. I spent most of the day chopping oak trees down to restock on wood because I wanted to do some more expanding soon and didn't have any wood to do that. After stocking up on wood, I began work on a brand new island known as Turtle Island. However, this one was going to need more work than a normal island, so I didn't get it all finished in one day. So then on the morning of day 28, I continued with it and got it finished off by noon. And well, all I need to do now is bring over the turtles. So I made a boat and very slowly moved them over to their new home. And now I'm going to be honest with you, if I was a turtle, I'd be quite happy with this place. But anyways, I placed down my turtle egg, put a bit of kelp at the bottom, and boom, the island's now done, and they've got some happy turtles now. We've got some happy turtles. Day 29 was another block-breaking day, and we're now in the jungle dungeon phase, so I had no idea what to expect from this block. Anyways, I got to work on breaking the block and ended up finding two parrots, uh, quickly followed by two vex that were extremely annoying and I completely forgot existed, but now that I knew that they were on this phase, I was very, very cautious. Many blocks later, I ended up finding two... no, actually make that three ocelots and a panda and two witches that I then quickly dealt with, but not without being poisoned down to half a heart first. Then, I ended up finding a horse spawn egg that I was quite confused about, but uh, I put it down with the rest of the animals, but then it wasn't really important because immediately after I found two horses, so the egg really wasn't needed. 
And then, oh boy, it's time to almost die again. This time it was to Vex, and damn, these guys do damage. But it's it, it's okay, because I ran away, I cowered, I regen, and then I killed them. But no rest for the wicked, it's time to break more blocks. By the morning of day 30, my island was now full of noble steeds, and, well, I was also done with the jungle face, thank god, and had a lot more ideas of islands that I would get on with building straight away. So, I sorted out all my loot from the jungle phase and got to work on three more islands that I would aptly name Jungle Island, Bamboo Island, and Horse Island because I have so many of the bloody things that they get their own landmass. Next up on the list is Bamboo Island, so I went to bed and in the morning I got to work on it. Now, I'll just tell you that this island really didn't take long, except the fact where I grew a giant spruce tree in the middle to get the brown grassy stuff on the floor, I don't know what it's called, but I know that bamboo jungles naturally spawn with it and I thought it would look good. Anyways, after that I just planted some bamboo and that's really it. Bamboo Island was done. Now it's time for Horse Island and I, I know, I know it's quite underwhelming, right? But just, just hear me out, okay? I need to put grass here and then it'll look good, especially when I grow it with like, uh, with bone meal and it gets all the plains things. It'll look good then, but for now, it doesn't look that great. And plus, I don't really have a way to transport the horses over here right now because I don't have any leads, saddles, and they won't go in a boat. So it's kind of just a, an island of floating dirt for now. Anyways, on day 32, I connected all the new islands together with bridges and then secured the sides of them with fences and then got to work on making a very awful looking dirt line from the grass of the birch island all the way over to the dirt of the horse island in hopes it would spread and eventually there'd be grass over there. So we'll come back and check on that later. Anyways, I decided to move the panda over to the bamboo island because I thought they'd be much happier over there and on the journey, this man spawned. I didn't really care initially, but then I realized that he has leads that I can use for the horses later. So I swiftly deleted the llamas, took the leads and then took the panda over to its new home. And by this point, it was starting to get dark. So I lit up the new islands and called it a day. Now on day 33, I was running quite low on food. So I tended to my farm, harvesting all my wheat and potatoes and I did check on the grass progress but well it, it really didn't do much so given that i'll be waiting a while for that to spread or go anywhere or do anything i came up with a very cool but very very risky idea you see i wanted to transform all of these segments between my islands into little bodies of water for two reasons number one it looks cool and number two it adds some amount of safety to the place but mainly because i think it would look cool anyways i decided to build the first one out of a mix of cobble and mossy cobble just to see how it had come out and well i don't think it looked that bad i think it was looking pretty good and i was really liking it but i didn't like the fact that the horses found their way in there and then i had to spend most of the night transporting them back to their temporary little home Day 34 started out with me filling the new cool looking safety pool thing with water and now I definitely think that I should do one of these at each segment because they just look so nice. Especially now that I knew that I could bone meal the bottom of the water to make seagrass and also add some lanterns to make it look extremely nice, I knew what I was going to spend the next few days doing. That's right, I worked on making most of the intersections into a water paradise for three days. I harvested vines to make more mossy cobble and I used quite a bit of my iron for lanterns but oh boy look at the end result and tell me it wasn't worth it it just looks so good and especially at night now this does tear through materials pretty quickly but i mean there's no rush we can just admire the work that we've done so far and build more later so on day 37 after building for two days straight without a break i decided to grind out the mob farm all day because all that water placing really used up all my bone meal and uh, i needed more bones to continue with the water pools so uh, yeah i really didn't do anything except stand there and swing my sword at defenseless mobs all day hey day 38 you never gonna guess what we did we broke the block all day that's right i needed more cobble and this was the only way i could get it so uh yeah this was the uh it was quite a weird phase it was the red sands or whatever it's basically a mesa but it's it's, it's kind of strange uh but this phase actually ended up being pretty lucrative for me i found a llama and then i found some diamonds that then got eaten by a fox so then i had to bribe the fox with food to drop them um, and then I found a villager, which I swiftly trapped in a boat to trade with later. Then I found a wandering trader named Joe, who suffered the same fate as a villager. And then I found some donkeys, and shortly after that, a monster party. But no worries, I've dealt with a lot worse than a few husks and weaponless vindicators. Well, would you look at that? There's another villager. Guess where they're going? That's right, in a boat. More mining later, I got jumped by three husks and found another trader. Killed more defenseless illagers, and boom, next phase by day 39. Oof, I'm glad that's over. Anyway, I spent the rest of day 9 sorting out all my crap because there was a lot of it. Day 40. Oh boy, um, we're approaching the halfway point pretty quickly. Uh, I made a sugar island on day 40. It's a sugar cane farm, if you couldn't have guessed. Um, 
I needed this because I've made no progress on enchanting and I really wanted to be ready by the time I got the obsidian. So uh, I got to work and soon enough we had a fully functioning sugarcane farm. After the farm was done, I went and harvested my wheat and started to breed some cows for the rest of the day because uh, I really needed leather as well. Okay, days 41 to 45, I got a lot of stuff done. First off, we made an island for cacti because I had some and still hadn't made a farm yet. So yeah, that's it. And I also wanted to get you some use out of the red sand stuff that I got last phase. So yeah, anyways, uh, then I made one for acacia trees to keep with the theme of tree islands. And then finally one that would become the home of my two villagers that I would hopefully make into more villagers. But that's like a passive thing that will happen in future. So we won't worry about that. Anyways, after all three islands were done, I moved my villagers into their new home, and it was pretty nice. It had beds, it had a little farm, it had little windows to look out of, and I'm sure that they'll be happy there for all eternity. Also, during this entire time, I was passively breeding the cows, and we now have quite a lot of them, so leather should no longer be a problem. Also, I think it's time for us to check up on our dirt eyesore path thing that's spread in the grass, and, well, we still have a very long way to go, but I don't know why it's spreading so slowly. By day 46, I had enough cows to start culling them for leather, and after dealing with the cows, I uh, went and made two books and used my bookshelf to make a lectern that I took over to the villagers, and after two refreshes, I had myself a mending book for 24 emeralds. What a steal! So I quickly snatched up this offer, but I didn't have enough iron to make myself an anvil, so I kind of just put it in a chest and left it there, and then made myself a diamond pickaxe, and on the morning of day 47, I got to work on mining the block again. To stock up on iron and to hopefully get one step closer to getting obsidian for enchanting. But uh, I was feeling pretty good about getting obsidian considering we're in the nether phase now. And oh boy, was this an eventful phase. Uh, first off, we got jumped by two piglins that I killed one of them and then realized I could trade with the other one. So I got my drip on and tried to trade with him. But it turns out they kind of turned into zombie pigmen in the overworld. So uh, I, I killed him. Uh, it was quite sad, but it's okay because shortly after... After I found some ancient debris, I, I didn't know that this could spawn in one block. And then finally, immediately after, we found some obsidian. And well, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I have never been so happy to mine this block in my entire time playing Minecraft. Now, I just need three more and I can enchant. I also found this Vindicator spawn egg and I don't know really why I would ever use that thing, but whatever, I guess I'll take it. Then I had a big brain idea and decided to grow some of this uh, warped netherrack so that I could make some warped biome islands later because it's the only way I can pick it up because I don't have silk touch. So uh, yeah, pretty big brain idea right there. Um, and then everything went downhill. You see, uh, blaze exists and my entire structure is outlined with wood. So uh, some stuff went down and uh, well, all my hard work almost went up in smoke. But luckily I acted fast and there was only some minor damage and some animals with third degree burns. But after that incident, I got back to mining and somewhat fireproof the island a little bit to avoid that ever happening again. One gas jump scare later and we're making our way through the nether phase pretty smoothly. Hey, look at that. I found a, some red nether grass and a wither skull. So let's go, I guess. Oh god, not you again. Right, another monster party. It's okay though, because this one was easy. Just one tap the gas to kill the piglins, snipe the blaze and boom, peace is restored. After almost another entire day of mining, I found a lava bucket and some nether wart and then boom, next phase. Finally, that was the most hectic phase yet, but also the most lucrative. I mean, just look at all the stuff we got. And we can also get some netherite stuff now, so uh, I think it was definitely worth almost burning down my island. Ah, day 50, the big 5-0, the big marker, the halfway point. Um, I just sorted out all my storage because I wanted everything to have its own place and actually give Storage Island more of a role in this video. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty boring day. Let's, let's move on. With the nether phase now being over and done with, we now have a lot more blocks at our disposal so you know what that means it's building time so let's just start ourselves off with a nice simple nether wall farm you know not too fancy don't take up too much time but it's very much so needed for potions now next up we have the warped island my all-time favorite nether biome and for this one and the crimson one i had to place netherrack all the way from the magic block all the way to the back of these islands here to then grow the grass stuff over here but anyways a few shroom trees later and boom it's looking pretty good on to the crimson one Now, I don't know why these trees grow so tall, but it's kind of cool seeing them all unobstructed like this. Anyways, when I was done with the nether islands, I realized that I had quite a lot of cobblestone again, so uh, I made a few more water intersections, but didn't add any lanterns because I needed my iron to make an anvil, and I really didn't want to waste any of it. So on the morning of day 55, I made myself an anvil, almost using up all of my iron, and finally made myself an enchantment table, and with it came enchantment islands. That's right, the one-stop shop to enchant your gear. 
but I still didn't have enough stuff to make all the bookshelves. So I went and harvested some sugarcane, called some cows, and now finally we can enchant. After 54 days of being weak, I can finally feel true power. He says as he enchants his pickaxe and... Well, that's it because he's too poor to make the armor. But no, I did enchant my sword, but it was a really bad enchant. And instead of putting it in a grindstone like a smart person, I wasted two more iron to make another sword and get yet another bad enchant. So, uh, yeah, I uh, put mending on my pick and went to bed. And on day 56, I went and mined the block again, this time hoping to make hella bank with my newly enchanted Fortune 3 pick. And, uh, well, if you thought the nether phase gave me some good stuff, wait until you see this absolute joke of a phase. First off, I got Silk Touch, which I can now mine grass and stuff, so uh, I have no need for the dirt I saw anymore. Thank God. And then we got bees, we got emeralds, we got diamonds, we got lots of lapis, we got skelly horses, we got whatever the hell this thing is, we got stacks of quartz, we got potions, we got iron, we got coal, we got basically everything and it was an absolute walk in the park because the only thing that attacked me during this entire phase was bees and well they can't kill you really so there's no worries easy clap let's get some more builds done so as soon as day 59 came into existence i ran out of my house to get rid of that awful pile of dirt and then i went around placing grass everywhere that needed it and now finally things are starting to come together i moved all the horses to horse island and now the name actually works for it and then i uh, went to check up on the villagers which there was now three of so i made him an armorer so that i can trade emeralds to get some diamond armor from him and then i got to work on stacking up on paper wheat and potatoes to trade for more emeralds to level up my armory boy. Now, by the end of the day, I'd completely exhausted all my bone meal reserves and I went to bed. And on day 60, I stood at that mob grinder all day just to restock my bone supply. Now, all I did for the following two days is harvest and regrow all of my crops from dawn till dusk each day to stack up on as many of them as I could do. Until on day 64, I returned to my villagers and began trading with them. And let me tell you, we were in the money. We were leveling them all up. We were getting deals. We were getting better and better armor. It was great. Now, they did keep running out of stock, but that's okay because we finally managed to grab our very first piece of diamond armor and we'll keep trading with them passively over the next few days. Anyways, I picked up all the iron armor from all over the floor and uh, made an auto smelter and then put it all in there to smelt down into iron nuggies so that I can get some iron from it. <laughs> I'm being quite resourceful. Anyways, while that was smelting down, um, I went round and replaced some of the torches around my house with lanterns because I can trade for them now and, well, they look better than just normal torches. Now, on day 65, we welcome yet another island into the family, but this one is a pretty drastic one. Say hello to Nether Portal Land, or whatever you want to call it. You see, I noticed that I had eight obsidian left after making the enchantment table, and the nether phase ended up giving me three lava buckets. So I thought, well, I can use those, turn them into obsidian, and then if I need a lava bucket for anything else, I can just pick some more lava up from the nether so it was a win-win situation all round and yes i know the nether portal's out of place i'll fix it later but for now at least we can go in there but we're not going to because i've come too far to lose all of this to some stupid nether spawn so i don't want to go in there until i have at least iron armor so once again i uh, harvested all my crops and i also went and enchanted a hoe with fortune because i think that it gives you more drops but i'm not too sure on that anyways i went back over to the villagers and ended the day off with another piece of diamond armor we're now halfway there on day 66, I woke up and decided to make myself a grindstone, and then crafted myself a diamond chestplate, a diamond sword, and a diamond axe. Now all I need is to trade for a diamond helmet. Anyways, then I went to go and enchant them all, and ended up getting pretty good rolls all the way around, except, well, maybe my boots and my axe could have been better, so, so really my chest piece was pretty good, but either way, I'll, I'll re-enchant them all later. After the enchantment session, I uh, returned to my villagers to buy the final piece of armor and take one step closer to bring this journey to an end. And now, finally, at long last, we have full diamond armor, with pretty damn good enchants as well, may I say. And now it was time to really start preparing for the end, so uh, I tended to my nether wall farm and then spent the rest of the day at the mob grinder to get some XP back. And on day 67, I went and enchanted my helmet, but ended up getting a very meh enchant. Anyways, then I spent basically the rest of the day growing and cutting down oak trees, that way I can get some apples to make some golden apples, because why wouldn't I want them? Um, and then at the end of the day, I made a brewing stand so that I could start making potions ASAP. And finally, on day 68, it was time to head into the nether and see what we could find. Now, I was hoping to find a blue biome so that I could actually get some enderpearls, and it's obviously my favorite biome, but uh, I didn't spawn in or near one. 
And after looking around for a while, I decided that my best bet to get pearls was probably to trade with Piglin. So uh, I set out and eventually found one. But well, after about 10 minutes of trading, he gave me absolutely zero pearls. So uh, after some heavy gold mining and a fight with a magma cube, I tried again with these two lovely Piglins right here. And well, I ended up getting some fire res, which was nice. And then after all that gold, I got two pearls, which was an absolute scam. So uh, in my search for more gold, I did actually end up finding a blue biome, and not only that, but I saw a Bastion too, and decided to head home, clear out my inventory, and then at least try to take on the loot area of that Bastion. So on day 71, I returned to the nether, and I was feeling pretty nervous about this entire Bastion idea, but it's okay, I've done it before, it's fine. I, um, I decided to go in a very sneaky approach, as opposed to running straight in, because, well, there were a lot of piglins, and I really didn't want to make them mad, so uh, I began to tunnel through the belly of the beast slowly, making my way to each chest and looting it and well to be honest with you I got two ancient debris and pig steps so I'll call that a win anyways after sneaking my way back outside of the bastion I saw another piglin near my portal so I decided to trade with them a little bit and ended up getting two more pearls so uh, not a bad way to end off the day anyways I returned home I sorted out all my loot and then I called it a day and went to bed I basically opened up my own brewery with how many potions I was making on day 72 to 75 all I did for these three days was literally farm nether wart and make the essential potions that would help me fight the dragon because I was taking no chances whatsoever. I'd come too far in this world to lose it all to a stinky dragon. Anyways, I brewed potions of slow falling, potions of instant health, and potions of swiftness, and then proceeded to make them better with redstone and glowstone. After brewing all my potions, I put them in a safe chest and then went and fixed my nether portal island, trying to make it look more like I actually planned to. On day 76, I smelted down all my ancient debris and ended up crafting myself two, that's right, two netherite ingots, which I then decided to use on my chest plate and leggings for some extra protection. You can never be too careful in hardcore Minecraft. Anyways, I re-enchanted my sword and got a lot better enchant, and then I did the same for my helmet and, well, it was okay. After my re-enchantment session, I headed over to the villagers and gave them some more beds so that they could breed some more. And then I uh, went and upgraded my bow with other ones I had laying around. But didn't have enough XP to fully upgrade it, so I headed to the mob grinder just to top off my XP, and boom! Now we have a strong bow, aptly named Ow, because I imagine that's the sound someone makes when they get hit by it. Day 77. It's that time again, everybody. Time for another block-breaking day. How amazing. Um, I didn't know what to expect from a stage called the Desolate Lands, so to prevent my islands from becoming desolate, I uh, encased the block in anything I could get my hands on, and yeah, I know it doesn't look bad, but don't worry, it's temporary. Anyways, this phase took very little time to let me know what I was in store for by spawning a bunch of silverfish, two creepers, and then jump scaring me with skeleton horsemen. And then once again, it was time for me to almost die again, because a bunch of evokers spawned in and then swarmed me with vex, which quickly took my health down, but luckily I managed to equip a totem in time and run away. I then lured some Vex into the nether portal, which I'm sure is not a bad idea, and they will definitely not come back to haunt me later on. And just as I thought it couldn't really get any worse, the block still had a lot of tricks up its sleeve, such as charged creepers, a lot of them, and then cave spiders, a lot of them, and then the worst monster party so far. We had silverfish, we had cave spiders, we had evokers. Oh boy. So uh, I sniped the spiders, I dealt with the silverfish, I pushed swiftly in, putting an end to the evokers, and then dealt with the remaining vex with a bow. Um, and there we go, they're all dead. More charged creepers and vex later, and we're finally done with this phase, thank god. Um, and now we're on to the final stage, the end, and we're almost done. So on the following few days, after the three hellish days I'd just endured, I decided to spend some more time working on the water intersections and ended up getting the last two done, and this time actually added lanterns, because I was no longer poor and could easily spare the iron. And then I spent the rest of the day going around and removing all the fences from around them, and just like that we had a very open area that looks quite weird right now, but I'm sure it'll grow on me. Anyways, on day 83 I headed over to my animal island and sheared the sheep all day. I wanted as much wool as I could get my hands on because I wanted to make some beds for two reasons. Number one, I wanted to find netherite, and number two, I may use them to kill the dragon, but I don't know about that second one though because it's a little bit risky. Um, I also named my arctic fox Peppermint because I love arctic foxes and well, I had a name tag just laying around and I may as well put it to use. Anyways, at the end of the day, I put all this wool in a chest and I'm not going to lie to you, I never touched it again, so that is literally just a big waste of time. And on day 84, I finally removed the ice ore from in front of my house and then went into the nether to trade for some more pearls. Oh look, it's that Vex from earlier, and oh look, I'm almost dead again, thanks to a Vex. 
Anyways, trading went okay. I got four more pearls. It's still not enough, though, so I uh, headed to the blue biome to kill Enderman. Now, I don't know what was up, but the, uh, the Endermen were far and few between. For some reason, there really wasn't much life at all in this biome, but after being in here a good while, I committed enough Enderman no live to, uh, to have enough pearls to fill the portals. So we're now good on pearls. So I headed home and uh, put all my stuff away and called it a day. And now finally, on day 87, it was time to begin the final phase. And to be honest with you, this was really easy. It was just mainly Enderman, a uh, few Endermites, and then the odd Shulker, which I killed, and now I can make, like, two Shulker boxes. So that's uh, that's nice, but there was really nothing else happened this phase. It was kind of boring, to be honest. But finally, the portal spawned, and I knew that it was time to make the final preparations. And now on day 89, I made my Shulker boxes, and I got to work on organizing everything I would need to take with me. Now, I was also planning on going and killing the dragon, and then heading in the end cities to get the Elytra, so I was thinking about bringing some fireworks with me, but forgot to. But anyway, by the end of the day, we were ready to face the dragon. Well, this is it. The morning of day 90, I stood looking down at that portal and the thinking about how far we'd come. From one block to now having loads of islands and thriving with animals and being fully kitted out with diamond gear, even some netherite, and I'm not even worried at this point about losing to the dragon. But we'd come such a long way and it was now finally time for me to prove that I had what it takes to truly beat one block skyblock. So I placed the final eyes into the frame and stepped through the portal. This is it, no turning back. I run directly to one of the towers and begin towering up, destroying a couple of crystals from the top and then falling off, but it's okay because I have slow falling. Then I immediately begin towering up another pillar and from there it was only a matter of time. Each crystal fell to my bow with ease. And now all that was left was the dragon. I took a few pot shots and then it came into perch. This was it. This was my shot for big damage. I rushed in, swinging my sword at its neck, taking off chunks of its health with every single swing. But then the coward flew away. So it was time for me to pull the bow back out again, and shot after shot, I hurt it until it came into land again. I got more big damage off, but it got a lucky hit on me, so I couldn't finish it off. Then I lined up my shots carefully, and arrow after arrow struck the dragon, until my final shot put an end to the dragon, freed the end, and completed my overarching goal. Now all I needed to do was get myself an elytra and get the hell out of here. So I headed to the portal and once I got inside I took a pearl of faith and landed it. But then there was really nothing around the area so I bridged and bridged and bridged until I got within pearl radius of more islands so I hopped over there and then got absolutely ambushed by Enderman and I thought that I was gonna die. Uh, no, it was just a silly endermite they were angry at, and they're still chill with me. Thank God. Now, let me tell you, okay, I was in here for a very long time and found nothing. Until, well, I eventually found an end city, but it had awful loot and no elytra. So, I continued my search and gracefully flew down from the top of the city. Anyways, I found two more end cities after that, but didn't even bother going in them because they didn't have the elytra. But finally, about an hour and 15 minutes later, I finally found a city with the ship. Finally. Now let's go and get the elytra. I scurried my way up to the towers until I reached the staircase to the ship and then using a shulker's levitation to get me high enough, I pearled over, ran down the stairs below the deck, and finally, at long last, we had the elytra and also a pretty cool sword as well. Anyways, I jumped off the ship and sailed through the air until we reached the closest portal out. And then I hopped through. No, wait, no, sorry. And then I hopped through. There we go. But finally, after over an hour, we were finally home, and I finally went to bed. On the morning of day 97, I sorted some things out with my inventory, and then I went back in to retrieve the dragon egg, and then upgraded my sword, and finally put mending and unbreaking on my elytra, and then proceeded to repair my elytra. Now on day 98, we added the final island of this journey, Dragon Egg Island. And uh, well, I really hope I don't click it and it fall off the edge, if it can even do that. But uh, either way, the island was done and I made some fireworks so that I could finally see my area for the first time from like the sky point of view. And I'm gonna tell you, I I'm pretty impressed with it. It looks pretty cool. Anyways, after flying about for a bit, I uh, cooked myself some potatoes and mined the block for a little because I was kind of curious what came after the end, but it, it it's quickly spawned two Vindicators and yeah, no, I, I wasn't dealing with that again. So uh, I called it a day and went to bed. On day 99, I made some final adjustments to the island, such as replacing all the torches with lanterns, or at least as many as I could just because they look better. Um, and then I went around just making little changes to everything so that I could finally be done with this place and be happy how it turned out. And just like that, the sun was going down on our final day.
And finally, on day 100, I thought about how far we'd come from just having one block and nothing to now having everything you could ever want, plus a pet fox named Peppermint. I mean, who doesn't want that? Who I then said goodbye to, and now it's time for me to say goodbye to you. Alrighty, so on day 101, aka my first day back in this blocky void, I, uh, I got my bearings by going around and just kind of remembering where everything is. And also saying hello to the best pet ever, my arctic fox named Peppermint. Look at this cutie, I've missed you buddy, I've missed you. And then after saying hello to Peppermint, I immediately got to work on breaking the magical block again. Hello old friend, what surprises do you have in store for me in this 100 days? Oh, do you look at that, very nice, a, a chest, I'll take it. Oh, uh, another chest with a zombie villager spawn egg, okay. Now, after mining the block for a little while, I remembered how hard it was to keep up with all of the random blocks just filling up your inventory every two seconds from mining this block. So I decided to start things out right uh, and tidy up the chests that I've got to store all my random block items in. That way I can, you know, have more space for the inevitable rain of blocks that will just continuously fill everything up. However, while storing everything away, uh, I kept getting confused about what went where, so I decided to use what little leather I had and made some item frames to start labelling my chests so that storing things was way easier. But I didn't have enough leather to make enough item frames to cover all my chests, so I went to bed and on day 102 I got up and started breeding and dispatching the cows for leather. And now luckily my sword has a looting too, so it really didn't take me long. After grabbing all the leather I needed, I uh, made and placed down all the item frames and got to work on tidying this absolute mess of a storage system. Jeez, past, past poppers was a, was a slob I tell you, holy. And whilst I was sorting everything out, I found 33 leather in the chest, so uh, those cows um, disappeared for nothing. Anyways, after spending all day and night organizing everything, I was finally done and each item had its own organized space. So, on the morning of day 103, I decided to go and pay the villagers a visit to see what trades and stuff they had and whether they had anything useful to me still at this point. So, after the villager inspection, I got to work on our first project of this 100 days. To finish off all of my water aqueducts between my islands so that things look much safer and much better. So I made myself a brand new island that you all really wanted last time, Cobblestone Gen Island. Yeah, I, I know it doesn't really roll off the tongue or, or look good, but we need it. Anyways, after making this lovely new island, I mined cobblestone all night until the morning of day 104, when I'd ended up with quite a lot of cobble. So I grabbed some vines over at the jungle island and made myself some mossy cobble and then went to start work on the new aqueducts. Okay, so now back to the aqueducts. I uh, managed to really work hard and get three of them done. And I'm not going to lie to you, I kind of forgot how good these things looked when I uh, had them all finished and neatly tucked in. It looked really nice. I think they're genuinely one of the best ideas I've ever had in a skyblock ever. So uh, yeah, very nice. Moving on to day 107, after doing some building for a few days, I decided to return to doing my favorite thing in one block skyblock which was mining the block. Woo, yeah, you, you gotta love it. Uh, but no, I, I really needed iron and didn't feel like making an iron farm just yet, so uh, mining the block it is. After a while of mining this god-awful thing again, I actually ended up finding myself a piece of ancient debris, quickly followed by a vindicator that I ended up sniping from existence. But as soon as I got back, I uh, ended up getting swarmed by a load of endermites. And, well, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I don't really feel like I'm being welcomed back here. I, you know, I, I really don't think that they want me to be here for another 100 days, but I am, so they're just gonna have to deal with it. Anyways, I ended up finding a fish that I, uh, I tried to pick up but ended up shooting. I, I'm sorry, little buddy, but as compensation, okay, I saved it, and now he lives in a lovely aqueduct, so uh, happy ending for the fishy. Anyways, as night fell, we encountered our first monster party, and, well, it was actually pretty easy. It was just a couple of zombies and strays, N nothing too special, surprisingly. But after dealing with all those, I grabbed what little iron I'd found during the day and headed home to smelt it down and just chilled out for the rest of the night. And on the morning of day 109, I decided to head into the end where we were greeted by some survivors of a previous monster party. So uh, I dealt with them and headed into the portal to the outer end islands in search of a city that I could then take down and rebuild on an island in the overworld that would be geniusly called, are you ready for this? End City Island. Hey, I bet you didn't see that one coming. Anyways, I eventually found a city pretty quickly because I uh, actually have the elytra this time and began taking it down and putting it into my shulker. After destroying and boxing up enough of the city to rebuild it, I uh, headed home, made another island and got to work on building this beautiful city, but this time in the overworld. And well, I'm very happy with how this came out. You know, I think this one came out looking pretty good. What do you think? 
Anyway, so after building the city on day 114, I got to work on chopping down and regrowing a load of oak trees specifically because I needed more wood to expand into more islands. So uh, yeah, day 114, just a very boring wood gathering day. And then on day 115, inspiration struck me and I ran over to my storage, grabbed a load of prismarine and got to work on yet another new island called Ocean Monuments I Hate You. Uh, and yeah, it's literally just a mini ocean monument that I think looks pretty cute. Uh, I don't know, I really like it. Now, it also, if you want to build this for yourself, I'll leave a link to the tutorial that I based it off of in the description below. Go check it out. Alright, so on the following few days, I mined cobble and got to work on pre-building an entire layer of new islands on the outside of the ones that I'd already made, just to really make things easier for myself in the future. Now, I actually decided to use stone bricks for the floors and bridges because, well, I think they look better and I'm not as poor as I was in the last 100 days, so, uh, yeah, it's time for an upgrade. Although, it did take a little bit longer to do and it ate up all my wood and cobblestone. And yes, I know they don't look amazing with just being stone brick and wood, but that's okay, I'll change them per island to what I build on the island, if that makes any sense. Anyways, after spending such a long time on building up these islands, they were finally done, and oh my, this area we have now is massive. So, we better get to filling all of these islands up ASAP. So on day 125, I headed into the nether and went exploring until I stumbled across a bastion that I uh, swiftly cleared out and looted. And there was some pretty decent stuff in here, so I'm not going to complain, it was, a, it was a nice find. Anyways, I looted it and returned home to store my stuff away and went to bed. Kind of a simple day on day 125. Okay, so on these next few days, my OBS just decided to not record any of it, so uh, let me give you a little diagram and explanation of what happened. So basically, I headed into the nether to find a fortress to grab some wither skelly skulls because I wanted to make a load of beacons, and because I'd never found a fortress last time. Anyways, I ended up finding one, but it was really doo-doo with, like, no areas for Wither Skeletons to spawn, so I just went out and found another one that ended up being absolutely huge, and, uh, well, there were a load of Wither Skellies here, so I spent, like, an hour or so just dispatching them for their skulls, and eventually I got 14, and then headed back home because I already had one in my chest from last time. I think I found the one last time in a chest or something, but, but anyways, and now we're back to normal, okay? Sorry about that, OBS just decided to not happen. So, on the day following the OBS incident, I uh, headed into the end and grabbed some obby from the pillars to set up a totally legit way to kill the wither, and then just kind of removed five withers from existence, but uh, when it got to the last one, I completely forgot to pick up the extra skull I had in the chest, so uh, I went and grabbed that, deleted the last wither, and boom, we now have five beacons and just need the resources to power them. So, on day 132, I made myself a new diamond pickaxe and began enchanting it in an attempt to get silk touch on it, so that way I could go into the nether and grab a load of gold, because that was probably going to be the fastest way that I'd be able to get enough material blocks to power five full beacons. Not for one layer or two layers or three, but the four layer OP beacons. So I actually ended up getting silk touch pretty quickly and then uh, headed straight into the nether and began work on mining loads and loads of gold. Now let me tell you, this was extremely tedious and annoying. Especially with a random piglin just attacking you every other second or a gas blowing you to smithereens. It was just annoying. But after being in there and mining gold for what felt like a literal eternity, we finally had enough gold for five full beacons, depending if my math was correct. And, uh, well, I'm going to let you know, it wasn't. It was very wrong. It was so very, very wrong. It, I barely had enough for one beacon, okay? I don't know how I got this all wrong, all right? So I ended up actually grabbing this much when I, in fact, needed this much. And, uh, well, there was only a small difference between the two. Anyways, so I quickly headed back into the nether just to grab a little bit more gold and then built all my beacons, except the only one that was actually a full four level beacon was the one in the middle and then the other ones were just shells. So if anybody asks, all right, we, we built five full beacons, all right, just tell them not to look inside them, otherwise they'll be gravely disappointed. Anyways, I added some stained glass on top of them and boom, here is the result of a good seven days of hard work. And I must say, okay, I must say, it is quite impressive how far we've come from just one lonely little block in the middle of nowhere to this absolutely beautiful island, okay? And we're going to keep making it even better. Alrighty, so on the following two days, I tended to my farm to stack up on resources to trade with the villagers because I've got a really big project coming up that I'm going to need a lot of glass for. 
And, well, I'm pretty sure trading stuff with villagers for glass is the best way to get it. So, uh, yeah, I tended to the crops for a few days. And by the night of day 140, we were absolutely stacked on everything growable. So, on the morning of day 142, I headed over to the villager breeder and began stacking up on emeralds and then blowing them all on glass. Anyways, after filing for bankruptcy due to the amount of emeralds I spent on glass, I uh, stored it all away in this very lovely chest and then went to bed. And on day 143, I got to work on making a load of magenta dye. Now, I already have quite a lot from when I remade the glass for the end city because I knew that I was going to be doing this, but uh, well, I don't think that that'll be enough. So I quickly farmed out some beetroot and broke some lapis and bone meal down into dye, and after combining them a few times, boom, we now have a load of magenta dye. So I turned all my glass purple, and now begins somewhat of a time-consuming project. So you know the water intersections that I made prior? Well, I wanted to make those on the outside, but instead of putting water there, I wanted to make a purple void between the islands because, I don't know, I think it'll look cool. So I got to work on carefully placing down as much magenta stained glass as I could around the outer islands. And well, I'm going to be honest with you, I severely underestimated the numbers once again, and this was not enough glass. So uh, I traded some more and also decided to change the uh, the design slightly and add a layer of blackstone underneath after I'd finished it all. And it wasn't even that scary placing it, considering I have the elytra now, so falling didn't mean non-existent. Anyways, this project took quite a substantial amount of time, but eventually, after repeating the process of destroying a bastion and trading with villagers for glass and placing everything down, we finally have a very nice looking void around our islands. And well, I shall say it looks pretty nice. Anyways, after that entire long and tedious building segment, I decided to farm out the mob farm all day to stack up on bones and any other mob drops because I had a plan to build something, but it involved me removing the mob farm because it, it's just an eyesore at this point. So I decided I may as well grab a load of stuff from it before it goes bye bye. Oh, and I also upgraded my bow again because it definitely needed more power. Now it makes things crispy. So on the following couple days, I spent all day taking down the mob farm and finally began work on building my little pet arctic fox his own snowy paradise right next to my house. With spruce trees and berries, and I think it came out looking pretty nice. I feel like he'll be very welcome and at home here. I mean, just look at him. He looks very happy in there. Okay, so I realize that this is kind of a heavy build video, but uh, I mean, that's kind of the point of one block skyblock, so uh, we continue with building ourselves a mini desert temple, because these mini builds are kind of cool. But I don't think this one came out looking as good, okay? It's, it's not that great, but, but hey, I, I tried. Anyways, after building the desert temple, I called it a day and went to bed. And then on the morning of day 157, I woke up and built a jungle temple. And well, this thing came out looking a little bit better than the desert temple, but maybe not as good as the ocean one, but still kind of cool. I, I like it. I like it. Anyways, after building for quite a few days, I decided to spend the day breaking the block again. After all, it is the title of the video. But well, almost immediately lost everything to an angry blaze trying to burn down my house. Honestly, I can't think of a better way to start my day. But after swiftly dealing with them, I got back to mining when I was jumped by some piglins, and man, I guess it's just not my day today. But my luck did get better because I found some more ancient debris, so uh, I'm not going to complain. But unfortunately, my happiness was short-lived when these two Satan spawn appeared. Just look at them. Awful. Disgusting. Blech. Anyways, I mined deep into the night and actually ended up finding a Heart of the Sea, which I'll probably never use, so that's, uh, that's super useful to me. Thank you, one block. After mining through the night and nothing else really much happening except finding another villager, on the morning of the next day I put him in a boat and finally set the fox free from its boat. And then I set out to build another island that I'd like to call Lone Villager Island, where it will just be this guy, in a house, and nothing more. He will spend all eternity living in a 15 by 15 chunk of blocks away from all his friends. Anyways, after the house was done, I put the villager in there and boom, we now have Lonely Villager Island. Okay, so on day 161, I decided it's finally time to replace all the torches around my island with lanterns. So I traded with this fine librarian right here for lanterns because they're actually really cheap. Then after trading with him for a while and grabbing enough lanterns, I went around replacing all the torches with them as well as adding them into the aqueducts that I still haven't finished. But finally, by day 163, every torch was now a lantern, excluding some that were specifically placed to be torches. So on day 164, I headed back over to the cobblestone gen island and got to work on mining up some more to finally finish off the aqueducts to really make this place as secure and good looking as possible. And well, after a day of mining cobblestone, I grabbed some more vines, made some mossy cobble and got to work on finishing the final aqueducts. And well, that brings it close to the longest running project we've had in this series. 
Did we start work on this like all the way back on like day 30 or something? I don't know. It's been a long time. But now we have them all done, and I really think that they look good. You know, it would probably be better with some fishies in there, but hey, you know, I'm not going to complain. They still look pretty good. Alrighty, day 169. I headed back into the nether and back to the fortress to start tearing some of it down to rebuild in the overworld and create Fortress Island. Because I'm basically rebuilding everything in the game at this point. Anyways, after I grabbed as much as I needed, I headed back home and began the build. And this one was kind of weird, but I kind of like it at the same time. I, I don't know. But either way, we have another structure rebuilt and ticked off the list. And on the morning of day 170, I got up and moved all my brewing stuff over to the mini fortress because, well, I, I think it just fits there. But then I proceeded to spend two days upgrading my enchantment area because I really wasn't happy with it. It looked kind of crappy and I didn't put much effort into it last time. So a huge shout out to Superfoam for the tutorial that I took inspiration from. I basically just did what he did except maybe slightly bigger and less detailed. But uh, yeah, by the night of day 173, the new area was done. And wowee, I really, really like this one. Okay, it looks so much better. So much better. Definitely worth the two days. Anyways, then I headed home, popped a totem accidentally, and then went to bed. Okay, so we're really making our way through these days now, and I think we've made some pretty decent progress, but we only still have two pieces of netherite armor and absolutely no tools, and I'm not gonna lie, that's just not gonna do. So I headed into the nether and went mining in search of netherite, and as usual, in typical popper's fashion, I had no method to it, and I just kind of spam mined all the way around until A, my pick breaks, or B, I find netherite. And luckily in this case, I actually found some pretty quickly. So uh, yeah, this was actually one of the fastest and most successful netherite mining sprees I've ever had. However, after we were done, the nether was, uh, the nether was a mess. But I had enough ancient debris to finish off my armor and make a tool. So I think that's a decent trade-off. So I went home and smelted down all my ancient debris and then made it into some lovely shiny new armor and tools and boom, we are now decked out in hella drip. So after dealing with all the netherite, I actually decided to go and name my dog after one of you guys because why not? So there you go doggo, you are now named Gusbus. So if you want to have something named after you in one of my videos, then just drop a comment down below and hey, you never know, you could probably be like my pet frog or, or something, Yeah, you never know, you never know. Anyways, on day 177, we welcome yet another island into the family, but this time it's a bee farm island. Oh yeah, I've been waiting to build this thing for so long. I love, love, love making bee farms in this game. They're just so colorful and vibrant. I love it. Anyways, after some birch trees, honey blocks, and flowers later, we had our very own little bee farm, and it looks amazing. Just look at them, okay? They're so happy being here. Get it? Being here? <laughs> yes. Uh, that was that was awful. Alrighty, it's that time again. Let's quick fire some islands off, shall we? So, starting us off with island number one, we have the Illager slash Pillager Island, where uh, I just built a giant Illager tower in the middle because there can't be villagers without Illagers. Even though I'm pretty sure they're called Pillagers, I don't know what I'm saying anymore, I'm just gonna shut up. On to island number two, the Mushroom Island, because, well, they look cool and my mushroom cows need their own home, so uh, I placed down some mycelium, however you say it, uh, grew some mushrooms, and then brought the cows over to their very own island. Coming in at island number three, we have my least favorite nether biome, the Basalt Delta Island, because, well, I did the two forests and the soul sand one would look awful, so uh, yeah, here we go, Basalt Delta on an island. But after finishing the Basalt Delta, coming in at number four, we have the Trophy Island, because, well, why not? I wanna celebrate some things I've done, sure. Okay, so I think that's enough with the quickfire islands for now, because I just had to spend days 87 and 88 reworking Netherland, because, well, I really wasn't happy with the way it looked. And, well, I'm gonna say the rework is probably the single best nether portal I have ever built. It looks so, so good, and I'm very, very happy with it, okay? It's very blue, it's very nice. Day 189 was another block mining day, and well, I almost immediately found another villager, so I trapped him in a boat and continued on with my thrilling block breaking. When I got jumped by these skeleton horse riding skeletons, that well, they, they really messed me up and almost made me pop a totem. So I pulled out my bow and made them nice and crispy. And talking about crispy, here's two blazers, but they won't have the chance to burn my island down today. Get out of here. Oh look, it's some more dumb dolphins that just won't comply and swim to the water, so uh, they just kind of swam away. Yeah, sw swam away. Anyways, it started to get dark and not much was happening, so I called it a day and went to bed. Alrighty, day 190, we're almost there. 
I decided to head over to the storage area and grab the little glass that I had remaining from the uh, the glass voids and I made it red. Because, well, my nether spawn looked quite bad and I wanted to upgrade it a little bit. So I got to work on making a little nether base in there and it came out looking okay. I didn't really have a clear goal in mind, but it could have come out worse, but it also could have come out a lot better. On day 194, I grabbed a load of leaves and began making Hedge Maze Island because, well, why not? It looks cool from a bird's eye view, okay? Hedge Maze Island, we have it now. So after building the hedge maze on day 195, I just went around adding little details everywhere, such as spreading grass around the flowery islands or the trees and just making them look a little bit more natural, as well as adding some berries and mushrooms to the spruce island because, well, that's where they naturally grow. After tidying up the island on day 196, I decided to make an end island, like quite literally a mini recreation of the main end island because, well, I thought it would look kind of cool. But I was missing the end crystals and had no gas tiers to make them, so I headed into nether to hunt a few down and make them cry. Haha, <laughs> you smelly gas! Stinky! Oh, smelly, smelly gas! Okay, that may have been a bit too far, I, I kind of feel bad now. Anyways, after grabbing enough of their tears, I headed back home, crafted some eyes and bought some glass, and boom, we now have the crystals placed down, and it looks just like the end island. Or, at least close enough. Okay, day 199. I woke up and I went and said my goodbyes to Peppermint and Gus, who I actually had to bring inside the house because I ended up leaving near the block for some reason, so uh, yeah, th that was a thing. Anyways, I sorted out some storage for the rest of the day because if I do end up doing 300 days, I do not want to deal with that again because it was bad enough this time. And there we have it. So now after concluding our 200 days in one block skyblock, let's move on to something that follows it quite closely with 100 days in one block lucky block. A mod filled with fear and paranoia of horrors or amazing loot that you could possibly unleash with any block you break. So kicking things off this time around, on day one we started off with uh, quite a little bit more space than usual and that's probably for good reason. Because this book that I had in my hotbar told me to basically make the most of what the map gave me and build out from the actual main block that way I don't meet my instant demise. So that's exactly what I did and then it came time for us to break our first block. Immediately finding a whole bunch of flowers that was quickly followed by me being completely encased in what seemed to be a temple of lucky blocks. So I used my genius brain and decided to tear up all the stairs and put them to use by building a small platform out at the end of the bridge. And then got to work on busting open the lucky blocks, finding some pearls and potion materials, followed by a bunch of lucky and unlucky potions that I immediately threw, getting a bunch of rabbits, some horses, and a ridiculous amount of enchanted bugs with two anvils to top things off. So I popped the anvils down and put efficiency 2 on my stone pickaxe. Now you may be wondering why, and my answer is because I can. After enchanting my pick, I found a wishing well that told me to throw a coin into it, but apparently I ended up using myself as the coin and, well, I must have some value because it gave me a literal beacon as my reward. Then, after expanding out my island a little bit more, grabbing a couple of loot diamonds and guiding some horses to their new home, a dog decided to spawn in. Hello? Hey! Well, that's pl- Oh, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. You didn't know them long enough anyway, it's fine. Yep, he was immediately made the last of his kind. His species went from existing to pretty much extinct in a matter of about four seconds. One tree and a very loud firework later and we were pretty stacked on diamonds. So I chopped down the tree, crafted some diamond tools and then got straight back to mining through some lucky blocks. Getting a couple pieces of chainmail armor and a massive find of an enchantment table that I immediately put to use by enchanting my pick and sword. So, needless to say, things were off to a pretty good start, and that makes a change from my previous attempts that ended uh, very, very badly. But either way, I spent a while tidying up my inventory and making another chest to store the extra loot away, and then clearing off the Lucky Block Island to make room for the next mining session. That started out very, very lucrative, with me getting a bunch of XP and a dragon egg, that was then followed by a lucky chicken who wasn't really lucky at all, considering his position in life doomed to fall slowly to his voidy demise. I'm sorry my clucky friend, but uh, I, I don't think I'll remember you, I'm not gonna lie. Now that chicken may not have been lucky, but I certainly was, finding half a set of enchanted diamond armor along with a bunch of XP and my guy Bob right here, who met the same fate as the chicken. However, all good things must come to an end and uh, this guy definitely ruined my night, forcing me to cower away in fear in hopes of them flying away. That he eventually did, but let me tell you. 
this guy right here stuck around all night, just flailing around down there doing who knows what, harassing me all night until he eventually succumbed to gravity and fell into the void. On the morning of day two, I left my hidey hole and began breaking more blocks, sadly losing what would have been a very useful villager in the process. But I guess that's okay though, because I got some rainbow sheep. Woo! I'm sure these guys are great, and they're just going to be as useful as the villager would, surely. Should have been you who fell, not him. I hate you! After finding a bunch of annoying bats, we were greeted by another temple, when I noticed some string left over from a previous block. So I grabbed all of it, getting enough string to make two pieces of wool, that I then dyed blue with lapis, and combined with some blue wool that I got from the rainbow sheep to make a bed. Now phantoms literally have no power. They would have been a pretty big threat to me, but now I'll probably never see them. After clearing up the island of lucky blocks, I continued breaking them to find some end portal frames that was just an absolutely insanely massive find, as well as a load more enchanted bugs, and a very, very near-death experience. One block more, and I'd have been down there with the chicken. Oh, also, there was an imposter on the block below me. After finding more end portal frames and a giant, we ended off the night pretty well, getting a bunch of spawn eggs and enough portal frames for us to go to the end whenever we want. Now, I did end up getting trapped in an obsidian cube and had to spend most of the night mining that up. However, it did come in super useful to secure the floor around the lucky block. That way, it can't blow up now. So, after spending the night breaking and placing obsidian, on the morning of day 3, I organized my storage a little bit, and then got straight back on with the block mining, finding this absolute stain of existence that ended up going straight into the void where it belongs. Now, what I thought would be a bad day ended up taking a turn and giving me this OP hero villager who I bought some diamond pants from before trapping him on a boat because he's just too valuable to lose. Once the villager was secured away, it was back to mining again, finding another dragon egg that I added to my collection, and a couple of diamond blocks that I broke down into diamonds and used to fund the final pieces of armor from the villager. And now we're fully decked out on day three. It's kind of weird, and I'm 100% going to keep forgetting that I have the armor on, but uh, hey, I'm not going to complain. After finding myself trapped inside of a yet another obsidian water cube, I decided to make a bucket and grab the water from there to make an infinite water source, because I feel like a water bucket in this is going to be extremely useful. Then I had to spend most of the day clearing out the obby from the mining island, storing it away, and finally heading to bed. On day 4, when I woke up, I'd started to think of a way to get more dirt, because apparently I'd lost most of the stuff that I spawned with, and now I've only got two. But that's okay, because I learned a while ago that two dirt is all you need. Because so long as you have access to gravel, you can combine two dirt with two gravel and make four coarse dirt, which then when you use a hoe or use a shovel on, will turn back into normal dirt. And the only downside being that you lose the gravel, but I don't really need the gravel, and that makes everything super, super efficient. Now, after having that absolutely big brain idea, I decided to build up a nether portal, but really quickly realized that I had absolutely no way to light it. So I took a quick look through my very messy storage and found a flame book that I thought could possibly work, but I didn't really have too high hopes for it. But with this possible solution, a new problem arose as uh, arrows. I, I don't have any of them, and I can't craft them, so that's, uh, that's the new problem. So I checked to see if I could make a fire charge, and uh, nope. No, I can't. So it was back to mining the lucky block in search of anything that can help me get to the nether. Now, I did find a wither skelly skull along with a beacon and some crispy cats. <laughs> where's your nine lives now? Oh, look, it's another villager. However, you're not trading me arrows, so I'm not interested. Okay, I'm getting really sick of these things now. Uh, I'm not going to mine the whole thing. I'm just going to mine a hole through the middle. Holy mother of God, what is that? Oh, uh, not the big zombie, the, the child. I, I hate them. However, I do love cows, especially lucky ones. Now, don't ask me why he's lucky, I have no clue. Maybe I can get some lucky milk. Be gone with you, pest! Well, that wasn't nice, but it was a good thing that I used obsidian for the floor. After repairing up the floor, I made a tiny platform off the side of the island in hopes of some skelly spawning during the night so that I can actually get some arrows. However, I, I literally sat here all night without finding any. So, after waiting up all night, on the morning of day 5, it was straight back to mining, getting yet another beacon, and finally, a whole bunch of arrows, which is probably the single luckiest thing to happen to me so far. However, what wasn't lucky is all these mobs that spawned from my lucky bow. It took me by surprise, and like I said earlier, I kind of forgot that I was decked out in diamond armor, so they really scared me. But once I realized that they could barely even scratch me, I dealt with them pretty easily before then chopping down my tree, putting flame on my bow, and shooting the portal only for it to do absolutely nothing. Well, I guess tune in next week to Minecraft Mythbusters to see what we take on next. 
Now with that failure out the way, he was back to mining the lucky block in search of any other way to make fire. And for some reason I really don't think that this slime block bouncy castle is gonna help with that. And this atrocious annoying thing definitely won't help. Just take a look at this stupid thing that spawned in and blew up my fences. Uh, great. And then it was followed by this even stupider thing that spawned in, did big damage, but then I guess just left for the next world. And then this guy showed up again, but uh, he met the same fate as the magma cube because apparently his flight didn't work. Now, by day six, I was getting kind of scared to break any more lucky blocks, but I really don't have any other choice, so I kind of have to do it. But to my surprise, it was a pretty chill mining session this time around, finding some prismarine, some ender chests, and some more slime, as well as some lava buckets, which are quite possibly the best thing I could get right now, because I'd much rather have it in bucket form than getting it dropped onto me or getting thrown into a pit of it. So I grabbed them and immediately began trying to set the portal on fire. After a couple of minutes, the fire caught, and now we have access to the nether. But that was way, way harder than it should have been. So I spent the night sorting out my inventory and storage in preparation to head into the nether tomorrow. On the morning of day 7, I prepared myself and headed into the nether to find this just absolutely amazing spawn. I mean, look at this. It's in the middle of absolutely nowhere. It's still better than a basalt delta, though. Ugh, hate those things. So I built myself a tiny, atrocious looking platform before drinking a hero's potion and throwing myself off into the lava below. That ended up working out pretty well, however you do still take fall damage in lava and if this had been any shallower, I would have died to it. Anyways, I made my way to the mainland in search of some gravel that ended up probably being the shortest search ever, finding some almost immediately. So I began lining my pockets with a whole bunch of it and probably grabbing more than I was going to need. Then before leaving, I decided to grab some netherrack to use as some temporary building blocks until we make a cobblestone generator. Then on my way out, I spotted the terrifying sight of a ghast whilst bridging over to my portal with very explodable blocks. Once I got back home, I made a bunch of coarse dirt, broke it down into normal dirt and then placed down some saplings in a temporary tree farm. On the following day, I made a cobblestone generator and spent most of the day there just mining up cobble to grab as many building blocks as I could. After mining cobble all day, that evening I'd amassed quite a few stacks, so I made it into slabs and began replacing the floor of the tree farm with cobble because I get way too much anxiety standing on netherrack suspended above the void when I could easily break it with one misclick. After replacing the tree farm floor, or on day 9, I took what cobblestone I had left over and began replacing all of the floor around the lucky block, because I get the same, if not more, anxiety standing on slime blocks. Now I made the floor out of slabs for two reasons, number one, efficiency, and number two, I could waterlog them in case that the floor got blown up from underneath me, and then I fell down into the void, I can actually save myself. After finishing off the floor, I mined the lucky block for a little while, not really finding too much except some obsidian that I used to further secure the floor and a bunch more sheep that I made a tiny little farm for, and now we have a renewable way to get wool for beds. Except we don't really, because they uh, don't have any access to grass, so that means that I'm going to have to breed a whole new sheep just to get a few pieces of wool every time. More lucky blocks later, and I got a little shrine of them that ended up becoming two shrines and uh, almost suffocated my lucky cow. However, luckily for him, I uh, managed to save him. I guess the name does fit. Now, after carefully and cautiously clearing up the mess of the blocks, I ended up with a couple of chickens and 20 more diamonds. So I decided to sort out my inventory a little bit before chopping down a few trees and then spent the night once again at the cobblestone generator. After a sleepless night spent mining cobble, I spent a while of day 10 tidying up my island because it was pretty messy to the point where I was struggling to move around. Once things were a little bit tidier, I expanded out the island a little bit and built out a couple of pens for both the cows and the villagers. Now the cows deserve better than this, but uh, the villagers, this is already too good for them, because apparently they want to live in the nether instead of with me. Once everybody was moved over to their new area, I mined the block some more, finding a lucky pig who was clearly lying about being lucky because he suffocated in the floor. But we don't care about him, because now I have a replacement to the deserter villager from earlier, who I decided to buy some new boots and a helmet off of, but didn't use them just yet due to the anvil combining price being a little too steep for me right now. After having a pretty busy day, I spent the night organising my storage into a new area, to try and get a little bit of organisation in all of this chaos. Alrighty, day 11. Uh, there is no day 11 because OBS and I had a pretty bad falling out and it decided not to record anything, instead just leaving me with a black screen and no audio. So here's a little quick rundown of what happened. I showed off my lovely new organized storage area and we also got a whole bunch of dogs that fell from the sky again, except this time only one was lost. But then tragedy struck and I got trapped in an obsidian water box right here and well that's where my end chest was with all my loot in there such as my diamonds and end portal frames along with the eyes. So basically everything I need to progress further into the game. 
So yeah, when it comes to progressing, we're pretty much back at square one, considering that I've lost everything. But I will give you a second to guess where I stored away the extra ender chest. Yep, that's right, it's, uh, it's in the end chest that's now no longer with us. So we have absolutely no way of recovering those things until we A, get the materials, or B, get some more chests. But that's about all that happened on day 11. Didn't really miss much, but I was pretty sad. So let's continue on with day 12, shall we? I got to work on building out an extension to the tree farm. That way we can actually stop being so broke on wood. But this platform ended up being quite the cobble gobbler and uh, well, once I was done with it, I had to spend a little while restocking and then I made a furnace to begin smelting down some logs into charcoal to actually light this place up at night. Now, once the torches were acquired, I decided to go and test my luck over at the block again. And well, would you look at this? The first block we break dropped an ender chest. I have absolutely no clue how lucky that was, but I feel like my entire life's worth of luck has been used up right there. Now with an ender chest back in my hands, I grabbed one and threw it in a normal chest, and now we have access to all of our exquisite items once more. With the success of getting our goodies back, I spent the night doing the most fun thing to do in Skyblock. Yeah, that's right, it's mining cobblestone, because I want to build a mob farm real soon, and those things eat up building blocks. As the sun rose on day 13, tragedy almost struck as my forest of trees that had just grown caught on fire. So I acted quickly and managed to put it out, luckily with little to no damage caused. Once the fire was dealt with, I immediately moved the cobblestone generator and then began work on a little platform to start on building up the mob farm. Now I didn't really think that I'd have enough materials to get it done in one go, but I uh, used up all the stuff that I had and well, it, it didn't really go so far, so you know what that means? It's more cobble mining baby, let's go! You gotta love it. Love cobblestone mining, mm, gets me through the day it does. You know, I wake up in the mornings and I'm like, you know what I want to do today? I want to mine cobblestone. It's so good. Try it. It's addicting, honestly. It's the best thing to do. It's, it's not boring. After yet another cobblestone mining session, by day 14, we were restocked and I also had a bunch of trees that had grown. So I chopped them down to use as trapdoors for later and then got back to work on building up the farm, absolutely tearing through my cobble stacks but making some pretty good progress before running out. Then I placed down all the trapdoors and spent the evening once more mining cobblestone, getting enough to finish off the farm that night. Now I did wait around to uh, see if some mobs would spawn so I could farm them out but uh, none did, absolutely nothing spawned so I went to check if anything was wrong but couldn't find a problem so I just left it for now. And on day 15 we got back to mining the block for a little while, getting some redstone stuff, an unlucky squid and a pretty nice sword as well as finally coming face to face with Bob who dropped a pretty decent chest plate that was once again way way too expensive to combine. So I threw it in the end chest until later, and then went to check on the mob farm that was still not working. At this point, I don't even know if they work on this map, but I'll keep it here for a while just to be sure. And for now, I spent the night chopping away at trees. On day 16, I made some shears and grabbed some wool from the sheep, as well as clearing up the floor behind the nether portal and making an absolute ton of dirt to use on a small farm for potatoes for the villagers to see if they'll actually breed. Once I got the farm up and running, I threw the remaining food that I had over at the villagers and then broke some more blocks, finding a nether star, a whole bunch of lucky potions that ended up being pretty mid, and one of the horses just kind of spawned in and combusted out of nowhere and then fell into the void. It was, it was kind of weird. Oh my god, please stop with the dogs, I have so many. This tiny TNT explosion marked the end of the mining day and I headed to bed. Day 17 started out with me breaking down a hay bale into wheat and breeding the sheep, that way I can actually get some more wool. Then I headed back to the nether with my lucky bow to test it out, because I remembered that earlier it spawned a bunch of mobs and I wanted to see what else it could do, without risking the well-being of my island and everything that resides on it, so the nether is the only logical place to go. Now we didn't get anything crazy from this, mainly a bunch of mobs, a whole load of cobwebs that are actually super super useful to make beds for the villagers, but that's about it other than this poor chicken. So I headed home, crafted some beds and then expanded out the villagers home a little bit more before giving them the beds but uh, apparently they weren't good enough for the one guy who wanted to sleep in my bed. And well, I hope you're comfy buddy because stealing that bed will be the last thing you ever do. I awoke on day 18 to find that two of the villagers had merged together, just not in the way that I was hoping. So I decided to go and kill some time by doing some block mining, getting a whole bunch of rabbit stew and another shrine thingy. Now I don't actually know what they're called, but considering that there's four lucky blocks and it looks like a shrine, it's going to be called the lucky block shrine. Now it ended up spawning this thing, so uh, I flipped a lever and it was pretty kind, giving me a whole bunch of diamonds and emeralds. So I stored them away in a chest for later and wasted no time getting straight back to mining. Very quickly ending up with too many rabbits, another nether star and then a solution to the rabbit problem as well as a creeper that spawned in at the same time and I guess he didn't want to move and just kind of ended up getting char grilled there. 
But then this happened, probably the worst thing I've ever experienced. I was hit with blindness along with a whole other array of potion effects, of diamond armor or not, I was about to die. So I popped my gapple, but these guys were absolutely relentless and just kept beating on me and it made the gapple look like nothing. So I guess this is how I go out. Nah, just kidding. Uh, I popped the hero's potion that made me practically unkillable and then began to fight back, ripping through the horde of horrors that surrounded me, and now I'm not gonna lie, I was absolutely terrified every second, but finally the last mob fell and the blindness subsided, only for it to now be night for some reason. So I took a minute to calm down and patched up all the mess that they'd made and swore to always carry a milk bucket on me from this day onwards. That way I'm prepared for that to happen at any moment. After getting the milk, I sorted through my storage and just chilled out for the rest of the night. Over the following few days, I crafted and enchanted a second diamond pick, adding mending from it from the book chest, and then spent all my time gathering as much cobblestone and wood as possible, because I was going to start work on a big build very soon. Oh, and also the villagers did indeed breed, so that's going to make my life so, so much easier down the line. But now, on day 22, I was pretty stacked on materials, and it was finally time for me to start building up the main platform of our base. Now, this is probably going to end up being one of the bigger bases I built in 100 days video, but that's okay, because it's going to be worth it. So, the plan for the minute was to build up circles around the lucky block in the center, expanding out in layers, and each layer will contain their own thing. But obviously for now, we don't have too many resources, so we can't go super far with it just yet. However, with the things that we had, I did end up making some pretty good progress over the couple days of building, and felt pretty good about how things were starting to turn out. Even though it's technically just a floating slab at this point in time, but it'll look good, trust me. On day 25, after taking a couple of days to gather materials and building up some of our new island, I still hadn't seen any mobs spawn from the farm, so I came to terms with the fact that it's probably never going to work, and decided to spend the day tearing it down, and by that night it was gone, and the value of my land had increased due to that atrocious thing now being gone. On the following morning, I crafted a fletching table and gave the newly grown villager a job, definitely for his benefit and not for mine, to make an unbelievable amount of profit from very little work, and then him having no choice but to sell me things over and over and over again every single day until his inevitable demise. <coughs> oh, where was I? Oh, yeah, I made him a Fletcher and traded a whole bunch of sticks for emeralds, before then breaking the lucky blocks some more, getting another dragon egg, followed by a bunch more spawn eggs, and Bob, who really isn't having a good time in this video. My man fell into the void, got trapped behind a gate, and now returns, only to get stuck in the floor. Poor guy. After Bob sadly went bye-bye again, I found some quartz and music discs, and then it happened again, and I, I just couldn't bear to watch. Well, I think I'll leave the block there for today, because it's a uh, well, get it? Oh, God. Terrible jokes aside, I spent a good while chopping down all the trees that had grown, as well as digging up all the crops to clear some space for the new build, and then ended up spending most of the night adding another circle to our new island. Day 27 sat out with me filling in the floor of the new circle, because that was going to become the home for all of our storage really soon, because I'm finding out that uh, we're going to need a lot of space this time around, just down to the sheer randomness of the drops that we get. So after finishing off all that I could for now, that took quite a while due to the annoying wood pattern I decided to go with, I added a small wall around it, made a bunch of chests, and then spent the night sorting through some storage before finally heading to bed. Then on day 28, I began expanding out the temporary island behind the villagers, to expand out the breeder a little bit more because I want a lot of them, and I don't want to add a breeder to the new build because they take up a lot of space and never really look good. So I'll just move them over there once I've got a whole bunch of them. Now, once I finished their expansion, it didn't look great, but they need to work to deserve better from me. So I used what little string I had to make another bed, and realized that that's probably going to be one of the bigger problems here, is the absolute lack of wool to make beds. But I'm sure I'll figure out an efficient way to get my hands on some. After giving them their new bed, I moved my ludicrous amount of dogs over to the new island, and ended up finding one lime wool in a chest in the process. So I made it into another bed and gave it to the villagers before trading with the Fletcher some more and spending the rest of the day expanding out the tree farm, that way we can increase our profits from the villagers. Day 29 started out by breaking a lucky block that was uh, anything but lucky. Oh no, 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 please, no, no! Now, I was expecting that to happen at some point, but I thought that I'd made the center wide enough for it to be contained, but evidently not. So I assume this is possibly going to become a common occurrence, but that's okay because it's really cheap and easy to fix and not annoying in any capacity. After patching things up, I spotted an iron golem down at the villager breeder, which is a pretty good sign that they're multiplying. And soon I shall rule over this blocky domain with an iron fist made from the remains of your shiny oversized blocky protector. 
I decided to rebuild another portal temporarily when I heard another one of them spawn in and start taking damage, so I ran over and saved him. You will die when I allow you to die and not a minute sooner. And look at that, look how much easier it is to light the portal with a flint and steel. Now I spent the rest of the day chopping wood when our faithful diamond axe, Axie, broke. Farewell my old friend, you can never be replaced. Hey look, it's Axie 2, but this time even better with Unbreaking and an actual name considering I just made up the character about 4 seconds ago. Also the O in his name is silent, don't worry about it and don't question it. On the morning of day 30, my main goal was finishing off my lovely wooden floor that I thought would take a lot longer than it actually did. After the floor was done, I made some more fletching tables and put my newly fully grown villagers to work. Then chopped down all the trees that had grown, made the wood into sticks and proceeded to make bank. Also, I'm pretty happy with how things are coming along so far, it's going pretty good. So on day 31, I decided to put my silk touch pickaxe to use and grabbed a whole bunch of lucky blocks without opening them and took them into the nether because I wanted to test out whether or not it'd be easier or safer to open them in there. Mainly just down to how much extra space we're going to have to run away from the demons that this thing can spawn. But in my search for an easier solution to break them, I ended up committing a crime and somehow having water spawn in the nether. Now that was extremely cursed, but I also kinda like it. So I broke some more blocks in here, finding some enchanted gapples, you know, nothing too special or anything. And then we were greeted by another well and almost got blown up by a bunch of TNT. If that one block hadn't launched me about 20 foot away, I'm pretty sure I'd be dead right now. Now, this turn of events would usually make most people say, hey, you know what, maybe that's enough for the lucky block mining for now, uh, but that's not me, and I continued on breaking them, getting a pretty nice sword, along with some XP, and another one of these godforsaken things. Along with a whole bunch of sheep that I slapped up for their wool. Yeah, I know it's not matching, but it'll end up adding up over time, and eventually we can make it into beds. After I was finished dealing with the sheep, I broke the final blocks, placed down all the quartz ore that I gathered during this time to mine later, then I grabbed all the things that I wanted from the nether right now and began heading back home, slapping a chicken off my bridge to make some KFC. Once I arrived back home, I made another bed for the villagers, stored away some of my loot and attempted to combine the two saws that I had, but uh, I was I was way, way too poor, so I just called it a day. On day 32, me and Axie 2 went to town with these trees, chopping down as many as possible and then turning them into sticks to trade with the Fletchers, as well as sacrificing a bookshelf to make a lectern, that way we can get this guy to become a librarian when he grows up. But for now, he can enjoy his childhood. But remember, if you ever attempt to go against my will and my career choices for you, then you shall meet the same fate as your so-called protector. Anyways, I bred the cows some more and then broke the lucky block to be immediately greeted with some TNT straight off the bat. Great! After patching things up, I did go back to breaking the block, getting some very useful hay bales because I was running pretty low on wheat for the cows, and a bunch of llamas that I dispatched for leather, followed by even more llamas that met the same fate as their former brethren. Then attempted to combine the swords again, but found that I was only one level off. So I went back to mining the block in search of a little bit more XP. That was until I got blown up again and decided to go and find the XP elsewhere. Once I was stacked up, I combined the swords, chopped down all the trees and headed to bed. Then in the morning, I went to check up on our little villager friend to see if he'd grown up yet, but he hadn't. However, I still have patience, so decided to do something productive whilst waiting. So I put the leather that I gathered yesterday to use and made a bunch of item frames to put on the chests and then spent the day organising our storage and expanding out our neat new area. After clearing up the storage all day, that night I went around lighting things up and adding a stone brick layer above the wall as well as adding more lights around it just to make things a little bit brighter, that way I can actually see at night. And then once again in the morning went to check up on our little villager buddy to find that he'd actually fully grown up. So I began refreshing his trades but didn't actually know what I was looking for and just decided to leave him on this very mid one right here and got straight to trading grabbing a whole bunch of bookshelves, lanterns and glass leveling this guy up extremely quickly. After storing all the trade loot away and placing down the bookshelves around the enchantment table, I took my bow back into the nether to try and get some more string or spiders to spawn so that I can actually make some more beds for the villagers. Now I ended up immediately spawning in some more water in here as well as getting a few mobs that I dealt with very easily all thanks to my new sword, but then managed to mess up the nether even more by spawning in two literal meteors absolutely decimating this poor creeper. Some more water and another meteor later and we finally got some string. So I grabbed all of it, shot a few more arrows, spawning in a bunch of mobs that ended up dealing with themselves, before finally hitting a zombie pigman with an explosion, but luckily he didn't aggro. 
So with that close call, I decided to return home, made all the beds I could for the villagers, and then spent the rest of the night grabbing cobblestone and wood. Then on the morning of day 35, I returned to the villagers to do some more trading, but their trades hadn't refreshed. So I just decided to go and do a little bit of work over on the new island until I ran out of stone and returned to the villagers to find that they had actually restocked. So I grabbed a whole bunch more glass and lanterns to finish fully leveling him up and now that he's maxed out we have access to name tags but can't afford them right now. So I gave them some more food to breed them and then we shall give them more jobs to make more money. After dealing with the villagers I spent a while finishing off the lair I was working on and grabbing some more wood because I swear in any kind of skyblock wood is like the only thing that matters. On the following day, I broke all the bones that I had down into bone mill and grew a bunch of trees for wood, because the next part of this build was going to need an ungodly amount of it. After using up all the bone meal whilst waiting for some more trees to grow, I mined the lucky block some more, getting some spawn eggs and another shrine. But now I have a much better and safer way of dealing with these things and just pick them up with silk touch, that way I can avoid opening them and uh, having an explosive disaster near the things that I don't want to break or lose. After replacing the floor back with stone bricks, I broke the block again, only to get another shrine. So I tidied it up and took it as a sign not to break any more blocks today. And instead, put my old diamond boots on, and took to the soul sand valleys of the nether in search of skellies to farm out for bones. So that I can grab a bunch more wood, much more efficiently. Now whilst in here, I uh, shot a load of skellies out of my bow at a ghast, killing it, and in the process giving me a bunch more bones. So that was pretty helpful and interesting. However, after being in the nether all night and most of the morning of day 37, I returned home and put the bones to use by spending the whole day growing and chopping down trees over and over and over again until I ran out of bone meal. And by that evening, we'd amassed quite the hefty amount of wood and was planning to start work on the next part of the build in the morning. So that night, I gave one of the new villagers a job and then spent the rest of the night grabbing cobblestone. And now, as the sun was rising on day 38, I broke some planks down into slabs and began work on the next layer, making the outline of the circle and then filling in the floor with wood. Now I'm sure that you see that we're already burning through the stuff that we chopped down yesterday and this isn't even the expensive part. Once the floor was finished, it was actually time to start work on the area where these villagers are actually going to end up spending their days. Now this is the expensive part, okay, because it's only logs and stairs and they absolutely tear through your supply. Also, you may notice that there was a little fire going on right here uh, because I built it right next to the cobblestone generator and didn't notice it for like five minutes, but yeah, that was scary, but it was easily fixed. Then I got straight back to work on stripping all the logs, making and placing all the stairs that I could around the pillars, and then went around adding trapdoors in the middle just to add a little bit of design and finesse. Before then expanding out three blocks behind every hole and adding even more stairs in between and on top of them. Then I put a little stone brick trim on the wall and added whatever stairs I had left over on top of the others before deciding to call it a day because I had completely run out of wood. But I think that we made some insanely good progress and I really, really love how this thing's turning out. It's definitely one of my better looking ones and I really like the, uh, the wooden circle design. But we aren't done yet and I'm only expecting it to get better from here. After doing a whole bunch of building, on day 41, I set a bunch of cobble smelting down into stone and decided to try mining the blocks some more, getting annoyed almost immediately, but that's okay because shortly after we found a beacon and some flowers with some grass blocks that I went around placing in the inner circle. That way we can actually have some greenery going around here and once it's all covered in grass, we can add some flowers to it. But for now, it's back to mining, where we found a whole bunch of skelly horses that will 100% be used to feed my trees, and, well, Bob, who spawned back in again, but this time with gifts making me richer. Your death was meaningful this time, my drippy friend. We love you. However, we do not love you, but you can't really hurt me anymore, so that kind of sucks for you. Hey, look at the pork chop tower. I was running pretty low on them. Also, apparently I have a child now. Oh, wait, no, wait, no, there he goes. Well, I'm not going to complain about that. <clears throat> One less mouth to feed. So I decided that that was probably enough lucky block mining for me today and noticed that my stone didn't smelt in the furnaces and I really don't have a way to light them. That was until I had another gigabrain idea and made a whole bunch of buckets, took them into the nether and grabbed a ton of lava, brought it back home and put one bucket in each furnace essentially giving me a near infinite fuel source. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. So I then spent the rest of the night restocking on some wood. On day 42, I headed back over to the villagers and did a little bit more trading, not really getting many emeralds. Then I decided it was time to cull the cow population, taking care to avoid hitting the lucky ones, but unfortunately accidents happen and sadly, I uh, ended up insta-grilling one of the lucky cows into a stake. So in my sadness, I made a memorial sign. It's not much, but I'll never forget my lucky cow. After that very tasty tragedy, I moved the anvils over to the new build and spent some time mining the block. 
And wowee, what a mining session this was. I, I just keep getting villagers and witches and turning villagers into witches. It, it wasn't a good day. That was made even worse considering that I got stuck in an obsidian water trap again, so I had to spend an absolute lifetime clearing that up. After the obby was gone, we were greeted by yet another flying horseman and some rainbow sheep that were kind of helpful because of their wool. But after getting the sheep, my luck took a turn for the better and I was gifted an entire stack of diamonds along with a bunch of other goodies. But that luck did not last long and I had to spend about 5 minutes dealing with this ripoff of a slime that did some pretty nasty damage, but hey, at least I got another beacon to add to my collection. Also, I spent the night doing my favourite thing in the entire world. After my pretty atrocious luck yesterday, on day 43, I decided to take a break from everything and just spent the day filling in all the soon-to-be villager rooms with the remaining wood that I had. Because it really did need to be done, and I didn't want to risk doing anything else in case my luck was so bad that I just glitched through the floor and fell to my demise. But anyways, by nightfall, all the rooms were filled in, and looking a lot more... full, I guess is the only word that I can use to describe it, things looked a lot better and a lot fuller. Then in the morning, I made some bone meal and began growing some grass up around the inner ring. Once I was happy with how that looked, I grabbed all the flowers that we had and got to work on placing them down. Now that all the grass has spread all around and we have some flowers placed down, I really like the look of it and I think it really adds some good colour. So I added some paths and then spent the rest of the day marking out the final circle with whatever wood we had left over and connected the four corners to the outer edge. Day 45 started out with me building a platform outside of the villager breeder in hopes of me using my lucky bow on it and spawning in a zombie, to actually help me make trades much cheaper. But after a while of shooting arrows at the platform for I, I don't even know how long, I think I kinda just zoned out at this point, we ended up with some pretty bad luck, mainly just getting meteors that were a pain to get rid of, but eventually, that evening I was graced with the presence of some zombies. That I attempted to trap and use as villager bait, but um, yeah, no, I ended up killing them both. So out of pure curiosity, I went and decided to check the egg chest where I found a zombie spawn egg from earlier. So um, yeah, that kind of just made my entire day pointless. So that night, I made a little temporary area to use to infect and cure my villagers. And once it was done and ready, I lured them in there and then began making the preparations to cure them. So I grabbed a name tag for a zombie that I now named Hondo, but don't get too attached to him because he doesn't last long. Then I cooked up some weakness potions, turned them into splash ones, and before I knew it, the sun was rising. So in the morning, I headed back over to them and made one a cartographer, and then did a little bit of trading with him to level him up to the point of where he can sell me emeralds for glass. And then infected them both, immediately cured them, and then said goodbye to Hondo. And now, we just wait for them to cook. In the morning, I crafted down all the glass that I could into panes and broke the lucky block a little to kill time whilst waiting for the villagers to be cured. Now, I ended up getting some more spawn eggs, and as I was storing them away, I got the achievement for curing a villager, so I ran over to them, wasting no time in making some big trades. Now, it's not the most efficient emerald trade cycle just yet, but uh, I accidentally dealt with Hondo, so uh, yeah, I'll need another zombie if I want to make it better. But this is still way more efficient than anything else I've done so far. After trading all of their stock for the day, I combined up my armor that I got a while ago, and now we're just slightly more OP. Even though I'd still need to do it with every single other piece, but that's way too expensive and I really don't have the XP right now. Once I was done with the armor, I gave the villagers some more food and headed to bed. Once I got up, I did some more training with the villagers, be it for a slightly scammy price. I don't know why it changed, but thankfully it doesn't stay like that for long. After getting swindled for my emeralds, I uh, grabbed four name tags and began naming some of my dogs after you peeps. So here are the four names of the dogs so far, and as always, if you want to be a dog, a frog, or really any other type of animal or mob, then be sure to drop a comment down below and I'll be sure to try my best to make it happen. And also, I just want to take a minute to say thank you all so much for watching and making this past year so amazing. I love and appreciate you all so much and I cannot thank you enough for watching, it really does mean the world to me and you're all just awesome. Now, after naming the dogs, I began clearing up the platform I used to spawn the mobs in earlier because it was nothing but an eyesore and I wanted it gone. Once it was cleared up, I headed back into the nether to grab some wool that I stored away earlier to see if I had enough to combine with the stuff that I have in the overworld to make a few more beds for the villagers. And I actually did, surprisingly, so I crafted three of them and gave them to the villagers and then chopped down my trees and spent the night mining the block again, dealing with another flying skelly boy and making a grindstone to disenchant his armor to get some free XP. But other than another minor explosion, we really didn't get much else. So on the morning of day 49, I patched up the floor, <coughs> removed some horses, and uh, began mining the block some more, getting a giant lucky block that caused a giant hole. So that I had to spend a while fixing that. 
But after the hole was all fixed up, I gave the villagers some more food and did a little bit more trading before then spending the rest of the day chopping wood and gathering cobblestone. I'm telling you materials, you just can't get enough of them. On the morning of day 50, I made myself a shiny new golden helmet and headed back into the nether grabbing any and all glowstone that I could find, because I want to make a lot of redstone lanterns and for them I need glowstone. After grabbing probably more than enough, I headed back home to find that the sun was already rising on day 51. So I cleared out my inventory from yesterday and mined a couple of lucky blocks before disaster struck again, killing and damaging a whole bunch of wolves. So I did my best to heal up the ones that were lucky enough to survive and then began patching things up again, thinking about how it was probably quite a bad idea putting that cursed thing in the middle of my lovely new home. Once the floor was all patched up, I added a little wall around the centre to try and dampen the blow of any further TNT blasts and moved my dogs to a safer place and then continued on mining getting even more dogs and then another explosion, followed by even more dogs and then possibly the single biggest explosion so far. So needless to say, I decided to stop mining right there and instead had to spend the whole night patching things up because it was a mess this time, alright? It was, it was bad this time. On the following day, I did an absolutely big brain move once again and used my silk touch pickaxe to grab a whole load of the lucky blocks and took them into the nether to open them there, because I am absolutely sick of patching up the floor. Now, the main thing that I was looking for from these blocks was redstone so that I could actually make the, you know, the redstone lanterns because I really don't have too much of it right now. But my luck in the nether didn't seem any better. Shortly after starting, some TNT went off, absolutely decimating this poor baby zombie. However, this upset Papa Zombie as he returned once again to seek vengeance. I'm sorry, buddy, but you bring this on yourself. After dealing with our good old friend Bob, I uh, had the closest call so far to this magma cube. It absolutely slapped me down to four hearts, so uh, I shot some TNT at it. Then this skelly right here probably made the biggest mistake of its life by hitting a pigman, very quickly sealing his own fate. I don't know what he thought would happen. Two extremely nice and lucrative wishing wells later, and now we have some bedrock and cats. But don't get too attached for them because they really don't last long. I told you they didn't last long. What a terrible way to go out. Now I did end up finding some redstone, but shortly after got jumped by a whole load of mobs again, but this time I was prepared and they really weren't too scary, and I've managed to escape pretty easily. Now after finishing off the last of the blocks, I headed home and stored away all of my goodies, and on day 53, I made a whole bunch of levers and then went around placing down all the redstone lamps that I had around the top of the villager's new home. After they were all placed, I spent the rest of the evening and night moving some of the villagers over from the breeder into their new trading holes. Now, these guys are usually the worst thing in the world to move, but they were surprisingly cooperative this time around, and it wasn't absolutely infuriatingly mind-numbing to move them. And so, by the morning of day 54, I managed to move over most of the villagers into their new homes, and didn't want to throw myself off my base and into the void. So I decided to reward myself for the back-breaking work I did last night and combined the two chest plates that I had, getting a Giga OP one, and then decided to dedicate the rest of the day to tree farming because I really want to finish off the final layer of the build ASAP. So I used up all my bones and chopped down so, so many trees. And then over the following couple days, I grinded out finishing off the final layer. Filling in the floor with slabs, building up walls all the way around the outside, de dealing with another fire that somehow started. And finally, adding a roof over the top of everything, adding some stone planters to the top of it that I can use to plant trees and flowers. You know, just to add a little bit of variety from all the wood that was used. Now, the build's not done yet, but at least the big resource intensive and heavy parts are kind of out of the way. And we've made some pretty good progress, so, you know, we can be much more chilled out about finishing off the rest. On day 58, I did some more trading with the villagers, as well as giving the ones up top their profession blocks. Before then finding a wandering trader that just so happened to be selling some spruce saplings. So I grabbed some and then decided to grab some more lucky blocks and take them back into the nether again in search of more redstone. Because my supply was completely gone. Now this time around the blocks weren't quite as explosive but instead were pretty nice to me giving me quite a lot of diamonds as well as a bit of XP before finally giving me a decent amount of redstone. But sadly we did lose whatever remaining cats we had in there in the process. After using up all the lucky blocks and getting jumped by an army of silver fish and endermites, I put all the TNT that I've been gathering from drops from the lucky blocks to use and went in search of ancient debris. Alright, so I'm just going to say both of our time right here. Uh, I found one piece of ancient debris. That was it. That was it. So I headed home with my singular piece of ancient debris. When I got back, I found that it was already morning. So I grabbed all my dogs and moved them into the newly built up area. And also, I think this is the most dogs I've ever had, like, tamed at one time. It's a bit ridiculous, but I shall protect them and keep them safe nonetheless. With the dogs now gathered up safe and sheltered, 
I repaired our good friend Axie too, and did a slight bit of work on a hallway that may lead to another island in future, it just depends on where I want to build the nether portal. But for now, it's just a hole in the wall. After finishing up with that, I made and placed down the rest of the other redstone lamps and spent the evening trading with the villagers again. But this time, the good prices had returned and they were no longer scamming me. Oh, and I also put a couple of trees in the planters too. But now, day 60, it's become that time again. It's storage day, baby. Let's go. Everybody loves storage day. You gotta love storage day. You gotta celebrate storage day too. Storage day is a good day. Good day, day 60, storage day. So needless to say, in the title of the day, I literally spent most of the day sorting through and tidying up my storage before then putting my stockpile of beacons to use by going around and placing them down around the perimeter of the island. And then real quick traded for a few pieces of glass from the villagers that I then placed down, making some windows behind the entrances to the outer circle. And then spent the rest of the night grabbing cobblestone. On day 61, I set the cobble off smelt in and proceeded to do some more trading to pass time. Once the cobble was all smelted down, I crafted some stone into bricks and stairs and finished off adding the rest of the planters up top because them being half finished was really annoying me. So after dedicating a while to building them up, they were all finished. However, I didn't have the dirt to fill them in. So I repaired my shovel and aptly named it Gravel Gobbler, because that's exactly what it's going to do. So I headed back into the nether and went to town, digging up way more gravel than I was ever going to need. But hey, he's called Gravel Gobbler for a reason. After grabbing, or gobbling, all the gravel, I headed back home and the sun had risen on day 62. So I made and broke down coarse dirt into real dirt and finished off the planters with trees and grass and to top it all off, added some more beacons and now this thing looks really nice. Then I grabbed some more glass and that night used my phantom spawn egg in hopes of getting a membrane. And I ended up getting two thanks to looting. Then made myself some slow falling potions and thought about where to put the end portal because I can't move it once it's placed so it kind of needs to be a dedicated space and actually planned out. So on the following couple days I decided that the portal deserved its own themed island but I can't really get the end themed blocks until I actually go there. So I was just planning on building it out of a crappy looking temporary block for now until I can actually get the ones that I want to build with. But before we get on to that, I uh, decided to name this zombie horse that had been roaming around my lands for a while. Uh, I called him Newt and then put him inside with the other ones. I think he looks pretty cool and I don't see these things often enough. And well, I kind of like the name Newt. It's kind of unique and it, it suits him, I guess. Maybe? I don't know. It's a zombie horse, man. Then I got to work on building up the temporary platform for the end portal, not filling it in fully because it would just be a waste of time. Then I built up the portal and added the eyes only for it not to light. So I was left with no other choice than to beg the lucky block for it to spawn in. And oh, would you look at that? There's an end portal there now. There's definitely no help from mods. Alrighty, so this is future poppers right now and I'm going to pause things right here. So apparently I built the portal wrong. And I didn't know that you had to build it in a specific way with the blocks all connecting in a certain way. I've been playing this game for almost a decade and literally have it as my job. And I had absolutely no idea that I was building them wrong this entire time. So I'm an absolute idiot and I'll build them correctly in future. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, I'm just a complete idiot and I didn't know that you had to build them correctly. So this is my bad um, and it could have been avoided. So with the portal now lit, I gathered what I'd need for the fight. And on the morning of day 65, I popped my potions and headed in. Now shooting down the towers this time around was made a little bit easier due to this bow. However, I'm still not a great shot. So I did have to pillow up to some of them to get them. But then once the pillars were all gone, I took the fight to the dragon, firing a whole barrage of arrows at it, missing every single one of them. I told you I'm not a great shot. But after landing enough hits on the dragon, it came into perch and I managed to get some pretty good damage off with my sword. However, I didn't realize that my slow falling potion had worn off and the dragon yeeted me into the air and I took some pretty yucky fall damage. So I ate some food and regened a little bit of health before continuing on with the fight. Snapping the dragon before getting another perch that ended in the exact same way with me getting launched with no slow falling potion to break my fall. But after regening and hitting a few more shots, with one final barrage of arrows, the dragon fell. So I grabbed all the XP and went to break a lucky block that I spotted in here, before then taking the gateway to the Outer End Islands in search of the Elytra, where I spotted a whole bunch of lucky blocks just scattered all the way around. I can't even escape them all the way out here. After almost losing everything to an Enderman and popping a gapple to save myself, I continued on with the search, breaking some lucky blocks along the way. I mean, hey, I may as well, there's nothing else out here, so it's the perfect testing ground. Now, in the search for a city, I found a new axe that puts Axie 2 to shame, but don't worry, buddy, I will make you better. 
After the axe, I found a very speedy horse that didn't get very far, and after searching around the islands for a while, eventually found a city. So I made my way in, dealing with the shulkers and grabbing some pretty mid loot, before then grabbing the elytra, and just before leaving, grabbed a whole bunch of purple and endstone. After stacking up on the blocks, I returned home on the morning of day 65, and immediately upgraded Axie with the one that I got in the end, as well as combining two pair of leggings. Then I sorted out my inventory and did some trading with my lovely villagers. And then over the following couple of days, I worked on building up the end portal island. But I noticed that the portal was built slightly off center, so I had to move everything back one block before I could actually get to work on building everything up. Now I decided to go with the purple and endstone brick theme to kind of match what they have with the cities, but not exactly the same. But oh my days, was this absolutely hell to build. First off, I noticed it was too far back, but after them building for like 10 minutes, I noticed it was one block too low, so then I had to go around and move everything up by one block. But after fixing that, the rest of the build went pretty smoothly, getting everything finished off by day 69. And well, I think it was definitely worth the extra time because I'm really, really happy with how this came out. I think it really fits the theme of the portal. On day 70, I realized that I never finished placing down the fences around the top of the outer ring. So I grabbed a bunch of wood and made as many fences as I could, making more than enough to finish off the outline. After dealing with the fences, I broke some flowers down into yellow and orange dye and made some stained glass before then heading back to the nether to grab the quartz from earlier and added it around the lucky block in the center to make it look better, I guess. I didn't really like it, it didn't really look that good, so it's not staying. By the time the glass was placed down, the sun was rising on day 71, so I decided to grab myself a bunch of lucky blocks and take them into the end because it's just a much better place to open them than the nether. Now, I really wasn't looking for anything specific, I just wanted to open a whole bunch of these things in a safe-ish place. I ended up finding this treasure map right here that I'm sure is going to be extremely useful and come in very handy for us, 100%, we're definitely going to find this treasure. Along with a couple of wells that gave me a bunch of goodies, and Bob, we love you Bob, but you got to stop coming at me like this, it's not right. After dealing with Bob once again, I found a load more flowers, so I crafted a chest and threw them in there because I was going to need a lot of dyes for something I had planned. One killer rabbit and a giant later, and I was almost dead, so I had to pop another gapple. Also, during this block breaking spree, I found a couple more beacons and even more dogs that, well, let's just say they're not coming home. However, when some cats spawned in, I decided to stop breaking blocks for now and brought some of them home because I don't have any yet and they look cute. On day 72, I repaired Gravel Gobbler and returned back into the nether to begin stocking up on all the building blocks I was going to need to build the nether portal island. First, I gobbled up some soul sand and some soul soil for the base, then took to the basalt deltas to grab some basalt and the warped forest to grab some warped stems, and then when I was heading back home, stopped off back at the basalt delta to grab a little bit of blackstone, before then heading back home and crafting all the blocks that I was going to need to build the island. But before that, on the following day, all those flowers I stored away in the end came into use, as I broke them all down into a rainbow of dyes and made some stained glass, and then went around placing one block following a rainbow pattern above every single beacon, and I mean now just look how freaking cool this looks, alright? I'm so pleased with it, it looks so good. Anyways, enough basking in the glory of the beacons, it's time to get back to work. So I spent that night building up the outline of the nether island and filling in the floor to begin building up the portal in the morning. So over the next couple of days, I got to work on building the portal. Now, the design for this portal was originally created by Seekai, so huge shout out to them. I'm a huge, huge fan of this portal frame, and I think it'll look really, really good on an island of its own. And if you like it and you're interested in building it for yourself, then I'll be sure to leave a link to the tutorial in the top right of the screen right now and in the description down below. So definitely go check that out. Anyways, after building up the main structure, I headed back into the nether to grab a bunch of bones from skellies and fossils around the Soul Sand Valley. Then brought them back home to build my very own fossils, completing the island by day 76 and it looking pretty good too i'm very happy with this one now on day 77 i combined two pair of boots before feeding the villagers some more potatoes and then spent most of the day clearing off and removing the old island because it was no longer needed considering that i have everything set up on the new one I started off day 78 by making some big changes to the center of the island by adding some small ponds in each corner and then adding a little bit of detail onto the bridges that connect to the center. I just wasn't happy with the old design anymore and wanted to fill things out and have it look a little bit less empty. Once the center was done, I spent a little while adding more item frames to the chest and expanding out the storage a bit more and did a little bit of organization before grabbing a tadpole spawn egg and popping it down in the water and soon we shall have a fully grown frog named Polo. After naming the frog, well, tadpole right now, on day 79, I decided to move the last villagers over into their new permanent trade halls. That once again went significantly smoother than I was expecting it to go, so I managed to get them all set up and locked into their slots by the morning of day 80. 
then spent a good while matching up the profession blocks to the villagers and giving the ones that hadn't got any jobs new ones so that they can actually be useful to me. And now, finally, the villagers are set up. So, in celebration, I grabbed the rest of the loose lucky blocks I had laying around and took them into the end to open them up in search of some sea lanterns. And whilst looking for those, I ended up finding some gapples as well as two back-to-back -back sea lantern spawns and then got jumped by a ton of silverfish and endermites that ended up triggering the endermen who began screaming and running to my aid. After blowing up some dogs, I'd got what I came here for, so I headed back home to place down the lanterns when I found this absolute mess. I don't know why they're all here, but they are, and I don't like it. So I went on a purge, getting rid of these extremely loud pests. Once they were dealt with, I went around placing down all the lanterns, and things were looking pretty nice. Just ignore the remains of the mobs from earlier. So with another successful day under my belt, I stored some loot away and headed to bed, being reminded of the tragedy that happened earlier that day. I woke up on day 81 to find that our new tattoo pole was now fully grown, so I said hi to him and gave him a slime ball before checking up on the amount of wither skelly skulls that we had, but I only ended up having one. So I grabbed some blocks and headed into the nether in search of a fortress. However, shortly after getting in there, I uh, stumbled across this atrocious biome and just wasn't having it, so I just bridged over it. Now, I'm once again going to save you time. Uh, I was looking in here for a while and didn't find a fortress or any signs of one, but I'm pretty sure that they can't spawn in this world. So I just made my way back home and spent the night gathering more lucky blocks. That way I can use them to get the skulls because they can spawn as a random drop. On the following morning, I had five stacks of them. So I took them to the end and began breaking my way through them to find the wither skulls. And oh boy, was this eventful. We immediately got jumped by some guardians, popping a gapple just for in case, and uh, then two more spawned, falling to their demise. And then I got exactly what I asked for. Uh, the wither just spawned in from a lucky block out of nowhere, scaring the absolute life out of me. I didn't know that this was a thing at all, but I quickly realized that this was no normal wither. This guy was fast and really, really OP because you can't outrun it and you can barely damage it. Because he just goes around at super speed attacking all the endermen in here and, well, his health regenerates really quickly and because he's moving so fast, you can barely damage this guy, let alone kill him. So after having no luck with that, I retreated to the outer end islands to open up some more lucky blocks in search of one of the evil potions. Because it seems like they do insane damage and could be one of the only ways I can put an end to this guy if they even work. So I broke more blocks, finding some more gapples, an efficiency book, and the potions. So then I prepared myself to return and try and kill the wither. But once I arrived, I threw the potion and missed. Who saw that coming? Also, look at this guy. I have speed three and he's keeping up with me. What are these hacks, my guy? I'm on to you. Check him PC. Now, I did manage to escape the wither very briefly and headed home to check if I had another evil potion laying around, and I did. So, I made my way back to the end and attempted another attack. But once I threw the potion, I'm pretty sure it just phased through this man right here and did nothing. So, that wasn't good and I had to retreat, only escaping the end seconds before the wither could have followed through the portal. I don't actually know if they can come through, but he was damn close. And with that, I decided to never return to the end, or at least for a little while. On day 86, I put some of the leaves that I'd gathered quite a while ago to use and added some more greenery around the inner of the circle, and then made a very small temporary tree farming spot and used bone meal to grab a whole bunch of spruce and oak for the rest of the day. Then, on the following day, I put all the wood to use by upgrading the interior of the outer circle. Now, this isn't my proudest work, but it looks better than it did, and that's good enough for me, considering that I'll probably never even go in there anyway. Alrighty, day 90, the beginning of the end. I repaired my pickaxe and returned to the nether with some lucky blocks to try my luck searching for netherite again. Now, you may be wondering, hey poppers, why did you bring the lucky blocks to search for netherite? Well, I wanted to see if it would be any use to me trying to use the explosive drops that I can get from them to clear out some areas. But I quickly found out, after breaking almost a whole stack before getting any boom boom, that it didn't really do much. So I returned to my old ways and began flailing my pickaxe around sporadically in search of any and all ancient debris that I could find. But after absolutely eating through my pick's durability and finding pretty much nothing, I decided to call it a day and began heading home, throwing myself into lava along the way because even without netherite, I'm super OP and I can. Day 91 was pretty much a wasted day. I uh, went and decided to go and open the remaining lucky blocks that I had to see what other building blocks I could find, but didn't really get much other than some diamonds, gold and emeralds as well as a few bad luck booms. Now in the following couple days, I realized that I didn't actually have a house and well, I kind of wanted one. So I spent a little while grabbing some more wood, both spruce and oak, as well as grabbing the leaves and rebuilding a temporary cobblestone generator and restocking on that. Then smelting it down into stone and crafting some bricks. After gathering all the materials I was going to need, on day 95 I got to work on building up the house. 
starting out by making a platform of dirt and adding a few grass blocks around it before then starting to build the actual structure of the house. Now once again if you're interested in building this house for yourself then definitely go check out the channel that I've linked in the top right and down in the description for the house tutorial if you're interested in wanting a super nice looking house that's also really really small. After building up the house for a while I grabbed the dogs and brought them over and then finished off the structure of the house and got to work on the garden. Adding a wall that's going to encase everything inside as well as some paths and flowers and a small little fountain around the back. And boom, here's the house. It's now done and looking pretty good. It's not much, but it's very quaint and it looks really nice. Plus, I don't really have a ton of space to work with right here, nor a ton of time. So yeah, there it is. So I grabbed my bed and spent that night over at the new house. Day 99. After building up the house, I took the cats over there, naming one Bonk, who shall serve as the guardian of the land in my absence. Then I headed back into the end to rescue some of the cats in there from the wither, successfully evading it and getting them home safely but then noticed that a second frog that I got whilst building up the house had gone missing, so I went around looking for him, but couldn't find him, even checking the nether to no avail. So I have absolutely no clue where he went, and took my anchor out on the water chickens. But then, as I was about to give up hope, I heard some froggy sounds nearby the villagers, and still he eludes me. But then I checked inside the outer circle, and he was there just chilling and completely fine. After reuniting with the frog, I moved the final cats over to the house, grabbed some more name tags from the librarian, and then put them to use by using my spawn eggs and naming three axolotls. One was called Slippy, the other one was called Ploppy, and the third one was called Bezolbazar, before then taking in the orange glow of the final sunset in this world. Hey, and would you look at that, it's day 100. We've come so far from having nothing, carrying on a little platform, terrified of the blocky gods, to now thriving with villagers to trade with, dogs, cats, frogs, and axolotls to keep us company, and a whole bunch of cool builds surrounding us. So I got up and dealt with the villager that stole my bed earlier, before saying thank you to the most helpful villagers by giving them a little window, and then decided to break one final lucky block. Oh shit. And now with lucky block coming to a close, we're almost at the end of our sky dwelling adventures, but there's still one left. The OG, you might say, because next up is the time that I survived 100 days in the original sky block, with a slightly newer twist in some places. Alrighty, so on day one, on my first day on this tiny island suspended above a never ending void, considering I didn't have many options of things to do, I started digging up the top two layers of dirt to have everything nice and flat. And once all that was done, I chopped down the tree and patiently waited for a sapling, and once I had acquired said sapling, uh, I planted it down and got to work on building a cobblestone generator. But whilst working on it, I must have decided to myself that hardcore skyblock wasn't going to be challenging enough, and threw myself in the lava accidentally, and well, things were almost over on day one. And to top it all off, I was starting to get hungry, so I couldn't regen. Anyways, after that incident, I got to work on mining some cobble so that I could actually expand out the island a little bit. Now, I'll explain to you, my idea for this island is I wanted to make an area kind of look like a, a main square in the middle, okay, surrounded by staircases in a square-like fashion all around it, kind of like a big square bowl. Um, and then on those staircases, there'll be little platforms that have farms and tree farms and whatever the hell in them. And I'm 100% sure that I'll stick with that idea and never change it. After my little expansion, I replaced all the dirt around the cobblestone generator with stone and started on a little wheat farm that would hopefully grow quickly because I did not want to stay as vulnerable as I am right now. After getting my one seed planted, it was getting dark, so I got to work on mining cobble all night because, I mean, what else is there to do? Th there's nothing here. By the morning of day two, I'd mined quite a bit of cobble, so I got to work on making it into slabs and placing it all down until I was satisfied on how big our main island was, and then I started work on mapping out the staircase leading to the upper layer, and oof, this was gonna take a lot of cobble. After placing the slabs down as high as I needed them to be, I moved the sapling to a better place and then secured a small area around my cobblestone generator so that I would be protected somewhat when night came if things decided to spawn on the island because it's slightly bigger now. But uh, yeah, I know it looks really bad for the minute, but don't worry, it's temporary. Ooh, and I also made myself a glowberry farm and chopped a bit of wood down from my newly grown tree. But then it began getting dark, so I went and hid inside my little bunker, mining cobble all night again. And hoping to have a skeleton spawn so that in the morning it'll burn up and I can use its remains for bone meal so that I can feed myself. But well, I didn't really have any luck with that. However, when I left my hidey hole in the morning, I uh, saw one glowberry had grown overnight. I was extremely happy to see it because now that meant that I was one step closer to full health. So I harvested it and ate it and then chopped down the last piece of wood from the tree hoping to get an apple. Whilst waiting for the tree to decay, I expanded the staircase a little bit, but uh, when I went back to the tree, all I got was a load of saplings. So I planted them down and got back to work on the stairs. I ended up making a lot of progress on them and then started to realize how big this build was actually going to be. 
be. However, I might not even make it to finishing the first layer of stairs if I don't get some food soon because, well, I can't even sprint anymore and had no way of getting food except waiting around. So with that in mind, I returned to my cobblestone box and mine cobble for the rest of the day, hoping that tonight a skelly would spawn and burn in the morning so that I could finally get some bone meal for my farm. And finally, at some point during the night, a skelly boy came up to my box and I quickly dispatched it, getting one bone for all my troubles. On the morning of day four, I cautiously left my house to find an enderman, a spider, and the remains of two skellies. Now I had three bones that I made into bone meal and used on the farm. After growing some crops, I went out and made myself an infinite water source because I could and they're very useful. Anyways, after that, I went and made my wheat into bread and ate it, but I was still a little bit off of healing, so I also chopped down a tree in hopes of apples. And finished off the first layer of the staircase, and I'm not gonna lie, it was looking pretty good so far. After the layer was done, I made a furnace and smelted down some wood that I could use to make some torches to help the tree grow at night. Okay, so we're four days in and we really don't have much stuff that we can do right now except mine cobble. So, listen up. My first goal in this 100 days is to make a mob grinder to help speed up the process of, well, basically everything. But first, to do that, we need a lot of cobble. So, I spent the rest of day four and the entirety of day five mining this godforsaken block so that I had enough to make the mob farm. Finally, by the morning of day 6, I gathered enough cobble to start on the farm. Now, I just went for the basic standard layout design of a mob farm because I don't need anything fancy. This would work perfectly considering there's no other land around for mobs to spawn on. Anyways, by day 7, the structure of the farm was built, but I still needed a lot of wood for the trapdoors inside. And also on day 7, I grew my wheat and finally regened. After almost a week on two hearts, I felt strong again. So strong, in fact, that I attacked a skelly, but it's all good, he was one hit anyway. After dealing with a skelly boy, I used his remains to grow a tree and chopped it down. And whilst waiting for more trees to grow, I got to work on removing the awful looking structure that I'd been cowering in nights previous. And I also moved the cobblestone generator to a new place temporarily so that things weren't as cluttered. And when it got dark, I built myself a tiny little hut next to it and mined the night away again in hopes that some trees would grow by morning. And on the morning of day eight, no trees had grown. Even after I killed a skelly and got six bone mill, still no trees. And then, to top it all off, I went to try and go up my mob spawner and ended up breaking half my farm. So I was really not having a good day. Anyways, I went up and placed down all the trapdoors that I had that wasn't many, but hey, it's a start. I also went and placed water in all the spaces that push mobs down, but ended up messing up and waterlogging a slab that then caused my farm to be ruined again. So I decided enough was enough. I went down and removed all of the dirt so that I could make a better little farm without losing my crops every two seconds. And now, yet again, I know this looks bad. Don't worry, it's temporary until I can expand some more. But to do that, I kind of need wood. But I'm using wood for trapdoors and I barely have any wood in the first place. You see the dilemma here. Also, a tree grew and ended up with eight more trapdoors, so that was that was pretty good. I then went round and planted a few more saplings because this wood thing was taking way too long. I then decided to spend the night in my little hut just AFK because I really didn't feel like mining any more cobble right now, and I really just wanted these saplings to grow. And well, day nine was a much better day. There was immediately already one tree grown, so I chopped that down and made it into trapdoors and then decided to go around scavenging the sides of my island to see if any bones had been dropped. There wasn't any, so I decided to head up and place my trap doors, and by the time I came back down, there was another fully grown tree for me. I really think that my luck's starting to come back here. Anyways, I chopped the tree down and decided to work on the second layer of staircase whilst waiting for more trees to grow. And sure enough, after doing the staircase for a little while, two more trees had grown. That I then promptly chopped down, and now we only need 14 more trap doors. After a while of waiting around for more trees to grow, I decided to make myself a fishing rod, but I don't really think I had a big enough body of water to catch anything, so I kind of just put it in the chest to use later. And then I realized that there was four more islands surrounding my main island. There was one with a jungle tree on, there was one with a spruce tree, there was a mushroom one, and I think there was a swampy one, but I couldn't really make it out. Anyways, I decided that I'd start a bridge over to the swampy one first thing in the morning, so I, uh, I spent all night mining again. And in the morning, I set out carefully bridging my way over the never-ending void to our first new island. And well, when I got over there, it really didn't have anything. In fact, the only things that I didn't have that were on this island were vines and lily pads, so not really anything I need right now. So that was kind of disappointing. Anyways, I returned back to my island and grabbed the last pieces of wood that I needed to make the final trapdoors for the mob farm, and boom! Just like that, we now have a fully working mob farm, so at least one good thing came out of this day. And I actually ended up spending most of the night just camping out the farm. 
On the morning of day 11, I tended to my farm, made myself some food, and then went around chopping down all the trees so that I could start work on the second layer of our island right here. Oh, and I also took a couple swings at the mob farm because why not? Anyways, I've worked on building out the island for the rest of the day, so while this cinematic shot is playing, let me tell you my plan for this first wooden layer. You see, it's five blocks wide, so in the middle of that, all the way around all four sides of the island, I can plant trees that will then become my tree farm, and I've not seen many tree farms that are built in like a square form of this. I don't know if anybody's doing it, probably not, it's kind of stupid, but either way, that's what we're doing. But yeah, that's my plan for the second layer, and then the third layer will have something else on it. I'm not too sure what it is yet, but anyways, after burning through all my wood, I spent most of the night growing and chopping trees so that I could finish the expansion tomorrow. But then the phantoms came, so I went and hid in my little hole again until I realized that I had enough string to make a bed, and finally, on night 11, I went to sleep for the first time. As soon as I woke up on day 12, I got straight back to finishing off the second layer, and after all the wood was placed, I went round strategically and precisely placing the dirt perfectly spaced out so that it would look even on all sides. And finally, by the morning of day 13, the second layer of the island was done, and we finally have a nice looking tree farm. And also now, the middle area of the island was no longer overcrowded with trees and dirt. After all that was done, I smelted down some wood into coal and went around placing torch everywhere so that no mobs would spawn outside of my spawner. After placing down a load of torches, I went and killed all the mobs in the grinder when I noticed that I had two witches in there. And you see, I need one of these to get a villager later down the line. So I began the tedious process of capturing one. And well, it was extremely annoying and scary at the same time. But eventually, I managed to separate one from the rest of the mobs in the spawner. And now all I needed was a zombie villager and a golden apple. But poppers, I hear you ask, how will you get such an item in Skyblock? Some off-camera technique, maybe? Some secret nobody knows about? No, I'm just gonna go in the nether and make a gold farm, it's that simple. But that job's for later, because right now I just wanna farm out this spawner and try and get some better armor to drop. Oh, and I also had an iron sword drop whilst getting the witch separated, so uh, yeah, that was pretty nice. Anyways, some mob killing later, and I didn't really get any better armor. However, I did find a potato that I then made into a lot more potatoes, which would now become my main source of food. And after I harvested them, I went to bed. And on day 14, I woke up and I made myself a smoker to help the cooking part of these potatoes go a lot smoother. After cooking a few of them, I got to work on sorting out and organizing all my storage, because everything was just crammed into one chest, and it was really triggering me because I am a neat freak when it comes to storage in this game. Anyways, after my super tidy, I got to work on expanding the island a bit more because, well, I had some leftover cobble and, well, I may as well use it. Now, I didn't get too much progress done because this place is getting kind of big now, but hey, progress is progress at the end of the day. And on that topic, by the time I was done expanding, it was the end of the day, so I went to bed. Okay, now, you remember as I mentioned that I wanted to make a gold farm earlier, and, well, I was planning on making it later down the line, but I realized that gapples could possibly save my life if something goes really bad. So, I decided to start gathering all the resources that I would need to make a somewhat fast and efficient rudimentary gold farm. So, for the next three days, I mined cobble and chopped trees non-stop until the end of day 17, when I had enough resources to start work on the farm. Oh, and I also got my first iron ingot from a zombie as well, so that was quite cool. So, on days 18 to 22, I made myself a nether portal, and now you may be wondering how I lit the damn thing, but that's okay, let me explain. I used my humongous brain that we all know I have, obviously a joke, but I used lava and wood to light it, and then boom, we were now in the nether. But there was also a second portal in here, which I've never seen before, but I guess it's just part of the map. Anyways, the chest down here had a fire charge in it, so I used it to light the second portal and learned that you cannot mine a gold block with a stone pick. I don't know why I thought you could. Uh, but anyways, after that incident, I made myself a little platform and started work on the gold farm that would hopefully work first try. And well, they took a little bit of encouragement to jump off, but oh boy, was this thing efficient. However, it was very scary having like 30 pigmen to try and kill you. Anyways, after having a few of them commit no longer part of the living realm, I collected their remains and returned home to make myself a shield, and then headed back into the nether to secure a little base around my portal. Just so that if some did survive the fall, then they couldn't get to me as easily. Oh, and I also lowered the platform in which the pigs drop onto and die by two blocks, just to make sure that as many died as possible, even if they were wearing armor. And, well, this just made the farm even better. I mean, just look at this thing. Now, the odd pigman can hit me if I'm not careful, but if I, like, keep my distance and stuff like that, this is the easiest source of gold ever. I mean, especially if there was a hopper system underneath as well, but unfortunately, we don't have that luxury right now. So, uh, yeah, after a while of looting them, I went home, and it was night, so I went to bed. 
And on day 23, I woke up feeling very, very good about things. I mean, we now had a mob farm and a gold farm, and it felt pretty good to finally start getting some good materials. And when I say good materials, I mean good for Skyblock. Anyways, I started to smell down my golden swords into nuggies, and then crafted the nuggies into ingots, which I then used to make myself some golden apples. Now, I know there aren't many of them, but don't worry, I'll spend a while in the gold farm later to, to make more. But for now, my objective is to get a zombie villager and another witch, because mine despawned, sadly. So I spent the rest of the day just swinging at the mobs in the spawner, hoping to get one of the two spawn. And well, after a while of killing things, I did indeed get another witch to spawn that I then quickly trapped again, and now all I needed was a zombie villager. In the process of waiting for one to spawn though, I ended up finding a second witch, and uh, got two more iron drops from zombies. But finally, there he was, my zombie villager. I quickly freed him from the death pit, and then trapped him in a boat, built a roof over his head, and got to work on making the witch throw a potion of weakness. But that was a lot easier said than done. You see, they don't throw them that often, and when they do throw them, you need to be less than three blocks away from the witch when they throw them. But here's the kicker. They can also throw potions of harming that will deal three hearts of damage. So it's very, very risky, but it is really worth it. So I sat there and I tanked potion after potion after potion until finally I got hit with a potion of weakness and gave the zombie a golden apple. And then I went to bed, because this man's gonna need a while to cook before he turns back into a normal villager again. So whilst waiting for that, I took a few swings at the mob grinder, and well, I saw this skelly boy with diamond booties. This man had hella drip, and I didn't actually know they could spawn with them on, so uh, I killed him, but sadly, no diamond boots for me. So I decided whilst I'm waiting for Mr. Villager over there to cook, I may as well be productive. So I decided to make some more progress on expanding the island some more until finally I got the achievement for curing a villager. So I uh, rushed over to see him and just look at this beautiful specimen. Mm -mm, I love him. And therefore his name shall be Plooper, Plooper the Great. He shall become my armorer from here on out. But the, the only problem with that is I need a blast furnace and well, I only have two of the five iron needed. So you know what that means, right? I'm mindlessly slaughtering hordes and hordes of defenseless mobs until they drop me the loot that I'm looking for. Oh, but wait, there's another zombie villager. Let me just put him in a boat. Oh, wait, no, I can't because Sweeping Edge has done what it does best. Absolutely nothing. Anyways, it's fine because I got another one to spawn and uh, trapped it in the nether accidentally. So I, I, I don't know what is going to happen with that one. But yeah, I chilled at that grinder all day and night, and I didn't get one single iron ingot. So then I started thinking, is there any other way to get them in Skyblock? And the only way I could remember was piglins. Piglins can trade them, so all I need to do is stack up on gold, and I literally have a farm for that, so... The iron problem is solved, right? So I rushed to the nether with two goals in mind. I wanted to collect as much gold as possible and trade for as much iron as possible. Also, when I got there, I killed the zombie villager because it wasn't worth my time trying to cure him and bring him back. But anyways, my goal was to get a load of gold and to catch a piglin in a boat and then use them to trade with. But well, that was easier said than done. So after about 20 minutes of piglins dying for random reasons when they hit the boat, I realized that you can't actually get in a boat by falling, I'm pretty sure. So I decided to go and make some hay bales instead. And well, would you look at that? They worked first try. And I got started with trading straight away. And after trading like 40 something gold, I actually ended up with 65 iron nuggies that got made into seven iron ingots. So that's two more than I need anyway. So overall, this plan worked out pretty successfully. Anyways, I headed back home to start smelting down some of the stone to craft my blast furnace that I then crafted and placed down to give this man a job, and then I realized that I'd forgotten the biggest thing when it comes to trading with villagers. I'd forgotten about emeralds. The literal only currency in the game just slipped my mind. You see, I'd need emeralds to trade for armor. So the entire point of the blast furnace was pointless right now. So I just really quickly made a composter and made him a farmer so that I could actually get some emeralds. So poppers, was that entire time in the nether a big waste of time? Well, no, because I still need a blast furnace for the second villager, so don't worry, we will get use out of it yet. Anyways, after harvesting some crops and trading with the villager, it was getting dark, so I called it a day. On days 29 to 30, I worked on grabbing more cobblestone to expand the island a little bit more so that things were a little more open. And by the end of day 30, all the stairs were finished, and I had now made a start on one of the sides of our new livable area. 
Okay, so next up, I wanted to branch out to some of the other islands to see if they had anything of use on them. So I start out by heading over to the Sprucey Snowy Island and decided to make my bridge out of wood because then when I'm done, I can just burn it down afterwards and it wouldn't just chill there being a cobblestone I like eyesore forever. And I mean, if you ask me, that's a pretty genius idea. However, I never burnt them down. Anyways, I got over to the island and, well, it had a pumpkin and some snow on it, so I decided to gather up all the snow and maybe make a snow golem later so that I could have, like, an army of them to defend my island. And I also noticed that there was an amethyst cluster or geode or whatever they're called just chilling at the side of the island, but I really wasn't interested in getting anything that it had to offer me. So instead of going and looting that, I patiently waited for a sapling from the spruce tree and, well, I never got one. So I headed back home, put all the stuff from the island in a chest, and then headed over to the mushroom island next. But before setting off, I I grabbed my bed to take with me because it was starting to get dark and I really did not want to get stranded over there with phantoms or something attacking me. Anyways, I got over to the island and it was just covered in mushrooms, so I, I placed my bed down and went to sleep. And on day 31, I harvested the mushrooms and some dirt and then I returned home to store some stuff away. And to get to work on some other things, like tidying up the center of the island because it was a mess and it was really starting to bother me. So I moved a few things around and boom, look at this, look at how much better this looks. And yeah, the villager hut thingy's still there, but it's just another one of those temporary structures that's going to be there for a while. And you also may be wondering what happened to the cobblestone generator, and to that I say, I built an underground platform to store the cobblestone generator, storage, and water source on. So yeah, it keeps the top pretty tidy, and it's pretty cozy down there. And now with all that being done, I took a few swings at the mob farm, ended up getting attacked by a zombie, and then went to bed. Okay, now these are some busy days coming up. You see, I decided to go into the nether and have a look around because my render distance was now higher than it was earlier. And I could see all of the extra nether islands all around me, so I thought it would be a good idea and worth my while to head over to the fortress to see if there's any cool stuff over there. And when I finally got there, I was expecting like a blaze spawner, but actually all I got was glowstone and nether wart. There really wasn't much else here. It was quite disappointing actually. So I took all the stuff, headed back home, and put it all in a chest. Now I got to work on getting the second villager, so I'd need a second witch and a second zombie villager. So after a while of killing at the spawner, I got a witch and a zombie villager to spawn at the same time, but unfortunately I had to kill the zombie. But uh, it's fine though, because I eventually trapped the witch whilst almost dying to it. And after that I went to bed, because I didn't really want to risk losing my current, like, villager villager to a zombie to then end up being a zombie villager again. But in the morning, it was straight back to bonking the mobs at the spawner until finally I got a zombie villager to spawn. So I broke him out, trapped him in a boat, and started the process of curing him when I realized that I didn't have any gapples left. So I headed into the nether to grab some, and then almost died to this pigman right here, which was very, very scary. Anyways, I farmed some gold, and now we can finally cure him. And after literally all day of trying to get a weakness potion and failing miserably, I went to bed and continued on in the morning, when finally, I cured the villager, and now I just had to kill some time. So I harvested and cooked up some more of my potatoes, and then went to bed. So for the next few days, I got up and I checked on my villager, who was now completely cured and ready to start work. So I quickly made him an armorer and started the long and tedious process of leveling up both the villagers and collecting as many emeralds as possible. So I got to work on harvesting and growing crops for the next few days whilst trading with the villagers at any given opportunity. And I also expanded the temporary farm a little bit too. Oh, and uh, Wandering Trader spawned, so that was kind of cool, I guess. He really didn't have anything I wanted, but hey, it gets lonely up here in this, like, harsh void. You know, it's nice to have a friend every so often. Anyways, by day 40, I got some insane trades for diamond armor for one emerald. I couldn't believe it, so uh, I snatched it all up, and boom, we're now fully kitted out. I mean, just look at this man right here. You can't even touch me. Look at this. <laughs> Anyways, after purchasing my extreme drip, I uh, dug up all the dirt, and I went to bed. Because on the following days, I worked more on the expansion because, well, uh, I really wanted to get these villagers a home so that I could breed them some more and get more trades for diamond tools and weapons. So, uh, yeah, all I did for two days was break wood and place wood and, well, looked damn good whilst doing it. And by the middle of day 43, uh, the third layer was finally finished and the island was starting to get pretty big. Anyways, I got to work on replanting some of the trees and planning out where I wanted to put these villagers. And on day 44, I got to work on building them their home, which isn't really a home, it's kind of like an area that turned out to look like a prison cell, but it'll, it'll do for now, okay? It'll do for now. Anyways, now I need to go and grab these annoying hmm boys and uh, bring them to their new house, which is, well, a lot easier said than done, because for some reason, they don't like to move. In a matter of fact, they didn't move at all. I had to forcefully push them all the way there. 
Eventually, by the end of the day, I had both of them in there, and then I went and made three beds. One for each of the two villagers, and one for my soon-to-be third villager, if they even decided to move. Anyways, I spent the night with them in the prison. So, on day 45, when I woke up, I noticed that my chests were extremely messy again, so I decided to spend all day just tidying them up and organizing everything properly, because there was a lot of stuff just all over. So, yeah, it was kind of a boring day, but I think now is the correct time to tell you about this video's sponsor. It's, it's you, you know, you, you there just sat there watching this video, laid there watching this video, it's you. Uh, if you enjoy it, please drop a like and subscribe, I greatly, greatly appreciate it, and it really goes a long way. Anyways, back to day like 46. Anyways, back on track, on day 46, I got to work on breeding the villagers by giving them food and a little farm, so hopefully the next time I come over here, there's three villagers, not two. Anyways, after that, I bridged over to another nether island to see if there was anything of interest over there, and whilst I was bridging over, I spotted a chest on the island. But when I got there, it was just a nether version of the Skyblock Island, so uh, I stole the lava bucket and left, vowing never to return to another one of these islands ever again. Then I decided to farm some gold for some gapples that I could actually use instead of having to be used to cure villagers. And everything was going good until I got bonked a couple times and got a little bit scared, but other than the bonks, I was just kind of sat here chilling out, just farming gold for 20 minutes. And on day 47, I returned to the overworld and crafted myself a load of gapples that I could actually use on myself, like I said, instead of curing villagers. And, well, on that topic of villagers, let's go check on them. Ah, still no child, but that's okay. I spent the rest of the day smelting down all my iron armor and stuff to make into nuggies that I then made into a pickaxe and mined cobble all night. Because, well, here's a pretty big time jump. You see, I really wasn't happy with how the island looked, and I really wanted to expand it some more so that I could build some actual structures on it. So I got to work on doing some massive expansions for five days. I worked tirelessly, mining and placing cobblestone and wood, and gradually making the island bigger and bigger, until now I present to you the newly improved island. Just just look how massive this thing is now. All, all I need to do is just add builds and farms and stuff. That's it. it it's, it's too big now. And on day 54, I got to work on building my farm again, and this time I separated my carrots and potatoes into their own sections so that I didn't get any mixed up. And I don't really need to plant any wheat because, well, I can't farm it with the villagers anyways, so th th there's really no point to it. Anyways, after the farms were done, I got to work on a villager trading hall, and well, it was kind of more of like a hut area thing than a hall, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to give them a better place to live. Uh, but I also wanted to build it out of dark oak, so uh, I made my way over to the dark oak island, but by the time I got over there, it was already getting pretty pretty dark, so uh, I quickly grabbed the wood and a few saplings and cautiously headed back home and went to bed. And on day 55, I got to work on building the villagers their new home, and well, I didn't have a clear design in mind, so it was kind of just all over the place, and I kept removing and replacing loads of blocks, and it, it was just kind of messed up, until the morning of the next day when I had a basic design of the place laid out. But, to continue on any more work with it, I needed some glass, and I knew that there was a wandering trader selling some red sand, but I think he despawned now because I can't find him anywhere. So I didn't really know what to do about the glass situation until I remembered that librarians can trade glass for emeralds, so uh, I went to check on the villagers to see if I could actually, you know, do this, and well, they still hadn't bred, so I gave them more food and took my anger out on the mob farm, and kind of just waited around for the rest of the day just hoping for them to breed, and well, after waiting out most of the day, I went back to check on them before going to bed, and they had finally bred, but now I had to wait for it to grow up. So I headed to bed and spent the next couple of days farming again to stack up on some emeralds so that I can get the trades flowing and hopefully get some glass soon. And well, I did some trading whilst waiting too because it'd be a waste of my time considering that they can only refresh up to twice a day. And on the morning of day 59, I went to check on the villagers as soon as I got up and the child was now a fully grown adult. All I needed now was a bookshelf. And the only way to get one of those is through sugarcane and leather. So uh, I went and planted some sugarcane down and then went to the gold farm trying to get some trades going with a piglin in hopes of getting some. So after a while of farming out these poor piggy boys, uh, I ended up with enough gold to start trading with these two lovely fellows right here who would happily supply me with a fire resistance potion and five leather. So we had just enough for a bookshelf. So after my success in the nether, I once again returned home when I realized that I already had 17 leather in my my farming chest. Dear God, I'm so blind. On day 61, we were still waiting for the sugar cane to grow, and sadly, you can't bone meal it, so I guess we just wait. But no, I was actually quite productive and built myself a house while waiting for the sugar cane to grow, but uh, I couldn't finish it again because, well, I needed glass. But uh, yeah, even without the glass, you can kind of see the design close enough, and it still looks kind of cool. But it is a very basic house, but eh, what can you really expect? It's Skyblock. 
Anyways, by the morning of day 64, I finally had enough sugarcane to make the paper, to make the books, to make the bookshelf, to make the lectern, to then finally make my third villager a librarian. And then it was time for me to start trading to get my sand, but uh, after most of the day's trading, I ran out of emeralds, but I actually did end up getting a mending tray completely by accident, so that was pretty cool. Anyways, I continued trading on the following day because I really needed this glass. And I know you could say, hey, poppers, just go to the island with the glass on it, with the cacti and stuff. Well, I I'd love to, but it won't be enough glass. All right, I need a lot of this stuff. Anyways, more trading later, and well, I maxed him out, and guess what? He didn't trade glass for anything. So I openly admit defeat and went to bed very upset. So on day 66, I got up and immediately headed over to the sand island and grabbed every single grain of sand there was. And then I took it back home and smelted it down when I got the achievement for smelting it that made me go and check the achievement book. And well, would you look at that? Husks drop sand, do they? Okay. After reading that, I went to bed and on day 67, I ran over to the desert island to start expanding it out to try and get some husks spawning tonight because, well, I've never farmed these things before so I don't really know what to expect. So uh, I sat in a little shed until nightfall and, well, not a single husk spawned all night. So uh, at this point, I was feeling pretty defeated so I just headed home. Now on the morning of day 68, I wasn't giving up and I was determined to get sand by trading again. So uh, I went over to the villagers, I gave them another bed and I gave them more food when I realized that my island was actually way too big to build stuff on. I really don't know why I wanted it this big. But it was starting to become a problem because things started looking very desolate and empty. But anyways, um, I ended up seeing in the achievements that you could actually go to the end. So uh, I went back into the nether and had a look around the fortress area again for no reason other than a little birdie, aka the site of the map, told me that there was a portal on top of it. And well, would you look at that? There was a portal on top of it. And after finding the end portal, I returned home and threw away a billion gold swords that were in my inventory and then went and checked on the villagers that hadn't bred just yet. So I decided to spend the rest of the day replacing the cobblestone in the center of my island with wood because it had fit the kind of theme that I was going for better. So on the next Next day, I went and checked on the villagers, and hey, would you look at that? We have another one. Now all we need to do is have it grow. Anyways, after the villager visit, I noticed that my island was now burning, so I went and put a stop to it before things got really out of hand, and well, why is the cobblestone generator always the thing that sets everything on fire? I, I the awful contraption. Anyways, after the fire incident, this is when I realized that I really did not like how my island looked at all, and I wanted to completely redo the whole entire thing from start to all of it. Just gone, alright? Gone. So, after waiting for my villagers to grow and making him a tool boy, I traded for some diamond tools and got to work on tearing down all of my hard work up to this point, just to rebuild it better. And, well, I'll let the footage roll for you now, but in the last 100 days video, 100 days in one block sky block, I built everything in a square modular kind of island design. Um, so I thought this time, instead of doing it in squares, I'll do it in circles instead. So, uh, yeah, by the time everything was torn down, I started a circle around my mob grinder and that became my main circular island. That was then very quickly followed by a tree farm island and then a nether portal island and then finally a villager island that was actually very easy to keep them from getting out and from things going it was just easy to keep them in there okay and also i kind of like how it came out it's a little bit square but it looks pretty good anyways after the success of the villager island i went and made the cobblestone generator its own island that way it wouldn't be burning anything down anytime soon after the cobble island was done, I made a storage slash base of operations island, and then uh, after that, I made a mushroom island, because why not? They look cool, and why would I not want giant mushrooms? Oh ho, would you look at that? It's another island. What will it be? That's right, it's Pond Island. Why? Because it looks cool, and, well, I'm trying to make up for how bad the last build was. Anyways, next up is possible enchantment table island, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get an enchantment table because of just a lack of obsidian. So it's kind of just an island with bookshelves on it for now. Anyways, now that everything was finally torn down and rebuilt, I removed the platform from underneath and got to work on bridging over to the jungle island to grab the saplings to then add to the tree farm. And then I did the exact same thing for the birch island. I went and grabbed the saplings, brought them back home, planted them down, and uh, yeah, there we go, I went to bed. Now, on the next couple days, I headed back into the nether because I decided it was time to start work on getting potions. And well, to do that, I'd need blaze rods and blaze powder. So I ran over to the nether fortress chunk and set up a little blaze spawning platform and well it really didn't take long for our first blaze to spawn, however I had to kill it over the void so uh, no rod for me. But that's okay though because two spawned shortly afterwards and now we have our first blaze rod. 
After a while of farming blaze later, I finally had enough rods to head home and start brewing. But not really, because I still needed the nether wall farm. So uh, I grabbed some food and I headed back into the nether to start farming some gold to trade with the piglins to get some soul sand. Which made me realise that I probably shouldn't have thrown away the stuff that I got traded to me earlier. But hey, it is what it is. Anyways, I, I traded with the piggies until I got a decent amount of soul sand and I also got a few water bottles which were obviously going to be very useful for me to make potions in them because, well, I have a very little amount of sand. Anyways, then I returned home and sorted out my stuff. And now on day 88, I made my nether wart farm island and don't worry, I'm not copying the exact same builds I did last time. I, I made two nether biome islands last time, so I I'm not doing that again. Anyways, the farm was done, so while I waited for them to grow, I made a brewing stand and set everything else up. Now, all I needed was slow falling, instant health, and maybe swiftness, but that's not necessary for the fight. So I decided to stay up all night because I needed phantoms to start coming after me so that I could actually get a phantom membrane for slow falling potions. So after staying up all night, on day 89, I built myself a melon farm because I would really need glistening melons to make instant health potions. So one very useless melon farm later, and now we only needed the phantom membranes and the nether warp. So it was basically just a waiting game. So I kind of just decided to set my mob grinder for a day whilst waiting for the phantoms to spawn to try and get some enchanted bows to combine into an even better bow. You, you kind of know how this goes at this point. And I also may or may not have killed a load of iron golems to get enough iron to make an anvil. You know, that's up for debate. Whether I did, whether I didn't, I, there's no proof. Anyways, by this point, I was literally like four iron off of getting the anvil. So uh, I grabbed all my gold and headed back into the nether to try and trade with piglins to, uh, to get some. But apparently this piglin was done with my business and tried scamming me by running away with my gold. And then all of a sudden he just disappeared. How, how strange. Anyways, uh, more trading later and I finally had enough nuggies to make the final ingot I needed. So I headed home, I grabbed all my bows, I crafted my anvil, I then combined all my bows into an even stronger bow. And then went and traded for some more armor from the villagers, which I then combined until I ran out of XP to do so. So then I headed back to the gold farm to get more XP because it was faster than farming out the grinder and then almost died to this guy right here. That was very, very scary. So I just kind of panicked and kept slapping him until he died. But anyways, after repeating the process of just going to the gold farm and enchanting my armor, it was finally all upgraded and now all I needed to do was make the potions. So I went and harvested my nether wart, started cooking up some awkward potions, and then I harvested my melon to make some glistening melon to then make my instant health potions, which I then immediately upgraded and made into splash potions. And now, all I was waiting for was phantoms that should come tonight. And, well, they did. So I killed them, I took my membranes, and then I went to bed. And on day 94, I woke up, I brewed my final potions, and now it was time for me to fight the dragon. So without any further ado, let's go. So we get into the end and I immediately make a run for the middle, sniping out one or maybe two towers in the process. Then I head over and start towering up the biggest pillar. And from there, I took out all but two of the crystals and then proceeded to tower up and destroy the last two. Now it's time for the dragon. So I sniped at him for a while with the bow until he came into perch and I gave him a good old bonking with my axe but he wasn't happy about it because he ended up throwing me halfway across the end and then flew away. A few more bow shots later and he came into perch for the last time and well just like that the dragon was dead. Easy clap once again. Anyways now you know what time it is. That's right it's time to go and get the elytra and oh my god I hope it doesn't take 10 years like it did last time. Whoop, and now we're in the end cities and well, I searched for a whole maybe two minutes before I found a city and well, it had a ship. So I was extremely relieved that I wouldn't have to spend like hours in here again. So uh, yeah, I ran straight up to it, getting beaten left, right, center, upwards, downwards, backwards, everywhere by shulkers until I reached the stairs to the ship. And then once again, using a shulker levitation, I jumped over ran under the deck and grabbed my elytra, as well as some pretty good rolled tools. There were, there were some pretty good stuff down there. Anyways, after the final achievement of this journey was made, I quickly made myself out of the end cities, back to the main island, grabbed the dragon egg and jumped back through the portal to get back home. Once I was back to my home islands, I uh, sorted out my inventory and gave the dragon egg to the villagers because I was feeling quite generous. And then on day 97, I headed back into the end to grab some obsidian to finish upgrading the nether portal island. But, uh, well, it, it didn't really get upgraded that much. In matter of fact, I thought it looked quite weird. But then finally, on the final two days, uh, you remember all that time ago when I tried fishing in the little 2x2 area and I couldn't? Well, I decided to spend my final two days doing something 
that I couldn't do before. I ended up just fishing for the final two days. That, that's all I did. I had no reason to or I had no goal to get anything out of it. I just wanted to use the fishing rod that I made all that time ago. And finally, on day 100, we've done it again. We've survived another 100 days in hardcore Minecraft. And so, with the end of Skyblock, also marks the end of our journey in the clouds. And now we're back stranded in the middle of a never-ending ocean again, but this time with a few more resources and a little bit more space, as we take on the challenge of surviving 100 days on a deserted island. Okay, so day one on this lonely little island stranded out in the middle of nowhere, we began our journey by chopping down this singular tree that laid on the island. But whilst grabbing the wood, I noticed that there was a cave right next to it, but in instead of getting my stone from there and risking death this early on, I decided to get my stone from this big shard rocky thingy on the island instead, because that cave just looked quite ominous. Anyways, after grabbing some basic tools, a storm rolled in and it began to rain, so I guess this is kind of like an omen of how well this 100 days is going to go, so it ain't that great. But a little bit of rain isn't going to stop me from going around and breaking every single fiber of grass on this island in search of seeds to start a farm. And well, by the end of the grass breaking spree, we had a whole 20 seeds. So I got to work on planting them all down by the water, even though I guess everything that I do on this island is, is by the water, but anyways, after planting them all down, I leveled a bit of the island to open things up and to give me some more resources to expand later, and then I went and made myself a furnace and smelted down a piece of wood into charcoal, and then made some torches so that this night wouldn't be as dark. And then I went around planting down my saplings and finished off cutting down the tree, and well, this thunderstorm was not letting up, so I decided to grab my things and start heading down into the ominous cave we saw earlier, mainly to avoid the rain, but also to possibly find some good loot down there. And, well, as soon as I entered the cave, there was some coal just sitting there waiting for me. So uh, I grabbed it, made a few more torches before traversing further down into the cave. Until we approached our first mob, which was an extremely trigger-happy creeper that just decided to blow up on me. And then I swiftly put an end to his zombie friend right here and headed deeper into the cave, finding quite a lot of iron dotted around. So I grabbed some of it and headed back up to the top of the cave because I didn't want to get greedy and regret it. So I made a little base of operations down here and began smelting down the iron. After smelting it all down, I made a pick, a sword, and a shield, and well, now we win, because shield beats everything in this game. Anyways, I headed back to the surface, and the rain had stopped now, and I also had two trees that grew on my island, so I quickly chopped them down, and headed back down into the bigger cave to grab some more iron, coal, and, and pumpkins? Yeah, there were pumpkins down here, so I guess that's the thing now. Uh, anyways, I stayed in the cave for the rest of the night, just making sure to be careful, considering that I had absolutely no arm. And by the morning of day two, I grabbed quite a bit of coal and iron, so I headed back up and started smelting it all down, and whilst that was doing its thing, I headed back to the surface to start expanding my island out a little bit with all the dirt I gathered prior. And, well, it, it didn't make too much of a difference, but hey, at the end of the day, progress is progress. Anyways, I decided to head over to one of the many shipwrecks that surround my island to see if it had any good loot to offer me, and oh boy, was this a good idea. The loot on this shipwreck was pretty good, okay? I got some iron, I got some lapis, some paper, and some carrots. So overall, a very nice find to get this early on. Anyways, I spent a good portion of the day just grabbing wood from the boat because, well, it just sat here and I may as well take it because, well, I have big plans for this little island and they required a lot of wood, so uh, the more the better. Anyways, after making sure that that ship will never set sail again, I headed back to my island, took up my iron out of the furnace, and then made myself a chest plate, a second pickaxe, a shovel, and an axe, and then went around planting all my carrots and had a lovely meal of stinky meat to get my hunger back up. Mmm, you gotta love, you gotta love stinky meat, it, mmm. And then I proceeded to spend the rest of the night landscaping the island. And on the morning of day three, things were looking pretty flat on the island, and, uh, well, they're not looking great, but don't worry, like I said earlier, I have big plans for this place, and this is just the beginning beginning. Anyways, I decided to head back down and continue exploring the caves underneath the island in hopes of kitting myself out with iron, or if I'm lucky, maybe even scoring a diamond or two. Anyways, I found some more lapis and then stumbled across a spider when I realized that that's the only way for me to sleep on this island is by getting string from spiders and then crafting it into wool. So let's hope we can find some more. After traversing the caves for a while, I had to eat myself some more stinky meat because I was getting hungry and really didn't have any other choice. And then just got straight back to mining, and after a while, I ended up finding a zombie villager with hella drip, so I killed his friend, and then proceeded to trap him in a cobblestone box to possibly use to trade with later. But then, all of a sudden, I found some diamonds, which are pretty high up for 1.18, but shortly after finding them, I then found a chest with some turtle eggs in it, and then I was confused at first, but then I remembered that this map was man-made, so some of the ores and chests and stuff obviously have been put here, so that, that's why they're that high. Anyways, I headed back to the surface to make myself some shiny new armor and a diamond pick, oh, and also our first piece of wool for a bed. 
But after making all that, I headed back to the surface and a lot of trees had grown up here. It was, it was literally like a forest up here and we also had a beehive spawn now so we can have a cool bee farm later on. Yay! Anyways, I spent the night chopping down and replanting all of them because tomorrow we start work on building the island out properly. Anyways, as the sun rose on days 5 and 6, I got to work on building out the main island. So uh, now is probably the best time to tell you what my plan is for the actual layout of everything. So here we go. I want to build one main center island to have our house and stuff on there, followed by a second outer island or a little ring thingy going round where it's like got a tree farm on it or something, and then maybe a couple more depending on how big and how much time we have. But uh, yeah, that's the basic gist of everything. We'll see how it comes out. Anyways, I worked tirelessly into the night and into the next day, just placing down dirt until eventually the island was done and it was looking pretty good. Albeit now that the island was completely hollow underneath, but hey, we can't see it. It's not a problem. But anyways, after I was done with the dirt, I went around harvesting all my crops when I noticed that we now had two beehives, so that's nice. You know, the more of them buzzy boys, the better. And then I worked on just tidying up the layout of the island for the rest of the day, and uh, phantoms also came after me at night, and I killed them and got a couple of their membranes, but they really messed me up during the process. On day 7, after working hard on landscaping the island for the past couple of days, I decided to head back down into the caves in search of spiders, and, well, it didn't take long for me to find a couple, but they only dropped a total of three string. But shortly after I put an end to a zombie and it dropped a potato, so uh, hey, that's a win in my books, you know, I'll take another food source, I am not complaining. More cave spelunking later, I, I think that's what cave exploring is called, I, I don't know, but uh, anyway, more spelunking later. Uh, I found a lava pool, but there was nothing down there, so uh, I shall leave it for now, and later on when I want to grab obsidian, I'll come back down here and that's where I'll get it from. Oh, and I also found a mob spawner while I was down here, sadly it was a zombie spawner, but hey, I got a load of string from the chest, so now I can make a bed. So, after getting some string, I headed back up to the surface to start smelting my iron down, and then made a bed, as well as farmed out some potatoes, and then made a smoker to cook them in, and then worked on improving the mine for most of the night, before finally heading to bed after a week of no sleep. Okay, so on the morning of day 8, things were really starting to come together. We now had more land to build on, a literal forest of trees at our disposal, and enough iron for the time being. So I decided to start work on gathering the materials for my house and start planning where I wanted it to be. You see, I kind of wanted like a circular design, like in the center, to be like a central hub of everything, and each side leading out to a pathway. You'll get the idea once it's built, but finally, after three days or so of working on it, by the morning of day 12, the house was finally done, and I think it came out looking pretty nice. So after building the house, I decided that it was probably time to go and grab some obsidian and start preparing for enchanting and the nether. So I ran back down to the lava pool we saw earlier and grabbed enough obby to make a portal and an enchantment table. And by the way, I don't know if it's just me, but mining obsidian with a non-enchanted pickaxe just makes me angry. Like I was seething while mining this. I just ugh, I hate it so much. Anyways, obsidian rage aside, I returned to the surface and built myself a nether portal, which I know doesn't look amazing, we'll improve it later, um, and then I went and sorted out my storage and tended to the farm for the rest of the night. And by day 13, it was time for us to start heading into the nether, and wow, that was actually pretty quick, day 13 in the nether? Uh, anyways, um, I wanted to go in there to mainly get some gold to start trading with piglins for leather, because then I can actually make an enchantment table, considering that, you know, we have no cows. So once I arrived in the nether, I set out in search of gold, but after a while of looking and I couldn't find a single gold ore, in fact I noticed that the area looked like a pre-1.16 nether and I'm in 1.18, so something was definitely off. But during my search for gold, I did spot a fortress, so we shall probably use that later, I, I, I don't really know, but uh, I headed back to the portal and started a strip mine in hopes of reaching new nether chunks because I thought that this was a man-made area that would have probably been made prior to 1.16 and therefore wouldn't have any of the things that I need in it. So I mined and mined and mined, and well, actually ended up coming out directly in front of a nether fortress, and well, I don't know if it's the same one, but I don't care, I just bridged over to it. And once I got over to said fortress area, um, I saw some nether gold ore, so we're in 1.16 like chunks now, so this is actually useful to me. So I went and mined the gold and then realized how massive this nether fortress actually is. Like this place is, this place is pretty big, okay? And it's all cut off and like corrupted. I've never seen one like look like this. It was, it was weird. Anyways, after looking at the fortress in awe, I uh, made myself some gold armor so that the piggy boys wouldn't immediately be angry with me and then absolutely destroyed a ghast. Yeah, that's what you get, you overgrown screaming pillowcase. A pillowcase, really? Uh, it don't matter. Anyways, I continued mining gold being careful not to angle the piggy boys around me, um, as well as grabbing some bone blocks. I grabbed some bone blocks from the soul sand biome to use on my farm later on. 
And after grabbing them, I headed into the fortress and grabbed some nether wards and then also went around looting some chests around the area in the fortress. And, well, I managed to get some horse armor, some gold, and two diamonds. So that's very nice and I shall take it. Oh, and I also killed a singular blaze, but unfortunately didn't get a rod. Some gold mining and a piglin attack later, and it was finally time for me to begin trading. Now, at this point, I'll probably take most of the things that they trade me, but uh, I will not complain about leather or like ender pearls or anything like that. And after trading with this guy for like a 30 gold or something, I ended up with 7 pearls, a potion of fire resistance, and 10 leather. So I decided that would do for now, because I was sick of seeing the nether, and I headed home, stored my stuff away, and then made an enchantment table. However, we were still a long way off of level 30 enchants. Oh, also I was hella hungry, so I broke some bone blocks down into bone meal, and uh, I got myself some more potatoes. Okay, so on day 16, I started work on adding the paths at each side of my island, joining them together at my house, so that we can really start making this place look good soon. Anyways, I ended up running out of gravel pretty quickly, so I just ran down the mine and grabbed a little bit more and then continued on with the path making. But uh, during the process of making them, a beehive was in the way, so I kind of had to uh, remove it and then wait for the bees to de-aggro and then finally finish my final path. And then uh, I, I did give the bees a new home with some lovely flowers and some trees and, well, I think it came out looking pretty nice for now. Alrighty, so on day 17, things were really coming along now and everything was starting to take shape. So I decided to start work on restocking on wood for the next big expansion. So I spent the entire day just growing and chopping down trees and by the end of the day we had a decent amount of wood. Anyways, on the following couple of days I decided to work on the mine a little bit because I'd only seen caves that were covered in stone and being quite high up and I really wanted to see if there was anything hiding in the depth. So I continued my way down through the upper layers and down into the abyss in search of good loot. And well, eventually we found what I like to call a real cave, but uh, there were hella mobs in here, okay? There was a lot of things in here. So I made my way down very carefully and then almost met my end by a skelly who needs to be signed to phase because this man didn't miss a single shot. But it's all good because when I got my health back I went and boofed him and then noticed the literal creeper army stood opposite me. Why is there so many things down here, man? This is crazy. Anyways, I got to work on securing an area down here so that I at least had a slim chance of survival during this adventure. And whilst building my little safe haven, I got a visit from a farmer right here who I had to quickly put down because, well, I can't cure him and, uh, well, the one that I had earlier also despawned, so I just don't have enough time. Anyways, I moved deeper into the caves and immediately found a single vein of diamonds just chilling down here on its own. So uh, I grabbed it and then continued on my exploration. And, well, the creeper army kind of dealt with itself. <laughs> the idiots, man, idiots. After a little bit more exploring, I ended up stumbling across another singular vein of diamonds. And, well, I, I hate that they spawn in one vein so often. You get so excited and you mine it and it it's just disappointment. Anyways, one army of zombies later and I found my first two vein of diamonds. Woo, we're going up in the world. A two vein, yeah. But I, I guess in this day and age, a two vein's the best you can hope for, really, eh? And then shortly after finding the diamonds, I found myself a skelly spawner. So things were just going up and up from here. And they also had some melon seeds in the chest, which I love melons. So hell yeah, why not? I grabbed them and then also found another two diamonds and then headed back home because I was sick of being attacked at every turn. And I'd also not seen the light of day in like an hour. So uh, yeah, anyways, I headed back to the surface. I stored away my stuff, I smelted down my golden iron and then went and just chilled out for the rest of the night. Alrighty, so after spending a couple days down in the mines, I decided it was time to expand again. And well, this one's a pretty big one, okay? Because the first circle is 50 by 50, but this new one is 100 by 100. So we, we have our work cut out for us here, okay? Anyways, I worked hard for days on forming the first layer of the outer circle and oh boy, this thing already looks pretty cool. However, I did attempt to start filling it in and uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna take like a lot of dirt to do this, so... Uh, Maybe not going to do that right now. Um, also, I'm going to use this outer layer right here as a tree farm because, well, you can plant a load of trees around this and uh, have a load of wood. But finally, by day 24, the ring was done and uh, everything was really coming along now. So all that was needed to do was filling in the thing with dirt and uh, also get some grass over there and some fences on the outside and maybe some like better bridges. So I decided to spend the rest of the day just working on the farm and giving it a new kind of like style thing that, well, I think it came out looking pretty good if I do say so myself. And then on day 25, I decided to head back into the nether to try my luck again with getting more leather because, well, I really wanted to enchant and I had some extra gold laying around from my time in the caves. So I headed back in and followed my path back to the fortress and then began trading again. And, well, I got attacked by an invisible ghast and then jumped by this wither skelly who, well, just take a look. 
Yeah, it was a scary time. The man pulled me to two hearts and almost killed me, but luckily I regened and survived and then went and killed him. And then tried to go back to trading with my piggy boy, but he disappeared. So uh, I found a safer spot with another pig and continued trading. And well, by the end of the session, I had 13 more leather, 5 more pearls, and uh, well, that wasn't too bad. And then I went and grabbed some more bone blocks because I can, and they were just sitting there not being used. And uh, then I headed back home, stored my stuff away, and went to bed. And then I spent the entirety of day 26 just digging up dirt to finish off my ring and to start work on a new project soon, which uh, will really make this place start coming together. So yeah, I just dug up dirt all day and used this little trick that turns gravel into dirt. It was very, very useful. And then on the following day, I placed it all down and managed to get all of the circle filled in and then went round adding a few fences, but didn't manage to finish this off because I had nowhere near enough wood to do that. Anyways, lack of wood aside, I then went round and planted like a hundred saplings all the way around the circle and boom, now we have a tree farm. Okay, so on day 28, I went round and grabbed a load of sand from the ocean floor and began placing it down one layer around my main island, just to start using it as a sugarcane farm and, uh, well, it actually didn't take up that much time or sand, so by the end of the day, we now had a sandbank around the island and the start of a soon-to-be pretty large sugarcane farm, so that's, you know, that's some good progress. Anyways, I spent the night adding more crops to the farm, and on the morning of day 29, I headed back over to the shipwreck to grab some more birch wood from it because I wanted to add some fences, like, dotted around my farm and, uh, well, I really wanted some variety in the wood to use and well this is the only way I can get birch wood considering that there's no other sapling so uh, yeah after clearing out the ship of all birch wood I headed to another one to check if there was any loot or any more birch wood and well there was some pretty good loot on the ship including a diamond which made me think that I probably should have come here sooner anyways I looted the rest of the ship and it didn't really have much except a zombie trap down here so uh, I headed home stored away all the stuff and then crafted some fences to place around my farm followed by a few lanterns on top of them and uh, boom there we go it looks really nice it looks kind of unusual but uh, but i love it it looks very symmetrical uh, it just looks good okay Anyways, on day 30, I was completely out of coal, so I headed back down into the cave in search of any I could find, but uh, actually ended up getting sidetracked and went on a massive mining spree, picking up basically everything I saw. And actually ended up stumbling across this whopping vein of nine diamonds. Now, th this, this took me back, okay? I I'm just as shocked as you are because I thought that the maximum you could get was eight, but then, you know, this map is handmade, so I'm assuming that's why. But to be fair to myself and the game, I threw three away so that things didn't get too easy, considering that, you know... A nine vein I didn't think could spawn naturally, so uh, RIP extra diamonds, you will be missed. I just don't feel right taking them, you know? Anyways, after that incident, I returned to the surface and smelted down all the loot that I got and made a stone cutter, and by this point, the sun was already rising, so I spent the rest of the day working on tidying up the entrance to the mine, because, well, it was just kind of like a hole in the ground, and everything around it looked somewhat good, and this was the only thing that hadn't had a glow up yet, so, uh, yeah. But by the end of the day, I think it came out looking pretty good. Okay, so now we're on day 32, when we've come pretty far already, but now it's time to really get things going, because uh, when I woke up, I made myself a diamond sword, a diamond chest plate, and then crafted a few gapples, you know, just, just for if. Anyways, after making them, I headed outside and started working on a little pond area just outside my house, and you may be wondering, hey poppers, why do you really need a pond? I mean, you're surrounded by hella ocean, what use would you have for a pond? Well, I don't really have a use for a pond, you got me there, but uh, it looks good, it's got a good aesthetic to it, so I'm building it. So my idea to make this area look all nice and cosy was to have a pond in the middle surrounded by some trees and some flowers and uh, maybe a little path leading through. So I started out with the pond and it ended up coming out pretty good. Um, and then I spotted a wandering trader on my land, so I went over to check what he had and well, he did have some pretty good stuff for the pond, but I was a poor boy and did not have the emeralds to purchase it. So instead I bought some moss because well, I can farm it and it's gonna look really good. Anyways, I began work on the path and uh, it all came together, linking in the middle with the sides of the pond. Then I dotted a few trees and flowers around as well as some moss and azalea trees. And uh, well, here it is. I'm really happy with how this addition came out. All right, it looks really good. Think it's a very nice tranquil area, okay? Very nice. Okay, so it's time for some big work, all right? I wanted to light this place up a bit uh, and finish off some stuff that I've been putting off, such as finishing the bridges everywhere and just making everything look better by adding fences and just stuff and, and little details. So I spent a good few days working on all that, as well as farming out my sugar cane in the time being and uh, grabbing some more iron for lanterns alongside everything. And on day 36, everything was looking a lot better, but I was out of iron because of how many lanterns I crafted. But hey, it, look, all right, they, they look better than torture, so it was worth it. 
Anyways, I had a little trip down the mines to restock, but uh, whilst I was down here, I stumbled across a water cave and remembered something about the stronghold for this map being underwater. Because, yeah, again, it's a man-made map. So I went inside to have a look around, but saw absolutely no signs of a stronghold. So uh, I called it a successful few days, smelted down my iron, and went to bed. All right, so after a few building days, it's time to head back into the nether to kill some blazers because I really wanted to start brewing some potions soon. So after arriving at the fortress, I held my gapples tightly and went in search of a blaze spawner killing a couple wither skellies in the process, and then eventually stumbled across a spawner and got to work eradicating these fiery boys from existence for their ever so sought after rods. And well, after grabbing more than enough, I headed back home to make myself a brewing stand, as well as some glass bottles and the ingredients to begin cooking up some potions, and then organised them nice and neatly in this barrel right here. And then I spent the rest of the day building a little crappy nether wart farm under my house, because well, I decided to go small this time, because I usually go too big and I never use that much nether wart, let's be real, we don't use that much. Anyways, on the the following couple days I went underground again, but this time in search of an amethyst geode or amethyst cluster or whatever, whatever they're called. Uh, we'll call them purple things that make noise. Anyways, I wanted to go in search of one of these because uh, I really wanted to put one underneath my enchantment area to kind of have like a, an amethyst geode under my enchantment table because I think it looked really nice. Anyways, after stumbling across a few caves for a while and mining all around, uh, I did actually end up stumbling across one. So I grabbed all the calcite, the amethyst and the, the other snuff. I think it's like smooth basalt or something. And after destroying this very beautiful natural geode, uh, I returned to the surface and began work on rebuilding it in my own image. Oh, uh, and I also made myself some purple glass because I had access to the flowers and a multitude of dyes and uh, well, it turned out pretty nice. I've never built anything like this before, but uh, I shall 100% be doing a geode enchanting area again. Maybe in the hardcore series, okay? Because this looks real good. And I know the table can't go in the center. It's because I built it the wrong size, but I'm, I'm limited with space here, okay? But it still looks okay, all right? But sorry about the non-centered table. Okay, so on day 41, I went in search of the stronghold that was hidden underneath the island because, well, I thought there could be a library in there and that would save me so much time getting all the books that I needed for the enchantment table instead of having to trade for leather in the nether. So I went around exploring all the upper caves for uh, quite a while, you know, checking every nook and cranny. But eventually, after a little while of searching, I spotted some stone bricks under the water in this big ravine right here and almost died getting to it. But uh, I made my way inside, deeper and deeper into the stronghold until I came across a room full of skellies. Uh, this place was just crawling with mobs, but uh, yeah, it was, it was not a nice place. Also, if you're wondering why I didn't get the achievement, it's because this is a man-made stronghold and I'm assuming that's the reason why it doesn't come up. Anyways, after dealing with a room filled with skellies, I uh, opened a door to a magma cube trapped in a room with a chest, so I quickly dispatched him and, uh, well, found a chest full of potions, and it even had a, a luck potion in there. I don't actually know what that does, but hey, you know what, I'll take it. Anyways, I popped a night vision potion and continued making my way through this awful, awful place. Oh look, and now it's time for cave spiders. I am absolutely terrified of these things, I absolutely hate them. So instead of taking these little gremlins head on, I decided to break blocks around the sides to try and break the spawners. It was, it was, a, whole, it was a whole ordeal, okay, right? Um, but they ended up getting a couple good hits on me, but I wiped them out nonetheless. After searching around the walls of the stronghold for a little bit longer, I actually ended up finding a library, but there was an absolute horde of zombies in there. So uh, I dealt with them, hopped down, and then uh, took a load of books from this place. So uh, yeah, I grabbed my books and went home. And when I got back, I made all my bookshelves, placed them down, and got to work on enchanting, and then disenchanting, and then re-enchanting to get Fortune 2. Oh, and I also made an anvil and combined the two pickaxes, and then boom, a, a very nice pickaxe now. And then I spent the rest of the day trying to get Silk Touch on an iron pickaxe, but uh, no, no, it didn't happen. Okay, so on day 43, we were quite low on XP, so uh, I made my way down to the mob spawner I found earlier to set up a little crappy mob grinder down there, so that I can fund my uh, heavy XP usage on enchants. Then once the farm was made, I sat at it all day, and well, it didn't give me an insane amount of XP, but it was it was pretty decent. Anyways, after I was done at the farm, I returned home, smelted down some iron, and went to bed. Anyways, on day 44, we'd had a few weird days, so now it's time for me to get to work on building the second ring. That's right, it's time to expand some more, but this time, instead of adding some normal stuff, we're gonna have two halves, okay? We're gonna have one half nether warped biome, and we're gonna have the other half nether crimson biome, and I think it's gonna look really cool. But this was going to be a lot of work, so first I managed to get Silk Touch on a pickaxe and then headed into the nether in search of both a crimson biome and a warped biome to begin completely tearing them apart. So the first one I found was actually a warped biome and it also had a ruined portal right next to it but uh, didn't really have anything there. So I headed over and began tearing the whole place up, alright? I took trees down, I took the floor, I took 
everything. Oh, and I also brought my anvil with me to keep repairing my pickaxe so that, you know, I could keep things running smoothly when my pick gets low on durability. Anyways, after a while of successful nether deforestization, I headed home to store the stuff away and then went back to the nether to continue digging it up and repeated this process a few times until I had what I deemed would be enough warped nylon and warped logs to uh, complete their half of the island. And then I set out in search of a crimson biome, which actually wasn't that far away, and then repeated the entire process again, but this time with red. Now, at this point, I'd collected a lot of materials, mainly wood, so I got to work on the outline of the circle with giving each side their respective colours, and, uh, well, this circle was confusing as hell to build. I don't know why I kept messing it up, I literally had an image next to me, but it was just, it, I don't know, it messed with me. But eventually, I placed all the wood down, and now it was time to start placing down the warped and uh, the crimson nylon in their respective areas, and then finally went around placing the, uh, the fungi down, and then bone mealing it all, and... Well, here's the end result. This thing looks really, really nice. I am really impressed with this. Um, and I also noticed at this point that I had a setting turned off in my shaders that made everything look really good. So uh, sorry about that. It's on now. But yeah, the nether area looks really nice. Very, very happy with it. Good job. So after all the expansion was done, it was time to finally start gearing up to kill the dragon and maybe even a couple of withers alongside it. So I set back out down the mines with my fortune pickaxe in hand, ready to get stacked on diamonds. So I searched around the caves for a while, not really finding anything other than a few bits of iron and some redstone, but eventually there was a diamond shining in the roof of a cave, and well, I went to go and mine it, and my god, look how many are here, there's so many. This was absolutely insane, I guess I was wrong about the amount of diamond veins you can get earlier, anyways, we got 20 diamonds from this with fortune, and I think it was an 8 vein, so uh, definitely not complaining, but it wasn't enough, so I cut my celebration short and continued through the winding caves and caverns until I found one more that gave me 4, hmm, uh, but after that I uh, got slapped by a load of mobs, but it, it's okay, I, I dealt with them and continued through the caves until I stumbled across another diamond and a cave absolutely packed with iron ore. I mean, just look at this. There's so much of it. So I, uh, I grabbed it all and ended up stumbling across an area of cave which I was quite familiar with. This is, this is where I broke the geode earlier. Anyways, after getting 28 diamonds, I decided that was enough for me and headed back to the surface to craft the rest of my armor and tools. And uh, just like that, we are now fully kitted out in diamonds. Let's go. So then, for the next day and a half, I uh, stayed down at the zombie spawner to rack up some XP to enchant my armor before going and fighting the dragon. And after being down there a while, I ended up with enough XP to enchant some of my armor and some of my tools, even though I forgot to enchant my sword for some reason, but uh, that's okay, because I decided to put that pumpkin to good use that I got all those days ago, and, uh, well, I made an iron golem. Now, the one that I made in the last video was called Gaston's, and he didn't really last too long, but uh, this one shall be called Alfred, and just look at him over there, okay? He's chilling by the water is such a lovely guy this guy will live forever all right so on day 59 it was time to start cooking up some potions so uh, i went and grabbed some nether wart and began brewing everything i needed and uh, well like i do every time we needed instant health slow falling and speed but i already had that this time as well as a jump boost and strength potion so this 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 dragon is not ready anyways i brewed them all up upgraded them and boom we're now ready to kill a dragon so on the next day i headed back down to the stronghold and made my way to the port portal room and jumped in. And well, I actually managed to hit all the pillars quite quickly and accurately, which is a big change for me considering I miss my shots quite a lot. Anyways, it was now time to kill the dragon, and oh my god, this man did not want to die, okay? I hit him a load of times with the bow, but every time he came into perch, he flew off seconds later. But eventually, I got some good hits in and almost died to an enderman, but uh, after dealing with that inconvenience, I put an end to the dragon and started my journey through the outer end islands in search of the elytra. Now, this is always a gamble of how long it's going to take me to find a city with a ship. So, uh, this time we ended up getting very, very lucky, and there was one literally right next to the portal. So, uh, yeah, it was a pretty big city too. So, I uh, bridged my way over to it, ran in, dealt with the shulkers, and then went deeper and deeper into the city for that sweet, sweet loot that ended up being, eh, okay. And then I headed to the ship, grabbed the loot and the elytra, and then headed back home, stored my stuff away, and went to bed. Okay, so whilst I was in the end, I actually managed to score myself a lovely looting three sword, and well, it just so happens that I want to make four beacons. So I headed back into the nether with my sword and a, a luck potion in hand, whatever the hell this thing does, uh, and I went on a rampage killing wither skeletons for their skulls. 
And well, even with a looting three sword, this took so long. I managed to get the first one after 10 minutes, and then after that, they were just, they were really far and few between. But eventually, after about an hour and a half, maybe even more of just pure pain and frustration, I finally had enough skulls. So I uh, grabbed some soul sand, and then headed into the end and, uh, well, killed them 100% legitimately. Okay, just hear me out. Okay, this is a lot easier way. It's a lot quicker way to kill them. I've just spent an hour farming the skulls. I do not have it in me to kill them legitimately, okay? So I want to see comments down in the comment section, right? I want you justifying this, okay? I, I want justification. Anyways, after killing all the withers, I grabbed some extra obby from one of the end pillars and returned home to craft all my beacons. And now, all I needed to do was build a mega beacon underneath my house, but uh, I really don't have the iron for that, so you know what that means. That's right, it means that day 70 is an iron mining day, but uh, I actually don't need that much more, so it didn't take me that long. I just went around mining all the veins of iron that I ran by previously when, uh, when I didn't need iron. Anyways, after grabbing my iron, I smelted it all down and even had to make more furnaces, fern, fern eyes to, to help with the amount that I brought back. Okay, I had a lot of iron. But after that, I began working on the pyramid, but realized very, very quickly that it'd be really stupid for me to make a full one, considering how much iron it would actually need for four beacons. So I just decided to do a half one instead, and well, I'm pretty happy with how things came out. It looks really good. But on day 71, storage was becoming quite a problem because everything was all over the place and if you know me, you know I like myself a nice, clean, sorted out storage. So I got to work on building a little area next to the mines that would be used for storing all of my stuff in. And well, I've never done this style of building before with the, the stripped kind of logs as beams and stuff without a guide, but I think it came out looking pretty good. I, I definitely feel like I'm improving with building. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this. Anyways, after the build was done, I made some chests and gave them their own theme, if, if that's what you call it, um, and added items frames to it, and uh, well, here's the end result. It looks pretty good. Anyways, after sorting out some of the boring stuff like storage, I decided that I wanted to add some end islands around my area to add even more decoration between the outer circles. So I headed back into the end and started completely tearing the place up, and uh, also tried to silk touch a chorus fruit, which worked to my surprise. But I don't know the first thing about these things, and I don't know whether they grow if you plant them, so I guess we'll find out. Anyways, after grabbing all the necessary resources and materials, I headed back home and began work on adding some of the islands dotted around everywhere in various sizes with the chorus fruits on top. And, well, they actually grow pretty fast and by themselves, so that's good. Anyways, after completing all the islands, I uh, headed back into the nether to grab some glowstone, so that way I can light up the water underneath them and the islands to really make them, you know, stand out and uh, look, look better. And uh, boom, here's what five days of hard work comes out to. And also, I realize that this video is a lot of building, but I kind of wanted to do something different this time around in the 100 days. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Anyways, on day 82, I got up and I was going to combine the shovel that I got from the end with my current one because it had efficiency on it, but uh, it had been a waste of time to do that, so I just saved the XP and didn't do it. Anyways, I went on a massive sand gathering spree again because I wanted to make some glass. Some purple slash magenta glass to be precise, because I wanted to go and cover the top layer of water all the way around the end islands in purple glass so that like it looks cool and it like goes shiny and purple and glowy and so it'll just look good anyways i headed under the water grabbing as much sand as possible and using doors wherever i could as well just to speed up the process also thank god for respiration or aqua affinity whichever one it is uh, you you've got to love it okay it's great anyways after getting more sand than any sane person would ever need to get uh, i started smelting it all down into glass and well this took so long you have no idea but whilst the furnaces were doing their thing, I got to work on making as much magenta dye as possible. And my god, I broke so many flowers. But uh, hey, it's a good thing we've got a lot of lapis. Anyways, I made myself the dye, added it onto the glass, and finally, at long last, after days of smelting and breaking flowers, it was time to start placing down all of this beautiful, beautiful magenta glass. So, I got to work, and, well, I did make some good progress, but definitely needed more sand during the process. Uh, a lot more, actually. Uh, R.I.P. Diamond Shovel. But eventually we were done, and with the shaders I used, this thing looked super, super shiny and glowy, and I really, really liked it. So it was definitely worth the time invested.
Okay, so we've come pretty far in this 100 days and made some really cool builds along the way, but we still only have diamond armor. So I repaired my pickaxe and now I guess it's time to go on an insane netherite mining spree. Woo, yeah, let's go. Uh, but no, I, I went into the nether and tried to grab some netherite by just spam mining everywhere. But I did almost break my pickaxe finding absolutely zero ancient debris. But after I repaired it and tore up the nether some more, we finally found some pretty quickly. But decided to only go for 12 because, well, I know it won't really do everything, but it's enough for what we want it for. Anyways, I headed home, smelted it all down, repaired my pickaxe, and then made myself a netherite chest plate and leggings, and a diamond pick. But by this point, the sun of day 94 began to rise, and I was feeling quite adventurous, so I made myself a boat and set sail for, well, I don't really know, anything. Maybe, maybe a shipwreck, maybe some land, who knows what I'm gonna find out here, but hopefully something cool. And well, after sailing for a while, I finally spotted some land that wasn't my island, so I went and beached my boat, and do you remember me asking, for a shipwreck or some land? Well, how's about a shipwreck on land? Hey, look at that one. That works fine, I shall take it. Anyways, after looting the ship, I continued across my newly discovered lands, but uh, after walking for a while, I noticed that there was nothing here. Like, nothing. There was no life, there was no structures, and there was really, like, not many trees. It, it felt really, really creepy. Oh, and I also found a ruined portal with a fishing rod in it, but uh, after that I went and explored some more and genuinely felt quite uneasy in this place. I don't know why, it's just, it's so big yet it's so empty and there were some more structures that, uh, that had some okay loot, but it just made things feel even more off. Anyways, as night fell, things just got worse, so I booked it back to my boat and headed home. And actually managed to get home by the morning of day 95. But when I got back to my island, I actually decided to take a look around at what we built and... Wow, I I'm really impressed with this. I've not actually taken a minute to stop and look so far. And uh, wow, I I'm really glad about it. So I decided to take this opportunity and uh, make a load of maps and make a display board kind of thing to really see how my island looked. And uh, well, look at this. It I think it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good from a bird's eye point of view on a map. Very nice. Anyways, I decided to spend the next couple days just working on tidying up the mines and adding stone bricks all around them and all down the staircase just to have it look cleaner because it was the worst looking thing on the island currently. Okay, and uh, day 100. It's been quite the lonely adventure this time, so I decided to use all my iron on iron golems and make an army of them because, well, they were my only friends now and because I think the bees died uh, earlier on. But uh, anyways, I finally made some fireworks and used my elytra to see my island from the top down for the first time and I was really, really happy with how this turned out. Uh, and also, I was really happy that we had just survived another 100 days, but this time on an isolated, lonely little survival island. And we went from this crappy little dirt patch to having this massive, vibrant island that I am really, really impressed with. And so, that marks the end of our island adventures. I really think that that was one of the most fun videos I've ever recorded, and the build came out looking so much better than I ever imagined it to. But enough talk about that, and instead, let's move on to our next 100 days in a world that expanded over time. So, kicking things off on day one, there really wasn't much else to do except break down the tree. So, I did, and then crafted the wood into a pick and began the world's smallest mine. And to no surprise, ended up finding absolutely nothing but stone. But hey, at least we have a slightly better pick now that I can't really use just yet. So, I placed down all the cobble that I literally just mined to make my way back to the surface, and well, that's about all we can do for day one. I know, right? It kind of sucks, but I mean, I literally have one block. What do you expect me to do? Hey, would you look at that? It's day two now, and we can actually move. I'd Never thought I'd celebrate having this little space. Also, yes, the world border has changed and it will do again because it's been killing my retinas for the past few weeks because believe it or not, this is not my first attempt doing this video. I actually died in my first attempt, so uh, there's a little bit of behind the scenes info for you. Anyways, back on track, I planted down my sapling, found a seed and then started an actual mine. That way I don't meet a grizzly fate by mining one too many blocks down. During the mining session, I found a lot of diorite as well as one piece of iron. Woo! I can make a shovel or a shield. The possibilities are truly endless. About 20 blocks later, and I found the world's smallest cave alongside some gravel. So now we can make a flint and steel with our singular iron. Hey, look, see, I told you, endless possibilities. Oh, would you look at that? It's like the most useless ore in the entire game, but I guess I'll take it just to increase my very tiny current net worth. Now, I kept mining in search of coal because I really can't see anything. However, my pick broke before finding any, so I just headed back to the surface to check up on the tree that, to no surprise, was still a sapling. So, not much I can do there. Alright, so I think I'll give you guys a little house tour right now, okay? So we go down the stairs right here and, uh, well, there's my house. Thanks for watching.
Now my amazing home aside, I made a furnace and smelted down my singular iron and then just sat there clutching it all night like Golem and the Ring of Power. Until the sunrise of day three, when we were given just a little bit more space. Oh, the freedom. Now, at this point, I realized I was getting just a little bit hungry, and that wasn't going to fly. So I went and broke what little grass we had, finding another seed. Then I made a hoe and planted them down when I realized that the tree had now grown. So I made an axe, chopped it down, and cooked up some of the wood into charcoal, and boom, now we have torches and can actually see. So I headed back down the mine and, uh, well, spotted some fiends blocking my way. So I made a sword and quickly dispatched them, getting three bones and a nice piece of stinky meat for my troubles. Mmm, -mm, yummy. After recovering from my stinky meat, I headed back down the mine and got jumped by not one, not two, but three creepers back to back. Literally the worst possible thing to find. But after dealing with them, I continued down the mine, expanding it, finding some copper, a decent vein of iron that was hiding a pretty big-sized cave behind it. So now we actually have a place to look forward to exploring once we have the space. Now, I decided to head back to the surface and smelt down my iron, as well as putting the bones that I got to use by breaking them down and using them on the farm, if you can even call it that. But realized after using up all my bone meal on the seeds that I should have probably grown the tree again. But, oh well, at least I have a singular piece of bread. So I spent the night just expanding out my home a little more and just sitting and waiting for the sun to come up. And so on the morning of day four, I was greeted by the lovely message of the border expanding and ran to the surface to see if the tree had grown and it had. So I chopped it down, flattened out the area and planted down a few saplings and then began making the mine better by just expanding it out a little bit and making it just a little bit more user friendly. And whilst opening things up, I found one more chunk of iron and finally some coal that I couldn't grab all of it just yet because it's on the border, but I guess that'll be a little treat for tomorrow. After grabbing all the coal I could, I found an enderman and a creeper and was feeling pretty risky, so I obliterated them, finding an ender pearl and some gunpowder. Not bad. So I left mining for now and instead spent the night clearing out a little area to use to spawn mobs in that I can then just continuously farm out and boof. Day 5 once again started out by checking up on the saplings, and uh, well, one had grown, so I chopped it down, flattened out the area, and devoured an apple that dropped from the tree. I headed down and grabbed our newly available coal, and went to check out that cave that we found the other day, because I know I saw some ores in there. Whilst mining my way down, I found a vein of iron that I couldn't mine and eventually stumbled across the cave that was guarded by a skelly that swiftly got dispatched. And just look how weird this place is. It's a really weird feeling being in here, knowing that I can see all this right here, but I can't go anywhere in it, and not to mention the complete lack of mobs down here. It's kind of creepy. So I decided to mine down a little bit deeper because I saw the cave went down some more and uh, ended up finding a bunch of iron and also made a shield whilst down here just for in case there was any unwanted guests on my way back up. After digging down for a little while, I eventually did find more to the cave that was filled with a bunch of diamonds as well as a lava pool. So that means that we can go to the nether at some point. Now, just as I was about to start making my way back up top, I spotted some iron in the roof. But once I made my way over to it, I realized it was just out of reach. So I decided to make my way out of the mine, set my iron off smelting, and chop down another tree. God, that village looks so close, yet so, so far. Now, I crafted an iron pickaxe as well as a chest, and then stored all my stuff away, and spent the rest of the day once again expanding the mine. And I understand that we're underground a lot at the minute, but trust me, okay? We're gonna take all the scraps we can get from this tiny chunk and use them to create something big soon enough, alright? This is a marathon, not a sprint this time. On day six, we had a lot of trees grown, so I went and harvested them and placed down a composter in an attempt to possibly lure a villager over here, as well as a renewable source of bone meal, but mainly the villager. Anyways, I went and collected the previously unobtainable iron to find yet more unobtainable iron before getting jump scared by a skelly and a creeper, when I realized that the little green boomy boys were actually pretty useful for mining, however not on a path that you were intending to walk on. So I fell back and ate some stinky meat for sustenance and then grabbed the second piece of iron before heading down deeper into the cave and weaponizing a creeper against its fellow brethren, as well as grabbing some redstone before mining down some more and clearing out an area just above bedrock when I found not one, not two, but three diamonds, baby! Let's go! So I continued on clearing out the area when I noticed that I got a bow from the skelly back there, so that's pretty neat. However, it's not as neat as finding ten more diamonds shortly after. I honestly couldn't believe this and it felt just too easy, so I did the logical thing and asked you peeps what I should do, whether I should keep them or get rid of them, and well, you were very generous and let me keep them. So I immediately put them to good use by making a pick and then growing some wheat so that I can actually eat tonight, then crafted myself an iron chest plate and sorted out a little bit of storage until we got the beautiful message of the chunk expanding. So on day seven, I went and chopped down the trees and noticed that we had a big tree, so that's nice, I'll always take more wood. 
Then I headed back down the mine to grab the remaining stragglers of iron, but on my way down heard a chicken, so I dug around for a little bit to find a jockey. After dealing with a little guy on top, I headed up to get some seeds, but on my way back down I just kept getting jumped by mobs. But eventually I returned to the chicken and brought him to the surface, trapping him in a little pen. Then finally returned down to grab the iron. But once I actually returned to the surface to smelt it down, I found that my chicken friend was now gone. So I spent the night smelting some iron and growing a few more crops for some bread when I heard some water down the mine. So I broke the wall to see a singular water source block just a few blocks away. Now, I can't get it just yet, but at least I know that we have water. On the morning of day 8, I made an iron axe and once again did the daily ritual of gathering wood. But whilst I was chopping down a tree, a villager appeared behind me and I was extremely confused because I thought to myself, how could he walk through the border? So I headed into creative to test this out and it's actually a thing. The border kind of lets things in on certain sides. It's kind of weird, but hey, you can go through it. So that's good to know, I guess. But either way, we now have a villager. So I spent a little while thinking of what the best job would be to give our new friend here and decided to make him a farmer because I can have infinite food then and not really have to worry about it. And then if we get another guy coming in here, we'll give him a different job. So I spent the rest of the day planting down my wheat seeds and trapping the villager in dirt so that he can't die to a zombie or something. And then made myself a diamond shovel and got to work on expanding out my little bunker thingy down here a little bit. However, later that night, it was a good thing that I protected the villager because we got what I think was a zombie village invasion because there was a load of these guys. So I made a diamond sword and dealt with them. However, once I thought they were all gone, I headed down underground and got jumped by like five more. So I dealt with them and got one iron for my troubles. Day 9 started out by crafting our first piece of wool for a bed that I made from string that I got from killing spiders. Then headed down to the bedrock area and spent most of the day digging it out a little bit more and making it a much safer place to farm out mobs without risking being oofed by them. After finishing off the shoddy farm, I headed up top and chopped down all of the trees and then spent the rest of the night farming out mobs in our new little mini crappy mob farm that, to be fair, did work pretty well. Now on day 10, I headed back up to check on how close we were to getting water and oh boy, we were just a couple more days away. Oh, and the villager also escaped, so uh, I had to re-trap him, and now I think it's a pretty good time for me to explain to you why I'm not actually building anything yet. Uh, and it's because I need to save up all of the materials that I can, because the house I want to build is going to be quite resource intensive. So, yeah, we shall keep living in a crappy little hobbit hole for now, until we have the space to build my house. Anyways, back on track. I spent a little while making layers of strip mines to see if I could find any more iron or really anything interesting. And ended up stumbling across a cave absolutely filled with mobs in the process, but it had no ores in it. So after a while of mining and finding a few pieces of coal, iron and copper, I stumbled across whatever the hell this is and farmed out mobs for a while before collecting enough string to make the final pieces of wool for a bed. So I made that and then put it to use. Waking up on day 12, I broke down all the bones that I got from the mob farm yesterday and grew as much wheat as I could, as well as checking up on the water situation. And oh boy, we were so close. I think that we'll get there tomorrow or the day after. But for now, I chopped down our first acacia tree and upgraded my villager's home a little bit before flattening out our now vast landscape and making a chest to place all my house building materials in. Then set some more stone off smelting and crafted myself some more bread. Hey, would you look at this? You know, we're doing pretty well for ourselves now. We've got space, we've got food, we've got diamonds. Really, what else do you need? And so what better way to finish the day off than doing some strip mining? Woo! No, but in all seriousness, this was actually a really eventful session because I found this absolute pit of degeneracy that I had to slowly make my way through and ended up getting a potato, which is going to come in very, very useful for the whole food situation. Now, I also looked through the caves to see if there were any more goodies that had been opened up to me, breaking my legs in the process. Now, on day 13, I crafted an iron hoe and farmed out a bunch of potatoes, planted a few down, and then made a smoker to cook the rest whilst chopping down some more trees. After that, I headed back down the mine, finding some more exposed diamonds before farming out the spawner all day and night, mainly in search of bones. And now on the following three days, I farmed out as many trees as possible because like I said, I was going to need a load of wood for my house and also did some farming of crops, mainly potatoes that I then put to use by making the first trades with our villager. But probably the best thing to happen during these days was a beehive that we had spawned. Now, I wasn't even planning on getting bees in this video, but you know what? I'll take them. And I'm also pretty sure that we live in a slime chunk, apparently, because one spawned down in the mines that I sadly had to dispatch because, well, slime balls. Now, by the end of day 17, we'd stacked up on a decent amount of materials. So I headed to bed and on the morning of day 18, I finally made a bucket and went and grabbed the water using the bone meal technique to make an infinite water source out of just one block. This is honestly the best thing I've ever learned in this game and it is so so useful now i did also add some water to the farm and then headed down the mine to check if we had access to a lava pool yet and 
there. Well, would you look at that? We were literally just out of reach, but apparently water's just not phased by the world border and we'll go straight through it. Now, with Obsidian not being on the table today, I instead opted to go and destroy a chunk of Amethyst Cluster because who doesn't like some Amethyst? Now, on day 19, I headed up to find a literal forest had grown as well as a ton of my crops. So I harvested them and traded a little bit more with the villager before chopping down all the trees and then made a little pool that I used to fish in. But shortly after actually casting out, I uh, realized that the obsidian was available to mine. So I rushed down and began digging it up. I'd never thought I'd see the day where I'd look forward to mining this awful, awful block. Now, I could only get three pieces. However, I made up for that by finding some more diamonds. Damn, this cave is really littered with them. I'll drop the seed in the description if any of you want to try this because holy, this is a, this is a good seed for it. Anyways, considering that I didn't have enough obsidian to do anything, I spent the rest of the day just fishing away and got absolutely nothing because I don't actually know if you can still fish in these tiny little pools. But either way, on the morning of day 20, I headed up to find yet another beehive. So I made a campfire and some shears and harvested the honey that I'm not really going to do anything with now, but hey, at least we have it. So I made another pickaxe and returned to grab the rest of the obby, making a portal, lighting it and crafting some gold boots that we just had enough gold for. Then headed in and let me tell you, I could not have wished for a greater spawn okay thank you thank you this is amazing yeah it, it was a bad spawn so i immediately fortified my portal because you know i don't want to get deep fried by a gas and then once that was done i headed straight back home and went to bed very very disappointed and on day 21 it was mining time because i want a full set of iron armor because i'm just so sick of being so squishy to all these mobs and um, talking about mobs i kept finding these mini caves just littered with them it was so annoying and all they had was coal, so it really wasn't worth my time to go through and clear them out. Oh, and I also found some more slimes that had to meet the same fate as the little guy from earlier, because if I try and keep them without a name tag, they're just going to despawn, and that'll hurt a lot more than killing them. Now, as well as grabbing a couple more diamonds that came into my reach, on the evening of day 22, I set my iron off smelting, and by the morning of day 23, I made a full set of iron armor and now felt so, so much safer. So I went to the surface to check up on things, finding two more villagers had made their way in here. So I trapped them and began thinking of what jobs to give them whilst harvesting my crops and once again trading them for some goodies and decided to make one a stonemason and the other one a toolsmith in hopes of getting a good diamond pick from him one day. Then I spent the night just hacking away at all the trees because tomorrow we're actually going to build something. And so on day 24, I began work on a villager breeder. Now I went with kind of like an underground tunnel design. I don't really know what I was going for, but things started to go bad real quick. So I just completely dug everything up and restarted things and they just went so 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 much better now other than breaking a diamond pick things went really really smoothly with this build the second time around and before i knew it everything was looking very very nice and done so i added a couple of finishing touches popped the villagers down there and boom we now have a villager breeder now, I also did spend a little bit of time spider hunting because I really needed a lot of string to get the beds, but uh, by the end of day 29, everything was set up and looking pretty good. Now, on day 30, we'd amassed quite a bit of space since the last time we actually paid attention to it. So I headed down the mine and grabbed all the newly exposed ores before then leaving my hole to deal with all the farming and tree chopping up top. Once all the wheat, potatoes, and trees were dealt with, I headed to bed, and on day 31, returned back to the surface and went around picking up all the sapling sticks and apples that had dropped from the leaves yesterday, and got to work on improving the farm. And by improving the farm, I mean completely rebuilding it and actually making it something that's not just seeds in the floor. Now, this took a little bit longer than expected, but eventually, by the sunrise of day 33, everything was done and the new farm was looking pretty good. I just need a little bit more space to work with, that way it doesn't look so out of place and so, like, huge in this small area. Now, for the rest of day 33, after the success of the farm, I went and traded with my villagers, accidentally interrupting something, and now bagged myself more emeralds that I used to buy some useless stone shovels. I know it's a waste, but it's necessary. After trading, I headed back down to the bedrock level and mined out a bunch more deep slate in search of more diamonds, and it really didn't take me long to find some. Now, I mined out a pretty big area before sorting and smelting all my loot and then heading to bed. And on day 34, I immediately made my way back into the nether to see if there was anything actually worth my time in there. And once I arrived, I immediately started making my way up to one of the higher platforms, when I noticed some piggies just chilling over in one of the far corners. So I decided to uh, start making my way over to them. I don't really know why, I guess I just wanted to kind of chill with them or something. Now, on my way, I got stopped by a couple of skellies, so I tried dealing with them, but then the uh, the worst thing that could possibly happen, happened. I hit a bacon 
weakened boy and sent him into a frenzy and then almost died to the skelly. So I regained my health and realized that I could kind of farm these guys out right here for XP. So after a while of making bacon strips, I went to head home but got jumped by two zombies. I don't know where the hell these guys came from. They literally just spawn randomly, I swear. Anyways, I headed home and started scheming and crafting a system of infinite gold, aka a couple of hoppers and a chest then headed to bed. Because on day 35, I ran back into the nether and set up a very crappy rudimentary way to farm out gold by just having these walking hams run to their own demise and drop loot into the hopper that would then go into the chest, and then eventually into my pocket to sell back to the other piggies later. Ha ha ha, absolute scamosa right there. Anyways, I stayed here all day and night until I decided that I had enough gold to trade, so I crafted it into ingots and traded it with these here oinky boys in hopes of some leather that I actually managed to get the exact amount I needed almost immediately, as well as some other stuff too, but I grabbed what I needed and then headed home to store it all away. And once that was all sorted out, it was already the morning of day 36. So I headed up to check on how close we were to some sugar cane, and well, we were still a couple of days off, so I tended to the farm and did a tiny bit more trading and then tidied up the outside a little by adding some paths and organizing a tree farm a bit before heading to bed and continuing on the following morning by adding walls and a few lanterns as well as some more landscaping and tree farming. And eventually, by the end of the day, things were looking a pretty decent amount nicer. So I headed over to the first villager house that was in reach and it had a brewing stand in it. So I grabbed that and just placed it down into a corner for now and went to bed. And on day 38, I woke up and immediately went and gave the bees some more room and some flowers before breeding them and then making one of my villagers a Fletcher. Trading up a bunch of sticks for emeralds that once I had a nice amount of, went and bought some more stone tools from this absolute scam of a man because I'm not really buying anything else. Then I went and dealt with harvesting all the crops from the farm and gave them back to my villagers to get more villagers. And then spent the rest of the evening finishing off the staircase leading down there, blocking off the mine in the process. But uh, don't worry, that's tomorrow's job, alright? Because now it's bedtime. And so in the morning, I got to work on somewhat improving the mine by making it much easier to traverse up and down. Now, I didn't really make it any deeper than it already was or make it look any nicer. I literally just made a less sickening and easier way to go up and down it. Now, this did take a while, but eventually it was done, and now things look at least a little bit better. And now, finally, on day 44, I ran outside of my house and got my hands on some sugar cane. Now, I can finally make a librarian and have an enchantment table set up. Well, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, because before that, I need a little bit more sugar cane. So whilst that's growing, I spent a good portion of the day harvesting crops and chopping down a bunch of trees, then took everything down to the villagers and traded with them for a while. Oh, yeah, and also we have an iron golem now, but he didn't last long. After disassembling the iron golem, I headed to bed and on day 45, returned down to the villagers and assisted in an iron golem being unalived. Then made myself a second Fletcher before trading for our very first enchanted item. Not too bad, we're progressing now. However, it does look like we might need another toolsmith later, but I don't know, but either way, we're not going to run out of diamond hose anytime soon. So I went and planted down a bunch of saplings and just did what little trades I could for the rest of the day, as well as deleting any iron golem that dared to spawn. And just before we got into bed, we got an unbreaking two diamond pickaxe trade, so I took it. Alrighty, day 46. We've made some pretty good progress so far, but we still have a lot more stuff to do. So after getting into a 1v1 with a very moist Skelly, who really didn't stand a chance, I grabbed my now basically fully grown sugarcane, crafted it into books and a bookshelf, and then into a lectern, and got ourselves a librarian, who will now give us books for emeralds. And so, using my very small amount of emeralds, I bought one, then boofed an iron golem before breaking the bookshelf down, and finally crafting an enchantment table. Now, I do want to build kind of like an amethyst enchanting area once we have everything set up, so uh, I headed back down to the geode to destroy it some more. And once I was happy with the amount of amethyst, I went around grabbing all the newly available ores because I haven't been mining for a while, and well, there was quite a lot of them. Now, after I was done mining, I spent the night smelting everything down. So on day 47, I spotted a chicken and some pigs over in the plains biome and managed to lure the chicken in, finally filling the chicken-sized hole in my heart from earlier. But that's enough of the chicken, because over the next two days, I spent my time growing and chopping as many trees as humanly possible, covering every available inch of land with a sapling. For two reasons. Number one, I really need wood to start building my house, and number two, I really need wood to trade with my villagers. So, in short, I need a lot of wood. But my god was this tedious, okay? I chopped down so many trees, I think I single-handedly caused global warming in this Minecraft world. 
So after tirelessly chopping down as many trees as possible, I had amassed a lot of wood. So I headed to bed and then on day 49 spent the entire day trading with Fletchers and Farmers to amass as many emeralds as possible. And once I had acquired a decent amount of wealth, I splashed out on a bunch of bookshelves and then went to bed. Alright, day 50, the big 5-0. I headed up top to find a wandering trader just chilling out in my farm, however it looks like the llamas didn't really make it. So I went and checked out what he had and it was pretty decent. So I grabbed what emeralds I had and then grabbed some more from the villagers and eventually got some goodies from this trader. It's very rare that I actually use these guys but when I'm limited on materials I'll take whatever I can get. Now after I got the saplings I went and planted them down and returned down to the villagers with all my acacia wood because now that I have access to spruce why in the hell would I use acacia for building anything? So I I may as well trade with it. Now I actually ended up getting enough emeralds to grab our last bookshelf that we needed to get level 30 enchant, so the acacia was useful just not in the originally intended way. Then I set up a little temporary enchantment area and got to work on enchanting all my tools and got some pretty decent enchants especially on my pick and sword. And the other ones weren't great but they were pretty good. So now with the success of that I headed over to the little cave by the village that I now had access to and spent the night there in the caves just mining all the things that I could find and almost dying to a creeper in the pro. Process. Now on the morning of day 51, I set out to get a lot of stuff done, mainly to gather a load of spruce wood, oak wood and deep slate, as well as a bunch of other things and then crafted them down into their respective blocks that I was going to need to use on my home soon. Oh, and I also found a pig that stumbled its way through the border, so maybe soon I can stop eating potatoes and eat you, my friend. And there was also another trader, so I checked what he had, and he had moss and glowstone, so I grabbed all of it, and now we have a way of getting azaleas. So finally, after gathering materials for a few days, on day 55, I began leveling out some land to finally start building my house. It only took 50 days. Now, I managed to get a very basic framework done, but the border is still not big enough to fit the whole kind of compound dealio I have going on in here in. And also, this took me like two IRL days to actually come up and plan out a design for it because I tried multiple designs prior and they just looked awful and I hated them. So hopefully this comes out good. But yeah, we made some pretty good progress, but we're still nowhere near done. So on day 56, I went around chopping down all the trees that I meticulously placed earlier because they were too big and made everything feel very clunky and just looked bad. So bye bye to them. And hello to the vast open new space. Oh, and I also grabbed some leaves from them as well because I need them for the house. Now, after chopping down trees all day, I'd amassed a lot of acacia wood that I'll never use. So I broke it down into sticks and traded with the fletchers again to bag myself some big stacks, as well as making more fletchers to make more stacks. And then ended the night by planting down some carrots. And then on the following days, we did some pretty big work on the compound by adding some deep slate bricks to secure the walls and some smaller details such as spruce trapdoors and the leaves I got yesterday to really make things pop as well as expanding it out a little more due to having some more space but this really made me realize how big i decided to make this thing but oh well we've already started it now and it's gonna look good now by day 61 i had ended up using up basically all of my materials but we did have a pretty good base of things set up and things were coming along really nicely i just need to restock and take a break from building and on day 62 that's exactly what i did i just spent the day planting saplings harvesting crops and trading with villagers as well as leveling up some armorers to get full diamond armor very very soon then i called it a day and headed to bed and on the morning of day 63 i headed straight back into the nether and headed over to the piglin farm for some more xp so that i can use it to enchant whatever tools i need in future and once i had amassed enough i headed home and dealt with all the trees and then that night put the xp to use by buying a new pick and re-enchanting it because i'm sick of wasting my fortune 3 pick on just stone all right it's just a big big waste of its durability once i woke up on the following day i put my brand new pick to use by grabbing as much deep slate as i could get my hands on and then cutting it down into bricks before heading up to see how close we were to getting sand because i really need it for glass for my home and well we were literally one day off however i did manage to bag myself eight pieces that were in reach so uh yay we have sand now and after grabbing my sand i spent the night gathering wood because the next time we start work on the house we're gonna finish it and so on day 65 i landscaped a pretty good amount trying to clear out more space around the house to just tidy things up a little bit more and after a ton of dirt placing and breaking later, things were looking pretty flat. So I added a path from the door of my new home to the entrance tunnel and once again spent the night gathering wood because tomorrow is the beginning of the end for our house. Alrighty, it's time to finish this absolute time gobbler of a house. So I started things out by finishing off the roof of the actual building that I was going to live in. Once the roof was done, I went around just tidying up the walls a little bit more, finishing them off, adding some fences and whatnot, and uh, finishing the back wall as well so that everything was fully enclosed inside. Then just went around finishing off any other details that took a few days. Now, I would cover everything, but there's a lot of stuff that I did and it'd just take too long. 
So hopefully this time lapse somewhat does the job for me. Anyways, finally, by the end of day 71, everything was done and I spent the night moving everything over to the new house and boom, everything is done. And I mean, just take a look at this, okay? I really like these kinds of walled off houses. I think they look really nice. I think this came out pretty good. So after finishing up the actual house part of the build on day 72, it was time to focus on the outside. So I made some sugarcane farms, added some paths and a mini pond, as well as moved the bee farm over there as well as a ton of other things to really fill this area out. And then once everything was done, I added some more ways out of the compound and called it a day. On the following day, I went and made a couple of pits and then lured some pigs and chickens over to them and boom, now we have a way to farm them. I also traded with another trader that popped up, uh, getting some nice goodies from him, and then spent the evening harvesting crops and trading with the villagers into the morning of the following day, when I managed to amass a pretty nice amount of emeralds that I then put to use by wasting them on crappy armor to level up my armor guy. And finally, bagging myself some diamond leggings and booties. And I picked up two of each to combine together, as well as getting a chest plate, but didn't have enough emeralds to finish off the set. So I just headed to the house and combined the armor that I had, and then put it all on, feeling pretty damn safe. After almost fully decking myself out, I headed over to check out a massive ravine I saw by the village, and headed down in search of whatever I could find, mainly iron, considering I was pretty low on it. And oh boy, was this place stacked on iron. There was so, so much down here, but there was also quite a lot of creepers too, but that's really no worries because they never really stood a chance anyway. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, I kind of forgot I was recording at this point and uh, ended up spending a long time down here in these caves, just grabbing everything I could. I think I got distracted by the fact that I now had access to an area that I haven't had for a very long time, or I'm just an idiot. But either way, I was down here quite a while finding a lot of stuff, including some diamonds and a mineshaft that was just chilling in the caves right next to me. However, it ended up being very disappointing because half of it was blocked off still and really all that I could get was a chest with a diamond and a name tag in it. So yeah, that was that. But with that, the adventure comes to an end and I headed home and spent the rest of the day smelting down the loot. On the following day, I planted down a bunch more saplings and then took off back down the mine with some stone bricks in hand to actually try and finish off this abominable thing. Now, like I said, it's not the best mine ever built, but hey, it's literally just a square staircase going up and down. It doesn't have to look amazing. Anyway, once said staircase was finished, I did what any logical thinking hardcore player would do and threw myself from the top all the way down to the bottom. That was really fun, but also pretty scary. On day 84, I grabbed some amethyst, calcite and smooth basalt and then broke down some flowers and bone meal into dye to make some magenta glass. And then began work on building up my enchantment area that was a little late, but eh, it's mainly for decoration anyways. And I know it's not much, but I kind of really like how it came out. It looks kind of funky. Day 85, I made a couple more pits and went out in search of some cows or sheep. And I can't believe I said that I went out. I've not had the luxury of like being able to adventure anywhere for a very, very long time. Anyways, I immediately found a cow and brought it back, quickly followed by a sheep. But uh, as soon as I was about to put him in his new home, Faye Skelly over here sniped him. So I got my revenge and went to bed very, very depressed. But once I woke on the next day, I went out hunting again, immediately finding more cows and a replacement sheep that did actually make it into the pit. Then after securing the sheep, I spent the day landscaping and chopping down trees. Then on day 87, I headed back down the mines to grab some more obsidian and built a new nether portal, heading in and spending just over a day in there grabbing some more XP. Once I had enough XP, I returned home, enchanted two more pickaxes, heading straight back into the nether and made my way over to a little island and began searching for some netherite. Now, I'm not expecting to get a full set by any means, but hey, I'll take what I can get. And so after mining for a good while, we found our first two pieces, but let me tell you, these things were sparse and far and few between this time around, all right? I'm talking two pickaxe repairs and a load of mining later, we finally found another one. I, I know, it's absolutely ridiculous. Now, I was in here for a very long time ripping this place apart for very, very little reward. But eventually, after over an hour, I managed to get just enough debris to make a whopping two ingots. I know, crazy insane amount. Now, I was pretty much done with the nether at this point, so I headed home, smelted them down, crafted my ingots, and then crafted my two pieces of armor. Day 95, I still needed a diamond helmet, so I chopped down the rest of the trees and used up most of my wood trading with the good old faithful Fletchers, making bank, and finally buying myself a helmet. And I'm not gonna lie, I really think this is the latest time it's ever taken me to get full diamond and armor. This challenge is, is no joke with some of the things, but uh, anyways, at this point, I felt pretty strong, so I boofed a golem, and he gave me a good boofing back, and I didn't have any food to regen, so I quickly left. He wins this one, but he, uh, he won't be around for much longer. 
After regenerating some health, I went to explore the mounting thing in my square and scaled it all the way to the top to see how everything looked from the sky view. And uh, I was pretty surprised. It looked pretty good. So on my way down, I landed not one, but two MLG buckets and then took fall damage anyway and called it a day. Now, on the following days, one thing I did notice up there is that the land looked kind of barren around my house. So I spent three days landscaping and tidying things up just a little bit to add a little bit more oomph to the area, you know? So I farmed out and planted down a bunch of azaleas and finally finished off the back of my house that I'd completely forgotten about until this point. And after finishing off the back of my house, finally, I uh, added a couple more things that I thought would look nice. And well, I think this came out looking pretty good. It definitely got rid of some of the dead space. When I woke up on day 99, I was feeling pretty dangerous. So I made my mine drop hole all the way down to bedrock and then connected it to the surface, grabbing a bunch of sand and then built my way up to the world build limit and just dropped off. Oh, but who put that there? Also, you might have noticed that you didn't see the achievement pop up in the top right, and that's because, oh look, I wasn't at the bottom of the world, which that was just great. But either way, that was a fun waste of a day. I'm not doing it again. Plus, I get to watch this satisfying sand falling. Day 100. I got up and realized that I hadn't named anybody in this video yet, so uh, I just want to say sorry about that. Unless you want to be a pig or something, I, I don't really have any cuter mobs to name, so uh, uh, I promise I'll make it up to you in the next video, or the previous video, or the video, two videos after. Uh, one of the videos, I'm working on a lot of things at the minute okay i'm getting a bit confused anyways back on track i went down to try and show the golem who's boss by throwing him down the pit but instead i threw myself down the pit and almost died so i boofed him in the old-fashioned way with a 1v1 but he kind of forgot how to move and well he went down pretty easy but that's where things must come to an end for this video because we have just survived 100 days in an expanding world. And it's also really crazy to think that we came from a one by one square to this absolutely insane thing. It was no easy feat, but it was really, really fun. So I hope you all enjoyed. And with the end of the expanding world, we move back out to sea for the last time as we attempt to survive 100 days in an ocean only world filled with all sorts of sea dwelling monsters. So day one, I spawned into this vast expanse of watering nothingness and immediately set out to find either food or wood because I was going to need both pretty soon. When I ended up spotting this little ship off in the distance, so I began making my way over there, finding a crab leg and some random floating string in the process. Once I arrived, I spent about half my lifetime breaking this singular piece of wood to reveal a pirate illager spawner that I did try breaking as well, but managed to get about halfway before one spawned and blocked me. So instead, I decided to use my time in a better way and gathered a bunch of wood whilst also taking a massive hit from one of these guys. Then I made my way up to the top deck, grabbed a bunch more logs and crafted a sword and pickaxe before breaking the spawn and then dealing with these scallywags in the most respectable way by cowering far away from them up top in the place where I can hit them but they can't hit me back but yeah, yar, that's just how it be out here in the salty depths. <laughs> God, I'm never doing that again. Anyways, after dispatching them, I went to grab their loot that was actually pretty decent. These guys were heavily stacked for our first fight. Then I also went and grabbed the loot out of the chest that had some stinky meat, bones, rum, and some illager silver bars. Once I grabbed all the loot, I began tearing the ship apart, grabbing more wood, and noting another chest up in the top of the sails that contained two golden apples and some bones that I ended up throwing in the ocean, as well as a bunch of stinky meat that I almost died for. But definitely not bad for our first plunder. So I dove off the ship to grab the bones, but really couldn't see them, and then a whole bunch of drowns started making their way over to me. However, I did spot them just in time, went down and grabbed them, and then made my way back to the surface just before starting to drown. All that Subnautica I've been playing recently really came into clutch here. So I returned to the ship and devoured my crab leg along with some stinky meat, and then grabbed some wool from the sail to make a bed. After grabbing all of the strip logs that the ship had to offer me, night had fallen. So I headed to bed, and on the morning of day two, I woke up, ate some stinky meat, and spotted a strange structure in the water right next to my ship. So I began heading down there to investigate, but started getting chased by this here sea ghoul guy thing. I don't know what or who he is, but he creeped me the hell out and was really, really tanky. And after dealing with him, I headed back to the ship to regen and make some new tools and then tried making my way down to the structure again, but realized just how deep it actually was. So one more trip back to the ship to make some doors. And now I can finally be one with the fishies. Oh, also, while I was down here, I also managed to grab a smoker and a furnace from these lovely scaly fellows, and on my way back to the ship, spotted some iron that I shall grab later. 
Once we arrived back at the ship, I began setting up a little mini base of operations when I realised that my inventory was full and I didn't pick up the furnace from earlier. So I went and grabbed that, and finally set up the crappy base on this lonely little ship, cooking up a few potatoes and crafting a boat, because tomorrow we go out venturing in search of more plunder, because I really don't think this area has too much to offer me anymore. So I grabbed a little bit more wood from the ship and headed to bed. On the morning of day 3, I placed down the boat and set out in search of another ship, or basically anything that contains loot. Now, I immediately ended up finding some more random floating items. This time, it's a stick and two strings, so that's nice, I guess. After a while of sailing through the vast nothingness of the sea, I ended up spotting what looked to be like a tiny island off in the distance that had a small ship behind it, and then a really big ship behind that one. So I headed over to it and began grabbing the wood. However, for some reason, I can't do that, apparently. So that, that, that kind of sucks. So I ended up grabbing a bunch of dirt and some seeds instead. Then made my way over to the ship that ended up being full of very angry shooty boys. So my giga massive brain told me to uh, go through the bottom of the ship. So I did and then broke one block too far and almost met my very, very swift demise that was only stopped by my boat. This, 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 this boat came in so clutch, okay? He's, he, I love this boat, okay? I'm giving him a title. His, his name is Monsieur Boyant, okay? My noble steed. Boat savior aside, I did pop a gapple and then deal with a bunch of these awful boys moving further along the outside of the ship, looking for any sort of loot lurking within and dealing with more of these guys as well as breaking the spawner of them. Now, I did end up finding a chest and it had some absolutely amazingly crappy loot inside of it. This is what I almost died for. This is my reward. Needless to say, I left the ship and headed over to the bigger, scarier one in hopes of better loot. But once I got closer to it and actually assessed the situation, I quickly left because that place is way too stacked for a lowly salty sea boy such as me at the minute. So instead I took a trip to this other smaller one, but apparently it had a massive hole in it. So I decided to leave that one and ended up at this tiny raft with a spawner and a chest that did actually have some okay loot in it. And then I grabbed a bunch of wood from the raft and started making my way home, spotting a swampy looking hut on my way back. Once I got back to the wreckage that I call home, I stored all my loot away and headed to bed. Then, on the following couple days, I made myself an iron pickaxe and headed down into the salty depths once more to grab that iron from earlier. After successfully grabbing the iron, I decided to place down a door and start a water mine. Well, technically it's a water-free mine, but you get the idea. So I mined down for a while, finding a little bit more iron and making it all the way down to Y12 when I heard some running water. I began looking around for a potential cave, when I stumbled across this vein of coal right here that was absolutely massive and eventually found finding this very small, unsuspecting cave. So before going any deeper, I decided to stop off, make a bucket, and make a furnace to start smelting down my iron. Then began heading deeper into the cave that ended up opening up into a full-blown ravine. That was a very nice surprise considering that my luck recently hasn't been too great. So I headed back to my hidey hole to craft an iron sword and a shield, and then began making my way through the ravine, boofing a creeper and grabbing any and all ores that I could find. Once the ravine was well and truly cleared out of all the ores, I did a little bit of strip mining and found our first set of diamonds. It was a five vein, so uh, definitely nothing to scoff at. Oh, and also I heard some lava, so uh, I mined around and found it, however it didn't have anything interesting around it. So I went and grabbed all the ores that I'd left behind in the strip mine, then made a diamond pickaxe and returned back to the lava pool to grab some obsidian. And I'm not gonna lie, we're not doing too bad for day 5, alright? I mean, we did almost die like twice, but uh, hey, you know, shiny gem pickaxe makes it all go away. Before leaving the lava pool, I cleared out some of my inventory, picked up my fern eye, and headed back to the ship to store myself away and head to bed. Day 6 started out with me making a dirt platform just off the side of the ship to use as a farm, because I may have diamonds, but I really don't have much food, and that's a problem. So I added a wall around it and began tilling the land and planting down my all of one seed as well as a few carrots and potatoes and then used my bones to break down into bone meal to grow mainly a bunch of potatoes because let's be honest, they are the far superior food. At least in this point of the game, okay? I, I can't get golden carrots right now, okay? I'm a poor boy, okay? I'm a poor boy. Anyways, after dealing with the farm, I spent most of the day just clearing up the uh, absolute mess that was previously a ship so that that way things can start feeling a little bit more homely. Now, by cleaning up, what I really mean is completely destroying and replacing everything with a floating slab that doesn't really look anything like a home yet, but hey, at least Monsieur Boyant has a place to stay now, and he's earned it. Then that evening, I watched the sun set over the salty seas and crafted myself a full set of iron armor and a designated chest for important items before heading to bed. Day 7, our first week survived. Not bad, but we've uh, still got a very long way to go. Now, I ended up doing a little bit of research on the underwater scaly boys to see what they actually do, and it turns out that they're basically underwater villagers, but the trades didn't look too enticing. So I'm sure we'll do some training with those guys later, but for now, I built up a portal and headed into the nether to see what awaited 
greeted me this time and was pretty pleasantly surprised to have a pretty nice spawn in a warped forest right next to me. So I grabbed a bunch of warped wood and then ended up spending a little while gathering quartz for some reason. I don't really know why I grabbed it, but uh, whilst grabbing it, I did notice a fortress off in the distance, but we're not going over there yet, okay? I need to do a little bit more prep before we go there. So instead, I headed home and stored my nether loot away and set out in the direction of that hut thingy I saw earlier because I really wanted to see what it was all about. Once I got close to the island, I noticed that there was a massive ship nearby, so uh, we shall investigate that later. Once I made landfall on the island, I uh, headed straight up into this hut thing, breaking a spawner and looting the chest that had a bunch of cooked fish and another gapple inside, and then also took some of this here palm wood and palm planks, even though they're not called palm planks, instead for some reason they're called palm desks, because that just makes more sense surely. After ruining and tearing up yet another island, I headed over to the Giga ship nearby to see if I could get any loot from this one or die trying. What the hell is that? No, I'm not dealing with that right now. Yeah, no, bye. Bye-bye. After getting chased by a bunch of bones on the back of a dolphin, I ended up stumbling across another what is essentially a sea village. So I looted it up, but I found out that this one had a library that had a fortune 2 and smite book, as well as a bunch of food and a fishing rod. And to top everything off, we ended this pillage by finding an enchanted golden apple and a couple of music discs. Now, this was not bad at all. So I headed back home to store my loot away and sorted out my storage a little before heading to bed after a very, very successful day. Once I woke up on day eight, I headed back down the mine and did some more strip mining because I really need some more iron to make an anvil to actually put the fortune book on my pickaxe. However, shortly after starting mining, I uh, heard some zombies, so uh, I had a little look around for them and ended up falling into a cave and then straight into some lava trying to escape them. The absolutely genius escape plan there, poppers. Absolutely genius. Contrary to what should actually happen when you fall into lava or essentially, in my case, jump into it yourself willingly, uh, I didn't die and instead ended up cowering in a corner and dealing with most of the mobs that are gathered in the cave that way because I just deep fried myself, okay? I need a little, little minute to recover. Once all the mobs got dealt with, I uh, headed back out and began looking for whatever I could find in these caves, grabbing any ores I came across as well as three creepers back to back to back. But other than that, I kind of just explored the caves, grabbing ores and dealing with any mobs that stood in the way, as well as finding this really cool glow squid hangout. But after chilling with them for a little while, I heard some zombies that led me to this absolutely hellish cave, where I almost died a couple of times and also had to traumatically put down a slime. <laughs> I'm so sorry, buddy, I don't want to do this. But hey, I found six shiny blue gems, so uh, I was happy and the trauma was, was gone now. But let me tell you, I cannot stress to you enough how awful this cave was, okay? The mobs just kept spawning and I just kept getting beat up over and over and over again. And I eventually slowly managed to make my way through, lighting things up to try and prevent this literal army of mobs from respawning. Also, a creeper went sicko mode and absolutely decimated a group of mobs. I guess he was having a bad day or something. Now, after getting more than enough iron, I returned back to base and smelted it down, made our anvil and added fortune to my pick before heading back down the mine and mining out any ores that I walked by or left until I had fortune. Once I grabbed enough, I headed home, started things smelting and headed to bed. And on the morning of day 11, I crafted myself an enchantment table along with a bunch of bookshelves. However, I stored it away for now until we expand out the island some more. After that, I did a little bit of farming while cooking up some more potatoes and crafting a diamond shovel before heading back over to the island from earlier and grabbing a bunch more dirt from it when I stumbled across this chest in the center of the island that had an enchanted sword and some pork chops in it, as well as another gapple. Gee, these things are just insanely common in this apparently, but I'm not going to complain. So I grabbed the rest of the dirt and headed back home and began work on outlining our first couple of parts that would soon become our base. Now, I was gonna go for a smaller base this time, and, uh, well, I do start out with a smaller one, but it, it doesn't last that long, okay? I wanted to see what I could do with less space, but it, it didn't last very long, okay? It got bigger. It got bigger. Now, after successfully finishing off our first outline, I lit up the area around it and tried to go to bed, but, uh, couldn't because there was a whole bunch of drowns and endermen, so I had to go and deal with them, and almost threw everything away walking into this very angry boy, but luckily I got out there alive, dealt with the last drowned, and headed to bed. On day 12, I organized and sorted out some of my storage as well as crafting a diamond sword because if I've learned one thing from this world so far is that nothing wants to give me a break and everything just wants to attack me. And then I made my way over to yet another small ship over by the hut island and once I arrived, I began the attack in the same way as usual. However, these rapscallions had something else in mind. Yep, they literally just blew a hole in their ship, scaring the absolute living daylights out of me. But I kind of guess they saved me a job, so I'm not going to complain. Also, the loot in the chest was was okay. You know, there's just a, a, a totem of undying in there. Yeah, 
Oh, these land-loving scallywags don't stand a chance against me now. That's it. I'm literally never going to die. I'm never going to die. And I guess the remaining loot on the ship was pretty good, but nowhere near as good as the totem. So after successfully conquering yet another tiny little ship, I uh, headed back home and sorted through my loot and also made a small little temporary island thingy off the side of the base and built up a little crappy enchantment area there because we're really, really going to need to gear up a lot more to start conquering everything that lurks within these seas. However, I do need better than level 22 enchants, so maybe leave the sea conquering for later, and for now, let's just head to bed. Day 13, I headed out straight in one direction to see if I could find another sea village that had a library, because obviously I need more books, and that seemed like the most logical way to get them, because I mean, where else am I supposed to, where am I going to find a cow, where am I going to find sugarcane, okay? Well, it's going to be floating, is it? It's going to be floating? No, so sea village makes most sense. Now, I literally didn't really have to move at all, because there was another one right next to the base that I completely missed. So I headed down and grabbed the bookshelves as well as finding some glow berries and an absolutely huge find of a silk touch book. Now the next island we find we can actually go and grab some grass from and bring it back home. And there was also this house ruin thing filled with a ton of barrels with some pretty okay stuff in them. Uh, but after finding them I made the very small journey back home and made the final bookshelves necessary to get level 30 enchants. Now also something really weird, I've almost died multiple times already in this video but I seem to be progressing much faster than any other time. I don't know, it, it's very hard, but very easy at the same time. It, it's a fun challenge, you should definitely try it. Anyways, after dealing with the bookshelf problem, I removed the inner circle of the outline because it was just too small, and instead I was going to use the outer circle as the new inner circle. And by the time I was finished with that, the sun was setting, so I quickly dispatched some drowns and headed to bed. Then on day 14, I spent the day fishing, because I mean I have all this ocean to myself, I may as well do some fishing in this video. Now I was actually looking for a mending book, so uh, I just fished all day, finding a lockbox with some glowstone inside, as well as a lure 2 fishing rod that I was actually going to combine with my Unbreaking 3 one, but it was way too expensive. So, after fishing for most of the day, I ended up finding this message in a bottle that once opened told me some actually insanely useful information, so be sure to remember this for later, it's really going to come in handy and tie everything together. It's very, very important. Anyways, I spent the rest of the evening just fishing away, but not really finding much, so uh, here's the day's plunder. I don't think it's too bad, but it would have been way more efficient with a better fishing rod. So I'll probably end up doing more later, but for now, it's bedtime. For the following morning, I crafted myself a gold helmet before heading into the nether and gathering a bunch of quartz for XP, because it's enchanting time soon. Now, after spending a while grabbing quartz, I returned home and smelted down all my gold, then returned back into the nether to do some piglin trading, mainly in search of ender pearls. But after trading literally all night with this guy, I ended up getting absolutely nothing. However, that fire res potion will help me with the fortress, so at least we got something out of this. Now, by the time I returned home, the sun was rising on day 16, so I stuffed everything in a chest and enchanted our first item at the table. It was my sword, and I got some pretty awful enchants, so I retried it and got absolutely trash again. After doing a little bit of smelting to regain some XP, I was ready for the third attempt, and well, it didn't come out great, but hey, at least we got loot in three, and that's not too bad. And because I ended up getting a pretty nice roll on my sword, I uh, decided to grab some cobble and head back into the nether to begin making my way over to the fortress, because I'll probably only have to boost like three blazers to get all of the rods. Once I arrived at the fortress, I towered my way up, broke my way in, and was greeted by Wither Skelly, who I dealt with, and then popped my fire res potion and went on a blaze hunting spree, only having to kill three. Actually, I was precisely correct. I only had to kill three to get the rods. So as quickly as I made my way there, I was straight back out and back home. And I'm not going to lie, that is probably the fastest time it's taken me to get blaze rods. I've never been that lucky. So I just dropped the rods in a chest and headed to bed. Alrighty, day 17. I headed out in search of some sponge. And now you may say, hey poppers, don't you hate ocean monuments? Aren't they the literal bane of your existence? Why would you take them on without any equipment? Any milk, any like invis potions or anything like that? Well, my dear friend, you are incorrect. I am not taking on an ocean monument. Instead, I shall invade a bunch of ships slash islands slash villages in search of sponge, because I'm sure somewhere someone will have it. It seems like a very piratey material. So I sailed and sailed until I found a ship using my trusty palm desk to board it and clearing out the inhabitants, finding a zombie villager, but he went bye bye because I really don't have time for that right now. Wow, that's a lot of pearls and some pistol ammo with a pistol. I'm sure this will go completely fine. Yeah, did that scare you? Because that sure as hell scared me. That literally blew my ears out. I understand that it's supposed to be a little bit loud, but I mean, I could do with my eardrums not being ruptured every time I shoot this bloody thing. Oh, look, it's another ship. Oh, Jesus Christ, calm down, my God, please stop, it's so loud. Oh, look at that, some pirate bombs. I'll uh, pocket them for later. 
After leaving the very loud ship, I stumbled across another tiny raft, getting a gapple and some normal apples for my trouble. Then immediately found another island and a ship. So I went and looted the hidden chest on the island and headed over to the ship to test out my new toys, but uh, almost blew myself to a million pieces, so uh, I'm not really going to be using them uh, anytime soon. Uh, no, no thank you, no thank you. Now, needless to say, this ship heist didn't go off as planned and was pretty much a failure considering I released all of these angry, cold, wet pirates into the ocean and now they're really, really angry. So I tried entering the other way but quickly got blasted off so I just decided to leave and headed towards another smaller ship when this guy spawned and just point blank shot me, so that was nice. But I dealt with him, looted up the ship and crafted some more ammo before heading to bed and continuing out on our crusade in the morning looting another ship and finding a bunch more ammo. And I know I get it, I'm only targeting the smaller ships at the minute, but don't worry, okay? I will run these salty seas by the end of this 100 days, okay? You just need to know your place, and out here in the cursed waves, there will always be a bigger fish. God, I don't know how many pirate things I've already said in this video, and it's not even halfway done. Now, we did end up moving up and tackling a slightly bigger ship, and this time actually clearing out everyone, and, well, it was pretty easy, considering that the shooty guys don't move, and, well, the loot was pretty good. I got three pieces of enchanted iron armor, so it was definitely worth my time coming onto this ship. One more tiny ship later, and I found a diamond, so that wasn't too bad, but then I remembered what I actually came out here to find, and decided to stop decimating every reasonably sized vessel that I came across, and instead sailed around under the cover of darkness to see if there were any more villager things under the water in hopes of one of them having some sponge. Now, I found two almost immediately, but neither of them had any sponge, so the search continued into the night where I spotted some smoke off in the distance that ended up being a little island with some pretty mid loot. So I just hopped back on my boat and left. Now, I ended up looting an absolute bunch of these sea village things throughout the night because they were super, super easy to find in darkness because they literally glow. And I also came across this guy who was pretty annoying to deal with, but uh, once I dealt with him, I went into his home and he had absolutely no loot. But finally, after having no luck for almost three days, I open a chest to find three sponge. Thank God. So I began making my way back home, arriving by nightfall, storing all my items away and heading to bed. Alrighty, day 21. Now you might be wondering, hey poppers, why do you need sponge? And well, I wanted to clear out the entire center of my base of all water and then have like flowers and grass and stuff in there instead because I think it'll look really cool. But I thought it'd make the entire process so much easier with sponge. So I headed into the nether to quickly dry it off and then made my way back down the mine to grab a bunch more cobble, broke it down into slabs and began work on more outlines for the base, mainly just to make them a little bit bigger. Now by the time the new outlines were done, it was dark, so I headed to the bed and on the morning of day 22, I began moving all my items out from the centre of the circle to an outer part because I'm going to need the middle completely clear to actually clear out of water. Now after sorting everything out, I spent the rest of the day fishing, it was a, it was a pretty boring, pretty uneventful day. Day 23 started out as a pretty miserable rainy day, so I enchanted my shovel and headed over to a nearby coral reef to grab as much sand as possible, because it was going to help me clear out the water just a little bit faster. After digging up sand for most of the day, I began placing it all down all the way around the center circle, to cut it off from the rest of the ocean. Then I just rinsed and repeated this process of grabbing sand and placing it down all the way around the circle until it was done. But I did also realize that the uh, the, the sand is multi-purpose, okay? Because whatever sand I use here, I can then pick up and smelt down into the glass, but it'll eventually line this full place. But now, eventually, after days of tedious work of placing down sand, the circle was done. So I headed to bed, and on day 26, I made my way back down into the caves in search of some more diamonds, because I wanted to take a break from anything to do with building. And of course, as soon as I got back down into the the caves it was still as hellish as ever i mean just look at this it's literally insane this place is basically a mob farm for skellies zombies and don't even get me started on how many creepers spawn down here it is ridiculous but after a while of running through mob infested caves and not finding really anything i decided to focus my efforts on to strip mining for diamonds instead because i'm sick of stopping every two seconds to fend off a literal army of mobs and this ended up being a very very lucrative decision because I found a few veins of diamonds pretty quickly, getting a decent amount from them. So I returned to the surface, crafted a full set of diamond armor, and headed to bed. On day 27, I awoke, grabbing my golden helmet, and hopped back into the nether to grab a bunch of blackstone, because I think I want to use that to outline the top of the base. So after almost two iron picks later, I think we had enough for now. So I returned home, and spent the rest of the day replacing some of the cobble with blackstone bricks, and also made a floor under the water at the level that I want the center to actually go down to. On the morning of day 28, I headed back over to the hut island and grabbed all of the grass blocks from it to use in the center of the base. Once I returned back home, I got to work on draining the center of the circle. 
Now, initially, I did use sponges, but I realized very, very quickly that they were extremely inefficient and taking way, way too long. So instead, I opted for not using them and instead going the sand route because it is much, much faster. But oh my god, was this extremely tedious and boring. Now, after three days straight of placing and breaking sand, the center was finally empty and ready to be built in. But oh my days, do I hate, hate draining water. It is so tedious. So on day 32, I got to work on placing down all the grass and dirt in the middle, but we didn't have enough to fill it out, but that'll do for now. So I made a bunch of furnaces and began smelting down as much sand as possible to make into glass. And whilst they were doing their thing, I headed down to the sea village and traded some lapis with these scaly boys, getting some prismarine loot boxes in return. And decided to just trade half a stack with them, getting a bunch of loot boxes and open them all to get some pretty cool sea stuff as well as some bottles of enchanting. So that was definitely not bad. After finishing up the trading with the oversized fish, I uh, went to the nether and gathered a bunch of warp stems. Because wood was running low and I really want to make a mob farm so that we can actually max out our gear pretty quickly. And for that, I was going to need quite a lot of trapdoors. Oh, and also whilst I was in here, I boofed an enderman and got four pearls to drop from him. That was actually insane and I didn't know that you could get that many. Anyways, after deforestating, de deforestizing, de chopping down things in the nether, I headed home and spent the night down the mine, grabbing as much cobble as I could get my hands on to build the mob farm tomorrow. Okay, day 33, it's mob farming time. So I spent the day on working on building up this absolutely eyesore of a farm and had it finished by nightfall and then proceeded to spend the night farming out mobs for XP. Then, as the sun was rising on day 34, I had amassed enough XP to enchant two pieces of armor. So I rebuilt the enchantment area and enchanted my chest plate and boots, getting depth strider on them, which was actually pretty good considering, you know, water. After enchanting, I began digging up all the sand around the center circle and replaced it with glass that wasn't tedious, repetitive, or annoying at all. But that's alright, because on the morning of day 35, it was all replaced and looking pretty nice. However, my shovel had seen better days. After finishing the center, well, somewhat, we still need the dirt, I decided to grind out the mob farm for the rest of the day to stack up on XP. Now, I did find a zombie villager that I wanted to capture and cure, and I set up a trap with Monsieur Boyant, but uh, accidentally hit it, and, well, needless to say, we didn't get the villager. You'll have your moment soon, my boaty friend, don't you worry. After farming out some more, that evening I used the XP to enchant a fishing rod and combined the other that I had together, bankrupting myself, and then spent the rest of the day fishing. Yet again, in search of a mending book, and also I took a few swings at the mob farm occasionally to uh, stack up on a little bit more XP. After fishing for a while, I found a Neptune's Bounty with a Neptunium hoe in it that had some pretty cool abilities, so uh, that's nice but didn't end up finding a mending book even after fishing all the way through the night. Eh, well, you win some, you lose some. So on day 36, I headed out in search of another island to grab the last bit of dirt from. However, pretty shortly after setting off out, I spotted an iceberg and a tiny little ship, so I headed over to loot it and got some pretty crappy stuff. So I just continued on searching, finding an island pretty shortly after, digging up all the dirt and looting another crappy chest. After the island was, uh, no more, I made my way to a nearby small ship, looted that for some pretty mid loot, and then looted an island behind it for some absolutely terrible loot. I don't know what happened over this side of the ocean, there's just, there's just no loot, everything's poor over here, I, I don't like it. So I headed home and placed down the rest of the dirt, and now we're only waiting on the grass to spread. And whilst waiting for that, I spent the night doing my new favourite pastime, XP farming! Woo! Day 37, I enchanted the last two pieces of armour, getting some pretty nice rolls, and then took my remaining lapis down to the sea village and traded for some more loot boxes. Because small brain like Minecraft gambling. After trading all my lapis, I realised that I actually wanted to use the prism room for the outline of the base instead of the blackstone, and thought that lapis trading could be a pretty decent way of getting it. So I cleared out my inventory and headed out to sea to start a new mine. But instead, I ended up getting distracted by the structures that I found that had some pretty decked out drowns in them. So I slowly started taking one on, finding a buried treasure map and getting some really crappy loot from floor 1, and also floor 2, and also floor 3. You know what? I'm done with you, okay? Get better loot, I'm not interested. Now, I eventually did start a new mine and went in search of lapis, and did end up finding quite a nice amount. However, decided to, uh leave pretty soon after because I realized that this probably isn't the fastest way to get prismarine. But on the following days, I took all of my lapis down to the sea village and traded it all to see how much prismarine I could get from the loot boxes. Once it was all gone, I opened up the loot boxes and I do think this is a pretty quick, safe way to get it. Plus, you know, I want another pick and I only have one diamond, so I may as well go mine for some lapis. And that's exactly what I did. I headed back down the mine and stayed down there for around two days, 
going back through the mob infested caves and dealing with the ever increasingly annoying guys down there, and mining up any lapis I've found along the way, as well as stumbling across an amethyst geode. But after a while of being down here, I took my lapis back to the surface and did some more trading that was pretty tedious because these guys trade very, very slow. However, I did end up with a bunch more loot boxes and opened them all up to get a whole bunch of prismarine. Also, if you're wondering why it's opening super fast, it's not an auto clicker. I just rebound my right click key on my mouse to a key on the keyboard and it just makes them open so much faster and just speeds up this entire process so, so much. Now, we did end up getting a pretty nice amount of prismarine, especially if we break it all down into slabs, we get a pretty decent amount. And it should be enough to make some pretty good progress on the outline, I think. So on day 42, I put that to the test and began going around making another outline, once again having to make it bigger because it was just too small. I told you the small base wouldn't last so much for that idea this time around. Also, I think that the colour scheme I'm going to go for for the inner part of the outer circle, and probably the entire build, is going to be smooth quartz, uh, and quartz bricks because they mix really well with prismarine and they look really good together. And now I'm going to be completely honest with you, we had nowhere near enough prismarine. So I just decided to say screw it and enchanted an iron pick with efficiency 4 and headed down into the ocean to grab it from wherever I could find it. Because I'll be damned if I have to go back to their mines. Now I mined up all of the villagers that I could find, taking whatever little prismarine bricks that they had and also finding some lapis along the way in some of the buildings. Also, I swear to god, if someone comments that there's a super fast and easy way of getting prismarine without a guardian farm or whatever, uh, thank you, I really appreciate it, but it's a little bit late, but you're awesome, uh, thank you, keep telling me how to make my life easier, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, after spending the night out in the ocean grabbing as much prismarine as I could possibly get my hands on, on the morning of day 43, between the stuff that we'd mined and the stuff that we got from loot boxes, we were pretty stacked. So I continued work on the outline, and well, I'm not gonna lie, this, this circle was so annoying to build for some reason. I don't know why I kept messing up the corners and just putting things in the wrong places and it just didn't line up. It was really annoying to build, and it ended up just taking longer than I expected because I just had to basically rebuild the entire thing, so bye-bye uh, day 44, I guess. However, once finished, I replaced all the blackstone in the middle with prismarine bricks, removed the disgusting cobble circle, because like I said earlier, it was just too small. But once that was done, things were looking a lot better, so I headed to bed, and on day 45, I thought that it was time to start making our eyes for the ender dragon and head out in search of the stronghold. So that's exactly what I did, throwing our first eye and having it break straight off the bat. Absolutely great. Now, I'm not actually going to go straight to the dragon fight, but I may as well explore the stronghold to see what loot it has down there. Also, on my journey, I found a small ship that I cleared out and got another totem, so uh, that's very nice. It's really rare to ever see me carrying one of these things, never mind two. Shortly after leaving the ship, we had arrived where the eye told us to go. So I made my way down to the stronghold, almost immediately finding the portal and just having enough ice to light it. Now, it's looting time. Finding two diamonds straight off the bat, as well as a room filled with zombies. There was literally like a whole family in there, and well, you can't kill one without killing them all. I also found a small library with one enchanted book, and a big library with a whole bunch of them. But after finding the libraries, the stronghold was pretty dead, so I headed back home and spotted this fossilized skeleton of a giant fish, and just had to check it out. It's a good thing I did as well, because there was a chest that was, I guess, pretty cool. The loot wasn't great, but eh, it looked cool. Once I arrived back home, I sorted through all my loot and tried getting a good efficiency enchant on my new pick, but ended up getting everything but. So instead, I just swung at the mob farm all night until the morning, when I tried again and still no luck. So I just decided to put the efficiency 3 book on there and call it a day. After dealing with the pick, I grabbed a bunch of bones and some moss and then started sprucing up the center of the area to, you know, actually have it look somewhat nice. Also, I actually grabbed my first wood from like a real tree, considering I haven't seen one of them yet. Now, I really do like the idea of having like a natural center surrounded by the ocean. It looks really cool, but there's still a lot of work to do on that and for the entire base for that matter, but that's okay because now it's time to spend an insane amount of time grabbing quartz. And after two days of grabbing a bunch of this really annoying material, I smelted the bunch down and crafted some into bricks, and on day 49, began work on filling in the outer circle. Now, I did make some progress, but realized that this was going to need quite a bit more quartz than what I had. But hey, it was pretty good progress, and I really like how it's coming out. Oh, also a wandering trader spawned, but had nothing good. 
Now, once I ran out of quartz, I headed to bed and on day 50, grabbed the sea lanterns that we got from the loot boxes and went around placing them all the way around the exterior of the circle to really make it pop out at night. But we ended up not having enough to finish the whole thing, however, we were pretty close. So I just spent the rest of the day moving all the storage and work areas down into the center of the circle to clear up the outer ring. Now on day 51, everything was moved and all that was left to do to clear up the outer ring was to remove the mob farm and, well, we'll do that later. For now, I headed back to the fortress and went in search of some nether wart so that we can actually start cooking up some potions soon to help with boofing the dragon. In my search, I found a couple of mediocre chests before actually finding it. After securing all the nether wart that I was going to need, I headed back home and made a brewing stand along with a bunch of awkward potions and then started cooking them up into their respected needed potions for the fight. Except slow falling, because I don't actually have the phantom membranes just yet. So whilst waiting up at night, I actually went and grabbed some more quartz and did this through day 52 as well, just to kill time. But on the night of day 52, there was still no phantoms, so it was back to quartz mining and eventually did run into phantoms on the night of day 53. In the morning, I placed down all the quartz I got from the previous day spent mining, making some pretty good progress, all things considered. It's literally just because quartz is really, like, annoying to gather, especially without villagers, it, it's super annoying, uh, but I'd say it's definitely worth it. After running out of quartz, I went around adding some prismarine path outlines on each side of the circle, before gearing up and enchanting a bow, and then making our way back to the stronghold, because it's time for the dragon to go bye bye. Arriving at the stronghold by sunrise, heading down, popping my potions and heading in. Now this time around I managed to hit the towers pretty easily and accurately, however the problem was the dragon. I couldn't hit it for some reason without a bow, I, I don't know why but it's really weird and I also tried reloading everything and nothing fixed it so I guess it was bugged or something? I really don't know what happened this fight. So after a while of impaling the beast with arrows I uh, boofed it real good and then got messed up by an enderman before grabbing the XP and the egg and heading into the outer islands in search of the elytra. When I immediately spotted these flying things that seemed pretty chill as well as our first city but obviously it didn't have a ship. So I headed in, dealt with the shulkers and got myself a little bit of loot before continuing on and about two minutes later stumbled across another city but this time it had a ship. So I headed up, dealt with the shulkers, grabbed the loot and finally grabbed the elytra. Also for some reason I didn't actually loot the city, I, I think I forgot to but either way I made my way back to the mainland and finally back home in record time. That was really quick for me, it usually takes about nine years in there trying to find the elytra. So I sorted through all my loot, added silk touch on one of my pickaxes that I looted, and headed to bed. Day 58, it's more lapis searching time because I need some more sea lanterns. So I headed out to sea one more time in the complete opposite direction from last time, but realized that Monsieur Bayant was left over at the stronghold. Can we get an F in the comments for the best companion for a lonely man in the middle of the ocean? You will be missed, buddy. I'll never forget you. So I headed out in my search for lapis and decided to just go through and take it from the villagers because I think, I think that this is probably the fastest way of grabbing it because the villagers are almost guaranteed to have a house with it. Now, whilst I was out stealing lapis, I also grabbed a bunch of coral because I do plan on making a coral reef around my center hub because I think it'll look really cool hidden away behind the glass. Anyways, after yoinking lapis all night, on the morning of day 59, I pulled over to the nearest sea village and spent a while trading up all the stacks I got for those sweet, sweet loot boxes. Once acquired, I headed back home, getting stung by a jellyfish on the way, but that's okay because loot. Oh, the serotonin hit from opening these things. God, it's just so exciting to try and get sea lanterns. Now, I did end up with more than enough to finish off placing the lanterns, and uh, then it was time to begin work on the coral reef before it gets a little bit too far in this video. So I went and grabbed every single block that I could craft down into a slab and began work on putting a floor all the way down underneath to where the coral reef is going to sit. And yeah, it will look terrible for a little bit, but uh, it's going to be covered with sand anyway, so you won't even know it's there, okay? You won't know that part of it's wood and part of it's netherrack and, and part of it's cobblestone, okay? It'll just look like sand. Now, I really quickly realized that netherrack was going to be a big, big savior for this part of the build just because of how readily available it is and how quick it is to mine. It mixes so well with our very limited amount of time. Now, eventually, after tearing through netherrack and replacing it for a while we were finally done with the first layer and it actually didn't take too long partly down to how fast it is to gather netherrack and partly down to depth strider and respiration letting me move faster and breathe longer down there also i did do a little bit of training to grab a couple more sea lanterns that i could place down around the middle but uh, once that and the netherrack was done i grabbed a bunch more sand as well as destroyed almost an entire coral reef before placing the sand down all the way around the sides and all the way across the bottom to block everything in. Then use the quartz that I found whilst gathering netherrack to finish off the outer ring and now it's finally time to do the fun and interesting part. 
that I've actually been looking forward to for quite a while, now it's time to add the coral. That was actually pretty fun, it was quite satisfying just throwing it down and hoping for the best and just throwing some weird shapes down there and uh, well, after a quick shader change later, things were done and I'm very very happy with the reef. Now I've never built one of these things before so I am actually quite impressed with how it came out. Now I changed the shaders from complementary reimagined to just do complementary shaders because I've got more like graphical things I can do with the water and make it look clearer so we're sticking with these ones from now on. Anyways, now that all that's built, all that's left is to build a little house thingy for myself and add some stone arches or something around the outer circle and maybe even a big circle above the center, but I don't think we're going to have time for that in this video. Now, on day 69, I spent a little bit of time thinking about how I wanted my home to look as well as exactly what I wanted to build it out of, but we're not doing anything with that right now because it's time for us to drop some really good enchants on a bow and my sword and then hopefully take on a big ship. Now, I did try re-enchanting my sword a few times until I settled for an okay set of enchants and then uh, headed out in search of a ship to board and conquer. After stumbling across and looting a couple of smaller ones, not getting much other than a couple more gapples, I ended up stumbling across another mid-sized ship that I went through and looted as well as blowing part of it up with some TNT. And also, these ships are like the easiest ones to loot because, I mean, the guys don't even move and they don't really do much damage. So I really do think that we can take on the big ones now. Oh yeah, and this ship had some pretty good loot, uh, mainly being diamonds. But then, off in the distance was a pretty big ship. Not the biggest, but bigger than any I'd taken on before. So I set up a way to boof these guys and their captain somewhat safely. And after beating on this guy for like two minutes straight, he finally went down and I began trying to take out all the spawners and almost ended up popping a totem to this ninja creeper that just dropped down right next to me. So that was a, uh, that was a very nice surprise. But just as things were starting to ease out and get a little bit easier, this guy drops down and starts hailing me with bullets, tearing through my health. Now, I did manage not to die and instead dealt with him, but then it happened again and I barely escaped with half a heart. So maybe I'm not ready to deal with these ships yet, I, I don't know. Now the logical thing to do here would be to go home and call it a day, but we're not doing that because I'm not going to be defeated by another one of these ships. So I went through dealing with every one of these rapscallion land living salty bottle scallywags um, and uh, yeah, the, I t took over the ship, but uh, in all seriousness, the ship had absolutely terrible loot. It, it was not worth it. It was, just a, it was just a bad decision overall. So I decided to make the good decision and just headed back home. Once I got back, I made a bunch of TNT from the leftover gunpowder from the mob farm and then headed into the nether, dug down to a lower Y level and began blowing up everything in search of some netherite that I actually found whilst digging out an area to place the TNT. Then after blowing it all up, I found two more veins and a little bit more, but uh, that's where my luck ended because I found absolutely nothing after that. But hey, I'll take the 10 that I already got. So I returned home to smelt it all down, crafting a netherite pick and a chest plate. Alrighty, day 71. I set a bunch of cobblestone off smelting and then said bye bye to the eyesore of a mob farm because I no longer need the XP so I just spent the day tearing it down. Then on day 72 I connected the outer circle to the inner circle with bridges and then went around adding a bunch of sea lanterns I had left over all the way around the centre of the bridges. Before then heading back into the nether and to the fortress to start farming out wither skellies because I think 4 beacons will really make this build pop. Also this fortress was spawning these guys hella quick and with loot in 3 I managed to get the skulls pretty efficiently before heading back home, grabbing some soul sand and heading to the end to kill my 2 withers. And oh god was this a, was this a, was this a very hard fight you know they, they really made me work for these. Uh, these stars. Once they were dealt with, I returned home and made the beacons, and on day 73, started going back around the ocean, gathering up all the iron that I could find in villages and ships, because this is a really quick way of stacking up on it. Now, I did end up finding a pretty OP ship with some iron blocks, two gapples, and one OP gapple, but uh, realized I didn't actually need an insane amount of iron just to build a few beacons. So I headed back, placed down my two beacons, and then spotted some seagulls just chilling at my house. And then spent the rest of the day marking out the area in which I actually want to build my house in. And then over the coming days, I spent a ton of time gathering resources and building blocks that I was going to need to actually build the thing. After gathering everything I was going to need, I began work on building up the house. Now, I've never really done a house out of Prismary before or built really many things out of it, so there were quite a few failed trial and error tests in a, in a test build world until I eventually decided on the design that I've got right now. Now, you can't really see it too well because, you know, it's a little bit of a close fit down there, but after a while of building the house, I think it came out looking pretty nice. So I added some leaves, walls, and flowers around the outside, and boom, here it is. The ocean 
Ocean Hub, and I think it came out looking really nice, especially for like my first true Prismarine build. I hope you guys like this one, it's very clean and I am very, very happy with it. Okay, day 80. After finally finishing off the build of our house, I uh, grabbed some buckets and decided to go out in search of a pet or two to actually name after you guys, because this has been quite a lonely time out here in the middle of the ocean. Because I haven't really had any friends along the way, and well, there was Moncho by Ant, but he got lost in the salty depths and was also inanimate. Anyways, I went in search of probably the only type of friend I can get in this world, a fish. Now, I found a blobfish straight off the bat, but I'm not going to put someone's name on a blobfish. It just seems insulting. So I grabbed a couple of jellyfish and some tropical fish before getting stung by a jellyfish while trying to steal it, as well as grabbing a nautilus. And then headed out in search of some more kind of exquisite fish, like this here flying fish. He's pretty cool, but not as cool as these two lobsters that I managed to stumble across and pick up. Once I took everything back home, that night I made all the name tags and named all the fish on screen now, and here are all the people who got fishies named after you and what fish they got. Now I do plan on doing these sooner in the video so that you guys can be around a lot more, but it's just kind of hard in this one considering, you know, everything's ocean. But either way, if you guys want to be a dog, a frog, or any other animal or mob, then uh, be sure to let me know by dropping a comment down below, and uh, hey, who knows, maybe you'll be in the next video. On day 81, I actually made my way back down the mine in search of some more diamonds, because I needed to repair my armor and actually make myself some new boots, considering that I'm wearing iron right now, and have been for the past few days. So I began looking around caves and strip mining in search of some, as well as picking up a bunch of iron along the way, because I do still need it to make a load of blocks for the amount of beacons that I actually want. After mining for about a day or so down here, I actually ended up finding a pretty hefty amount of diamonds, as well as a pretty nice amount of iron and lapis too. So I made my way back up top, began smelting down my iron, and headed to bed. Now on day 83, I crafted a fresh set of diamond armor, excluding a chest plate, and then enchanted them, combining my old armor with the new to make even more OP armor. After that, I traded with this lovely fellow right here to get myself some spruce and oak saplings. Why, you may ask? Well, I don't really know, I was just happy to see them, I guess. But anyways, once again, I headed out to sea to finally take on the big ship that's been eluding me this entire time. After sailing around for a little while, the ship was finally in sight, and this time, it was going down. So I made my way in, dispatching all the land lovers inside before looting a chest with some diamonds that I didn't really need, but I'll take them. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this ship was extremely easy and the loot was really, really not good. It was a real disappointment. So instead, I decided to go and take on the Drown Dungeon that I found earlier, and Jesus, this Drown Lord guy was insanely tanky. He just would not die. I was literally here hitting him again and again and again for five minutes straight and got absolutely nowhere. So I pulled a big brain strat and uh, basically emptied out the water around him, made a flint and steel and had that do the work for me. That way I didn't take any more damage from hitting him because I think he actually had thorns on his armor. But clearly I didn't think this through enough because I burnt all the wood around him allowing him to escape. But did manage to trap him back in there and set him back on fire, however when he actually died, all of his loot went straight into the fire right underneath him. Yep, I know I'm an absolute idiot and this was a complete waste of time. However, I did begin making my way further and further through the dungeon, finding these very drippy boys and carefully making my way through picking up the chests and uh, taking some pretty nasty hits in the process. Now, eventually I did get to the chests and looted them, but there was, there was nothing down here. There was literally not a single item in these chests. I, I was stunned. I was absolutely stunned. So I just returned home and headed to bed. And on day 85, I, uh, I did some more lapis trading for some more loot boxes because indeed my gambling addiction has progressed. Then after grabbing the sacred loot boxes, I returned to the nether, grabbing a bunch more quartz and then digging out the connectors from around the outer circle to uh, instead replace them with stairs because getting up and down from the center base is, uh, is really not good and it's way too slow and I can make it look so much better. So I did and it surprisingly didn't take too long and uh, was pretty easy to do especially with how good it came out looking. Now I'm really happy with it and uh, also during the build I spotted this crab just chilling on the roof of my house so uh, I thought I'd share that with you. But yeah the stairs came out good, very nice and much easier to get up and down now. Alrighty, day 90. It's another time again to grab the last of the Wither Skelly Skulls for the last three beacons. That ended up going even smoother than last time because for some reason this fortress literally just throws these guys at you. And especially with this sword, they didn't even stand a chance, and the skulls did drop somewhat frequently. So after gathering the remaining skulls, I headed back to the end and had some more brutally hard fights with these withers before making and placing down all my beacons around the base. And this is how far things have come. I think it looks pretty nice. 
On the morning of day 94, I made some changes inside of the house to actually tidy things up a bit and give the enchantment table its own area and not just thrown down in the middle of the floor. Now, I didn't really have an idea of how I wanted this to come out and look, but uh, this will this will definitely do. After I finished the enchanting area, I made some fireworks, added them breaking onto my elytra, and finally got a good view of the base before setting out in search of anything interesting, because I still haven't used these damn things and I got them a very long time ago. Now, the ability to fly and just stop off and loot ships was a very welcome change. I don't know why I didn't do this sooner, it just makes everything so much faster. Just dropping down, looting up the island and flying away just as fast, it's so, so much better. Now, other than islands and the odd coral reef, we didn't really find much initially, so I began heading home when I spotted this massive ship that I just had to take on. So I stopped off at this little raft right here to gear up and headed over, taking out the skelly dolphin spawners and making my way inside, dealing with these silverfish infested skellies. That, to be fair, went down pretty easily, even if there were a whole bunch of them. After dealing with the close range boys, it was time to deal with the archers, and oh boy, these guys were tanky this time around, alright? They took seven arrows to boof. They were they were pretty tanky. After spending the night taking pot shots at them and eventually deciding to go and clear them out with my sword that ended up being so much faster, however I did almost pop a totem, but Gapple just too OP. After finishing off the archers, I had to deal with the captain, who, uh, I'm not gonna lie, he, he was pretty quick to deal with, okay? He, he just went down real quick, and now it's time to reap the rewards of this behemoth of a ship that consisted of like six diamonds. It, it was okay, but for this stage of the game, it wasn't too insane. But hey, at least we have now taken on the biggest ship in the oceans. I, I think, I think. I've not seen any bigger than this one. And so with that victory under my belt, I headed home with my booty and stored it away and then lured some sea villagers over into my aquarium because, well, they just look cool and they're useful and I don't know, I think they'll make good pets. Oh, also I broke down the nether portal and on day 96 I rebuilt it in the centre of the house with the remaining prismarine I had. Now, this isn't the best portal I've ever made, but it's way, way better than just sit sitting in the middle of the room with wood for corners, alright? It looks way better, and plus it even had a cool floor pattern, so I'm really happy with how this impromptu portal came out. It's quite basic, but also quite nice. On day 97, I realised something. I don't have any villagers, like, at all, excluding the sea boys, and, well, they don't really do much. It seems that everybody else who's done this had their own literal village worth of them by this stage, and I'm not gonna lie, I feel kinda left out, and it's way too late to get in now. So instead I decided to spend the rest of the day luring some of these fake imposter villagers into my aquarium. If they don't give me great trades e.g. a mending book, at least they can give me the enjoyment of seeing them in captivity forever being unable to escape my circular prison. Ooh, things are a little bit dark there, but uh, I'm just sad, okay? I'm sad that I don't have any real villagers. I've got these things. Hey, but who knows, alright? Who knows? Maybe we can get some in 200 days. Maybe if you guys enjoy this video enough and we can get like 10 likes, uh, then I think I'll think about doing 200 days and, you know, we can have some more mods and go on bigger adventures. Sound good? I get likes to validate my insecurities, you get a video over me committing war crimes at sea against villagers. Yeah? Good trade. Anyway, he's back on track. After securing my completely real villagers, I checked up on the lobsters before heading to bed, and on day 98, grabbed my pirate scepter that I got a while ago and enchanted it a couple of times to get a really nice set of enchants. Then grabbed whatever TNT I had and went back to the nether to do a little bit more netherite searching that actually ended up going pretty well. We'd be finding three chunks from the TNT alone and a further three pieces from just mining around that I then took home and started smelting down whilst repairing my armor with some diamonds before making the ingots and upgrading them. And now I know it's not a full set of netherite, but I'll take it. And now, finally, on day 100, I sorted through my storage because uh, it was a real mess and if I do decide to 200 days, then I don't want to come back to this absolute mess of a storage, okay? After dealing with the storage, I said goodbye to the lobsters because I mean, just look at them, look how cute they are, look at their little eyes, they're so adorable. And also bid farewell to the roof crab because he's just way too cool to leave out. Now, as we say goodbye to the oceans for this video, it's time to go back to basics and pretty much where it all started as I tried to survive 100 days in every single Minecraft update, starting all the way back in 1.0. So kicking things off on day one with the 1.0 update. This was considered the official launch of Minecraft that also added brewing stands, enchants, the end, and animal breeding, but most importantly for us, hardcore mode. So we begin our journey in this very dated version of the game in the exact same way as we do now. By grabbing some wood to craft ourselves some very rudimentary tools that I then immediately put to use to grab some slightly less crappy tools. I then begin gathering wood and killing a few cows during the process. After chopping down a decent amount of wood and now being stacked, I turn around to see a very old looking village right behind me, so uh, I headed over to it and killed another cow on my way over there. 
Once I arrived at the village, the first thing I saw was a really cool mountain off in the distance. This is a very prime example of old world generation. It looks really good. And I also found a blacksmith and, well, just take a look at all this amazing loot I got. I guess they didn't have chests this far back in the game, but it's fine. I uh, went and stole some books from the village libraries and then began making my way over to the cool mountain to set up camp over there. But when I got over there, I was quickly attacked by a spider that I dealt with, but then shortly after attacked by a zombie and a skelly and another spider. So I quickly noped out of there because that was no place for me to be right now. So I killed the second spider and made myself some bread that I stole from the village and after getting my hunger back I began heading over to a little area near the mountains when I found an even cooler looking place. So I decided I would live here instead. While setting up a very basic shack it was getting dark fast so uh, I made myself some doors, smelted down some wood into charcoal and boom! Just like that we are safe in this terrible, terrible looking shed that I built. So I decided with it being night I'd be productive and decided to start a mine but after mining basically all night all I found was a big vein of coal so it really wasn't eventful. However by the sunrise of our second day I was back up in the shack ready to run outside and make myself a wheat farm because I knew that this steak that I had would only last so long and I wanted to get a renewable food source. ASAP. So I got to work on planting down all my seeds near the water and then headed back home to make a chest to store all my crap in there for later. After storing my stuff away I headed back down into the mines to hopefully find myself a cave to actually start gearing up so that I could move out of this awful looking shack as soon as possible. Anyways whilst I was running back down the mine I heard a skelly close by so I mined around until I found a cave with a load of them in it that I then quickly dispatched and started exploring the cave and one skelly and a zombie later, we finally have our first bit of iron, quickly followed by another skelly and some more iron. Now, this wasn't a big cave, so I just went around lighting everything up and after emptying the cave of mobs and iron, I headed back to my house to start smelting it all down. After my iron was done, I upgraded my tools and headed out to chop down a tree in hopes of getting some saplings. And well, I grabbed the saplings, planted them down and it was getting dark, so I headed back down the mine in search of more iron and another cave. And well, I found some gold, but I'm not going to lie to you, at this point in the game it is absolutely useless. But later on, it will be extremely useful, so uh, I'll grab it anyway. Anyways, after grabbing the gold, I ended up finding a little bit more iron and some redstone, and then began strip mining at Y11, because I had absolutely nothing better to do. And yet again, I heard some mobs near me, so I went to check it out, and sure enough, there was another cave, but there was no way I was going in a place like that, with that many mobs, without any armour. So I went back to my rickety old shack and smelted down all the iron that I found down there. And by the morning of day 3, all my iron was smelted down, so I decided to make myself an iron chest plate and some iron leggings, and then store away some of my stuff, and head back down into the cave that I now had some defence to actually go in there, and see what it had to offer. And, well, this cave was really good to me. I found iron ore after iron ore after iron ore with some golden redstone sprinkled in there. However, this was a very, very small cave, and, well, I don't know what it is with this version of the game and tiny caves, but, it, but it's annoying, okay? Just, just let me explore caves, damn it! Anyways, after grabbing my loot from the cave, I headed up and began smelting it all down, and, well, whilst the furnace was doing its thing, I headed out to the nearest forest to grab some wood, because I wanted to start work on my actual house soon, and, well, there's no trees where I currently reside, so I had to go to a forest. Anyways, once I got to the forest, I spotted myself some sugarcane and some sheep, so I grabbed it and killed them, and now we can make a bed. After getting my wood, I headed home with a whole 25 iron smelted down, so I made the final two pieces of armour and a shovel, and finally made myself a bed, but we really need a bigger house, because I literally have no space in this place anymore, okay? Anyways, I planted down my sugar cane and went to bed. And on day 4, I began work on expanding the house into a more spacious, better looking home, and well, it really didn't take me that long. Now, the actual good looking house will come later, but for that I need some more blocks and better features to play around with, but uh, for the meantime this'll do. Uh, and by the way, my plan for this, like 100 days, is to transform this entire area where I am right now into like a really cool paradise between the mountains. I, I don't know how it'll turn out. But uh, yeah, anyways, after I was done with the house, I placed down my bed and went to sleep. And well, when we woke up on day 5, things looked a little bit different, because they were. We were no longer in 1.0, we are now in 1.2. That added zombie sieges, jungle biomes, abandoned mines, iron golems, and maybe the best feature in the game to this day, desert wells. So, some pretty cool stuff, but there's not really much for me to actually do, except like, maybe find a mineshaft. Anyways, I got into a fight with a creeper and then tried luring some chickens back to my house, but apparently seeds don't work yet, so uh, I tried some wheat and, well, it worked out. Oh, and I also stumbled across this big cave, so we shall check that out later. 
But for now, I made the chickens a hole in the mountain so that they can stay in there. But when I turn around to lure them in, apparently they turn into ocelots because there was just a whole bunch of those running around now. It took me a minute to process it, but then I realized that it must have generated a jungle biome right next to my house. So that's kind of cool, I guess. Anyways, I lured my chickens into their new home and began work on adding some stairs to the mine to make it easier to get up and down without bashing my head every single step, because it's super annoying. Anyways, I did get a bit of iron from it, so uh, I guess it was worth it. Um, once I was done with the mine, I went around cleaning up some of the land around my house and farm just to make things look a little bit neater and easy to navigate. Anyways, after finishing up my landscaping, it was getting quite dark, so I placed down a couple of torches and went to bed. And on day 6, it was time to start looking for some diamonds, and I know it's still very early days, but the sooner I can get OP stuff, the bigger and better builds I can do, and the easier it is to kill the warden. Anyways, I headed over to the big cave that I saw when I was bringing the chickens over, and I mined my way down into the unknown. And, well, I immediately was greeted by a creeper, so I guess that shows how things are going to go down here. Also, there was a lot of iron in this cave, but that's not why I'm down here, okay? I, I want diamonds, okay? None of this lowly ore, okay? I want diamonds. Anyways, the deeper and deeper I went, the more mobs I faced and the more iron I found. And I really don't know what was up this cave. There was, there was so much iron. But after a while of exploring and killing mobs, we were starting to get pretty deep, so I was keeping an eye out for that blue, blue ore. And I mean, I found some blue stuff, but it was lapis and, well... Just listen to this cave I was in while I was mining this lapis, okay? There were so many mobs. And on top of that, look at how much lava was here. I decided that if diamonds were going to be anywhere, they were going to be over there. So I had to fight off a bunch of mobs and continued through the never-ending caves and caverns until I stumbled upon a zombie spawner. And, well, the loot was pretty decent, and I did get some iron and some cocoa beans, as well as a couple saddles. So, I mean, at least it was some pretty good loot, I guess. Anyways, after finding the spawner, I'd been underground for quite a while, so I decided to call it a day and admit defeat with the diamonds and run home for now, and I was also out of food, so I didn't want to risk taking too much damage down there. By the time I arrived back at the surface, night had fallen and there were mobs all around, so I sprinted home and went to bed. And on the morning of day 7, I woke up and started smelting down all of my golden iron and decided that whilst they were smelting, I'd actually go and take the time to set out all my storage, because, well, the longer I left it, the worse it was going to get. Oh, and I also realized that one of the skelly boys I killed down in the mine dropped a bow, so now I have a bow, I guess. Anyways, one fight with a creeper later, and the storage was sorted, so I took the bones that I got from killing many a skelly and uh, put them to use on the farm, so that I could actually get some food, considering that I had none left. So, after a while of growing and harvesting all my wheat, I actually decided to move the farm to the other side of the river, because I, I, had, I thought it looked better over there in the long run, and it had more space, and there's more ways to progress it further. It, it's just a better place, I think. Uh, but after moving the farm, I made my bread and used the leftover wheat to breed the chickens and make some more progress on landscaping around the house. And when it got dark, I'd made some pretty good progress, so I headed back home, took my iron and gold out of the furnace, stored them away, and once again, went to bed. On day 8, I got up and made two more furnaces, because I was going to start smelting down all my cobblestone into stone, to then craft into stone bricks to use when I wanted to upgrade the house. So, whilst the stone was smelting down, I headed back over to the big spooky cave to grab some more coal, because I was running pretty low. Some coal mining later, and I returned home to restock the furnaces... Fur furnaces? Furni? The, the grills with coal, and craft my stone bricks, and stone brick stairs that I then tried placing upside down, but couldn't, so I guess the house upgrade will have to wait until a later update where they actually add that feature. Anyways, I went and made the chickens home a little bit nicer by adding some wood on the walls and roof just so they were a little bit happier and it wasn't so bad to look at, mainly the latter. But one coop upgrade later, it was getting dark so I headed on to bed. And on day 9, we once again woke up to another update. This time, we're in 1.3. That added trading, jungle and desert temples, emeralds, better enchanting, and some adjustments to creepers. So overall, a pretty useful update, and I wouldn't mind finding a temple. But I need to be careful how far I explore in this world, because it, I need to easily generate new chunks for the later updates, because it gets harder the further you go out. Anyways, I had the big brain idea and decided to start going out exploring in one single direction. That way, I wouldn't generate too many chunks, and it wouldn't be hard to generate new ones by just simply going in a different direction. Oh, and by the way, I was going out in search of a temple because, well, I thought they'd be nice to find, and I haven't really left my area since, like, day three or something, so it, it's nice to get out of the house once in a while. Anyways, I was making my way around, and I found that there was different types of wood now, so that's, you know, that's nice to know. After a little while of walking later and passing through a snow biome, I eventually found a desert and, well, went in search of a temple. And I'm telling you now, I explored so much of this desert and didn't find a single thing. 
However, I did find another spawner and well, it was on the surface and it does kind of remind me of how much I do miss some of the old generation things. Anyway, the, the loot really wasn't great. So uh, I left and began waking my way back out of the desert. Um, once I got back to the tundra, I spotted some cows that I then swiftly killed for their leather, of which I got one. I, I got one leather from all those cows. After that, I chopped down a couple of spruce trees to get some saplings and then headed back home. And well, it was getting dark, so you know what I did? That's right, I stole my stuff away and I went to bed. Alrighty, so days 10 and 11, I headed back down my original mine and began strip mining for diamonds. And I told myself, you cannot leave here until you find at least one diamond. So I mined and mined and mined until I heard yet another skeleton in the walls. So I mined around looking for the cave it was in and well, I found it, but almost got blown up. And then I realized that I was just way too high to find diamonds. So uh, I headed back to my original mine and well, something close to eternity must have passed me by because I just zoned out and mindlessly mined around. And well, I ended up finding lapis, but no diamonds yet. And well, I've been down here a good while. So uh, more branch mining later, and I finally struck gold. Well, I mean, it was diamonds, but either way, I found diamonds. And I got five, so, you know, I'll take it, I'll take it. You know, they're, they're literally non-existent in this version of the game anyway, so I'll take the five I've got. Anyways, after getting my diamonds, I ran through my endless mines back to my house and finally made myself a diamond pick. Then I went round and planted the 30 sugarcane I had in my inventory because, well, it was bothering me. Anyways, one sugarcane forest later and I, uh, I went to check if stairs could be placed upside down yet. And, well, they could, so I know what I'm doing tomorrow. Anyways, I spent the rest of the day uh, just smelting down more stone to use on the house upgrade tomorrow. Oh yeah, and I chopped down some trees at the night as well. God, I love one grow bone meal. It was so good. Please add it back. Anyway, so on day 12, I got to work on tearing down the house as soon as I got up. And uh, yeah, I'm not going for a massive house build, but something that'll look nice, uh, surrounded by flowers and grass and, and cool stuff later. So uh, yeah, I, I spent the day tirelessly building the new house that was a little bit bigger than I was expecting. So uh, I had to like do some landscaping, but that, that's okay. It was a little bit too big to get finished in one day. But that's fine, okay? We have all the time we need to make it come out as good as we possibly can. But trust me, okay, by the end of this video, this house is going to look really, really nice. When I woke up on day 13, things had changed once again, and we were now in 1.4. The first named update of the game, the pretty scary update. They added witches, zombie villagers, bats, wither skellies, and the wither. Ooh, uh, spooky. Anyways, uh, I made some more progress on the house throughout all of the day uh, and into the night until it started to rain when uh, I went to bed because it was, it was really bloody loud. Okay, day 14, I woke up and I decided to take a break from house building today and instead I headed down to the mine to grab some obsidian for a nether portal and an enchantment table so that building things would become a lot faster. Anyways, I got to the lava pool, placed down my water bucket, and began mining the obsidian. And, well, about 10 years and arthritis in my hands later, and I was finally done with gathering the obby, and uh, headed back home to make the enchantment table, followed by as many bookshelves as I could possibly make, and then I went and placed it all down just at the side of my house. Uh, I'll decorate it later, but uh, I just don't have the decorational blocks right now. Oh, and I also went to enchant, but I was three shelves off, so I just decided to wait until later, and uh, went and made some more progress on the house for the rest of the day, into the night and all the way until the morning of day 15. When I had the roof and most of the interior done now and well all I have to do is wait to be able to strip the wood to make things look really good. Anyways after having the house basically done I began work on making some paths to connect all my areas together and well after a while of doing the paths I got jump scared by the really loud rain again as well as getting attacked by a skelly so uh, yeah I finished all my paths for now added some cobble walls around them and then moved the rest of my items into my house and called it a day. I, ju I just cannot work outside or anything with it with that rain. It is way too loud and I can't turn it down. Ah, day 16. How lovely, not rainy, very quiet, very dry, very peaceful day. I decided to go and tend to my farm because it looked ready to harvest and I was somewhat low on food, so I, I may as well. After once again gathering up and replanting all my wheat, I uh, made a load of bread and then set out back down the mines in hopes of finding more diamonds, but uh, also to get some XP to start enchanting to. So mine I did until I found another lava pool, but it, it, it was absolutely there's nothing in it. Okay, there's nothing in it. I, I don't know what it is with this world and diamonds, but uh, it really doesn't want to give me them. Hey, would you look at that? It's another lava pool full of disappointment. So at this point, I'd had enough, so I returned home and well, I ended up getting jumped by three spiders in my own house, but. 
uh, I got back up and I called it a day. Okay, day 17, another update. This time, 1.5. Uh, it's a lot of redstone, but I'm nowhere near qualified to be touching that stuff, so we don't really need to cover it. Just know that there's a lot of redstone that was added. And hopefully it was going to be a better day today, so I immediately went and harvested my sugar cane to craft into more paper, to craft into more books, to then craft into some more bookshelves to upgrade my enchantment table. Then I proceeded to enchant my pickaxe, and, well, I got a very nice enchant, and I had Fortune 2. So now the next time I find diamond, hopefully we get a uh, decent amount more. Oh, and my enchantment table took all 30 levels from me because this is old style enchanting, but it's okay, I didn't want those levels anyway. Anyways, next up I decided to go back down into the mine and put this newly enchanted pickaxe to use. And well, after only a few minutes of mining, I actually found some more diamonds, and now we had 8. Followed by even more, and now we have 17. And then I mined for a little bit longer, finding only 3 more diamonds, but that's okay, because I headed back to the surface to craft some stuff with them. I made myself a chest plate, some leggings, a sword, and some booties too, and now we were looking pretty fresh. And I was feeling pretty good about not dying in the near future, so I stole my crap away and went to bed. And on day 18, I got to work on adding some things around our little area. First off, I went and smelted down more stone into stone bricks, and then made myself a nether portal on its own little rocky hill kind of thing, because I thought it would look cool. Now, I know it doesn't look amazing right now, but uh, just wait till I've cleared up the area around it, and made some more decoration blocks, and we've gone through a few updates, but it it'll look good. Anyways, I needed more obsidian to complete the portal, because it was quite a big one, so uh, I ran back down to the mines to grab some, and then by the time I came up and placed it down, it was pretty dark, so I just placed down my obby and headed to bed. Alrighty, so on days 19 and 20, I had a nether portal, but I don't really want to go in there until later, because it really isn't much use for you until 1.16. So instead, I used my time doing a lot more landscaping. I added two more paths connecting the soon-to-be portal and farm together, and then I moved my sugar cane up on the hill in front of my house, and well, it looked pretty good. I also did make some changes to the farm and the enchantment area, but they weren't really major. But other than that, we had some quite productive couple of days right here. Very good. But now, finally, on day 21, I finally had access to Optifine, Shaders, and Replay Mod, because we're now in 1.9. Quite possibly the most controversial update of them all, the combat update. And, well, this update was quite self-explanatory. It changed combat. Uh, it added a cooldown between attacks, so you could no longer effectively spam, click, and kill things. And uh, this is where axes became OP. Also, the elytras and shields were now a thing. But most importantly for us in this video are the shaders and cinematic shots, because I know my audience and they love cinematic shots. So with that being said, let's continue. So starting out on day 21, I immediately made myself a shield because, well, I'm not an idiot. But when I went outside, I noticed that my chickens had sadly despawned. I, I don't know why, because maybe the game updated, I, I don't know. But they were there yesterday. Anyways, I went out in search of a jungle that I saw earlier because I wanted to start getting some vines to craft into mossy cobble to use later as decoration for, like, around my enchant table or any natural areas that I build later on. But I ended up finding a swamp instead, but hey, that works. Anyways, I grabbed a load of vines and then headed back home, but I decided to stop off in this forest to stock up on wood, uh, because I really didn't have much left. After grabbing enough wood, I returned home and sorted away all the items I got from the swamp, and then proceeded to make myself a friend. It's an iron golem named Gaston's, because, well, I was getting quite lonely without the chicken, so he'll be with their replacement. Granted, he's a lot more useful, but uh, anyways, I decided to go mining for the night, and by the morning of day 22, I'd got myself a few more diamonds, so I made myself a diamond axe, a shovel, and the last piece of armor. Now, after returning from the mines, I decided that I should probably make a building dedicated to storage for two reasons. Number one, to have everything nicely in order and a new space dedicated to it. Um, and for number two, it's going to look nice. So why not? Anyways, I got to work on the storage area. It's going to be like a circular design thing with a door in the middle and uh, loads of storage inside. After working on it all day and night, I made some pretty good progress and it was almost ready. So on the following day, I continued building until finally on day 24, I added some finishing touches and boom. We now have a pretty nice looking storage area for all my very organized crap. So, I spent the rest of the day sorting out and organizing all my storage into its new home. Okay, day 25. Let's take a break from building, and instead, let's go out and look for some cows to start breeding them, because I really need leather to make, you know, into item frames so that I actually know what's in my chest. After being out looking for a while, I did end up stumbling across some in the forest near my house. So, I uh, started cow napping them and bringing them back home. And when I got back home, I crammed them in the previously used chicken pen, but added a few adjustments for these big boys. Uh, and then I fed them, and we had our first baby cow. 
So after dealing with the cows, I realized that I didn't really have any bread left, so I tended to the farm and got myself and the cows some more food and then went to bed. And on the morning of day 26, I started making some adjustments to the farm because it still looked kind of crappy and, well, I really needed to go in search of a flower biome to really start making this place look good. But uh, I'll do that tomorrow, okay? Today is about making the land around the farm look better. Anyways, by the end of the day, I think I made it look a little bit better. I don't know, I, I really struggle with this type of natural building, but uh, eh, it doesn't look terrible. I don't know. Anyways, on days 27 and 28, I set out in search of a flower biome so that I can really start making my area look nice and homely. So I continued making my way down in the straight line that I started earlier, past the desert, and picking up every single flower I saw along the way. And, well, after a while of travelling, I approached an ocean and decided to cross it. So I made a boat, I hopped in, and I set sail for hopefully new flowery lands. And after sailing for quite a while, I did get some semblance of hope when I stumbled across this mini flower island biome thingy that I ran over and grabbed all the flowers on, but this wasn't enough, so the search continues. Oh, and there was also some sheep on these islands that were very welcoming to me, so uh, I met that kindness with death. Okay, don't judge me, I need food and it would be nice to make a bed out here. Anyways, after that incident, I uh, set sail once again deep into the night when I saw a pink flower off in the distance, followed by a couple more flowers. So I quickly beached my boat and made a bed from the remains of the sheep and went to sleep, mainly to avoid all the ghouls that were on the island at this time of night. And once I got up on the next day, I went around gathering all the flowers that I could find until these islands were barren, and there were also, like, a lot of cows on these islands, but they all, like, suddenly just, like, disappeared? It, it, very strange. This always happens when I'm around things. I, I don't know why. Anyways, I gathered my stuff up, and I began the long and tedious journey back home. By the time I got back home, it was very late, so I ran in the house and went straight to bed. And now, on day 29, I got to work on planting down all my flowers everywhere around my house and area, and, well, everywhere, until, uh, until I placed them all down, and, well, just look at this place now. It's so much nicer. Oh, and I also moved the enchantment table into the storage area now, so it's kind of like a, a storage slash enchant area. And I also started work on the layout of a little water fountain circle thingy, because why not? Alrighty, day 30. It's that time again. It's time for another update, this time 1.11. And here's where things start getting a little bit crazy with the additions, because now we have Evokers, Vex, Vindicators, as well as Totems of Undying, and obviously, Woodland Mansions. Oh, also, Ruined Nether Portals are a thing now, so, uh, yeah. So, with all that in mind, I decided to go mining. Why did you decide to go mining, you ask? Well, I wanted XP and really didn't want to make an XP farm. So, I decided to head into the Nether for no other reason than to mine Quartz and get XP. And also, another reason I didn't want to make a mob farm is because they all look like eyesores and I really didn't want to ruin the lovely landscape of my area. Anyways, after being in the nether for most of the day, I ended up with enough XP to enchant twice and enough quartz to last a lifetime. So, I went and enchanted my sword, which was absolutely terrible. Uh, and then my chest place was decent, and then I also ended up enchanting an axe, but that was also very meh. Anyways, I ended up spending all night landscaping around my area and also made an anvil to repair all my diamond tools. And on the following days, I actually caved in and decided to build a mob farm because I really needed bones for expanding my actual farm to make it easier for villager trading later on. So uh, yeah, I spent an entire day mining and smelting down cobble into stone bricks until I had enough to start building the farm. And oof, let me tell you, it's a good thing I've been mining redstone along the way because this farm took up quite a lot of it. But uh, anyway, I made it 10 layers high, so it should be very very efficient, and finally, by the end of day 34, the farm was finally done, so I sat on top of it to test it out for the night. On day 35, I went down to check on how well the farm had worked, and, well, just look at all this stuff I got from maybe like 8 to 10 minutes of AFKing, however long a Minecraft night is. Um, but yeah, th this thing's good. This thing's good. I, I, I took all the bones from the chest, alright, I broke them down into bone meal, and I got to work on expanding the wheat farm to accommodate for all the trading that I'll be doing later on. So, uh, I worked into the evening and deep into the night expanding the farm, and, well, I made some pretty good progress and headed to bed. And on day 36, I started work on building my circular fountain area. I, I, I don't really know what to call it, but, uh, yeah, uh, I built it up, and I built up a little water feature, but then I thought to myself that it would look good with some glowstone in there. So, I headed back into the the nether and grabbed a little bit but uh, almost died to a ghast. Pretty scary times. Anyways, after that I returned home and boom! I, I think it came out looking pretty nice. Anyways, after finishing the water fountain I made more roses and went around adding more flowers and decorations around my area and well, just take a look at how nice it looks now. All 
Alrighty, so on day 37, after having quite a few busy days, I decided to chill out and make myself a new mine, considering that my old one looked really bad and it was under my house so it was hard to get to. Anyways, I got some wood, made a little entrance and got to work on mining the rest of the way down to bedrock and then began a new series of strip mines, but these ones were going to be bigger and better. And yeah, I know how close it is to my old tunnels. The only reason that I want a better mine, other than aesthetics, is because for when we hit 1.18 and everything gets deeper, I wanted to be able to have a little base of operations thing down here for when, like, the bigger caves came in and I could go down and mine easier. I, I don't know. Anyways, uh, I ended up finding a few diamonds down here in the process and headed back to the surface on the morning of day 38 and decided that I was going to go and return to the village and start up a little trading hall slash village breeder to get myself even more of a head start on getting good trades once 1.14 comes around. Wow, I haven't been here since day one because, well, I didn't really have a reason to because old trading sucks and I didn't want any of the villagers to die via zombie attack. Anyways, I got to work on building them a lovely new structure in which I'll spend the rest of eternity working for me 24-7, 365. And, well, I think this little trading hall came out looking kind of good, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Now, I still need to add, like, the job items, but obviously I can't yet because they don't exist in the game, but either way, I think it's ready for the most part, so now it's time to go and add the villagers. And, to be fair, they were quite easy to move, they were very, very compliant villagers, so I added two in trading rooms and I put two in a room at the back that I'll use to breed them later. And, boom, just like that, the villager trading hall slash villager breeder is now done. So I headed back home to return later. Once I got back, I grabbed some clay from the river and made some flower pots and then went to bed. I'm not gonna lie, I never use these flower pots. And on day 40, we come into 1.13 and, well, now we're in my most despised update, the Update Aquatic. Which, well, this added the worst things in this blocky plane of existence, okay? This added Guardians, this added Elder Guardians and Ocean Monuments. It's, ugh, I, I just feel sick talking about them. They're awful. But they still aren't as bad as the phantoms that were also added in this update, so, uh, yeah. But on a slightly less bad note, uh, d drowns and dolphins were added, so that they're not that bad. But because I hate this update so much, uh, welcome to 1.14, one of my favourite updates, the Village and Pillage update. That added updated versions of all villagers, as well as having a much more in-depth trading system of the villagers, and maybe the best feature of all, foxes. Foxes are here, just look at him, look at him, he's so cute! As well as an absolute ton of really useful blocks, and, uh, this overgrown dog thing was added as well. Ugh. Anyways, I finally added the finishing touches to my house and, and built it the way it was supposed to be built all those updates ago with stripped logs and trapdoors instead of planks and slabs. And I also went around placing lanterns around my house and area just to make things look a little bit more modern. And uh, I also added some campfires too because they look really nice and I always forget to use them. Anyways, things were looking really nice now, and I went to bed. On day 41, after dealing with the house, I made myself a lectern and a composter, and then headed back over to the village to begin trading with these now very, very useful boys. Anyways, after setting up a few trades and breaking and replacing the lectern for god knows how many times, uh, I finally got a mending trade that was pretty cheap. However, I was too poor, so uh, I raided the village of its wheat and sold it back to them for profit, and boom, mending time. Oh, also, really quick, uh, it's weird to think about how old this pickaxe actually is in terms of how far, like, how many versions of the game it's seen. It's really weird. Anyways, I returned home and used the string from the mob farm to make some wool and make some beds for the villagers so that I could get more of them. Uh, and then on the topic of beds, I uh, went to bed calling it a day. As soon as I woke up on the next day, I added men into my pickaxe and ran back over to the village to start breeding the villagers. After setting them up, I used all my bones on bone meal and on wheat and uh, started trading more and more with this lovely farm boy. He was being very generous. Anyways, after trading for as much as I could for the day, I grabbed another mending book and uh, headed back home and began work on a semi-big project. You see, I didn't want to have to keep scaling the mountains every time I wanted to go to and from the village, um, so I started work on a little cobble, gravel, flowery path thing all the way along to the village, and, well, this thing took me like five days to complete, which I think was worth it for how nice it turned out. Anyways, first off, I needed a lot of gravel, so uh, I went and grabbed that, and then I needed to go around planting out where the path was actually gonna go and then I had to wait to get some more bone meal and more rose bushes so uh, yeah I also did some trading during this time to take advantage of their two refreshes per day but finally by day 47 the path was done and it was looking pretty good I just never want to see another rose bush again like there were so many of them
Moving on to the next couple days, I ended up with a nice amount of emeralds for the previous five days of casuals trading, so I uh, put them to use using my lovely new path to get over to the village. And once I got over there, the villagers have bread now, so we got ourselves a lovely fifth villager. Oh, and uh, I also traded for two more mending books and then returned home to start work on gathering more wheat and sugarcane because the villagers were now my number one source of XP and, well, the main way I'm going to enchant the rest of my stuff. So I grabbed the leftover bones from the mob farm and got to work on harvesting and regrowing all of my wheat for a whole day and night until the evening of day 49 when I returned to the village to cash in on all of my hard work, getting a pretty nice amount of XP. Ooh, I also made our new villager a stone cutting boy for uh, clay and to emerald trades because, you know, more XP. But whilst waiting to get our villager into his trading cell, I noticed that we have yet another villager, so that's good to know. Anyways, I got him in and I traded for more XP and actually ended up spending the night in there with the villagers. And then when I woke on day 50, we were in 1.15 that had uh, bees. Th th that's literally about it. This was the bee update. There was a load of bees. It was literally the only thing they added except maybe some bug fixes. Just, just bees, okay? Bees. So I knew what I was going to do. Anyways, I headed back home and began work on getting a beehive to spawn. Which if you didn't know how to do, you can do it by growing a tree next to a flower. So after a while of growing and chopping down trees, I had absolutely no luck and it got dark. So uh, I headed to bed and continued trying in the morning. And well, after a while, I finally got a beehive to spawn. So I immediately started work on clearing out like half of a freaking mountain to build them a lovely little area to buzz around happily. And I worked tirelessly through the night and into the morning of day 53 and the area was finally done and I think it looked pretty nice with like arches and flowers and stuff. Now I will add some azaleas and stuff later but they don't really exist right now so there's not much I can do. Anyways, after the success of the bee farm, I headed over to the bottom of the mob spawner and made it look a little bit nicer by tidying it up a bit because, well, it was like the only area that hadn't had like a glow up yet, except maybe the nether pole. And on day 54, I awoke to pillagers invading my lovely peaceful land, so I quickly dispatched them, but I was definitely not ready to start a raid on a village yet. I mean, I barely had one piece of armor enchanted, so I downed a bucket of milk and peace was restored in the valley. Anyways, I had a quick trip to the village to finish trading all my wheat and ended up getting level 30, so I returned home and re-enchanted my sword because knockback 2 was not it. But what I got after was really not any better. Disappointing enchants aside, I spent the night working on the nether portal because, well, I really wasn't happy with the current frame and, well, by morning I think it was looking a little bit better. And on the morning of day 55, I added mending to my chestplate and sword because I was sick of carrying the books around with me. And then I decided to go on a mass clay gathering spree, because now I had a clay trade villager who really needs to start pulling his weight. Oh, also I found some cool looking mountains whilst out gathering clay, so yeah, that's pretty cool to find. Anyways, back to mining clay all night. Also, you may be wondering why I'm staying up all night recently, and it's pretty simple. Um, I need phantoms to spawn so I can kill them for their membranes that I can then use later to make slow falling potions to fight the dragon. See? Pretty good idea. Uh, but anyways, they, they aren't here yet, so uh, yeah. On the morning of day 56, I had a lot of clay. So I ran back to the village and traded with the clay boy for two days, because he runs out of stock really fast. But in those two days, I did end up stacking up on a lot of emeralds and XP. Um, and I also did trade with other villagers too, but mainly the clay boys. And because I had so much of it, I made a second one. Anyways, after trading for ages, I went and put my XP to good use by enchanting the rest of my gear. And well, I got some pretty okay enchants. And then after that, I kind of AFK'd all night and forgot about looking out for phantoms. So I, I really don't know if they spawned. Okay, so on day 59, I decided that I was going to start preparing for 1.16 by making a lot of TNT to help me find netherite. So I went and grabbed a lot of sand from the desert, considering that I literally have stacks of gunpowder in the mob farm. After grabbing enough sand, I went and made the TNT and went around organizing all my storage because it got kind of messy over the past few days. But the sun was going down, so I set up all night again and hey, would you look at that? It's phantoms. I, I, I never thought I'd be happy to see them, but uh, yeah, after killing them and grabbing their membranes, I went to bed. Okay, day 60, it's time for things to start getting serious now, alright? We've come a long way, but we're really only just getting started. So, let's get ourselves some netherite, because we're now in 1.16 with the massive nether overhaul, adding four brand new biomes that look amazing, as well as piglins to trade with, so they're kind of cool, but unfortunately these hoggy boys got added into the game and... Well, it's okay though, because netherite is a thing, and look at this beauty. Mm -mm, you gotta love it. So I ran into the nether, TNT in hand, ready to start blowing the hell out of the place. Get it? Hell, because it's 
fire and nether. Anyways, once I actually got in the nether, a uh, creeper almost brought things to a very abrupt end, but I managed to escape death just in time. After that incident, I ran out a few hundred blocks and got to work on lining a massive area with TNT and set it all off. And well, after going down and tidying the place up and clearing up all the lava down there, I found a grand total of zero ancient debris. So I tried it again just to the side of it, and yet again, absolutely nothing. So I decided the hell with it. I started strip mining at Y12 on the border of a chunk because, well, there's only a set amount of netherite you can get one chunk. So theoretically mining on the border of two chunks should increase my chances of getting it. So uh, yeah, I mined and mined in a straight line for quite a long time and found absolutely nothing. So I ran back to the beginning of my line and began a strip mine in hopes of that actually solving my netherite problems. But uh, well, that did nothing too, so I mined out a few more hundreds of blocks thinking that maybe I wasn't out far enough. And well, I ended up stumbling across a nether fortress, so uh, I worked my way over to it because I may as well grab some blaze rods whilst I'm in here. So once I got to the fortress, I immediately found a blaze spawner and began killing them. And after killing a good amount of them, I had enough blaze rods to get to the end, but before leaving the fortress, I wanted to go and grab some nether wart because, well, I need potions and I'm literally in a nether fortress, so I might as well do it now. After killing a couple wither skellies and looting a chest, I finally found the nether wart, so I looted it all up and then looted another chest and then got the hell out of there. Anyways, once I got out of the fortress, I once again began my search for ancient debris. And well, I was definitely out far enough this time, so uh, I began a new series of precisely planned out and precisely spaced strip mines underneath the bottom of the nether. And well, to be fair, it's a good thing quartz exists because my pickaxe would have broken if not. Uh, but doing this neatly wasn't working out, so I decided to just start spamming my pickaxe all around, tearing up every bit of netherrack that I saw. And, well, soon enough after doing this, I found my first piece of ancient debris. And the more and more netherrack I tore up, the more and more ancient debris I found, until eventually, I had enough to make a full set of armor and one tool. So I scurried my way out of my massive pit. I mean, just look at the size of this thing. It, it, it looks awful. And then I headed back home, repairing my pickaxe along the way. Once I got back home, I put all my ancient debris in the furnaces and started smelting it down. And then I went and re-enchanted my sword again. But, yet again, it was absolutely trash. And then when I went to pull out my netherite scraps from the furnaces, I realized that I didn't have any gold to make them into netherite ingots. So one quick trip to the nether fixed that, and uh, well, one quick armor repair later, and boom. We were now fully stacked netherite and feeling pretty good. So after spending such a long time in the nether, I decided that I was going to go and check up on the villagers real quick and uh, grab a couple of mending books to put on all my armor so that I didn't need to worry about them breaking. But anyways, after putting them on my armor, I decided that I wanted to make a nether wart farm, but I wanted to make it out of red nether wood, which I had none of. So one other quick trip to the nether uh, and I grabbed the red one specifically. And once I had enough, I returned home and began work on the farm that was going to come out as a similar style to the storage area, but instead of oak wood, it was red nether wood. And to be fair, I think this came out looking pretty nice. And after the farm was done, I cleared out the area next to it just to tidy things up and open things up a little bit more. Okay, so on day 70, we are now closing in on that 1.19 update because we're now in 1.17 Caves and Cliffs. But not really because 1.18 is the real Caves and Cliffs update. It, it gets a little bit confusing, so we're, we're in 1.18 now, the true Caves and Cliffs update with the new ore textures, the new blocks, and mainly the massively taller and massively deeper worlds to explore. Oh, yeah, and this absolutely useless block. Uh, R.I.P. Copper Golem, I miss you, my buddy. So considering the fact that we're now on day 70, I decided to get myself in gear and start preparing for the end so that we can kill the dragon ASAP. So I once again headed back into the nether to grab some gold to start trading with some piglins so that I can get some pearls from them. And, well, I was trading with this guy for like an hour. Um, but finally, I ended up with enough pearls to go to the end. So I returned home, and it was dark, and I was tired. So I stored away all my stuff and headed to bed. And now, on the morning of day 74, I made my pearls into eyes and got to work on making some stuff for the potions and arranging it all in this chest here. Now, by this point, you know the drill. We need potions of health, potions of slow falling, and maybe potions of speed too, if we want to flex on the dragon a little bit. So I got to work on brewing them and upgrading them like we do every time, and boom, we're now ready to go and absolutely delete that dragon. So I set out in search of the stronghold. And well, as I traverse through this world, you can see the toll that the multiple updates must have taken on it, but it also looks kind of cool. Uh, anyways, I, I approached an ocean, 
And then uh, the eye told me to cross it, so I did. Until I came across this ice biome, and I thought that the eye told me to go down. But, uh, well, I, I mined down and almost died of drowning from my own stupidity, because the eye did not tell me to mine down here. But a couple of eye throws later, and I found where I was supposed to go. So I mined down, and boom, there's the stronghold, and... Oh, would you look at that? There's the end portal. Also, this is, looks like a really weird stronghold. Like, I've never had an end portal room look like this before. But uh, anyways, I killed the silverfish, lit the portal, and, uh, well, made some last minute prep before going in and fighting the dragon. But now it's time to go and kill a dragon. But this is this is nothing to compare to what's coming next. So uh, let's just go in there and get this done, shall we? So jumping our way into the end, we run in there and we snipe out all the pillars with pinpoint accuracy. Definitely not heavily edited. <clears throat> Anyways, then we went for the dragon and, well, I definitely didn't get launched like 10 times trying to kill this thing, but eventually, one final boof with my axe and the dragon was no more. And, well, that was a pretty quick dragon fight because it's not the star of this show. That's the warden and he's coming later. Anyways, you all know what happens at this point. It's now Elytra time. So I hopped in the portal and began the search. And, well, it ended up taking me quite a bit of time, maybe 20, 30 minutes. But uh, eventually there was the beautiful end city with a ship shining off in the distance. So uh, I headed over to it, dispatched all the shulkers from the front and ran in. Once I reached the top, I uh, popped a slow falling potion and bridged over to the ship using a shulker to get aboard as I usually do. Once I got aboard, I stole the potions and the elytra and now it's time to head back. So I gracefully glided across the end, back to my portal and returned to the main island where I grabbed the egg and went home. Once I got back home, I made a shulker box and then chilled at the mob farm for the rest of the day to stack back up on gunpowder to make some fireworks for my newly found elytra. And on the following days, I grabbed my gunpowder out of the chest, grabbed some sugar cane and made myself some fireworks so now I can fly around. So I guess that's nice. Anyways, enough of that because we're now we're going underground to hopefully find a massive cave under my house. So I ran down the mines and began going down to the new bedrock. And uh, well, eventually I did hit bedrock and found absolutely nothing down there. So I returned to the surface and decided to fly over in the opposite side of where I spawned in search of a lush cave because, well, I want some azaleas to decorate my area. And wow, the area of the other side of spawn was really nice. I found two villages, some huge mountains, some lovely flowery hills. It was really nice over there. It was really nice. Anyways, after a while of flying deep into the night, I eventually found a lush cave a few thousand blocks away from my house. So I went down and started grabbing as many resources from here as I could carry. Oh, and there were also a lot of creepers down here. Anyways, I decided to go mine down deeper to see if there was a bigger cave underneath. And well, sure enough, there was. And it was beautiful. Anyways, after grabbing a load of stuff, I headed back to the surface and began the journey back home. Uh, and on my way back, my elytra broke, so uh, I guess we're swimming from this point. But luckily, land wasn't too far away, and I ended up getting back home later that day. Once I got back home, I planted down some flowers and some azaleas, and replaced some of the birch trees with them, and I also made a little area, like, azalea garden thing before going to bed. Okay, day 82. Um, I literally just spent the entire day adding decorations and azaleas and all that good stuff around my house, because, well, I wanted to have a lot of them, and, well, here's the end result. Alrighty, so in the following few days, I went and did some more trading for a mending book for my elytra, and once I had acquired said book, I put it on them and got to work repairing them by, you guessed it, trading. And well, it didn't take me long to repair them. After all that, I uh, ran over to the snowy biome and grabbed a load of snowballs because, well, they're going to be good to use against the warden. Anyways, I saw some unloaded chunks and decided to go and check them out, and well, things looked quite cool and quite weird over here. But after looking around for a while, I went back home and began making some little quality of life improvements all around my area for the rest of the day, such as adding item frames to chests. And well, here we are, peeps. 1.19. Let's go find ourselves an ancient city. Also, sorry, but there was no optifine or shaders at the time we were recording this in the snapshot, so that kind of sucks, but it's okay. Anyways, I grabbed a load of coal and wood and set off in search of new chunk. After flying over an ocean for thousands of blocks, I spotted a little island out in the middle of it and decided that this was going to be where the search begins. So I mined down and, well, almost lost everything to falling down in this cave, but it's okay because I just ran away like a coward and regened and then continued on my journey, making my way through these larger-than-life caves in search of the ancient cities. But, well, I had absolutely no luck after searching literally like all the caves I could find in this area. So I decided to head back to the surface and tried heading out even further. And, well, after starting another mine and exploring caves for what felt like an absolute eternity, 
I finally got a glimpse of some skulk all the way down in the bottom of this massive pit. So I made my way down there to check it out and well, there was the city lying in wait. So I cautiously made my way further and further down until I was eventually inside the city. This is it now, there's no turning back. So I sneakily moved deeper and deeper inside of the city in search of those beautiful loot chests and well, I slowly moved past and destroyed as many skulk blocks as I could see along the way until I found myself a chest, but it set off a shrieker. But luckily for me, no warden just yet. So I wanted to take out the shrieker that made the noise, so being extremely careful with every move I made, I unfortunately couldn't find the one that screamed and I wasn't about to go and try removing any that's in that cluster over there. So I decided to take the risk and open the chest. But luckily none heard it, so I bagged myself some loot and the new enchant. And then I decided to go and open a second chest but didn't get as lucky this time and they heard me, but luckily still no warden. So I kept venturing deeper and deeper into the city, taking out as many shrieks as I could along the way and looting a few chests. But then I broke one wrong block and well, now he's here. I quickly ran as far away as I could and well, I got a lucky escape but for some stupid reason, I broke a candle and, well, here he is right in front of me. I threw a couple snowballs to try and get him off my tail, but he didn't seem super interested in them and, well, I couldn't see a damn thing. So I started bridging myself away until eventually he went away for now. Okay, I'm not going to complain. Now, at this point, I wanted out of this city, but I wasn't going to leave until I killed this man. So I made myself a pillar and beat this man to death for a good solid minute before he finally fell. And well, now I can leave with the overall goal of killing the warden now complete. He was quite easy. Granted that might change when the full release comes out, but for now, hey, <laughs> I killed him. <laughs> Anyways, after my victory over the warden, I made my way out of the cave and well, started heading back home, which took me a whole day to get there. But once I got back, I uh, stored some stuff away, gave my pickaxe efficiency 4, and put Swift Sneak on my boots, and well, look at this, look how fast you go! Whoa! I am one speedy boy! Whoa! So on the following couple days, I got up and decided to work on improving the mineshaft, because well, it hadn't got any loaf up until this point, and it looked kinda crappy. So I went round and added a load of lanterns and a load of deep slate stuff to it, and uh, boom, it looks nice and new and improved, you, you gotta love it, even though it still looks kinda crap. On day 97, I went and repaired my elytra, and then headed out in search of a shipwreck. Why, you ask? Because I can. Anyways, I ended up finding one pretty quickly and grabbed myself a nice little treasure map and when I checked it, I was already very close, so I swam over there and used a little trick with coordinates to find the treasure nice and easy. And it was some pretty nice treasure. Anyways, I headed back home and spotted a slime just outside my house, so I decided to bring him over and break it down and then in the morning I went and grabbed a name tag from the villagers, but when I returned to name him, he wasn't there, so I made him a shoddy grave, fell into a depression, all because I lost my slime. R.I.P. Slippy, my friend, you will always be remembered. After losing my slime, I, uh, I just sorted out my storage for the rest of the day. And on day 99, I finally removed the eyesore of a water elevator from the mob farm, and, uh, well, I just went around taking a nice walk through my area for the last time. And, wow, we've really come so far in this 100 days, from being a super basic old version of the game, to having this pretty nice looking base being full kitted out with enchanted netherite, however we don't have a pet slime named Slippy. Alrighty, and now that we're back in the current era of the game, or at least it was the current era when I made that video, but things have progressed since then, but you know what I mean. It's time to move on to the last and most recent challenge on this list, as I attempt to survive 100 days on only one heart inside of Hardcore Minecraft. Alright, so here we are in quite possibly the scariest playthrough I think I'll ever do of this game, because if the wind changes in any direction too much and I catch a slight breeze, then I'm just gonna fall over and die. It's, um, it's not looking too good for me right now, alright? 
right? I think that even at this point, a silverfish and like a goat, if it does the ram thing, can kill me immediately without any armor. So that's fun. That's something to look forward to. So I think the first objective is going to be to probably try and get a shield straight off the bat because that is probably going to be the only thing that saves me throughout this entire video, all right? That is going to be the single most OP item we can get, probably second to a totem of them dying, but I, I don't really like using them because it kind of removes the premise of it, you know, because I, I died in a sense, you know? I don't know. I find them useful, but I also think that in this kind of challenge in itself, it kind of just removes the, 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 the fear level of it, you know? And like, if I get one tapped, it's just like, oh, well, it's fine. I can, I can live. It's fine. I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to craft up some stone tools right here real quick, and then we're going to head out in search of some iron. Now, this is really weird to me because I never usually do 100 days videos in like vanilla-ish Minecraft. We're not in complete vanilla because I can chop down trees with one, one thwack. Just because it makes my life a thousand times easier. That way I don't have to spend half the video chopping trees. I can just take the bottom log and, and be good. But yeah, I never really record these videos in vanilla Minecraft, so this is quite alien to me. It's weird having this much space. I've usually got a challenge that kind of inhibits the amount I can move. Okay, we'll grab a little bit of food and then we'll check any surface level caves that we find that don't go down too far and get too dark to see if there's any iron lurking with Within. But I think as well, a four or five block fall, I think it is, can like insta kill me. So, you know, that's great. That's something to look forward to, especially while building. That's just going to make things go oh, just, just, just so much better. Hello, any iron? No ghoulies around here, I hope. Okay, there's not really much in this cave except you. So, you know, I'm sorry, buddy, but you shouldn't have been down here. I'm also thinking as well, I've never actually done a zero damage playthrough of this game, and this might not be a zero damage playthrough because we might take like half a heart worth of damage. But if it is, then it's a kind of it's two in one, you know, one heart, zero damage. Doesn't really matter if it's one heart if you've got zero damage, but you know, it's two in one, all right? It's two accomplishments. Ooh, there's some like mountainous terrain over there. Any any iron exposed? Oh, and there's a village. Oh, I was gonna say there's a village over there, but it's a rundown village, an abandoned village, so. Maybe not the smartest idea to go and check that out right now. <gasps> Is that some iron? I think that's some iron. Okay. Hopefully no drowns are on the way over here. Hopefully I don't get hit by a puffer fish. I didn't even think about this, but puffer fish can kill me pretty quick as well. I don't know if they do physical damage when you go close to them. I think they spike you. Um, I know that the poison won't kill me. Oh, I almost drowned then. That was... I, I need to pay attention. I really need to pay attention. Um, but no, as I was saying, I, I know that the poison won't kill me. I don't think. But I know. I think that they might be able to if they deal physical damage. I, I don't know. I'm just going to shut up. I'm going to go grab this iron. Okay, let's get a little base of operations situated right here temporarily. We can make a shield and then maybe I'll feel confident enough to take on that village. I, I, I don't really know. We'll grab a little bit more stone as well because we can get a smoker and get this food cooking up. Okay, so now we can throw this in here and go boom. Now, I'm not going to go and make a sword just yet because I think that we might need backup shields with how much we're going to be using them. All right, I'll come back to the smoker to uh, check up on the food later on, but I, tr I want to try and get a bed from this village because I think that that will just make our first night so, so much better. Okay, please have a bed. Oh, there's a bed as well. And some bread. Oh, what what more can you ask for? Okay, beautiful. And we get to watch the sunset wherever it is. I think it's over there. Okay, all right. Well, first day's a success. Right, we'll head to bed. And then in the morning, I'll go and grab my food from the furnace and try and take over this village. Now, just before we go any further into the video, we are getting so, so close to 200,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. And to celebrate this milestone, I am super excited to announce that as of this video going live, we now have have merch available for the channel. I've been working on this for a good while now, and I am so happy with how it's come out. It looks so good. And if you're interested in getting some for yourself, then there'll be a link in the top right of the screen and down in the description where you can go and choose from a few different designs on hoodies, shirts, hats, and even some stickers. I'll also be doing a giveaway for it on this video. So if you want to get some free merch, drop a comment down below. I'll reply to you and you can get some free stuff. But yeah, thank you all so, so much for giving me the opportunity to do this. I love and appreciate you all so, so much. Um, and hopefully you like the merch. But anyways, let's get back into the video. Okay, not a bad day one. Not a bad day one at all. That was uh, pretty nice. Nice little bed on the first night. I wasn't expecting that. Hello. Ooh, a blast furnace. Hello. Gimme, gimme. For free, I'll take it. Hello, buddy. Hi. How's it going? You're going to be my first... Uh first accomplishment in this world right here. Bap! Bap! There we go. All right. Our first kill was on a helpless little zombie villager trapped in a cobweb. Lovely. I wouldn't have had it any other way. 
Okay, I'm gonna grab this bed, and then I'm gonna go over, check up on my beef, and then, um, I don't really know. Probably finish off looting this village, and then continue on out to see what we can find anywhere. Okay, so you're all cooked up. Let's grab you, and then we'll head back to the village, grab, I think, the hay bales are probably a good shout to get, and then we will head out and see what we can find. Okay, that should do for now. We've got quite a lot of stuff. That village was exceedingly helpful. Um, now we just want to head out and see what we can find, such as this ruined portal right next to the village. Smite f Ooh, damn. Okay, I'll take anything I can get at this point. Beautiful. Okay, all right. Oh, okay, hello. Um, I'm also just realizing now that the caves in 1.19 are really big, and um, yeah. I, I'm gonna end up taking fall damage in them. 100%. I can guarantee that. How are we looking down there? That is looking terrifying. Oh, right. Well, I have no intentions of going down there just yet, so I'm not really too worried about it. I really think that the best course of action is to try and find a village first. That way we can just get a little base of operations set up and have like our little protector of an iron golem whilst we are exceedingly weak in our current state. I don't know, but I'll look over this way. If we don't find a village over this way, then I'll just head up a temporary base of operations myself and just um, be a little bit more cautious. Okay, well, I can confidently say that there is not a village over here. So in this case, what I'll do is I can set up a little temporary... We'll do a little temporary base over here in this little mound right here. Boom, there we go. It's on the wrong way and everything, but you know what? It works for now. Make you into an ingot, which... Oh, you know what? I'll use this on a pickaxe. I'll use this on a pickaxe. We should be okay. And now, let's start making a little mine down here. See what we can find. Ooh, hello. Okay, this can now potentially go from pretty good to very bad exceedingly quickly, okay? So we need to be super, super vigilant, super careful. We don't want to risk anything right here. Okay, I don't really want to test my luck going much further down. There's a lot of iron down here, though, so I kind of want to grab up as much of it as I can. Okay, and this little venture down here landed us with 42 iron. Oh my god. Okay, I'm not going to risk my luck anymore. I'm going to head back up, and then we're going to spend the rest of the night smelting down this iron. Okay, well, I said the rest of the night, but the sun is literally just on its way up, and that is a that is a beautiful sunrise right there. That makes the rest of the world just seem much better. Now, what I'm thinking I'm going to do with this iron is I will deck myself out with armor. It does seem pretty pointless, if I'm correct. I can't still tank anything with iron armor because the mobs will deal multiple hearts of damage. So I don't really know what the purpose in me doing this is, but I don't know. Maybe it's the placebo effect and I feel a little bit more confident in myself. Okay, while the iron is smelting, I'm going to be exceedingly cautious to make sure that no mobs have survived the night. And I'm going to come over here and grab some of this coal as well as that little bit of iron right next to me. Oh, there's. do you see the iron up there? There's so much iron up there. Is it really worth it though? Probably not. We already have like quite a bit. Let me deck myself out real quick. There we go. I already have some boots, so I'll just leave them for now. They're really not doing too much to be fair. Let me just, yeah, let me get rid of them. I'll make some boots. I think I can afford the four iron. All right, and off we go. Thank you, little house. You served me well. Ooh, God, that was close. I almost threw myself down that hole. That would have gone very badly. Is there anything at all around here? It's literally just planes upon planes upon planes. <gasps> oh, is that is that an actual village? That's an actual village. It looks like an actual village to me. Some apples. Not bad, not bad. Oh, we already have a librarian here. Hello, buddy. What you got? Lure two. Uh, no, thank you. Okay, and what's in here? No die. Oh, God. Oh, God. I just made a load of... Okay, it's fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. I understand. Okay, so we've got a nice little base of operations situated in the village now. I think what the main goal going forward from here now is going to be is to try and get these guys to probably trade me... I I'm thinking full sets of armor and then deal with specific bucks later. Now, one thing we do need to do before we can actually start trading is to stack up on resources. So let me real quick go grab a bucket and then I think tomorrow we can focus on getting a little farm area set up for these guys. Probably... Probably right around here, to be fair. Or is there a cave right un underneath me? Oh, no. That's fine. Yeah, we can set up a farm area, a little, little farm area right around here. Day four started out with me clearing out an area and building up a little starter farm. So I could begin stocking up on trading materials to use with the villagers. 
So what I do want to do now is I want to take the hay bales that I have and I want to break them down into wheat and then hopefully you, yes, you trade me wheat. Good guy, good fellow right here. What a guy, absolute legend. Okay, well, we're going to go and grab a couple more of these hay bales then. Okay, and I think that's pretty much all they have to offer me, which is quite lackluster, I'm not going to lie. I was expecting a couple more. These guys really don't have too much stuff. Oh, and you're completely out of trades as well. Okay, that, that, that sucks. So I think other than trading for wheat, I don't really know what today's objectives are because we've made the farm already. That's gone good. And maybe set up a sugarcane farm too because that's going to be super, super helpful. And then... I don't know, probably head over to that forest, I think, for the rest of the day and chop down a whole bunch of trees because we are pretty low on wood. Okay, now that the sugar cane is planted down, let's head over here, grab a little bit of wood, and then probably end up calling it a day because the sun, by the looks of it, is on its way down. Okay, so today I kind of want to go and maybe trap a couple of these villagers in a house uh, and make them farmers, just so then we've got a couple set up for when we actually want to get trades done. Okay, so I know there's a guy up here without a job. I think he's in this house, I'm pretty sure. Hello, buddy. Are you up here? Yes, you are. Hello. Um, right. You don't want that job. You're a farmer now. You're a farmer now. You don't want this job anymore. This is my job. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to see if you, my friend, have refreshed your trades, which you seem to have. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Oh, my God. You took everything I had. Holy. Okay. I guess I'll go harvest the other hay bales then. Jeez. Okay. Hello, buddy. I have some hay bales to trade with you. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Oh, that's the guy. I, I, I need a... I need a Fletcher as well because I need sticks and I can also buy arrows off of him. Uh, do we even have any flint? I have one flint. Okay. And uh, no gravel around. Okay, right. Well, new objective, find some gravel. That gravel? That is gravel. Yes. Okay, don't need to go down a cave. Flint, please. I just need one. There we go. Lovely. Okay, and then we craft one of you up. Come here, good fellow. You are no longer uh, a potion guy, a, a brewmaster, or a cleric. A cleric, not a brewmaster. Uh, you are no longer that job, though. You are now a Fletcher who will trade me sticks for emeralds. Lovely. Thank you so much. Now I need to go and get a whole bunch more wood. Now I spent the rest of the afternoon just chopping down a whole bunch of trees to use as trading materials for the newly acquired Fletchers. Okay, so pretty good day. We've got 45 emeralds plus 16 in there. 61 total. Beautiful. All right. Now I am low on coal, so let me just throw... I guess I'll just throw 32 of these in here and then just call it a day with that. Make a couple more torches and then I think I might spend the night working on a little mine just down here in this little like crevice area, wherever it is down here. Oh yeah, this will work perfect for a mine. So I am going to go and real quick make a door so that I can cover behind me if there's any ghoulies that spawn in. Okay, do you want to know how much stuff we found last night? Right, I don't think you're ready for this. A whopping six iron and two copper, as well as a little bit of coal that I got as well. But yeah, this is this is the night hall. I really didn't find much and then had to cower in the cave down there because there was like four skeletons up top. So uh, yeah, not a good night at all. But hey, at least we have a little bit more coal now. So I think today we're going to do our daily routine of trading with some villagers and then we'll see where the day takes us. Hello, friend. Why have you not? There we go. I'm going to say, my guy, keep your trades refreshed, man. Ooh, uh, I'll trade with him as well just to get these because I'm hoping they can get an arrow trade from him. Arrow trade, perhaps? No, you're getting pretty poo-poo trades today, dude. It's not good. Okay, we'll harvest you real quick. Plant a couple more down. There we go. How are we looking on uh, leather? I think I picked up a few pieces on the way over here from a load of cows. And we also have books in here. We have, what, four shelves there. And then there's no more up top. Okay, and what was your trade again? Was it, yeah, it was lure two. Okay, so nothing too great. Okay, 64 plus seven emeralds. That's enough to level up like an armorer once, right? Hello, my friend. You're the next to join my uh, circus of traders. There you go, boom. Get, get that, there we go. Yeah, so armorers are here, and I don't have any bloody emeralds on me. Hello, friend. You're gonna absolutely destroy my emerald supply, but it's fine. I need you to level up anyway. Okay, and now you're going to give me a good deal. You're going to give me a good deal, right? That's what you want to do? Eh, that's okay, but the level up is terrible. Oh my god, I don't understand why the bells are so expensive. Okay, buy a whole bunch of the chainmail boots. There we go. Now you're going to give me an even better deal, right? Even better deal. Oh, perfect deal right there. Look at that. Mm-mm-mm. Okay, come on, come on. Keep them rolling, keep them rolling. Keep the offers coming. Oh, okay. Look at that. Okay, so now he's going to be fully maxed out, I think. 
Yeah, okay, so protection two, fire protection, blast protection. I would really prefer feather falling, I think, on my boots. So, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, throw the crap in here for now. We'll get some more trades done tomorrow. And I think tonight, oh, I was going to say I want to work on an auto smelter, but I don't have the iron for that. All right, well, I guess I'll spend the night mining once again, at least make it useful, you know? I didn't actually go too deep down. Um, I literally hit deep slate and then thought, you know what? I'm literally finding nothing. I'll go back up. So hopefully we find some good stuff tonight. Oh, hello. Little cave right here. Little cave right here. Okay. Throw that down and then cautiously approach. See if there's anything around. Okay. Amazing. Wonderful. It's uh, kind of a pointless cave. Exactly what I wanted to find down here. Okay, amazing. I'm literally a bedrock, and I found the smallest cave known to man. Okay, well, another amazing night spent mining and finding absolutely nothing. After returning from yet another pretty uneventful night down in the caves, I ended up spotting a zombie raid on the village and uh, just kind of sat back and relaxed and let the iron golems do their thing because this village has like a whole bunch of them for some reason. I really don't know why there's so many. Okay, so today's objective is I want to make a couple more fletches. So I think I have some gravel in here. Do I? Do I? Yes, I do. So yeah, we want to get a little bit of flint up in here and then we can make a couple more fletches and get a bunch more stick trades on the go. This is really weird doing this many trades for me um, at this point in the game. I don't usually focus heavily on them straight off the bat, but you know, caves are scary, all right? Caves are scary. To be fair, I do actually want to go and check out a cave. So we will look for one probably later today. Let's be real. We'll go and search the plains for any open top caves. Okay, so I've got four more flint. That means that we can get two more fletches. Okay, lovely. Also, whilst we're heading over here, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to you all for the support in the last video. It was absolutely insane, and I'm super, super glad that you guys like this new style. I uh, really appreciate it. It really means a lot. And on the topic of things I appreciate, this cave would be nice if it went somewhere. Okay, there really wasn't much in that cave other than two pieces of iron. So, you know what? I'll take it, but I'm not necessarily happy with it. Where are all the caves around here, man? There's absolutely none around this village. I don't want to fall in that lava. <gasps> Dogs! Uh, I don't have any bones, unfortunately. I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I can't get you guys right now. But do you lead anywhere? Hello? Oh, okay. Okay, okay. I see you down there, buddy. I see you. There he goes. Look at that. Okay, down we go. This is by far the scariest thing I've done so far. Okay, so there's a creeper, a spider, and a zombie over there now. Okay, that, that evolved pretty quickly, didn't it? I guess I could just snipe them from back here, right? Okay, zombie, where'd you go? This is actually so scary. There's nothing even here right now, but that zombie disappeared, so I don't know where he's gone. If I hear the rattle of bones down here, I'm gone. I I'm gone. I'm not dealing with skeletons right now. It's it's just not worth it. They can snipe me. I can snipe them. It, it just doesn't seem like a fun situation. Judging from what I can see up there in the little cracks to the surface, I think it's nighttime now. So we probably want to stay down here. As unsafe as it is, it's probably safer than the surface right now okay oh i heard i heard bones <gasps> no oh no there's a skeleton down there uh oh okay we'll not go down there then we'll not go down there that's tempting fate that's not that's not happening i'm telling you if you think i'm being overly cautious you try you try doing this on one heart all right it's absolutely terrifying i i, I don't know why it's like rl craft wasn't even this bad it's so scary literally if i stub my toe i literally die that's it I, I, there's no coming back from it like for example i'd probably usually jump off from about this height but nope can't do that anymore oh oh we finally took damage that was our first bit of damage right there half a heart oh my god i've never been more scared there we go. How many arrows have we got left? Four. That's not good. I'm not too worried about creepers. I can just, like, lure them back here and then they can go kabloomy. Like, that's not that scary. If anything, I think creepers are the least scary mob in all of this. Skeletons are by far the, the apex predator in this world. <laughs> Anyways, that's enough iron for now. I'm going to make my way back to the surface and probably cower away until the sun rises. Okay, slightly terrifying night. I did actually get hit by a skeleton on the way back up my waterfall, but I stopped recording by that point. But he only did half a heart to me, so he didn't he didn't one-tap me for some reason. I think he, like... Oh, it's because it hit me through the water. Okay, I was really confused, but I thought I was dead. Okay, right, so let me grab these four flint. Uh, then we need to go and hunt down two more villagers to make fletchers and buy an absolute ton of arrows. Oh, we also need to go and grab a, a bunch of wood as well, but that's, you know, that's secondary. <laughs> now you're stuck in there forever. Forever. Right, buddy. 
you are not going to be a cleric. You are going to be a Fletcher. Yeah, look at that. Wow, much better job. Much better. <gasps> yes. Okay. So he has an arrow trade, which is amazing. I don't really have any emeralds, though. So that's going to have to wait a minute. Use my usual technique to get out of these places. Just throw a ladder down. <laughs> okay. And then who else can we lure away to trap in a house forever to make a Fletcher? Ooh, librarian. Uh, I can sacrifice a librarian for now. Goodbye, your librarian profession. Hello, your Fletcher. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, I accidentally hit the villager. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, now he's... Oh, he's, to be fair, his traits aren't too bad, but the Iron Golems are going to be angry now, right? Oh, no, 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 no. This couldn't have gone much worse. Is he angry at me? Hello, buddy. Hello. Hello. Look, I didn't mean to, okay? Are you... I think we're good. I think we're chill. I think he's not angry at me. Okay, so now that those boyos don't want to absolutely decimate me right now, um, let's get some trades done with you, my good sir. Sorry about the beating I gave you earlier. It was it really wasn't meant to happen. I'm sorry. Uh, and now we're pretty much out of sticks. So let's go and grab a whole bunch more wood and get some more trades done. Ooh, the Enderman died right here. Dropped a pearl. Nice. Okay, that should be enough for wood for now. We've got just over four stacks total, including the birch. So let me go trade some more with this guy until he's out. I'll go trade with the other guy, and then I'll go buy some arrows off the final guy. Okay, is that... You literally stole all those from me. Oh my god, buddy. Okay, arrows. Yes, there we go. Oh my god, we've got so many arrows. Oh, I didn't even notice this whole ravine right here. There's literally a whole ravine with water in that I could have been down, and instead of looking for those caves. I... Okay, I'm an idiot. Absolute idiot. Now, if we could try and find, uh, it, oh, actually, no, if we could go and use the librarian, I'll try doing this tonight, because we'll probably go to bed, but if we can try and use the librarian, right, and get power four or five for the bow, and then make an anvil, we can absolutely shred, like, anything in here. Okay, where are you going to go to bed, buddy? This house right here. Okay, perfect. I know where I'm spending my night. Okay, there's a few things roaming around outside now, so I'm going to head to bed and then see what we can get up to with him in the morning. All right, so after taking the iron out of the furnace, we now have precisely a stack, which is pretty good. Uh, we don't have anything in here. So I'm going to go check up on... Oh, no! Whew! All right. Not fun. Completely d I did not know he was outside. What a lovely way to start off the day. Okay, house took a, a minor amount of structural damage. Okay, I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, why are you still a librarian, my guy? Where is your profession block? I'm going to go and literally hunt around this entire village to see if this guy even have, has a profession block. I don't believe he does. I really don't think he does anymore. Ah, maybe. No, I stole this one too. Um, are you profession to my smoker? Because if so, let me remove that real quick. And then you can become a lovely librarian. And now you should be without a job. So you should become a librarian. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Boom. Come get it. Psh, 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 psh. There we go. Go on. Ah, 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 now you're stuck in there, buddy. Now, I spent the entirety of day nine trying to get this absolute devil of a man to trade me power for my bow. Now, when I say I spent all day here, what I really mean is I spent all day and night here because this absolute fiend would just not give me anything close to what I wanted. Instead, he gave me mending about five times along with protection for an infinity. Now, you know what? I get that you might be saying to yourself, well, Poppers, Infinity's a really good enchant. Why don't you want it? And the quick answer is I can get a whole bunch of arrows from the villagers extremely easily. So it kind of makes it irrelevant. And I didn't really see the point in buying it over power. Anyways, back on track. Uh, I spent like 20 minutes in here just breaking and placing this lectern over and over and over again, getting Bane of Arthropods and Luck of the Sea repeatedly back to back. And well, let me just show you what effect and things that this does to a man, okay? It made me go insane. Please, I've been here all day, my guy. Please. God damn. Bane of Arthropods, man. It's Bane of Arthropods. Look at the sea. Bane of Arthropods. Look at the sea. Look at the sea. Look at the sea. I, there's no luck here, buddy. There's no luck here. I swear on everything in this entire universe. If you give me luck of the sea one more time, one more time, I will make the remainder of your pitiful existence in this world a living hell. Okay? A living hell. You're taunting me with luck. There is no such thing right now, alright? I am having the worst of it.
Oh, you son of a- So, after losing all hope of ever getting what I wanted, and for the sake of my own sanity, I decided to leave it there once the sun began to rise, because this guy was literally just scamming me for my time, and my 93rd birthday was just around the corner, considering how much time I'd just wasted on this guy. Ah, duh. Just because I'm leaving, okay? Just because I'm leaving, you absolute fiend of a man, doesn't mean that our business is done. I'm going to return, and if you don't give me them trades, I'm telling you right now, if you like the fish so much, you'll be swimming with them! Anyways, on a brighter note, we do have an absolute ton of arrows now, so we can explore a little bit more when we want to. Uh, but for now, I need to focus on the farm a little bit. It's been being, uh, it's been neglected recently. I did want to have this thing, you know, doing really well and thriving, but I just completely forgot about it, considering I was trading sticks instead. Okay, I do plan on building a house somewhat soon, alright? I don't want to be living in this village forever. It is a state. It's not very, you know, expandable, alright? It's it's not really worth my time, okay? I'm only here for the armor. Ooh, I can buy... <gasps> oh, massive! Okay, right, so we'll grab that. And then if we do a little bit more trading, we can get two of those. We can get protection three. Then we can get another two. We get protection four. Ooh, okay, I don't think we'll get that today, but we can definitely get protection three. Oh, doggies, um, I don't, still don't think I have any bones, unfortunately, I'm so sorry. We will, I will try and get you, though, I will try and get you at some point soon. So, uh, we'll go and do some stick trades, get some more emeralds, and then grab that second chest plate. Okay, so 47 is enough to go and grab the other chest plate. I'll go grab that, we'll combine it together, which will probably eat up a little chunk of my XP. And then, I guess tonight, we'll try and grab some bones. I'll try and I'll try and snipe some skellies from a distance and grab some bones. That way, we can hopefully try and get those dogs. Okay, so, chest plate one, chest plate two. It's only three XP, that's not too bad. There we go, right, then throw that bad boy on. There we go go. Uh, I don't know if that's actually going to do much, but I feel a little bit more powerful. Ooh, we could do with a weaponsmith, actually. So that's... Let's let's grab, let's grab one of those real quick. I don't know if we have the villagers, though. Isn't there... There's two trapped in this house over here, right? Yes, there is. Okay, if I go and grab a couple more beds, this can be the temporary villager breeder then over here. Okay, so we're gonna line a couple beds up up top here. Right, throw you down there, and then throw you down like there. Why can you not use stairs? Right, and then I'll throw some of these down. Will you? Oh, you're doing the creepy bed thing all the time. They do this all the time. Okay, pretty good day. Pretty good day. Let's spend some of the night sorting out this storage because it's an absolute mess. So what I'm thinking of today is I probably want to go out, right? And we just want to check out the surrounding area, okay? See what... Oh, God! Oh, God! Run, run, run! Oh, my God, run! Oh, that was scary. Okay, that was scary. He's, he's going to burn now, but oh, my days. That was a little bit scary. But as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by that bag of bones. Um, I want to go out and check around the surrounding area, which to me looks a lot like ocean. So I went to take a look around the area, but clearly not enough because I completely missed the fact that there was a ton of land just right behind me. And for some reason, I just thought that there was ocean around for some reason. I don't know. I'm just an idiot. But anyway, I actually ended up using my stupidity to my advantage and decided to go and grab myself some kelp for a bone meal farm that I was planning on making soon. However, after grabbing the kelp, I spent the majority of day 11 just rambling about bone meal farms. And I have no clue why I was so passionate about them, but <laughs> I guess I was. But anyway. I decided to stop going on about the farms and instead actually went to get some trading done. So I spent the rest of the evening doing some more stick trading with the Fletchers and managed to get scammed again by the guy I hit earlier. So I guess he still has a problem with me and to be fair, right, I understand I did end up hitting him in the face or the back of the head or something with my axe, so I'd be pretty upset too. So after getting swindled for a whole bunch of my sticks, I went and did as many trades as possible with the toolsmith before heading to bed and calling it a day. Okay, we got some pretty good trading done last night. I uh, do want to combine a couple of these axes. And by that, I literally mean doing it once because I don't have enough to actually level it up anymore. But yeah, last night was pretty good. We got some good trades going. He's leveled up a little bit, but like the axes and stuff are a little bit pricey. However, he does have like a Fortune 1 iron pick and I'm very interested in that. Okay, so the plan for today is I'm going to grab a couple more sticks real quick and then I'm going to grab the Fortune Diamond uh, Iron Pickaxe that that guy's selling over there and then hopefully combine it with another one. So we need to get, what, 28? Uh, and then we can go down to the mines and see if we can find any diamonds. Ooh, hello. Is that a cave? That looks like a cave to me. Okay, maybe we'll not go down in the ravine. Oh, yeah, we're going down there. That goes straight down to Deep Slate, right? Okay, so we go boom, boom. Fortune 2, that is expensive. Woof, all right. Yeah, okay, all right, let's head down the mines. I'll bring a little bit more arrows with me, just for if. Um, and then let's head over to this cave. Uh, okay, does that look safe? 
it does look kind of safe. Not the safest place, I wouldn't say, but safe-ish. Okay, very carefully, we'll head down. Very <gasps> oh my god, this is perfect. Beautiful. All right, the first uh, big cave we go down in, we get some diamonds. I hate getting one veins around here, man. It sucks. Oh, oh, hello. Two veins, sorry, two veins. There we go. All right, two diamonds now. Woo! Ooh. Now, I know strip mining isn't the most efficient way, but I'm hoping that I can just strip mine into a cave. Like, I'm not really expecting to find anything on my way there. Maybe some iron or something, like redstone, but um, I hope that there's a cave just directly in my path. All those diamonds will do perfectly. Okay, no, that's... Yeah, that's... <laughs> that's fine. Oh, my God. Okay, how many we got from here? This is definitely enough for a pickaxe. Ten. Okay. All right, well, I guess we'll continue a little bit further down here. Um, it is getting a little bit late in the day, so I'll probably spend the night down here mining in a straight line, hoping to find a cave. Oh, look, there's the redstone I was on about. Anyways, I'll see you lot in the morning. If nothing else exciting happens tonight, I'll probably just be mining in a straight line for, like, the next ten minutes. Oh, God. Ooh. Ooh, that was going to be it. That was going to be it. That was it. That was the end of my playthrough right there. That was supposed to kill me there. That was it. Okay. Did not expect to find a giant lava cavern anywhere within here, but I'm not going to complain either. Also, if you're wondering what resource park makes the ores shimmer like that, um, it's called like shimmering ore, I think. It's really cool. I love it. It's, uh, it's really nice. I'm going to use it like all the time now. It looks really good. All right, well, this cave was uh, eventful. I know it continues a little bit over there, but we'll check that out at a later date. For now, I'm probably going to wait out the night down here and then head back home in the morning. So with our newly acquired diamonds, what we're going to do is I'm going to go make a diamond pick and maybe a diamond sword. I don't really know. So we'll make our pickaxe. We'll head straight back down and we'll go and grab uh, enough obsidian to get an enchantment table and an, I was gonna say an end portal then, uh, a nether portal. There we go, right. Diamond pick acquired. Do we want to make anything else? I could make some diamond leggings, but I can also buy them. So uh, we'll do uh, maybe an axe and a sword would be a, a good call here. Yeah, we'll do an axe and a sword. We'll do an axe and a sword. There we go. Ooh, obsidian shines as well with this resource pack. I didn't know that. Do it again. Shine again. Yeah, wow. Look at that. Wow. Okay, finally. Off back up top we go, and then it's... I think we'll make the enchantment table. We'll set up a nether portal temporarily, but I'm not going to light it or go through yet because I'm not an idiot. And then we'll also kind of get started on the bookshelves for enchanting because we're going to need quite a few of those. I'm pretty sure we're good on leather for now. I think we've got quite a bit of it, um, and then we just need to farm out a little bit more sugarcane, which also shouldn't take too long. Okay, so how are we looking on leather? We've got 27 leather and 42 sugarcane, which if I break that down into paper, bring that up here, we should have then 14 books, which uh, is not enough, I'm pretty sure. Now, I know that there is uh, some bookshelves around here. I'll just go and grab them from the libraries. I think there's one over here. Okay, so that should have given us eight bookshelves plus the four we have, which is 12. I don't think that that's enough for full enchants. Okay, and now we have the perfect amount of diamonds and books left over. Boom, there we go. All right. So I'll throw these in here for now. Oh, we didn't get any iron. Oh, okay. That is a uh, slight problem that I am going to go and solve right now by going down into this ravine and mining iron tonight. Love iron. Oof. Ow, the second time. Rip the no damage playthrough. Well, I got back to the surface and it was already turning day, so uh, welcome to day 13, I guess. So now that we've got all this stuff kind of situated, I probably want to go and see if I can grab a little bit more sugarcane so we can get this enchantment area set up. And then it'll be time to start focusing on XP and maybe even a little bit more trading again. Um, I'm going to go real quick and grab these sheep here because I want another bed for the villagers. I could just steal one, but why steal one when I can kill things? Oh, I still need to get these wolves. I forget every single time. All right, tonight... Tonight, I'm staying up and I'm sniping skeletons. I'm gonna, it's in the back of my mind now, right? I'm gonna actually stay up. I'm gonna get some dogs tomorrow. Always forgetting, man. It's gonna get to like day 99. I'll be like, oh, I finally have some bones so I can get those dogs. They'll have died by then. Okay, so we'll throw another bed down for these villagers over here. And then I think we could stack up on some wood for not even just trading, but to actually start on that little farm build, I think would be a good idea. But for now, before we go and do any tree chopping, let me just grab... Where is that enchantment table? Hello? I want to see what enchants I can get. I think it's either 28 or 30 with 14 bookshelves. Yeah, like that's not going to be 30, is it? No, 28. Okay. Not bad, though. Not bad. If I can get oh, efficiency 4 for 28. Ooh, that is... 
tempting. Okay. I'm just gonna go and chop a couple trees down, okay? Do a little bit of trading. Do a little bit of trading. And then uh, hopefully we've got 28 levels so I can get efficiency 4 to chop more trees down. It's a vicious cycle. Okay, very quickly realizing right now that I'm probably not going to be level 33, uh, not level 33, level 28 by the end of today before the sun goes down. So we'll do what we can. And then when the sun goes down, I'm going to kill skellies because I need that dog. Ooh, I might stand corrected. Uh, the arrow trades might just pull me over if I can hurry up and get them real quick. Let's have a look. 26. Ooh, I don't think we'll have enough emeralds. Uh, okay, well, I'll just go and buy a couple crossbows off this guy then. That should pull me over to 28. And then we'll throw the axe in there and call it a day. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful. And you know what? I'll buy that last one because I can. Okay, boom, boom. Boom! Efficiency 4 and Silk Touch. I don't know why I'd need Silk Touch on an axe, but it is what it is. Now, once night fell, I spent some time out in the wilds, aka literally just outside the village because I'm terrified of everything, but I went and killed a few skellies so that I may use their bones to finally tame a dog. Okay, it is finally time for us to go and grab one of these wolfy boys down here. Now, I actually hope that they're still here. I hope that they haven't despawned. I hope that you despawned, though. Go away. Not your friend at all. Don't want to be seen near you. Stay away. Oh, oh, oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. This is a problem. Uh-oh. Hit him. Ah, oh, he's done for. Okay, there we go. Two more bones as well. Lovely. All right, doggies, are you are you around here still? Hello? Did they leave? Oh, no, it's there. Okay, come here. Come here, buddy. I have seven bones. Seven bones. Yeah, look, see? One, two, three. Oh my god, you greedy little guy. Five wouldn't have been enough for you. He took seven. He took a whole lot. Okay, well, at least we have a dog now. I would have liked to get two so that I could breed them and have, like, infinite. But I guess, you know, it is what it is. The first one was too greedy. All right, well, that's today's goal already accomplished. I kind of want to keep him, I was going to say safe, but I'm not really going to be fighting too many things right now. So I'll just, I'll bring him with me. Why not? There's no, no harm in that. Uh, you okay down there, buddy? You look a little bit trapped. Let me heal you up real quick, and then we'll get you out of there. All right, so I actually want to start work on building up a house area very soon. And for that, we're going to need quite a lot of wood because the house design I'm going for requires it. So I think I might spend the rest of today gathering up as much wood as possible. That way, we've got enough to build up the house and do some more trades over the following days without running out and having to come back over here and get even more. So I spent the majority of the day once again tearing through this poor, poor forest to stack up on a bunch more wood to use on my house. Now, I did have a little bit in my chests, but it was nowhere near enough to make any percent of progress on the house. So, uh, yeah, time well spent, I'd say. Okay, all right. That should, uh, that should definitely be enough wood for now. Um, it did take a decent toll on my axe. <laughs> There's no forest left, um, but it's all good because it auto plants saplings, so it'll all grow back soon enough. But that is... I'd say that's enough wood to start get started on the house and uh, get a couple of trays going as well. Yeah, okay. Day well spent. I'm happy with this. I need to go and, like, make more chests and stuff because I do not have storage. Oh, hello. Hello, buddy. What you got for me? Uh, what? What is this? Ew, my guy. That is not good. You're giving me atrocious things right there. What is the point of that? <sighs> well, so much for me working on the house today. I just looked at the reference image I'm going to use, um, and it needs spruce wood. So uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to go and make a boat, and we're going to go and head over that ocean to see if there's any spruce wood over there, because it's better than just running across land, possibly falling into holes and dying. I guess it's out to see we go. If we didn't have enough ocean in the last video. Oh, there's a shipwreck over there. Okay, we'll go check this out then. Slight little detour. Slight little detour. You know what? I'm not too fussed about the ship. Um, I just want to be able to build my house. Okay, I can come back and get the ship later if I want. I'm not dealing with it right now. So I guess we'll just follow the river round then. Uh, see where it leads. Hopefully to some spruce trees would be very nice. Okay, and by the looks of this, I think that we're heading back out to sea by the looks of it. In reality, we do only need one spruce sapling, but uh, I don't know if you can tell right here, but there's um, there's none around. There's, there's, there's nothing around, actually, except a couple squid. Not even anything in the ocean, either. It's literally just kelp. Just kelp everywhere. That's an ocean monument. We don't want to go there. Do not want to be getting wrapped up with those types of people. Oh, spruce trees! Yes! Okay. All right, just keep a wide berth from that monument. We need to kind of remember how far off we're going to the side here because the river I need to follow is, like, in the middle down there back on that land. It's a good thing I brought my diamond axe with me because we're going to need a lot of this wood. 
All right, that should be enough spruce logs. Um, if it's not, then we've got the 57 saplings to boot, so it'll be it'll be fine. Um, I don't want to chop down any more wood, though, so we're going to head back home, and then tomorrow we can start work on the house. Now, after yesterday's dilemma, we have a whole bunch of spruce wood now, which means that we should, hopefully, be able to get to work on our house today. So I'm gonna grab all this, I'm gonna grab the oak wood, and then we're gonna go and find a little area to start building things up. I'm thinking like right, just like right here, where that tall grass begins, like this area is like, almost perfect, I'd say. It's, it's real good, real clear. I don't have to do too much landscaping. It's pretty good. It's close to the village that is probably gonna get torn down within the coming days. And instead of having the village there, we'll have like a, a villager breeder you know, take their freedom from them because, uh, well, I need trades. Because we all know that trades are way more important than their free will. But anyways, on this note, let's throw this crafting table down right here. And let's get to work on the baseline kind of outline schematic of the house. Now I spent the next couple of days building up the frame and the outline of the house. Whilst also being exceedingly careful and watching my step every second to try my best to not fall off and insta-die, you know, down to the fact that I only still have one heart. Don't know why I just said still though, it's not like I'm gonna get any more during this playthrough, it's, it's set to one. But nonetheless, I think I made some pretty good progress over these couple days and uh, managed not to die, so it was uh, all around a win-win. Day 19 was another house building day, because I realized that I'd built it slightly wrong and a few things were off by a few blocks, so I ended up dedicating a good chunk of the day just to repositioning it and correcting the mistakes. And once they were all cleared up, I actually got back to working on the house instead of correcting mistakes I made the day prior. Okay, what a busy couple days that was. Um, I did make a couple mistakes on the house, so took a little bit longer, alright? Got a little bit janky near the end, but we've got it all fixed up now, and that's how it should look. Or at least for now, that's how it should look. It's not going to keep looking like that. So the guy we want to level up today is going to be the uh, toolsmith because I want to try and get um, like a diamond axe off of him because it's just it's the best way to make money right now. All right, buddy. Uh, you are... Oh, God, they're expensive, those. I'll just... I think I'll buy the emeralds, yeah. And then you're going to give me what? Some good trades? Some good trades? Diamond axe? Oh, that is beautiful. That's exactly what I wanted. Look at that. Oh, my days. If I buy two of those, we've got efficiency three. Oh, and we've got diamond shovel two. I will take it. Oh, my God. Look at that. So, is it cheaper this way? Nope, it's cheaper the other way. There we go. Okay, so, now we've got that out of the way. I should have enough paper and enough books to make a bookshelf to finally max out the enchantment table. They go there. I hear a skeleton below me. I think he's in this, like, little... Cave right here. He is indeed in this cave right here. Oh, woof. Okay, so let me just throw these down. Boom, boom, boom. And now we should be getting level 30 enchants. I think for tonight, I'm going to head back down the mines. I'm going to go into these caves over here by the ravine because they were very good to me the other day. And uh, we're just going to go and see what we can find down there. Maybe get a little bit more iron. Maybe find a couple more diamonds. Who knows? Um, so I shall let you know if I find anything useful that's not this zombie trying to kill me. Um, and if not, I'll see you in the morning. Okay, so you know what? Nighttime mining was not very eventful, all right? I found, like, a couple pieces of iron. They're in the furnace smelting down. It was not, um, it was not fun at all. There was really nothing down there except a couple bits of coal and a whole bunch of zombies that just kept getting in my way. So, uh, yeah, last night was not a good one. So now I'm thinking I want to grab this obsidian. I want to grab some flint if we have any. I don't think we do. Then we'll build just a temporary portal next to the house. Hopefully no ghoulies come out of it. Um, but then we can just head in and see basically where our spawn is. I'm not really wanting to be too brave. But I've realized that I'm going to have to go into the nether to get a fire resistance potion which is going to really help with dealing with Blaze. So I kind of just have to bite the bullet and go in. I'm not going to lie. Okay, my favorite biome ever. Amazing, amazing. I couldn't have asked for a better spawn. Oh my God, beautiful. We're in a basalt delta. I'm not going in there. I'm not, that's not happening. No, 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 no. I'm not, no, I'm not doing a basalt delta, man. I hate them. I heard a gas immediately. It's not happening. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so I guess I'll cover the plan a little bit more in depth then. So I'm building the house over there, right? And then I want kind of like a, a path kind of dealio coming out here. Uh, we can have like the villager breeder maybe over there or over there. 
um, have a farm spanning out across this kind of valley area, or soon-to-be valley area when the village is gone. And then we can have other things just dotted around, depending on how I'm feeling and what I want to build. However, thinking about it now, I uh, kind of need to get over the fear of Basalt Delta, so we're just going back in. We're going back in. This is probably a stupid idea, but we're going back in. I'm going against everything, everything I want to do right here. I'm going against it. And there we go. Okay, that's not too bad, is it? That's not too bad at all. Now, the Soul Sand Valley's over there, and then there's a Crimson, just normal biome over there with what looks to be a Bastion in there. I just see a little bit of it uh, spawned in at the bottom. So, to get to there, we could probably go through this way, I think, a little bit. Okay, this is going to be fine. This is going to be fine. This worked out a lot better than I was expecting it to. Now, I do want to find a fortress within a reasonable distance, but I'll also just let us get our bearings in here and actually get a path over before worrying about that. Uh, of course, the 1.9... Oh, there we go. It's gone. Okay, I was about to complain about the 1.19 glitch where the blocks disappear, but it's back. Oh, God, I hear Mr. Stay Puff. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Hello, buddy. That's going to boom. No? No blow up? I live to see another day go away well you look you're scaring me buddy you're scaring me i'm seeing you running around you know doing these swerves doing these these evades these maneuvers i don't like it oh god i don't like that even more though okay can i ah come on come on big boy come on you crying marshmallow oh there he goes he's down he's down all right thank god um, oh there's a warped biome over there amazing uh ruined portal not really too interested in that that's pretty good over there. That's pretty good. Okay, well, I'm happy with the progress we've made tonight. I will come back in here once we've got a few more blocks to start bridging with, um, and then we'll go and look for a fortress. Um, so probably head over to the blue biome and hope there's one over there. I don't know whether or not I want to go take on that Bastion at any point. I might do later, but as it stands for things right now, hello, buddy. Can I get past, please? Can I please get past, please? Thank you. But yeah, as it stands with things right now, uh, I, I'm not going anywhere near that Bastion. I, I know what's in there, and I'm not dealing with it. Plus, uh, the pigments can have crossbows too, so that's just, yeah, no, I'm probably actually never going to go do that. Okay, so today I'm thinking that I want to make my goal to kind of clear off this mound that I've got in front of my house and level it out a little bit. Um, so I probably want to go and buy another shovel or two, combine them up, and then we can speed through it a lot quicker. So I'll go check up on my melon situation, I'll go check up on the farm situation, get a little bit more trades flowing. Uh, and then I'll get back to you once we've got our shovels. Oh my god, I can't believe my luck. So look at this guy, right? Look at this guy. He put his shovels down to... Oh, it was 11, but it's gone down to 10 now, right? And I got just enough emeralds to grab three extras with 11 left, so I could have bought another one, but he ran out. Um, but the that was really good. That was really good. He uh, discounted them literally as I needed him to. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw them all up in this right here and go boom, boom. Efficiency three... And then we'll do the same with this one, which is a little bit expensive. A little bit expensive. And then this is going to be too much, isn't it? Yep, 12 or 12. Oh, God. Okay. Um, I'll do a little bit, a little bit of trading with some of the wood we've got up in here. I can sacrifice a little bit of it. Okay. Oh, come on now. Look how close I am. Look at that XP bar. All right, now we can combine the last shovel and get on with taking down the hill. I just feel like um, like getting landscaping done now is going to be pretty good because then we can just work on whatever we want after. I was worried that we wouldn't have enough time to take this down, but I, I think we do. I think we're going to be just fine. Okay, and then as for this bit, we'll have it go up gradually as an incline right here. So we'll get rid of this. There we go. And then if I just get you out of the way, I should probably actually have you following me around a little bit more because I did go through quite a bit of trouble to get you and you just kind of sit around doing nothing. I'm trying to think whether or not I want to bring this area down some. I think I probably should, right? This would it'd benefit me quite a bit to have this area a little bit more level here. So let's just let's pull it back to about here, I'll say. Oh, all right, there we go. Beautiful. Good day's work right there. And we've also got an extra bed for the uh, the villager breeder over there as well. So it's a it's a win-win situation today. So I'm going to go throw this in here. Um, I'll throw it just, just right there. There we go. You can have a bed now, buddy. Um, if you couldn't, or you you kid, you can have a bed, but you're not going to be able to get to it. Okay, I see, I see, I see, uh, I see what kind of villager you are now, you know? Yeah, just look at this. Look at this absolute vegetable right here, man. Oh! The iron golem's mad. The iron golem's mad. The iron golem's mad. I heard him moving towards me. Uh-oh. 
Okay, okay, uh, I'm staying in my house all day tomorrow. Bye. Whoa, I just started my day watching an Enderman get absolutely smashed up by this golem. Um, did you drop a pearl? Are you angry at me, buddy? Ooh. I fixed you up, remember? I repaired you, remember? Okay, so I'm thinking that... Oh, no, he did drop a pearl. I can't use it, but he dropped it. And I'm thinking we need to get this to kind of go up. I, I, I'm going to say semi-naturally. I don't really care at the minute how it goes up and how it looks. So long as I can get up on a gradient, it's fine. Like, this is not natural in any sense, but you know what? It works, and it's fine. Okay, so we'll start today off by going around and just replacing this stone and, I guess, coal with a little bit of dirt. Um, and then, I don't know. I kind of want to finish my house off, but that's going to take a few days. Ooh, that would have gone bad. Oh, my God. Let me block that up a little bit. Jesus. Okay, that's opened up a decent bit more space now, hasn't it? All right, so I've decided what we're going to do today is we're going to go and finally build up the um, the bone meal farm because I'm going to need a whole bunch of bone meal to continue building my house. So I spent the remainder of the afternoon working on building up an automatic bone meal farm following a tutorial that I found on YouTube that ended up actually becoming really expensive with the amount of iron that I had to use on hoppers. But then after making a very small amount of progress, things came to a halt pretty quickly because I needed some redstone lamps and didn't have the glowstone to make them. So I decided to head into the nether and grabbed a bunch from this massive chunk right here before returning home and heading to bed. Okay, so now that we have the lamps and glowstone, I was going to say that we can go and start building it up again, but I need some more iron because it absolutely bankrupted me yesterday with the amount of hoppers I needed. It really caught me off guard, so... We're going to head down the mine. We're going to go down a way that I've not been before. We're going to go over this way to see if there's anything there. Um, and hopefully stack up on a little bit more iron because I really can't continue on any further because I need more iron. You know what? Skeletons actually aren't that bad to deal with. They're um, You just block and swing and you're pretty much fine. I, li I cannot find any iron in these caves. Um, I'm starting to think that there isn't any. <laughs> oh, God! Now, this can become a problem. This can become a problem real quick. Uh, that's kind of good. There's, you know, a skeleton farmer, a, a spawner and stuff. But, like, um, oh, okay. Wasn't expecting that to be down there. All right. Uh, we'll pay that another visit at a later date. But for now, I'm not going anywhere near that. I literally just need iron and I can't find any. Okay, zombie with a couple of creepers over here. Not really too big of a threat, not gonna lie. Okay, 40 iron. That should be... That should be enough. I'll pick up any I see on my way back out, but I'm not going to go any deeper looking for it. Okay, so now that the iron's smelting down, I'll go and place down the redstone lamps, and then we will get on with making the rest of this build. Now, I hope I can get the majority of this finished off today. Um, we don't need too much more stuff now. It's literally just getting everything uh, placed down and like put down properly in, in the correct places, but I, I don't see it getting done before nightfall. Well, I can tell you this, I 100% know that this isn't getting finished off tonight because I need to go into the nether and get quartz because I need observers for very obvious reasons I need observers so not getting finished off tonight okay we don't need too much quartz we literally just need enough for, I think like six or eight observers so we'll, we'll get this entire chunk and that should be enough Okay, so I managed to make a little bit more progress during the night. I put the hoppers, uh, not the hoppers, I put the observers and the pistons down. So, calm, stop, calm down. There we go, go away. Um, I see you back there as well, buddy. You're not coming to get me. Uh, but yeah, there was really no mobs around last night. There was only these couple of guys that came and stalked me up there, but obviously they can't really get to me. Oh my god, can you die? There we go. So yeah, all we need to do now is we need to put some glass down at the front and uh, place some kelp, and we are good to go. Infinite bone meal um, is literally just mere moments away. Also, I know that that place looks absolutely atrocious with it being a mix of spruce wood and oak wood, but uh, just, just leave me alone. Okay, I ran out of one of the woods. Okay, so now all that's left to do is I throw these down here like that. Place down some redstone like so. And then all we've got to do is just bring some water up here and place it down until we've covered all of these observers. Okay, there we go. So there's the bone meal farm gone and out of the way. Um, I guess I'll go and flatten this area out right here because it's bothering me slightly. And then just patch up this monster of a hole that's right next to my house. I don't know why this is here. Oh, this is the cave I went down earlier to try and find iron. Okay. Well, we're going to patch you up and we're hopefully not going to have anything else to do with you for the rest of this playthrough. Uh, you know what? It doesn't look too terrible from the front on. 
Um, it just, it gets a little bit janky when you look at it from any other angle. All right, so now we've got infinite bone meal. And just give it time. It'll start, you know, actually producing some stuff for us. Now, one thing I do need to work on other than the house is a storage area. Now, the house I'm building has a storage area incorporated in it, but that's not being built yet. So I think we should either A, focus on finishing off the house in the next couple of days, or B, focus on making a little storage area and sorting it out. I'm leaning more towards the house. Okay, so a better idea right now would be to just completely leave the storage uh, alone for now. We'll put, we'll put some stuff away, um, but we'll leave the storage idea alone for now because we don't have the stuff to do it. Um, and then we'll return to that a little bit later. But I think tomorrow is going to be another wood gathering day. Probably dedicate most of the day to it because there's a lot of oak wood we need to get. Plus, I want to stack back up on XP and get a little bit more trading done. Hmm, I'm also debating giving this guy another visit to see if he'll finally give me, like, power. I would take anything else from him at this point. I'd probably take mending over it right now, but I'm too dedicated to hating this man, so he has to give me power 5. Or just any power, really, but he's still... <laughs> He's still just not doing that, I can see. Yeah, you know what? I'm actually going to spend my night here. I'm going to spend my night here with this guy. We're, we're going for round two. Round two! Let's go! Jesus, this guy, man. This guy. Absolute joke of a man. Power three! Oh my god, massive! Huge! Oh my god, it only took you, like, what? Let's have a look. So, about 12,000 years to give me that? Okay, well, we need to stack up on emeralds, so tomorrow will definitely be a tree-chopping day. Day 26, I uh, chop down trees again. A lot of them. All day. Just chopping wood down. Just just chopping at trees. Let's move on. Okay, so we got a decent amount of wood yesterday, um, but I realized that the main one we need is actually spruce, and that bone meal farm has so far generated me a grand total of zero bone meal. However, I think placing these trees down yesterday was a good idea because we've had a couple of them grow, so I'm just going to go and chop this guy down. Uh, and then them two little fellows that have grown there. And then we'll get back to work on the house. Because I want this finished. Because I want the storage area that's there. Ah! Oh my god, that was close. Didn't see him at all. Some could say that he uh, crept up on me. Huh? Crept up on me? Creeping around? Uh, I'm going to shut up. Just, I'm just let me get my wood. Okay. <laughs> oh, there's another big one that's grown. Okay, we'll go grab this one. And then we'll get back to work on the house. Ooh, I didn't want to fall down there. I should really look at getting Feather Fallen for my boots, like, ASAP, because then I can actually tank, like, a good distance of fall. How you doing, buddy? You want a quick repair? There you go. It's not full, but it's the best I can do right now. I don't want to give all my iron to you. Okay, so now we're sitting on a whole bunch of oak wood and four... We'll call it four stacks of spruce, which isn't bad at all. So I'm going to see what I need to do, and then we'll get straight to work. Okay, so we're going to need to bring these bad boys up a little bit. So let's go and do that real quick. And then we put these across them. Okay, there we go. That looks right. By the way, I'm following diagrams now, okay? There was a Google image, but then there was a site that had diagrams, so uh, we're using that now. <laughs> okay, so now we need to bring these across the back and across here as well. And now we actually want to use some oak wood for the first time in about nine years. We can actually use some of this, so we'll fill this in. And then the same on this side. Now, on the images, they use uh, oak wood for this. I'm uh, Oak planks, sorry. So I'm going to use oak stripped wood because I think it looks a little bit better. Now, the actual portal for the nether is supposed to go like right here. So I'm just going to leave a space and I'm going to just put... I might just go and grab the obsidian, but that's going to take a little while. So I'll put some stripped spruce logs here just to remind me that that's for the nether portal. Okay, and now we need to bring the front up a little bit and add some detail to that. All right, and now we get to being able to place some chests down, finally. Um, it's been a little while, but this is the part I wanted to get to today. So we've made good progress. We've made really good progress. Okay, there we go. Finally, we've got some storage. We finally got some storage. Oh my God, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Okay, well, that was some pretty good progress for today. That's looking pretty good. That's looking nice. All right. Well, we'll head home, and then in the morning, I guess we'll get to moving some stuff over there into the new uh, storage area. We also want to go and grab a whole bunch of item frames as well, because then we can use those to actually know what in like what's in each chest. Okay, throw those in there. 15 item frames, and then we'll take over... We'll deal with, like, the ores and stuff first, so, like... Uh, do, 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 do. where is it? The lapis and redstone. 
anything in here iron nugget um and that's we'll, we'll take those for now oh and the dirt as well we may as well we may as well get started with the dirt we've got a lot of that okay and now we'll throw these down on here like this Okay, there's not enough for all of them. I'm going to be missing three, but that's not bad. Okay, so I'm going to sort out all this storage today. Um, I don't know if this counts as storage day. We'll call it storage day 1.0, okay? Because there's probably going to be two, because this is not going to be enough stuff. It's the, it's the prequel. The prequel to storage day is what, what this is right now, all right? But uh, yeah, I'll see you once I've moved everything over. Okay, there we go. It took a little bit longer than I was expecting, but we've got most of the stuff over here now. Really all the stuff that's important. Now that did take, like I said, a little bit longer than I was expecting. Um, and I've also come to notice that this farm is probably one of the worst things I've ever built. Because if you look in here, I don't think you see any bone meal. Now if we take a little, le a little peep in this one, oh, uh, no bone meal. So, um, yeah, not happy with the, um, the capacity of that farm, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, besides, the trees seem to just be growing on themselves, so this really isn't a problem. So I think- Huh? Why- are, are they escaping over here? I I'm sure that they're gonna have to be able to be escaping over here or something, man. Hello, are you all still in here? Some of you- Oh no, you are all in here. I think they're just breeding normally then. Damn, okay. Uh, my toolsmith guy is apparently contemplating many things right now. Uh, don't do it, buddy. You are very useful, even though you're not my toolsmith, I don't think. I think you're the armorer, right? J just don't do it, all right? Don't do it. I need you around, buddy, okay? Uh, yeah, you are my armorer. Yeah, I knew it all along, buddy. I knew it all along. Please come back down to the hole. Please don't jump off the top. Um, so, yeah, I think I might head to bed tonight, and then tomorrow I'll try and get the house finished off. I don't know if I can, um, but I want to try and get the house out of the way because then we can actually start working on the little town we can build up. So I'll head to bed now, and then in the morning we'll do... A a super fast build up of the rest of the house. Now, over the following couple of days, I focused all my efforts on getting the house finished and actually having a place to live that's not just a tiny little rundown house that I evicted the previous villager tenant from. And luckily for me, this house, for the most part, only uses two types of materials that are oak wood and spruce wood, and that's pretty much it. So all of the material gathering and management wasn't a problem, although by the end of day 29, I did run out of spruce wood. So then, on the following morning, I went and chopped down two of the giga trees, and now the spruce shortage is no longer a problem. After restocking on wood, I got back to work on the house, building up the second floor throughout the day, and reaching the third floor and roof by nightfall. Now, I do have to say that this is one of the easiest and simplest houses I think I've ever built, but it doesn't actually look super simplistic. Well, I mean, it might right now, but that's just solely because it's not finished. But once all the glass details and like oak planks and stuff are all on, it will look so much better. Now, eventually, I did manage to get the house finished off by the morning of day 31. And by finished off, I mean somewhat livable without any windows. So I still got to work on that. Sheesh, all right, there we go. That's the uh, the house done for the most part. I still need to add windows and stuff, but uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. It's going to really work well as kind of like the backbone to this little little society I'm wanting to build around here. It's going to be good. It's going to be real nice. Now, the inside does leave some to be desired right now. Just pay, uh, pay no attention to it. The upstairs is even worse. There's just wood kind of thrown all over up there. But the house structure itself is done. And what are you selling, my good fellow? Um, nothing good. Okay. So what we're going to do real quick today is I'm going to store away all of this wood that I've got because I got way too much. But like I said, it's better to have too much than too little. We're going to store away this and then we're going to go and grab a whole bunch of sand. I think actually, no, to be fair, I think I already have sand. Yeah, I have 42 but we're probably going to need more. Um, and then we're going to finish off the windows as well today because, well, I kind of need those in the house, you know, to uh, live in here, at least securely. So I'll just throw that in there and then we'll take our trusty Efficiency 4 shovel down to the beach and dig up a whole bunch of sand. So I'll get this place down what I have now and then we'll just keep going back and forth from the furnace until we are completely glassed up. Okay, and there we go. The windows are all done now. It looks really nice. Um, and it did only take one trip back to the furnace from that point because we just had a load of it smelting down. Now, I have found the fact that I completely forgot to uh, do the bottom bit here. So there's like, you know, just a couple gaps in the house. Uh, but it's all good. I'll, I'll patch those up right now and then we'll see what we can do tonight. I'll probably get to trying to do some stuff with the interior tonight. Okay, so I have worked tirelessly throughout the night, replacing a whole bunch of wooden planks with uh, actual wooden logs, and I think that the detailing now just looks so much better. 
Now, I do want to go around and add, like, a whole bunch of, uh, what they call chains and lanterns and stuff hanging around. I think that'd look pretty good. And then maybe, I'm thinking I want to replace those with azalea leaves. I need to find an azalea first. Uh, and then do something here as well, because these seem quite lackluster. But yeah, all in all, things are looking pretty good. The house is secure now, and uh, we can move in pretty much. I just need to do the interior because it's a little bit empty. Get rid of the greenery that's growing up in here. And then we'll make our little smelting corner. We'll have our smelting area down in the basement, you know, down in the basement. Okay, there we go. Basement done. Uh, I'll throw my bed down on this floor for now. Um, and I'm also going to go and just throw a bunch of these right here because I don't like the fact that that's exposed to the outside. Like, I don't like that I can see through my house because the chests are there, you know? And then just throw my bed there. There we go. Beautiful. What a bedroom. What a bedroom. Okay. All right. So then, for the rest of today, I'm going to store away some of this stuff. And then we're going to go and get a little bit more trading done with the villagers. I'll use my leftover wood to get a whole bunch of stick trades. And then hopefully we'll get enough XP to either A enchant our diamond pickaxe or b get enough levels up to get this guy to sell us a diamond pickaxe that's hopefully got efficiency and possibly fortune on it so i'll get to breaking these down and trading them up and then we'll see where we are when these boyos have run out of trades oh i also just remembered um i was supposed to get power three off of that guy before i started building the house that was half the reason i went to get the trees wasn't it I've only just remembered now oh my god okay well we'll go and get that at, at some point i'm not really in any rush right now Hello, good sir. Hello. I have come for your equipment. Yes. Um, I'll buy another sh... I'll, you know I'll buy another axe, actually. I'll buy two more axes. How's that? Yeah, look at me. Big spender right here. Ooh. Okay. I mean, that's not too bad. I'll, I'll take it over not having one, you know? Oh, my God. How expensive were those axes? Oh, my God. <laughs> they were so expensive. I didn't even notice. Um, okay. Well, we'll get a couple more trades done. I'll buy that diamond pick off him, and then we'll throw just like some shoddy enchants on the one we have efficiency two i mean ah, we may as well we may as well let me go grab my lapis and then we'll throw that on and then we'll call it a day and probably go down the mines tonight okay so we're gonna do boom boom uh that's six how much is that two sheesh oh there goes the anvil oh well we definitely need more iron now okay well in that case then let's start a little mine over here and just head down uh hello <gasps> Ooh, big cave too how do you see me from down there, buddy? Come on now. <gasps> Ooh, have I been? I think I've been down here. There's wood down there. <gasps> oh, it's a mine shaft. I, I don't know why I even thought that that wasn't a possibility. It oh, oh, God. <laughs> sorry. Oh, my God. He scared me so much. Oh, and there's a spider coming too. And there's a spider coming too. Oh, no, 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 no. Ooh, that goes down pretty deep over there. All right, this is definitely a good find. Ah, perfect timing too, because the sun's literally just coming up. Lovely. All right. Hello, piggy. All right. So it wasn't the best mining session ever. However, we do have 56 iron. So that's, you know, 56 more than what we had. Now, while that's smelting down, dare I head down to... Oh, where was the lava? Was it down in the ravine or was it over that way into the one in the forest? I don't remember. I think it might have been over here. So I'm going to go head over here and grab up some more obsidian as well. And then we can deal with the lanterns and build up the nether portal over at the house. Damn, this thing really grew a forest over here, didn't it? Oh my god. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> ah, yeah, the lava was down here. Okay, amazing. Okay, so I'm going to go and grab just like 10 or 12 more pieces of this. So I'll see you once we've got it all. As if mining obsidian wasn't bad enough right now, I've also got hiccups at the same time. And I hate hiccups and I hate mining obsidian. So this is going amazing. <laughs> Oh my god, the worst combination of things. So I hiccuped my way back to the surface and through the forest to the village and got to work on breaking down the old nether portal and rebuilding it over at the new house. Before then spending an ungodly amount of iron, crafting up a bunch of lanterns and chains that I spent the evening placing down all around the house to help really brighten things up. Also, a little update on the uh, the hiccups. I actually took a break after recording this day because they just didn't go away for like 20 plus minutes. Wasn't a fun time. Hiccups are literally the work of the devil. Okay, so waking up today, the house is looking a little bit brighter from the outside now. Um, oh, it's a lovely rainbow to start off the morning as well, uh, but that's looking a lot better. Now, I do want to add like quite a bit more greenery on there just because I'm not really happy with 
it just looks like wood right now so i do want to add some maybe some leaves in between here like i'll try that real quick i'll throw some down real quick uh, and we'll see how they look with like kind of like they're planted in little pots you know okay yeah i think that looks pretty good so i'm thinking over this side where this uh, very not good farm is was generated me one um and one bone meal this entire time it took me three days to build and it's generated me one bone meal so far so that's amazing but i think where this farm is we're gonna tear this down and i think this area is where we're gonna put the villager breeder the house idea i'm thinking of will have an area underneath um, where I might use as like an area of the trade hub um, or the full trade hub itself. So I don't know whether or not I'll combine those two into one. However, we're not going to do that just yet because I am going to go and grab the enchantment table and throw that in the bottom area of the house. Um, but I want to repair this axe first before I do anything. And then I'm kind of thinking that I want to go and deck myself out in diamond armor as well. But then also... To do that is going to require quite a bit of stuff. Okay, we're not going to have much iron left over after this anvil. Oh my days. Okay, very expensive this time around. Okay, how expensive are you going to be? Seven levels. And what about this way? Thirteen levels. Okay, well, I'll take the seven. Okay, so we'll go and grab the enchantment table, and then I'm going to chop down all the giant spruce trees over there, uh, because the amount of logs that we'll get from those, turn them into sticks, and get a load of trading done passively alongside everything, we're going to be making some pretty good bank, which will allow us to buy some pretty good diamond armor at some point. So just in between doing actual things, I'm going to go off and just trade with the villagers and chop down these trees every so often. Um, instead of dedicating full days to do it, I'll just do it passively alongside everything else. Okay, that's the majority of the big ones chopped down, and I think, I just, you know, I, I think we might have enough wood for trading for a little while. So I'm going to go, I'll throw the enchantment table down, and then I'll also run around and just trade a bunch of sticks with these villagers real quick. Um, and then I think we'll tear down this awful contraption right here next. So I'll speed through the trades with these villagers, I'll go and feed the ones in the breeder, and then we'll tear down that thing. It'll probably be night by the time we're tearing that down, but it should be fine. Okay, how are you lot doing over here? I'm assuming that you're gonna need more beds soon. I don't think that you can really have many more villagers, if any. Oh god, grab the protect- What are you do- What is going off? What is this? There we go, one with a brain cell. Oh my god, okay. Okay, and there we go. The awful, atrocious thing is now gone, and now the space can be reused for something that's actually gonna serve a purpose to me. Okay, so I don't know why it's taken me up until right now to realize that my plan about going into the nether and killing blaze can't happen because I need blaze powder to uh, like actually cook up potions. So we can't um, we can't do that. But I mean, we could, but like it's a whole lot of effort. It's just easier. I'll snipe the blaze from a distance, grab some blaze powder, return home, cook up the potions and then go back in. I think is the way that makes the most logical sense. Anyways, today's objective, I want to go out and find some sheep, which shouldn't take too long since we're in a plains biome, um, and I want to shear them, because I need a bunch more wool to make beds for the villager breeder, because trading the sticks that I'm trading per day is just, is not it, it really isn't it. Like, we get good XP and we get good return on, like, uh, with emeralds and stuff, but other than that, it's not too amazing. We could do so much better. So, if we can just find some sheep, there was literally some here yesterday when I was chopping down the trees. Where have they gone? Oh, wait, if that wolf's still around, he'll have eaten them, won't he? I think the wolf cleared him up. Oh, yep, there he is. Oh, well, we can try and tame him. Hello, buddy. Get my guy a friend, finally. Nope, Jesus, man. What does he want from me? Okay, well, I guess we'll head back over this way. We've not been over this way for a very long time. And we'll try and find some sheep over here that hopefully haven't been mauled by wolves. Is that another one down there? Oh, there's a couple around here. Yes. Don't know why I just mocked a sheep. Oh, wow. The plains biome goes on a lot further than I thought it did. <gasps> oh, and there's pumpkins over here, too. Awesome. Whoa. Okay. Back just in time for it to get dark. Amazing. All right. That was a pretty successful day. I only kind of did one thing. But damn, did I do that one thing? Well, okay. We've got some good amounts of wool right there. That's going to make quite a lot of stuff. Hey, buddy. You still selling Power 3? You so I knew it. I knew it. I knew... Whew, you know what? Calm down, all right? Take a moment. Take a moment. Don't think about it and just... Th this is what we're doing again tonight, all right? He's going to sell me power again. I've got the emeralds. I've got the book. I'm buying it as soon as I see it. I personally am saying that I will not because this guy absolutely hates... Oh, well, no, you know what? I just proved myself wrong. Okay, there we go. Okay, pull my stake out of there. Uh, then we go boom, boom, combine those. And then go boom, boom. Uh, no, like boom, boom. And then boom. There we go. Power four on the bow. I kind of want to go test this out on that creeper I saw over there. Creeper, my good friend. How's it going? Right, I'll say two shots. One. 
two. Yeah, okay. So it's better. It's not perfect. I feel like power five would probably one shot. I'm not too sure. Depends on the mob, I feel like. All right, so last night's bow escapades didn't go too well. So I just kind of cowered in here most of the night and uh, did a little adjustment on the upstairs roof right here so that it doesn't look as janky as it did before. It doesn't look as, like, empty, I guess, is what it looked. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, coming up here is... Uh, is not great so we'll just forget about this place this place doesn't exist uh, and we've got a nice second floor now so what i'm going to do today is i'm going to get a little bit more training done we're going to stack up on some more emeralds i think i spent them all and we're also going to maybe head back into the nether and try and search for a fortress a little bit more as well just because i really want to get some uh, nether wart and blaze powder and whatnot to uh, start actually cooking up some potions to help me, you know, survive a little bit more. So we'll start the day off right with a lovely little bit of trading. Hello, good fellow. You didn't restock because you stuck up the ladder. Okay, absolute idiot. Don't like him. Okay, now I think I should have enough, like, blocks and stuff to get through a good portion of the nether safely. Are we still wearing gold boots? Yes, we are. So let me just light that real quick. I thought I set my house on fire then for a second. Okay, in we go. Let's see what we can find. How many arrows have I got? I'll take more with me. Okay, so we'll start making our way through the uh, the basalt delta again then, and hopefully we can get to the area where we once was. Uh, I don't know where we are right here. Oh, no, I see the... Okay, we're higher up than where we used to be, so we need to get over there. Okay. Okay, we're right over where we need to be, so we're just going to get to the wall again, and then we're good, and then we can start looking for a fortress without hopefully getting sniped by a ghast. Would be, would be really nice. Okay, so here is where we need to be again, and then we also want to move... Uh, do I want to go, like, round there all the way around to get to the blue biome, or do I want to go this way? We'll risk it. We'll go around. Why not? Why not? We'll take a little adventure around here. Oh, is that... I think I see a fortress right there. Um, it's not, it's not in the blue biome, but it'll do if it is. Oh, no, it is. Yep, it's a fortress. It's in the red biome, which is kind of sucky, but it could be worse. could be in a base old delta. I guess I'll make my way over there then and uh, see what lurks within. Okay, hello. Let me make myself a little safety area here away from all forms of death. There we go. And by that, I literally just mean wither skeletons. Hopefully there is. Okay, found the blaze spawner. The blaze spawner's here. Amazing. We will block that off like that. Now, I do need to kill Blaze to uh, actually, you know, get the stuff I need. Ooh, there's a few of them up there now. Okay, he's down. He's down too. Okay, he's down. Come on. There we go. There we go. Go, 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 go. Quick, 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 quick. quick. Get rid of the spawner real quick because I've got some rods, but it's fine. I'll find another one. Okay, all right. We can cook potions now. Well, partly. We still need the nether wart, but that's not as scary to get. Okay, I'll mark my way back home as this way, and we will continue in. Now, I actually ended up traversing the endless hollow halls of this fortress for like 15 minutes, and just didn't have any luck finding any nether wart whatsoever, and was very, very close to giving up hope, when I ended up stumbling across this chest full of the stuff, along with two farm rooms right next to each other. Now, just before heading back through the portal, I decided to take on the daring mission of taking out a magma cube so that that way I could grab some magma cream and cook it up into some fire recipe potions but after dealing with the cube of magma i safely returned home so today what we're gonna do is i'm gonna grab my blaze rods and magma cream oh also that nether wart i'm gonna need some of that aren't i um actually you know what let me go and grab a little bit more of this and we'll start a little farm down in the basement as well okay so uh boom 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 we'll make some of those and then we'll get cooking down in the basement We've got a little weird setup down here in the basement. I'm not going to lie. We've got um, <laughs> there's some stuff going off down in this basement. Hopefully those golems don't come down here and find out what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, right. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to break. I'll break one of these down because they don't, they don't eat up much of this. It takes a little while. Um, and then I'll just throw down some water right here. Uh, throw that there and then just get to filling all these up. Oh, you know actually what would be a good idea? If I had like a hopper system underneath the water so when i like filled up a load of bottles it just filter it into a chest i don't know why i've never thought of doing that before but that's like a genius idea oh my god i'm actually impressed with myself with that one okay so we want to cook those up into awkwards and then i think uh we cook them down into fire res boom there we go all right amazing great okay so we're gonna have a whole bunch of fire resistance potions makes the nether pretty much a joke for us now at this point. Uh, obviously, there's still pretty much everything in there that can still one-shot us, but other than that, I think we should be okay. All right, so I'm going to cook some potions up. I'm going to do a little bit more trading this evening, so I will see you all once we've got things cooked up and once I've got a few more levels and a few more emeralds. 
Okay, so last night was uh, pretty good. Didn't get much more trading done, um, but we did max out all the fire resistance potions we can make. Um, and I did have to repair my axe as well because the trees, I didn't notice, but they really took their toll on it. Now, today's objective is I want to see how many beds I can make, which will then see how big I need to make the village of breeder. So they should be in this one, right? Yeah. Okay, we'll do all this wool, see how much we can get from that, and then um, see where we go from there. Okay, all right, so almost a full chest worth of beds. That's <laughs> that's not bad. I'll throw this down. I'll throw this in here. We are gonna need to stack back up on oak wood, and then I guess we can start on building the villager breeder. I kind of want to go and see what design I want to go with. I'm not 100% sure just yet, but I'm sure it won't be hard for me to, to think of one. And we're gonna put it just over here where this uh, disgrace of a farm was. Okay, so I'm going to go take a peek at some designs that I like, and I'll get back to you once I've found the one. Okay, I have a design in mind, um, but it's going to be a little bit bigger than what I was anticipating. Now, it's not massive, it's not massive, but I think fitting it here... Oh, uh, to be fair, no, that should be... that should be fine. We just might have to push this hill back a little bit. Let me see what kind of terrain we've got behind here. How big is this hill? I mean, it's not too bad, to be fair. I could... I could push this back. I could take this down. So push it back to here. I've obviously got this little mini mountain to the left of me here, but that's that's fine. We'll deal with that in due time. Okay, so how this is going to work is I want the back of the build to be like here. Um, I don't know how many blocks wide it is. Let me just go double check that. Okay, so it's 32 blocks wide, which is kind of big. That's bigger than my house, I think. Um, so let's check here how big 32 blocks would be. So one, two, three... 32 blocks wide would be that. Um, that's pretty big, man. That's pretty big. We may have to get rid of a lot more of this hill then. Like, a lot more of it. Okay, well, I guess I could spend like a day or two landscaping it. It's fine. So it might take a little bit more effort, but I feel like it's going to be worth it, you know? So I'll just kind of get rid of as much of this as I can tonight, and then we'll see what we can do in the following couple days. So I spent the night leveling out as much of the ground area as I possibly could, just to try and help relieve some of the work that I'd need to do over the coming couple of days. But honestly, I managed to level out a decent-sized area pretty quickly, so I wasn't too worried about it taking that long. So I started off day 40 by clearing out some straggler skellies from last night, and then once they were gone, the landscaping began. However, this time it involved some renovations, let's say, on the villager houses. And by renovations, I mean I completely leveled them to the ground, leaving no trace of what was there prior. But to be fair, in my defense, I am building them a better one, so I think it's a worthwhile trade-off. After taking down the houses, it was back to leveling the floor, so I worked tirelessly throughout the day in the pouring rain all the way until the sunset, and I called it a day, repairing my shovel before heading to bed. However, my work was far from done, so in the morning I got back to landscaping and managed to get the floor all leveled off by the afternoon of day 41. And now it came time to get to work on the first part of the build, when I realized that the outline that I'm building right now that's 32 blocks wide is actually only the outline of the build and not the house itself. So I didn't really need to level an area this big, but hey, I've done it now, I guess. So these guys are going to be like free range villages or something. I don't know. They're going to have space. Although actually in hindsight, thinking about it now, they won't have access to the space at all because they're going to be contained in two by one trading blocks. So at least they can look at the space, I guess. On day 42, the building continued, but I ended up hitting kind of a rocky patch where I realized that I built the entire thing backwards and was just not having a good time at all, considering that all the progress that I'd just made was going to have to be torn down and rebuilt in the opposite way. So that's exactly what I did on day 43, and by the end of the day, I'd managed to restore all the progress that I'd made the day prior and even a little bit more, but I do think that that's enough building for now. So this is going to be the actual house and then there's going to be an area underneath as you see right here that's going to work as where we're going to put these guys to trade with us, alright? These are going to work as the trade halls underneath here and then the house will be slightly elevated. So for now what I want to do is I want to take a break from that because that was mildly infuriating when I uh, messed it up. But now we want to head into the nether and uh, take the fire resistance potions with us and grab some blaze rods because I do want to start work on making my way to the end and preparing for that. Ooh, there's some- Ooh, hello! How's it going, buddy? And then there should be one more of you left up there, right? Yeah, there you are. Hello, hello, hello. Ooh, there's another one. Uh-oh. Hit each other. Hit each other! This ain't right! There we go. Okay, close calls, but we're good. Oh, here, right here. It should be, right? Yeah, right there. 
Okay, where are those guys? I hear them in the walls. Okay, 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 okay. So let me pop a fire resistance. Where are the ones over here? Like, I hear them right... They're, like, right in this thing here, but I can't... Like, I don't know where they actually are. I don't know. I'll focus on the guys up here, though. This shouldn't really be a problem for me now. Yeah, literally, just sit back here, all right? We'll walk away, let a couple spawn in, and then we'll just come back and snipe them. Okay, seven should be more than enough because we've got a couple up back at the house. So there we go. All right, we're kind of set on blaze rods. All right, so now that we've got our blaze rods and stuff, I was going to do some more trading with the villagers today. But I'm thinking, what's the point in building a trading hall if I'm not going to, like, you know, trade with them in the hall? I'm just going to do it in their little crappy little huts that they've got right now. So I'm going to check how much wood we've got, which we're not looking amazing on. I'm not going to lie. I thought that this would do a lot more than it has. Well, we need to go grab a little bit more wood. And then we shall begin again on the build. I just want to get it out of the way. It should be done within the next day or so. Um, it really shouldn't take too long. After chopping down the oak trees, I got back to work on the building, adding a wooden log beam all the way around the pillars, and then filling in the first floor with birch planks, which I think is actually the first ever time I've used birch in this video. It did used to be my favorite wood, but spruce has kind of toppled it as of this past year. All of my builds have pretty much involved spruce, not birch. But anyways, let's get back on topic. After I finished off the floor, I began an outline for the stairs that are going to lead up all the way to the first floor. Then I just went around and added some details on the hollow bits at the bottom before calling it a day. However, on the following day, I actually decided to do some more building because I really did just want to get this thing finished off as soon as possible so that I can actually use it and it not just sit here with villagers that have already been traded with. But anyways, I actually got to work on building up the house part of it today and it wasn't anything too complex. It was really pretty simple. That was until I got to the roof and did make a couple of mistakes throughout the night. But eventually, by the morning of day 47, the trading hall was finally done, and now it came out looking okay. It's not the greatest build I've ever done, but it'll house them, and it'll look good enough for now. So, yeah, it's done, finally. Okay, there we go. Now, this isn't finished still, all right? But hear me out, all right? Um, It's good enough to have the villagers in here now. We can just bring them in with boats, throw them down in here, and then they can't get out, or they shouldn't be able to get out from behind here. I don't think they can jump that. That's, like, impossible. This... Is pretty much impossible for them to. They're not the brightest of people. So my plan with this area is to kind of have these support beams in the middle and then have little trade hubs and just trap them in there. I was going to have an area behind them where I could like move them about, but it, it's just not big enough. But this works pretty well. I just need to replace the floor and tidy it up and add more wood. But other than that, it's pretty good. So what we can actually start doing now, and I should probably get rid of this fence right here so we can get people in here, is I want to kind of get them up here, which I've now realized could be a slight problem because we don't have any um, way of getting up there because I don't think a boat can do that, right? Uh, can you go upstairs? No. Okay. Um, in which case then, I think we have some soul sand, so I could make a little elevator. All right. And then we throw the kelp down. Uh, I need water down first for, to do this. There we go. Throw the kelp down. Get some bone meal and go boom, 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 boom. Oh, God. Okay, that's that's quick. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Just, just go in the boat. There we go. There we go. You come over into this corner. Okay. So, <sighs> okay. I don't need you guys in the same boat. Okay. I just need one of you in this boat. Oh, this is this is not good. This is This is the m worst thing I've ever done. Okay. I need one of you. One. Right, you in that boat. Go on. Go on. Get in. There we go. All right. Now this can work to our advantage. We can just open this up and now we can just take them out wherever we want. And I think this should be the same level as... Oh, no. My house is a little bit higher. Ooh. Okay. Uh, you know what then? I've got pistons, so I'll just set up a little temporary piston system. God, this is a lot of work for Villa to trade in. Okay, and now this should... Should work. There we go. Okay, buddy. Get ready for the ride of your life. Oh, God. Ah, uh, now you see, I didn't... What? What is happening? What is happening right here? Hello? What, what, what just happened? No, I did all that. I worked so hard. You're getting in this boat. No, no. Please. Please, my guy. Please, 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 yeah, 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 the boat, the boat, the boat, no! Why do you turn around when I'm about to put you in the boat? Get in the boat. Get in the boat. Uh, oh, no. Oh, God. If you, I mean, if you go up there, then I can just put you directly. Yeah, 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 stay there, stay there, stay there. In the boat, in the boat. Why can't I place it? Stupid grass, get out of the way. Get in. Yes. Okay, great. 
we are safe. We are saved. I can just take him up the other side. It's all good. It's all good. And go, 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 go. Why won't it? Why won't it send him? Why won't it send? What is he? This is not going well. I'm not going to lie. Oh, you've returned to your home, have you? Well, guess where you're going? Back in the boat. Right, so we're up, we're up, we're up. And he's off. Okay. What? what why are you doing that, buddy? What is doing? What? Okay, okay. This ain't happening. This ain't happening. I'm calling it a day. I'm calling it a day. Um, I'll fix something up tomorrow. I, I can't with this right now. I've wasted a whole day on that. Okay, and behold my genius. Um, I literally just did the exact same things from down there and put them up here. I was going to do this in the first place, but I thought that the water thing would be faster. Turns out that this old reliable system, still the same way to go. So, we're going to take this half a villager, apparently, because his uh, legs aren't there. We're going to take him up here, and we're going to have him the first villager in our little breeder slash trade hall slash prison. <gasps> oh, look at that. That was beautiful. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. Perfect movement. Perfect control. Now, I do want to go and add, like, some leaves and, like, plants and stuff up there just to make it look a little bit less barren. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to focus on getting the villagers over there because, I mean, it's going to take a little while just down to the fact that I have to do it through boats. Okay, amazing. Right, so now we can bring over some of the other little guys as well. Um, I kind of want to get rid of this path for now and just have it standard dirt just so I don't have to mess about with uh, pulling them up another level. Okay, and here we are. Now, we don't actually have that many trading villagers, I've just realized. Um, and also, one of the Fletchers ended up dying, and this guy took his place. Um, he got infected by a zombie, so he's gone now, but he's replacing him. Now, underneath here, we've got our librarian, our Fletchers. Oh my god, could you please be quiet? So loud. As I was saying, under here, we've got our Fletchers, librarians, a toolsmith. Oh, I forgot about the armorer guy, but that's fine. We'll, we'll get him later. And this is how things are going to be set up. I've made a little dummy area right here. This is how we're going to have things set up. We're going to have redstone lamps above here like that. Look how beautiful that looks. It looks pretty good, right? It looks pretty good. Uh, you go away. You can go near my villagers. Thank you very much. And we're going to have them lined up all along here, and we can just keep trading with them whenever we want to. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time tonight making sure that all the Fletchers and stuff are in their uh, respective places. I'll get this librarian set up, even though we hate him. Um, and then we'll just go on from there. Oh, would you look at that. Another rainbow to start the day off. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, right. So last night, I got all these guys situated into their facilities and today we're just going to be pretty much just sprucing them up a little bit getting a couple trades done if we can um and also making some more redstone lanterns because that is really not enough although on the topic of that i'm pretty sure i don't even have enough redstone to do that so that's uh, also going to be something we need to do there we go look at that beautiful um i don't know whether or not i want to actually have those like that or maybe have them come down to from here and then they go up one right like that like, how does that look compared? Okay, there we go. Yeah, that does look a little bit better. And then, I mean, if I wanted to, I could add just, like, some little stairs here like that would be okay. It'll just make trading a little bit janky, but that does... Yeah, that's a nice trade hall feel. That's that's nice. That's nice. I uh, I like this. This is this is good. So I'll do the same for this side over here real quick. Okay, so now that all that's done, what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the farm, harvest all the crops, and we're going to start breeding the villagers up top to uh, actually get some more trading going with the ones down bottom. Oh, God, there's a witch. Oh, my. Where did the... What? Hello? Where did the witch come from? Uh, well, there's a witch over there now. Okay, that's nice to know. Could have just been insta-killed right there. So, now what I want to do is I want to just double check if we do have any redstone. I don't think we do. Uh, we have one. Okay. Uh, in that case, then, let me just throw some of this wood away in here. And then we'll head back down the mines in search of some redstone. Why is there two iron golems down here? You okay, buddy? Them guys up there got too much for you. I, I, I sympathize, buddy. I sympathize. Right. Let's hope that there is some good, good redstone down here. And I don't have to be looking all night. I would really appreciate just finding some, you know? Wouldn't mind stumbling across some iron while I was down here as well. That would be um, even nicer because I'm pretty low on it. I have three. Okay, if I was redstone, I personally would uh, situate myself a little bit further down and to the left. That's a dead end. <gasps> yes! Okay, brilliant. Uh, there was literally an unexplored cave area that I'd like walked over earlier uh, and didn't want to go down it because it was dark. Um, but now I am slightly more confident in myself. We are here, and there's redstone in it, so that's great. <gasps> oh, there's even more redstone. There's also skelly over there, too, so don't come close. Don't do it. Ooh. Okay, well, I was going to go get that redstone, but I don't think that that literal army of creepers is uh, is worth it. Not going to lie. Not, not going to go down there. 
What a night that was. So we had actually a pretty good mining session down there. We got a little bit of iron restocked, a little bit of gold, and the most important thing for now, a couple stacks of redstone. Well, almost a couple stacks. So what we're going to do straight away is I'm going to grab my, where is my glowstone? There it is. Lovely. And we're just going to craft up like a whole bunch of redstone lanterns. I don't know exactly how many I need. I think 31 should do the entirety of the villager breeder area thing. Oh, I don't even have enough to make 31, but 28 should be should be enough. Hello, my fellow villagers. Hopefully none of you got, like, jumped in the night and turned to zombies. I don't know how you would have, but hopefully you didn't. Nope, we're all looking good. Okay, beautiful. So I'll lay these down up here. All right, there we go. Look at that now. Much brighter down here. Now, there is still quite a lot of stuff I need to do down here, obviously. I need to get more villagers up in here. I need to get the actual floor done, and I need to add some more lanterns around. But other than that, I think this is coming along pretty well. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to make some of these real quick and then I'm going to go and grab my armorer and then bring him into the trader hall as well. And then I think over the next couple days we'll start making some progress on getting our full decked out diamond armor and hopefully enchanting it with some good stuff. So we'll need probably a couple more librarians and uh, maybe a couple more fletchers depending on how the XP goes. I don't know. Okay, buddy. Where are you? What? Hello? Are you in here? Hello? Huh? What happened to my armor? What? Did he did he actually jump down? Absolute madman. Okay, well, you know what? We can make another armor. I will use one of you up there. Well, buddy, it's your lucky day. You're coming with me. Uh, no, come back. Come back. No. I want you. I don't want anybody else. Oh, fine. You, 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 you. Get in. Yes, get in the boat. Get in the boat. Get in the boat. Go on. Go on. Yes, there we go. Good. Oh, great. Now he's stuck in the boat too. Amazing. This is exactly what I wanted to happen. Um... I can't do anything about this. Yes, go down there. Go down there. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. There we go. Okay, I've saved one. If the other guy goes and gets lost somewhere, then I don't really I don't really care. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I don't really care. Yes. Okay, right. Uh, we do need to level him up again, but that's that's fine. Uh, you, if you're already wanting to trade me things, let, where's my boat? Where's my boat? Did I get my boat back? I don't have my boat. Do you, have, do you still have that? Ah, yeah, it's still in there. Okay, no worries, no worries. You can keep it. It's a little souvenir. You can you can keep that with you and remember how you got here, you know? You, however, good sir, shall be going in this boat. Yes. So we're four Fletchers strong right now, popping off on them. All right, so it is getting dark now. So what I'm thinking is we head to bed and then in the morning... We can go get a whole bunch more trees because I think we are kind of low on wood. Yeah, we're not looking too great and there's not really too much in there. And then after we've grabbed our wood, we can trade with the villagers and make some more bank and then start leveling up the armor guy again. Oh, and there's yet another rainbow to start off the day once again. All right, so how much wood is all these trees going to give me? I'm going to take all these spruce trees down, every single one of them, or at least mainly the big ones. Oh, hello, buddy. I heard you groaning around the trees. I didn't actually know where you were, but I don't know how you got all the way over here. You've really, like, ran out of the nether, haven't you? Oh, my God. Right, okay, so that is all of the trees, excluding a couple of the small ones. My axe is not looking too great. However, we should be able to get a decent chunk of trading done with these. Any trading goodies in here? Okay, we have a stack of emeralds. Okay, okay, okay. We've got a little bit more than I thought we did. Okay, hello, good sirs. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, so from all of that trading, we only did three of them, uh, and they've not refreshed. Oh, no, they have just refreshed. Okay, wait, I'll be back to you once I've traded it with those as well. Okay, so I thought I was recording that, but apparently I wasn't. Uh, we went and traded with this guy for a little bit, uh, got a whole bunch of trades done with him, and now he sells diamond armor. Not a full set, because I'm not leveling him up fully, because he stopped trading me helmets. But we did manage to pick ourselves up some diamond leggings with unbreaking one. So, uh, yeah, that's where we're at right now. So before we call things a day for today, I'm going to go and trade the rest of my em well, I say the rest of my emeralds, however many it takes to get a full set of diamond armor from this guy, and then I don't know whether or not I want to focus on getting like a couple more librarians, and then focusing out on protection 4, feather falling as well, just solely then I know what I'm going to get, and I'm not wasting XP on the table, but at the end of the day I'm not too fussed either way we do it and then you're going to give me 18 and 22. I don't know if I can afford that. So I'm breaking three. Oh, I don't need the chest plate. So yeah, we just need the helmet. There we go. All right. Full set of diamond armor. Looking very, very fresh. Look at that. Woo! Finally. Like what? Day 52? Day 51? Jesus. Okay. Which one of you is going to be the lucky one to come downstairs with me and be my protection for guy? I'm not feeling you. You're just kind of chilling on the bed. You seem lazy to me. As a matter of fact, you'll do perfect. Get in the boat. Get in the boat. There we go. Okay. 
Bye. I should probably go out the other door, to be fair. They're all gathered over here. Stop. Just stop being dramatic. Come on, man. It's a little bit of wall suffocation. You know, we've all been through it. So I guess I'll see you when we actually end up with something that we want. Oh, I see. Look at the sea straight away. He's going to be like the other guy. You better not be, buddy. You better not be. Ooh, Feather Falling 2. Okay, you know what? I'll take Feather Falling. I'll take Feather Falling just solely because then I can combine it and then that's already out of the way. If I get this trade out of the way quick enough, we'll be able to um, actually go and grab another villager from upstairs and bring them down to trade for Protection 4 as well. So we'll end up getting both of them out of the way on the same day. That would be the most optimal thing I could do right here. Hello, I know you leveled up. I don't really care. I just want your emerald. There we go. You too. Gimme, 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 gimme. Okay, buddy. Give me... Oh, you're 22. Jeez. Okay, right. Well, I'll grab two of them then. I'll get Feather Falling 3. Uh, I can't really level you up anymore. So we've got Feather Falling 3. We need two more, and then we've got Feather Falling 4. Okay. Right. Let me just go uh, kidnap another one of these guys up here. We're not going to put up a fight, are we? We're just going to get in the boat. We're just going to get in the boat. There we go. And then hopefully no one comes out of those doors. That's where making our escape. Oh, someone literally came out of the doors. Nope. Nope. No, no, no. No. Why? Why? Throw you down here like that. Oh, you're already, you're already doing it. Okay. I'll just keep you in the boat then while I do it if you're wanting to do it this way. Yeah, this was, makes my life easier. Don't have to block you in or anything. <gasps> there it is. Oh my god, straight off the bat as well. Okay, so I'll lock his trades in place. That is a little bit expensive, not gonna lie. I'm not too happy about that one, but at least, at least we've got a protection trade now. Uh, 23, man, that sucks. That really, really sucks. Uh, I do have, thinking about it now, I do have the pumpkins and stuff in the house, so if I can go and trade those real quick, maybe I'll be able to get enough. I highly doubt it, but it's worth a, it's worth a shot. Hello, Creeper. You stay right over there. Thank you very much. I was going to go trade them tonight, but this village has uh, quite a few skellies in it, so we're not going over there right now. So the first objective today is... Oh my god, wait, hang on a minute. I had a whole chest of spruce wood here from... I don't even know when, but it's here, and I also have bugs as well. Oh my god, okay, that's going to be super, super useful. All right. Now, as I was saying, I do want to go and... Uh, go away. Go away. Go away. There we go. I want to go and trade some things with you, my good fellow, because I don't know if you're... Yeah, you're taking pumpkins. Lovely. All right, and then you're taking melons as well. Brilliant. So it is protection three, which means that I'm going to have to double down every time I get it. Oh, yeah, no, this is going to be... This is going to suck real bad. So we can get... That's one protection four. Yeah, we're not really going to make too much progress with that. Can I just get the feather falling out of the way then? Right, let me just go throw some stuff in the anvil, and we'll see what we can do. All right, so I know that that chest plate is already protection three, so we've got two of those... I didn't buy a third, did I? No. Okay, so it's kind of pointless putting that in there then. So what we'll do is we'll combine Feather Falling 2, get Feather Falling 3. And then if I put that on my boots and then I add another Feather Falling 3, it'll make it Feather Falling 4. So I can just do that. I don't know if that'll be more expensive to do though, probably. We'll get Protection 4 on the chest plate. And then we'll also get Protection 3 on our leggings as well. No, actually, it'd be a good idea to put them on the boots as well, wouldn't it? If I did that, and then I got my boots, because if I get protection on my boots, it helps with feather falling, I think. I'm not too sure. That was a little bit expensive, but now, look at that. Okay, protection four, protection three, and breaking three. Okay, we're not looking too amazing, but it's better than it was. And now, at the very least, I can tank falls like double or triple the distance. And yeah, look, it didn't even do anything to me. I was slightly scared doing that. Okay, one last check to see if you guys have refreshed. You have and you're scamming me now. Okay. Okay, so 47 is enough to grab two. I think I need two more of these, right? Oh, do I have Feather Falling 4 on my boots? What do I... What happened here? Oh, okay, so I need to add... Yeah, I could have just put the Feather Fallings together and then put the protection on. I didn't think of this for some reason. Okay, so I've kind of just made that a little bit more expensive, but that's that's fine. May as well grab another protection three. Okay, we're going to give trading a break for now. And I'm just going to go and work on a little kind of garden area outside for the villagers. I also want to do up the outside of my house and the area surrounding it a little bit as well. I'm thinking pathwise, I might go with like a cobblestone diorite. Is it diorite, the gray one? Oh no, andesite, andesite. Cobblestone, andesite, and maybe gravel mix for the path. I think that would look pretty good. Don't really know how much cobblestone and andesite I have. Yeah, okay, well, there we go. We've got no andesite. Ooh, we've got tough as well, but does tough look like cobblestone at all or like andesite at all? I think it's like slightly darker, right? Yeah, but I mean, that still looks pretty good, right? Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to head down here for tonight into the mines, and we're going to see if I can find any andesite lurking around. 
Okay, so yeah, we'll, we'll grab the stuff that we need to make the path and whatnot. Um, we'll grab some coal while we're down here. And then in the morning, we'll start making things look a little bit nicer and adding some more depth and decoration to things. All right, nighttime mining went pretty well. Um, I did get a little bit of coal, like I said I would, and six pieces of iron, which I don't actually remember picking up, but we've got them. Now, I think this should be enough andesite and gravel. Uh, maybe not enough gravel, but we should be okay either way. What we want to do is we'll take these over here and then we'll start work on a little path. Now, I don't know whether or not I want it to be like completely like solid three blocks all the way around. I think that might look good, but then it'll make it look kind of new and less rustic. So I don't know. We'll, we'll test out this little area here with the full path. And then if that don't work out, we'll try something else. Uh, to be fair, that's not too bad. So we'll do this for the whole path then, and we'll see how it comes out. So I need to take this directly down the middle, which, oh, that's already lined up perfectly, isn't it? So we'll get rid of this. And I think maybe when we get to like here, we'll stop the normal path and add like a nice stone brick floor design. I think that would look pretty nice. All right, I'll see you once we've got some more paths down. Okay, there we go. That's looking a little bit more decrepit now. Um, I'm not too sure, though, about the cobblestone. I think I might think about replacing it with normal stone because I think that might look a little bit better. Now, for these little bits, I'm thinking we could add... Oh, I don't know. Would a tree look good here? Like a small little tree? I don't want to make it too noisy, but I think that would look pretty good. And then maybe some, like, little ponds. I do like my little ponds. Uh, I could do with some lily pads, to be fair, for those, but... It's not the end of the world if I don't have them right now. All right, so pond-wise, I'm thinking maybe two little ponds. Uh, not symmetrical, not symmetrical. We don't want symmetry in here, even though everything else is symmetrical. But I think we'll go, like, kind of around like this and over here a little bit. Bring it down around there like that. And then kind of back on itself here like this. Is that like a perfect circle? No, it's not, but that actually looks pretty good, to be fair. There we go. That's quite nice. Especially with a little bit of, like, greenery around it. Maybe a little bit of bamboo, too, if we can find some of that. That'd be real good. There we go. Okay. And then maybe a little tree over here. It would be nice to get an azalea, but I understand that, you know, we might not find one of those. So we'll put an oak tree there for now. And then maybe another oak tree right over here would be would be very nice. Now, on day 55, I started work on the interior floor of the trading hall and couldn't really decide on a pattern that I wanted to go with. But eventually, after some trial and error, I found something that I kind of liked and looked good enough to finish off the floor with. Once the floor was done, I got to work on adding an actual entrance to the hall itself. And now I'm not a massive fan of how this turned out, but it will do for now. After all the stuff with the trading hall was done, I did some work on the beginning of a pathway Way leading from my house to the villager breeder before going to bed and spending the majority of day 56 gathering materials and finishing off the path for now. And I'm not gonna lie, I really do think that everything is kind of coming together pretty nicely. The path is really starting to just connect things together, which is like the entire point of a path. But yeah, so it, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. All right, so last night and the day before, we got a little bit of stuff done inside here. It's looking pretty good. I'm not too sure about this entrance though. We may have to tweak that, but the actual interior of here now is done for the most part. I don't know what I'm going to do with this bit right here. Probably, I don't know, I'll have a gate or something if I do level this area out. I have no idea. But other than that, we've got this little path now leading from our house to the actual breeder. Um, and it might look a little bit janky right now, especially from like a bird's eye view, but that's just solely because I need to fill in the, uh, the rest of this one over to the mine and then actually build up like a little mine area. I saw a really nice design a few months ago and I've still not got around to building it, so we'll probably use that for that one but i think for now i want to go and finish up my trades for protection four and then we also want to start work on getting ourselves some ender pearls because we are wanting to head there i would say somewhat soon within the next 20 days would probably be a nice number to shoot for and I also would like to get some slow falling potions as well, because I mean, it's kind of stupid going in there without them. Like if I can get them, especially with one heart, it's kind of stupid going in there without them. So yeah, we may as well grab some of those before we head in as well. Oh, there goes the axe. Okay, I didn't pay attention to that. Well, we need another diamond axe now. So I'll go grab myself a new axe. I'll finish chopping down those trees. Probably a couple more will grow in the meantime. And then we'll get straight to trading once we've got all the stuff we need. I guess while we're here though, we can just break all this wood down that we've got and get this traded up. Okay, trading time. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Yep, there we go. There's like half the sticks gone already. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so level 28 from all this trading. Is anybody else going to refresh? Are you going to refresh? No. Okay, well, we definitely need more Fletchers still. But this will do for now. I mean, that's like a couple. I think that's like three or four books. Okay, so we've got two more Protection 3s. 
One more protection for total. Okay, all right. Okay, Anvil, how many uses you got left? You're not looking, yeah, you're not looking too great. Okay, so first things first, we'll get Feather Falling 2 and Feather Falling 2. Throw them bad boys in there. And then you, ooh, that's expensive, man. Okay, right. And then we'll do protection three, protection three, get protection four. Lovely. Is that, that's protection four already. So we'll go for the, okay, I can throw that in there, but I don't think I've got, yeah, I do not have enough levels for that. Um, but I can probably get away with my leggings, right? They've not really been in the anvil before. Protection four, yeah, there we go. Okay. And then we've got Unbreaking 3 on the helmet, so we don't really need to do too much more, actually. We need two more Protection 3 books, and then we're done. Um, and I think that's about it. I mean, I could get, like, Aqua Efficiency or Depth Strider, but I'm not really too fussed about those. Oh, all right, okay. So I'll spend the rest of the evening chopping down the rest of these trees over here, as is customary for this video. And then hopefully tomorrow we can get the last of the trading done for the armor. And then I can't really think of too much else I need to trade for directly. All right, so let's just get to trading up all of the wood we have on us here, or at least the amount that will allow us to trade with them. And then we'll grab the last books and then be done with it. And then probably head into the nether to go and grab some pearls, because there was a blue biome earlier. So we'll go check that out. We'll grab the pearls from there and then we'll start making our way to the end okay buddies wh why have you not refreshed hello please refresh you refreshed no no one refreshed I, I i can't afford anything please please refresh i beg uh can i have trade like anything else flint perhaps no you got any trades paper maybe but we don't even have that much sugar cane i never upgraded the farm refresh please one more that's all i ask i just literally need one more and then you have like no use to me beautiful okay thank you buddy I think, I think that should be enough for the last two books. Do we even have, I only have one book on me. Is there any more in here? Okay, uh, you? Yes. Okay, one and two. Yes, we're finally done with it. I don't know if I'm going to have the XP to put these things on, but if we don't, I'll do some more trading, I guess. I still need to replace the floor down here. It's still just an absolute mess. I don't like it. Okay, so boots and a helmet. So if I go boom, boom. Oh, God, that's so expensive. Okay, all right. Maybe let's not do that then. And we'll throw protection four there. Go boom, boom. And then there we go. Okay, so we've got prop four in the helmet. We just need the boots that are set at protection three. So, you know, it could be worse. It could be worse. All right, so the, the bow is not doing too well. Oh, hello. Welcome. Welcome to my house. Uh, do you want to go in? You want to go inside? Come on. You're welcome. Go on. Go on. There we go. Got a friend now. Oh, I also need to go and get my dog from the nether. <laughs> it's just been sat in there the whole time, and I'm not really too... Like, I just keep forgetting about it. I went through so much hassle to get that dog, and now I just don't, like, have him around. Okay, so the objective then is to go and grab some pearls. I would like looting for this, but it's fine. They're going to drop them anyway. Okay, so we're going to make ourselves a golden helmet, and we're going to head straight back into the nether and go and grab ourselves some pearls. Oh! Oh! Oh my god! Oh! That was so close! Did you see that? He hit me and he didn't kill me! He hit me and he didn't kill me! Oh! Ah! Help! Help! How am I not dying? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Did he just go through the portal again? Oh my god, I am so scared! I am so scared! They did not do like any damage! Damn, dude! Protection 4 helps! I thought I was done! That was. Oh! <laughs> God, that was so close. Okay, well, at least I know I can tank things now. I, oh, my. All right, I need a minute to recover from that. <laughs> I wonder where the baby zombies that chased me into my house went. There was also a big one in here, too. I don't know where the hell he came from. <laughs> All right, so with the uh, the rude introduction back to the nether out of the way, uh, I'll head over to this blue biome over here and see if we can find ourselves some endermen. Okay, right, that should be enough. I think we actually had a couple of homes. We didn't need to go and grab all 12, but we have them now. So we'll head back home, craft up the eyes, and then I guess we can go and head out and see what we can find. Okay, so apparently we only had one eye back here, but that's fine. It should be okay. I think we'll get enough from these. Yeah, 18. Boom, boom. There we go. All right. So I think... If I take enough food with me, I mean, I'm not going to go into the end right now, but it'd be nice to find the fortress, I think. So I guess we'll just throw an eye out and see where it goes. Okay, that's kind of swerved then, didn't it? Don't break, please. Thank you. All right, well, I guess I'll grab a little bit more wood and then we'll head out and uh, see where this fortress is. Oh, stronghold, I should probably say. All right, so we'll throw this over here. Where are we going? Straight over the ocean. Beautiful. Okay. 
Okay, new land. Lovely, lovely. I'll, uh, I'll pop another eye over here to see if it is in this region or whether or not I've passed it in the ocean. I hope I've not passed it. I really hope it's not underwater, but we'll find out. Okay, boom. Where'd it go? Okay, we're still going this way. Okay. Oh, another village. Hello. Oh, there's a blacksmith in there too as well. Hello. What have you got for me? What have you got for me? Ah, oh, okay. Two pieces of iron and a couple apples. All right. Amazing. Okay. I don't know what I expected. Okay. Have we passed it yet? Because we've been going a little while. No, it's still over this way. Okay. All right. I can't believe it. We found like one village this entire time. And then walking this way, we find two back to back. Crazy. All right. This seems like a good enough place to throw an eye. We still going? Are we? Oh, we passed it. Okay. All right. So it's around here somewhere. Don't break. Thank you. Okay, we'll go a little bit over here then. Is it like around here? Back this way, okay. Okay, so it should be around here, right? No, it still tell me this way. What? I'm literally back to that other village right through it. Wh where are we going here? Did I go down? Oh, well, we're going down. It's right here. Oh, hello. Anything? Oh, oh, there's not some good stuff down here. There's some bad stuff down here. Okay, right. We're in a cave. This is the way out of the cave. It should be... Oh! Oh, no. Oh, no, that is not what I want down here. Um, I, I think the eye malfunctioned. I think you led me to the wrong place. I did not want to be anywhere near this blue shiny skulk. Please don't tell me. Okay, I think this is just like a little skulk patch. I don't know the dangers associated with such things. I never really come across them, but I see it. Pickaxe has seen better days at this point. I hope to God we don't fall down into something bad. Ooh, lava right there. Hello. Hello. There's nothing bad awaiting me down here, is there? Surely he can only spawn in the cities, right? Surely. Oh, oh. go away. Go away. Stronghold. Hello. Hello. Where is this stronghold, man? I do not see any form of a stronghold right here. I might have to go deeper into this cave over here. Huh. Oh, but it's just you. Hello. Okay, I think I've found it. I think I've found it. I think we're right underneath some area of it. There we go. Okay. Uh, ooh, a library. Hello. Perhaps sharpness. Perhaps looting. Hmm. Oh, there's the spawner. Not the spawner. The Yeah, technically a spawner, but I meant the portal. There we go. All right. How many eyes do we require? Okay, we need 11. Yeah, so we just need two more. Uh, maybe we could find a pearl in this chest over here. Would be nice. I hear a skelly somewhere around. Ow! Oh, you're up there. Hello. Where's the chest? Oh, it's literally where I came in. Okay. Any eyes? So we've got efficiency four. I'll take that and multi-shot and then just multi-shot as a whole. Pass up on that one. Okay, what we've got in here, efficiency four again. Amazing. And multi-shot loyalty three. I'll pass on that one, my good friend. Okay, we'll have a little look around this place to see if there are any more, like, uh, pearls lurking around. Because then I can actually get the portal up and running now. But if we can't find any, it's not the end of the world. I will just grab some when we go back home. Because we're not actually heading in there now. Just down to the fact that I really do need slow falling potions. Because without them, I, it's literally going to be over real quick. I'm not going to lie. My bucket clutches aren't terrible, but they're not 100%. Fire protection 3 and power 4. Ooh, that means we can get power 5 in our bow. What do you have for me, good sir? Ooh, damn. I'll take another efficiency. I'll take them all. Uh, get rid of you. And then what have you got? Mending. Ooh, big. All right. Throw the gold helmet in there. We ain't need that. Another dead end. Okay. And if I follow you down, are you going to lead to a dead end as well? Ooh, no. You lead to another chest with a pearl. Oh, yes. Amazing. Great. Okay, right. So we've got the eyes we need now. God, could you imagine running through one of these things, right? When it was like covered in skulk. It's right next to an ancient city. I don't even know if they can spawn like that, but just, just imagine that. That'd be absolutely awful. Okay, so this is the chest we came in and got initially. So the portal should be just through here to our... Nope, that's a dead end. Should be just through here and then to our right after this little door right here. Yeah, there it is. Okay, great. So we'll get this bad boy lit up right now. Make sure to not accidentally head in. That was very loud. And then I guess we'll head our way back home. We've been out here like a couple days at this point. Um, I'm going to have to condense that down quite a bit because that took a very long time. But I guess we'll head back home. I'll dig up directly from next to the portal. I've already got the coordinates written down. And uh, I'll let you know if anything interesting or important happens on our way back. But I think it's going to be a pretty uneventful walking and sailing journey.
Now, once I got back from the stronghold, I really did need to kill some time to give phantoms a chance to spawn in, so that that way I could grab some slow falling potions. So I decided to put this time to good use and began building up an actual entrance to the mine so that that way the path from the house actually has like some form of building to connect to. But let me tell you, this has to have been one of the worst builds I think I've ever done. Just solely because I couldn't decide on a design I wanted to go with, or even wanted it to look like. So I pretty much wasted the entirety of day 64 on just building up and breaking down every single idea I had. And then was back to square one by the end of the day. However, things did take a change for the better on day 65, because after a couple more teardowns and rebuilds, I finally decided on a design to go with that I actually like. And so I spent the rest of the day building that up, as well as bringing the path over and connecting it up, and then, by the end of the day, we now had a nice little mine building connected to the path. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of liking this one. It's not like the best idea I had, but it looks pretty good. I also noticed, by the way, that the image I followed for reference was actually a link to a YouTube video thumbnail, so I'll link the video down in the description because I don't just want to yoink someone's build, okay? So just, yeah, go check that out if you want to build this mine. Alright, so what I'm thinking about doing is I kind of want to go and grab some ancient debris because it's something that I've not really thought about, but like just having the extra protection with netherite might help me with the dragon. I don't know. I, I really don't know how much damage I can tank, um, but to get some ancient debris, we probably need a new pickaxe because efficiency 2 isn't going to cut it and it's also low on durability as well. But what I'm thinking about now is we actually had some there. Yeah, there we go. There we Ooh, yeah. Okay, right. Um, we're going to put them to good use by throwing them on the pickaxe. I'll repair the pickaxe and then we shall throw these books on it right here. See, that's not too bad. Five's not too bad, but I feel like this one's going to be expensive, right? Yeah, 11. Okay. Well, I'll go trade some sticks up real quick and then we'll throw the, what is it, efficiency four? Efficiency four on the pick and then get to work in the nether trying to find some debris. So now we just come back here and go boom, boom. It would help if they were in the right order. There we go. Boom. All right. So we'll grab, actually, let me grab a fire resistance potion first before we leave. I'll take a couple because I don't know how long we're going to be in there. But I'm just thinking that time's still going to progress while we're in the nether. So we may as well just go and get some ancient debris, which is quite a, an annoying task whilst we're waiting for the phantoms to spawn because i don't think that they'll come tonight i believe it should be tomorrow night so we may end up spending like today and tomorrow in here trying to find some debris i would really like to get enough for armor i'm not really too fussed for weapons right now i think armor is the the way to go for my survival okay right here seems like nice enough of a spot let's go down and see what lurks below ah okay uh that's not what we want to find down here believe it or not i don't know whether or not i want to is that oh hello Okay, I was going to say, I don't know whether or not I want to either strip mine or just go crazy with it, but it seems like going crazy with it, like, has already paid off, so we'll just, we'll do the usual strat then. We'll break anything and everything in sight, except you. Go away. Hey, there we go. Ooh, two in a row. Ooh. Ooh, yes, two vein. Let's go. Okay, we have one piece. We have one piece of armor. Three more to go. Yes. Ooh, two vein, two. Three vein. Oh, my days. Okay, let's get it. Yes, thank you. Come here. Yes. Two, three. Big vein, two. Hmm. Okay, so we're at 12. So we've got three pieces. Uh, I don't know whether or not we should continue because the pick is running pretty low and I don't see any quartz around here. So, oh, never mind. There's some quartz right here. <gasps> yes oh my god another three vein hello i've also just noticed i'm getting zero xp from all of this quartz i mine right because it's just going straight into the pickaxe like it's not even high enough for it to divide or anything like that it's just going straight into the pick right now <laughs> <gasps> yes we are done now do i actually remember my way back up or no yeah, this is the way back up. All right, great. No risk of death to lava. Uh, I am just going to pop this fire res potion, though, because I don't trust these magma blocks. Can you please get out of the way, piggies? I can't see. Move. Thank you. Right. Okay, well, we'll head back home, and then we'll go from there and craft ourselves up some netherite armor. Lovely. Oh, yeah, we're like three quarters away through day 67 right now. So what we'll do is we'll throw our newly found ancient debris into this furnace right here there you go boom then we'll go and grab our gold and craft it up this is still the old way of crafting it because i'm in 119 not 120 i started this video a while ago 
Okay, then you go brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
Um, I kind of want to do something productive while waiting for them to grow, you know? Like, maybe start work on, on, on something that we're going to have as kind of like the statement piece for the for the build this time around, or... I don't know. I guess I'll see over the coming days, but I can't really do much right now without those pumpkins growing, so... I'll have a little brainstorm of ideas of what I want to build, and I'll be back to you with either A, me building it, or B, an idea. Alrighty, so I've actually come up with an idea of what we're going to put here now, alright? I was originally going to do like an enchantment tower, but I did a little test build of it in another world and it wouldn't fit in here. It'd be too small and it wouldn't look good enough. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to make a giant pond and then we're going to wall it off at the back all the way around to like there. Then, number one, it'll give us a little bit more security over this side of the little area we've got right here. And number two, it'll get rid of that ugly um, <laughs> portion of the build right there that is just kind of sitting like an unloaded chunk. I've made myself step-by-step -step instructions to make this pond, okay? I know the exact coordinate it starts on, and I know exactly every single block I have to break to do it looking good. So we're going to get to work on that, and whilst we're working on that, we'll go and also harvest any pumpkins that grow in the meantime. So yeah, I'm going to get to work on this pond. I will uh, see you once it's done. I don't know how long it'll take me. I think I'll only really be able to get the pond done um, in this next day or so because the wall itself is going to be quite expensive and I don't really want to do that right now. We'll probably do that when we get back from the end. So on day 71, I got to work on digging out a little area for the pond. Now, I say little, but it's actually kind of big. But either way, I followed a step-by-step -step instructional guide that I made for myself very, very jankily and actually managed to get the whole area dug out and even filled in with water before the sun went down. Also, filling in this pond made me remember just how broken Minecraft water physics are. <laughs> it's so goofy. After flooding the pond, I spent the night smelting down some cobble into some stone, and then on day 72, began working on some statues, slash decorations, slash fountains, whatever you want to call them, but they're frogs, and I actually think they were a pretty good addition to the pond itself. After being finished with the frogs for now, I went around and added some greenery under the water, as well as building up this kind of fishing deck thing, I don't really know, but it looks good, and then went around placing down a few walls and lanterns, and boom, the pond is really starting to come together now, but we are still very, very far from it being done. But hey, you know what? I'll take the progress. It's looking pretty good. Wow, okay, well, this is looking much better than I thought it would. This is looking really good. Now, it's still nowhere near in the ballpark of being done. We still need to add the wall, which is going to take... I don't think it'll take too long, but I think it's going to be very resource heavy, so we'll need to get, like, a lot of stone. Um, I also need to find a lush cave because I need azaleas, because they're part of the wall. Don't ask why. You'll you'll see in the wall what they'll look like. But yeah, so we need a lush cave. We need, um, I think, maybe a couple more pumpkins, because I managed to get 13. I don't know if that's going to be enough. I can just literally just divide this up, can't I? Yeah, I can. Okay, this is enough pumpkins. We'll get eight golems. But I don't really know, <laughs> number one, if eight will survive or anything. But you know what? It's better than going in with none. So what we're going to do is we're going to gear ourselves up. I do want to repair my bow before we go. And then we'll head to the end, take a bunch of arrows because we don't have infinity. And I'm thinking now, when it comes to the actual fight with the dragon... I don't want to, like, when it goes in the middle, I don't want to go and hit it there because it can deal, like, damage to you pretty quickly. And I don't really want to risk getting, like, one-tapped by the dragon because I think that's, like, the only thing that can still, like, immediately one-tap me other than, like, the warden or maybe a creeper. So I'm not too sure if I put an unenchanted bow in here, whether or not it'll take the enchant off. I don't know. I've played this game, like, all my life and I still do not know. Okay, no, it doesn't. It's nine levels. And there goes my anvil. Okay, great. So, I guess I'll grab the potions, and then we shall head in and face our greatest foe yet. Again, it's for like the hundredth time I've killed this thing so many times, but never on one heart. So, this is going to be something. So, I guess for now, we bid our lovely new area farewell for now. And uh, we head back over towards the stronghold, which I did write down the coordinates, but I'm trying to remember them in my head, and I have no clue which way it is. So, let me just check that real quick. Okay, we've got the coordinates down in the chat. Let's head over back to the stronghold and hopefully make it there unscathed. Okay, and here we are once again. Now, I don't actually understand why it takes so long to get here. I know exactly where it is, but the amount of, like, hills and stuff I have to traverse is ridiculous. So, anyways, enough about actually getting here. Let's get our potions ready and then, I guess, just head in. You know, there's not really much else we can do at this point. We've got to go and take this boyo down. Hopefully, without going down ourselves. I don't know, like I say, how useful the golems are gonna be, but we'll find that out very quick. Oh, I actually need to carve the pumpkins before we go in. That would have been pretty disastrous, right? 
Okay, all right. We've got those arrows. We should have more than enough arrows. Um, the bow will do some decent damage, especially stacked with the strength potions. We should be good. So I guess without any further ado, I'm not going to pop my slow falling just yet because I don't think that we'll be in any immediate danger. Um, we'll go in. If we're underground, we'll dig up and get to the actual area where we can build the golems. And then we'll pop our potions. Hopefully the golems help us out and we'll take this thing down. So, without any further ado, oh, let's go. I'm so scared. Okay, so we are in a place where we immediately need to pop the slow falling. All right, amazing. This shouldn't be too bad, I don't think. So long as we avoid the dragon for the most part, we should be okay. So let me just build up a few of these guys. Could have maybe made them closer to the center, but you know what? It's fine. There we go, yes. Oh, they're already slapping people up. Oh, my God. Oh, God, this is not going well at all. Oh, my God, they're just destroying the Enderman. I'll build a couple in the center. I don't know if they're going to really help out with a dragon or not, but this is going to be... <laughs> well, this will keep the Enderman population down at least. Oh, God, I heard it shoot. Okay, and the last guy. There you go, buddy. Welcome. Welcome to the world where you're going to protect me forever. Right, okay. Let's get on with the towers now. Ooh, that was close. No, buddy, get out. Don't die. I need you. Jesus, this guy is really wanting to like hit me with the dragon's breath. Oh, my God absolute insane man absolute lunatic uh we don't want these right i'm gonna pop a gapple as well just for if uh, and then i guess we'll head up and hopefully not get hit by this guy on our way up oh no oh okay we're good all right so this is kind of awkward but um i have to jump in and interrupt things right here kind of break the tension and whatnot because obs decided to uh, just completely stop recording right here because the drive i was saving the file to ended up being full and I didn't actually notice the error for like a solid minute. However, luckily I did fix it. But yeah, sorry about this. There's a little time jump right here from me being an absolute idiot. So sorry about that. We continue. I just realized that replay mod wasn't recording and it's kind of just ruined this whole thing. No. So we took the towers down pretty easily. But like um, he he's hit me a couple of times, but the gapples have come in clutch. Uh, like this right here. It's going to... Oh, okay. He didn't hit me. He might do. Go away. Okay, we can't touch him while he's there, but he is going down. He is going down. Okay, come on, fly off. Fly off, big boy. Ah, he's coming for me. Go away. Ow. Stop, man. Jesus. Calm yourself. Not long now until your demise, good sir. Another gapple. Come back around. Yeah. Then I missed anyway. There we go. Come on, just a couple more. Come on. Please. We're not getting this time. Next time, next time. Okay, as soon as he moves off that platform, he is gonzo. Come on. Yes, one more. Please. No. Ah, there we go. Oh, my God. Okay, that was terrifying. Oh, that was so scary. And that's so loud. Oh, my God. That was absolutely horrific. Oh, my God. The worst thing about it, though, is that my hard drive ran out of space when I entered here, like, maybe, like, maybe 30 seconds after. So OBS just kind of cut off, and I had to notice it, and then, like, pause and start again. So I'm sorry about that. That does really suck. Uh, <laughs> that took away from the whole dramatic buildup of this fight. But you know what? The golems weren't as cool as I thought they would be, okay? They did go around slapping everybody up, but, well, there's, like, two left, so they, they clearly didn't really do much to help me i think one of them got flown away at one point by the uh the dragon but i'm not too sure but yeah sorry about the uh <laughs> the kind of 40 seconds of the fight that you couldn't see not really much happened but um yeah no that does definitely suck so let's go get ourselves an elytra and just go back to normal life and never come back in here again we'll say that the golems though they definitely feel like i could have put the iron to use on pretty much anything else now, once again, my luck in the end was absolutely terrible. And after walking and bridging for like 20 minutes and finding absolutely nothing, I did eventually find a city, but it was less than ideal, let's say. <gasps> yes! Please have a ship. Please have a ship. It's been so long. Please. Please, please, please. It looks like a little tiny one. It's probably not going to be a big one. No. I don't care about it if it's not going to ship. <laughs> And uh, no, it's literally the single most pathetic city I have ever seen. What is the point of that? Who lives there? I even think the Shulkers won that one. Well, back to it. 
some more walking and bridging over the endless dark abyss only being one small mistake from my doom and eventually I found another city but it was about as useful as the first. <gasps> please, please, please have a ship. Are you kidding me? That's not the same one. No, we're not even in the same area. We've gone so far from there. It's literally just another single one. Why? Who builds these, man? What purpose do they serve except to just aggravate me? Give me false hope and then crush it the second I see it. You know what? You know what? I'm taking my anger out on the shulkers. I'm taking my anger out on the shulkers. I've had enough of this. Don't know who built these things, but I'm blaming it on you, shulkers. You're gonna die and I'm gonna put things in you. That sounded worse than it is, but I'm gonna use you as storage, which technically sounds worse as well, but you know what I mean. Right, so do they deflect when they're... Like, you need to just pop your head open a little bit. Just pop it open a little bit. Just pop it open a little bit. Yeah. Come on, again. Yeah. You too. Come on, buddy. Open up again. Come on. Yeah. I'll speak your own language. Beautiful. Okay, right. Um, I know there's probably more shulkers in there, but I ain't dealing with it. It ain't worth my time. Oh. Another? Perhaps with ship? Oh, another? Perhaps with ship? Ooh, that one looks promising. That one looks promising. That one looks exactly like the other ones, except without the big bit on the top. Yeah, that one actually is pathetic. What is the point of that one? That's like the worst one I've found. Okay, I, this is the most promising one we've found today. Please, please have a ship. I'll tell them in their own tongue. <laughs> Uh, no ship. <sighs> is it even worth my time going over there? Probably not. Yeah, there's no ship over there. Oh, my days. Please. <laughs> I want to leave here. It's been like, I don't even know how long. Okay, well, I guess I'll go take out the two shulkers at the bottom of this one, and then the journey continues. Uh-oh. 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 Oh, no. He's right behind me. No, 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 Hello, buddy. I don't know what your problem is, but it sure as hell ain't me. I know you ain't coming for me. Yeah, what are you going to do? Your biggest weakness. H2O. Yeah. Oh, oh, God, he ran in here then. Oh, go away. You're like the only thing that can still one-shot me. So just, just go away. No? There we go. Good boy. What was that? I swear I just heard a cat. I just heard a cat in here. Oh, maybe it was my cat. I do have cats IRL, so like that, that, that was probably what it was. Right, hello, buddies. Oh, it was my cat IRL. I hear her now. Speak with me. I know your tongue. <laughs> there we go. You see, look. <laughs> there we go. Any shells? Ooh, two shells. Beautiful. Okay, well, I guess it's back to just running aimlessly through this place until I hopefully find a ship. I'll see you at the next false idol I find. Oh, there's another fortress. I actually didn't even notice that. You see, my eyesight's not as good as when I came in here 50 years ago, you know. <sighs> but I don't know why I'd even bother with this one. It's literally just the same thing. What is it with this end and having these ones, man? There's nothing in them. Like, literally, what? Why is it not generating any big ones? Oh, no, 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 no. I angered another enderman. Go away. Go away. Jeez, I need to stop looking at you guys. I'm sorry. I don't mean to. I don't mean to. I've got, like, the same anxiety as you, all right? I don't like being looked at either. I don't like staring at people either, all right? I'm sorry, all right? I'm usually pretty good at not making eye contact. I openly avoid it. Right, there we go. Oh, hello? What was that? <gasps> yes! Oh, my God. Finally. Finally. I don't even know how long I've been in here, man, but it has been, like, a lifetime. It was, like, 100 days in 100 days, man. That thing was... Oh, finally. Okay, right. Now we actually need to survive this journey. Um, to be fair, I could just tower up to it, which is probably what I'm going to do, because I'm really not caring about any of the other loot in there. Um, do we have enough wood to get over there? Possibly. Right, okay, so we want to go right up there. So I'm going to want to grab some end stone before we head over there. Don't know how much it'll take to get up to the ship, but I'll grab like two and a half stacks. That should be, that should be enough. Okay, so we'll pop a slow falling potion when we get underneath it, just for if the shulkers do hit us. I'm expecting to be hit like once or twice by the one inside. But the ones outside shouldn't really be a problem. I'm really going outside. I'm not too fussed for the head either. I just want this so I can go home and just continue on in my little lovely build area. Ooh, okay, right, we're here. We have arrived. Let me pop a gapple before we go in. Because I don't know how much damage the shulkers are going to do. I hear you, buddy. You shut up. Didn't ask your opinion. Yeah, I can speak it too. Yeah, hit me with it. Go on. Oh, he just ran away. Okay, well, fair enough. I guess I'll just wait for this to disappear and then... Well, we'll go home. Okay, gimme, gimme. Finally. We'll grab these. I think they're instant health, right? Uh, Yeah, we'll grab them. I don't think I'm ever going to use them considering... Wait, yeah, no, they're actually pointless. I don't need them. 
Instant health's gonna revive like one heart. I, like what? Yeah, it's no use to me. Okay, we'll check what's in here. Uh, fortune three, efficiency four, mending, protection three. Okay. Blast protection for mending again. Wow. Well, I guess I'll bring this stuff back with me. And I can throw these in a the grindstone to get some XP from them. So I can at least get something. Let's go. Actually, if I can just do this, then I can just fly away, right? Yeah, there we go. It's very slow, but you know what? It works better than not flying. Okay, finally, let's go home. I've had it with this place. I don't want to return ever in my life, really. Why is it raining here? Hello? What was that? Okay, so I'm just gonna go and sort through all of the stuff we got, and then, uh, don't know. Wonder what's next. Probably trying to find, like, a lush cave or something, because I do really need the, uh, what they called? The azaleas? I need those. Then let's make ourselves a couple of shulkers. Mm-mm-mm. We'll go boom, boom. There we go. And you know what? We do have some red flowers, so we'll just dye them red. Can I do it here? Can I just throw it in there like that? Yes, I can. Okay, great. There we go. Two red shulkers. Well, that was quite the experience, but we're out now. We're good. The bows seem better days, but we're not actually in too bad shape. The armor's still pretty decent because, like I say, I'm not taking damage. So, yeah, we're pretty good. All right. Okay, so I'm going to harvest up all the sugarcane we have right here. Plus, I got the stuff at the villagers. And then, I guess over the following couple days, we'll make up some fireworks and we'll go and search for a surface azalea tree. Alright, great. Fi nine fireworks richer. Amazing. That'll get me, like, ten blocks out. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to spend the rest of the day just sorting through my stuff, tidy up my inventory a little bit more, and then plan out what we need to actually do over the next few days. I understand what I need to do, but I need to understand the order in which I want to do it. Because I do really want to get this area finished off ASAP, but it's going to take a little bit of work with that wall. Okay, so last night, I kind of noticed that I have 67 levels now, thanks to the dragon. So we're going to try and get... Well, well, we're not because I don't have any lapis. But we're going to try and get looting on our sword. Because I want to go and kill a few creepers real quick. Just solely because nine fireworks just it ain't going to do anything for me. I'm not going to lie. It's not going to do anything whatsoever. So looting would be nice on the first roll? No. Okay. Uh, Do I have any... I do have some like extra diamonds laying around somewhere, don't I? Yeah, I have seven in there. Okay, well, we'll just keep making swords then, and then, who knows, maybe we can combine them. We'll have enough XP left over. Looting, please? Ooh, ooh, that's... Oh, and he's got loot in three, but Bane of Arthropods, are you kidding me? Blech. Okay, that's yucky. Try try again, maybe? Knock back two. Looting three! All right, beautiful. That is amazing. So we can probably combine that with a sharpness three, unless we get something better. Sharpness, there we go. That'll do. So we'll combine that with a sharpness for... Oh, we don't have an anvil. And I don't have the iron to make an anvil. Oh, okay. Well, I'll just throw these in here. Um, and I guess we'll go down the mines anyway. Because I need to get gunpowder from creepers. And that's like the easiest place to find them. Um, and then I guess while we're down there, we'll also grab a little bit more iron too. All right. What a night that was. So we're back. We've got the iron now. Uh, there's a little bit more smelting down. Uh, and I think we should have enough gunpowder for, like, a decent amount of just normal fireworks. We shouldn't be going too far. I know that lush caves are pretty common, so I'm not really too worried about finding one. That was loud. Uh, so what do we want to throw in here, then? We want the sharpness four with the knockback, right? Or do we want... Ooh, but that's got fire aspect on it. Uh, we'll, we'll take the sharpness four with knockback just solely because I feel like this is one of the only times where knockback will be super good for me because then I don't have to deal with things blowing up in my face. So we'll grab the paper for the fireworks. I think I put in one of these. I think it's this one. Yeah, there is. Oh, there's 49 iron in here. That's enough for... A oh, no. Is that enough for a... It is. Oh, no. What? Okay, well, you know what? We have extra iron now. Okay, we're, we're restocked to some degree on iron. Oh, God, I'm an idiot. Right, okay, so we'll throw that in there. We'll throw that in there. Oh, 51 and 51 perfectly. I don't know whether or not it'd be worth breaking them down into flight duration two. We'll just keep one for now. Uh, I'll throw these in here, and then I probably want to maybe try and get mending before we set off with the elytra. Uh, you know what? We'll be fine. We'll be fine. We'll fly there. If we have to walk back, that's fine. Right? That's fine. I'm not. I'm not doing it. We don't have the emeralds. I don't want to waste any more time trading. We're just gonna. We'll, we'll fly out. We'll fly out. Okay. Goodbye, home. It's been nice knowing you. I'll get a nice little aerial shot of you. Ah, that doesn't look too bad, to be fair. Right. Let's. Uh, let's go. Any lush things around this forest? Hello. Oh, this is a nice place. Nice little flower fields right here. I could do with picking up a few of these, but now that I know where it is, we can just nip back here later. Anything at all resembling anything to do with the azalea? There's surely not going to be one in the savannah, is there? 
<gasps> oh my god. Wait, this is... There's a jungle tree. We need the vines. Yes. Uh, I don't have any shears on me. Let me just make some. Well, this serves at least the purpose of getting vines. Our trip hasn't been completely useless so far. This means that we've at least got something from it. Was there seriously just like two jungle trees here? I don't think I've ever seen that before. Yeah, there's literally... There was just two jungle trees. It's like a slice of jungle right here. Crazy. Ooh, you know what, though? I will take some of this bamboo right here. Actually, is it quicker with the sword? Yeah, it's significantly quicker with the sword. Okay. Take a little bit of this back. We can put it around the pond. It'll look good. It'll look real good. Ooh, we've got a ruined portal and a mangrove swamp. Lovely, lovely. Okay, well, we'll check out what's in the chest. Uh, Golden apple, I'll take it, and some terrible stuff. Okay. Damn, I'll go check out this place. Not really much I want from here other than the frogs, and I can't really get them back right now, but hey, you know what? Maybe we'll see some. <gasps> oh, wait. I know what you are, my good friend. Give me all your leaves, and then we're going down. Oh, yes. This is the best place in the world. Oh, and I hear a frog, too. Couldn't really get better. Where are you, froggy? Oh, there he is. Hello, buddy. Oh, you have friends, too. Wow. Oh, oh that's going to be so OP to wipe out this place. Oh, my God. Look at that. Right? If I just go... Oh, wait, no. Cause that's... There we go. If I go here. Look. Oh, my God. It just takes chunks out. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, I love you guys so much, but I can't bring you back. It's like a decent chunk away, and I don't even know if my elytra will get me back home, but we should be able to get somewhat close. Okay, right, we're going down. Ooh, amethyst geode. Not really got too much use for you, I'm not going to lie, but still somewhat cool nonetheless, I guess. Just to mine down straight into one. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, right. So we need to remember that this is our way back up. There we go. All right. Put that down. Can I grab you? No. Okay. I don't. Oh, oh I can. Oh, my God. I can grab you. Okay, so we need as much moss as we can get our hands on. We need a whole bunch of clay. Uh, no, not clay. We need a whole bunch of azaleas. Oh, hello. And maybe some of these tall lily pads, too. I completely forgot that there's still mobs in these caves. Run! Oh my god, that's terrifying. <gasps> no, 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 no. Just eat, just eat, and we're good. Okay, right, I'm going to replace my actual food for gapples, because down here does not seem like it's pretty chill. Not going to lie. Seems like pretty much the opposite. Close call straight off the bat, but we're all good. All right, I'm going to sort my inventory out real quick, get rid of things that we don't want to bring home, and then we shall prepare to stack up on all the goodies from down here. So I completely tore up this once lovely lush cave for all of its resources, leaving it looking pretty barren. Well, at least this segment of it. There's still like a really big chunk to the left. But either way, I ended up grabbing more stuff than I actually thought I would need because the cave itself isn't actually super nearby my house. And I just thought it was a safe bet to get more and not have to come back here later. Okay, so I think this should be like enough if not more than enough so what i want to do is i want to grab these real quick we'll head back up to the surface and then i think before we leave i want to grab some lily pods lily pods lily pads from the mangrove swamp if it has them i think it does all right we'll grab some lily pads and then we'll make our way back home with our severely beaten up elytra don't need too many lily pads just like maybe 20 25 it would be cool to get some frogs, but it's just not plausible at this current moment in time. But I did grab an axolotl while I was down there. I don't know if you can notice that in my hot bar right there. But yeah, he's a yellow one, I think. Um, he seems pretty chill. So he can come back with us and chill in the pond. At least we'll have some form of life in there other than the grass. And 25. All right, beautiful. Okay, so home is that way. So hopefully we can get at least a decent chunk of the journey out of the way. I'll fly pretty fl close to the floor or I'll probably just stop flying before they run out. But yeah, all right, we're going. We're going. We get back with literally 23 durability to spare. Okay, all right. Um, So what we're going to do, I'm going to sort out all of this stuff that we got from... I don't think I can put that there because it won't open. Uh, we'll sort out all the stuff we got from the lush cave. And then... Oh, I didn't grab any more mud. Oh, that sucks. Um, I think you can make it, though. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I'm not too worried. Um, coarse dirt will look pretty good. I probably want to add a little bit more than this. But now we want to, number one, check how much cobblestone I have. Because I know that I tore through quite a lot of it. Yeah, we really don't have too much. We have 21, 64. It's really not much. So let me let me test this out. If I put that there and that there. Oh, Beautiful absolutely perfect thank you new crafting recipe for mossy cobble right 
So we want mossy cobble. We want mossy... I don't know if you can make mossy stone. I don't think that's a thing. But we need mossy cobble, mossy bricks, mossy stairs, mossy pretty much everything you can make mossy we need. And then we're going to build up some kind of like stone things around here. We're also going to do like a mossy frog so it'll work as the green frog because we've got the white and the orange one there. And then we'll do like the little stone things around the side and I'm going to make like a little ruin area down there. But yeah, so that's what we need to do. We also need to place down some of these lily pads so I can probably get that out of the way now to be fair. And then one right here. There we go. Beautiful. So we do need some more sugar cane to place down the sides of it. I'm probably going to use some bamboo as well, but I might throw that behind the wall just to add a little bit more greenery to it. But for tonight, I'm going to make a checklist of all the things we need to do uh, in no specific order. And then we'll just burn through those in the following days. One of the main things we need to do like right now, pretty much, is to get a bunch of flowered azalea leaves because that's going to be one of the main parts of the wall. And we really need to pretty much make the most of that. All right, so first things first for today, I'm going to grab me some of those diamonds and I'm going to craft up a new pick and enchant it in hopes of getting efficiency four again. Oh, that'd be amazing. There we go. And the oh, silk touch. Oof. Oof. Um, well, that'll make getting the stone easier, actually. So that's actually not too terrible. Okay, well, that works out anyway. So over here, we have the current storage chest for all the stuff we're going to need for the rest of the pond. Obviously, the like moss and stuff isn't in there, but that's in the shulker, so it's fine. We're going to need a little bit more actual stone, uh, quite a decent chunk more, actually, uh, along with some cobblestone, and then the stone bricks will come along with that as well. So I guess let's go down the mine and just absolutely clear it out. So I went and mined up an ungodly amount of both stone and cobblestone stone to use on the wall okay and that should be enough for now just get rid of the copper and coal um yeah that should do that actually should do for the whole thing there's not actually too much we need to build it's just kind of like scattering stone around so we'll grab a few of these make some more mossy cobble lovely lovely and some mossy bricks as well and then we'll throw all of that in there lovely 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 oh and also while i remember i made a um a bone meal the uh, breaker downer right up here so i put like all of my like wheat seeds and stuff like that in there and they broke it all down to bone meal so we've got 47 so we'll be able to get those azalea leaves pretty quickly as well so i might as well just go and get that out of the way real quick because that is going to take up quite a big chunk of time oh wait no I need more stone because uh, the wall, the wall is going to be really stone and cobblestone heavy. So we're going to need like more. So when it gets dark tonight, I'll just go down the mine and I'll spend the night mining as much cobble up as I can. Okay, so I'm curious. If I chop this tree down, will it give, will it just leave the normal azalea? Le no, it will not. Okay. All right. No, fair enough. Fair enough. That was a stupid idea. I don't know why I did that. All right. That'll do for the azalea farming today. And I'll spend the rest of the night mining up some stone after I've sold this away. I will need like a decent chunk more glowstone, but now that I have a silk touch pick, we can just literally decimate the nether and be just completely fine. Right. And now I guess I'll see you in the morning once this pickaxe is uh, absolutely decimated and we have an ungodly amount of stone and cobblestone. Oh, all right. So long night of mining. This is the second trip I've come back up from and I think we should be okay for the most part. Now we might need a little bit more of one or both, but I think this will definitely get at least this segment of the wall done and definitely all the areas around the pond that I want to scatter some stone and stuff around. So I'm going to go and get to crafting up all of the necessary blocks and then we'll get to work on actually placing them down. Because I literally just need like stairs, slabs, and uh, that's pretty much about it, to be fair. Okay, there we go. This is starting to come together nicely now. Look at this. So we've got all the little like stone ruins. We've got the stone ruins in the water. I do need to add a couple lanterns around the place. But overall, we've got the other frog set up over there looking pretty good. I might need to make a few minor adjustments to it. Maybe add a little bit more mossy cobble. But other than that... The, uh, the actual base area for the pond is done. I do want to go around and add the... Uh, actually, I can just probably just do that now. I've got these little... What are they? Like spore blossoms or something? Yeah, spore blossoms that I got from the lush cave. As well as... Where are the little like long lily pads? There we go. Big drip leaves. I want to put these around um, just to add a little bit more. Can I put these on top of water? Or no? Can I put them on a lily pad? No? Really? Or do they need to be on like a block maybe? No? Huh? Oh, maybe they need to be on moss? I, I I don't know. I really don't get what this wants from me. Okay, so I don't know what I can do with those then. Um, I don't know what use they're going to be for me. Can I place them? 
I really can't place them anywhere, can I? I think they do need to be upside down, so that might be the uh, the issue we have here. Oh, well, either way, if they do need to be upside down or they don't need to be upside down, I, I don't really care. If we can't put them in, we can't put them in. It is what it is. And then I think to end off tonight, we're going to get this bone meal and just go around these frogs and kind of just make things look a little bit more overgrown around them. Ah, you think you can sneak up on me, buddy? I think not. Oh, you can't even do any damage to me. I'm not even scared of you anymore. So, work on the wall finally began on day 85 with me making a basic outline and mapping out where the actual placement is going to be. And then from there, gradually worked my way around it, adding more and more details as I went along throughout the rest of the day and the night. Because we ain't sleeping until this thing is done. Or phantom spawn in, but until it's done. Now, by the end of day 85, I'd made some pretty good progress on the wall, but it's still not much to look at. However, it shall become beautiful soon enough. So on the following day, I made my way into the nether to grab up a bunch of glowstone because I couldn't really continue the build without it. Once I grabbed enough, I returned home and began placing it all down. Before then dedicating some time to farming out the azalea trees for their leaves, and after grabbing a few stacks of them, it was back to work on the wall for the rest of the day, placing down all the leaves and expanding the wall out and around the trade hall, as well as expanding it upwards to help block out some of the terrain behind it. And then on day 87, the upper level build continued, with me adding some flowering azaleas between the arches, as well as some lanterns. That was until I got swarmed by phantoms and decided to take a quick little nap and continued on on day 88, where I just went around adding the final little bits of detail to the wall before finishing it off and there we go that's the wall done and i've got to say it looks so so much better than i thought it would it really helps kind of isolate my little area right here make it feel a little bit more secure and really just ties everything together it's looking it's looking nice all right so now that all this wall and the pond area is done it is looking pretty amazing i'm not gonna lie i am really impressed with this one um it is missing something though it is missing just a little bit of a, a, a of color you know a little pop of color um i think we want to go around and add some some flowers around here now i know where there is a flower biome it's a little bit over oh what's apparently there's a zombie dying behind my wall there's also a wandering trade around there so we'll check him out um, but I know where the flowers are. They're like over towards where we originally got like the lush cave. It's a little bit of a walk away. I don't have enough oomph in my elytra to go over there. So, oh, we got two leads too. Amazing. I see you, buddy. I see you creeping around out here. Go away. Oh, the wandering trader, I think, died. Oh, okay. Well, I guess we won't check out his goods then. Let me just grab some snacky from my uh, smoker right here, and then I guess let's set off. Ignore the lone wood that was once a tree, just standing there. <laughs> There's just sheared sheep running around out here, because they're out of the generator chunks, so they've just not eaten. Uh, <laughs> so they're just look at him. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy, I sheared you like 50 days ago or something. I I'm sorry about this. The world has not been kind to you, my friend. <laughs> Look there, see, there's another one. Yeah, so it should be just over these mountains right here um, and a little bit to the right. There's also a bunch of blue flowers up there. Well, I think they're like, are they cornflowers? Not cornflowers. Um, there might be. I might be just completely wrong, but I think they're cornflowers. I'm not too sure. We'll find out. But what are you? Yeah, they are cornflowers. I was right. We'll grab a bunch of these and then... <gasps> oh, there's rose bushes up here. Okay. Oh, this is a little mini flower biome, so we won't have to go all the way over into yonder oh yeah this is perfect this is perfect all right well that saves me like a really long journey okay let me let me throw the shulker down well why have i got so much crap in my inventory man i would like some of the big purple ones but i don't think there's any around here i don't even know where they spawn to be fair oh, there's so many of the blue ones around here look at that okay and that should do us for now that's actually not too bad i'll try and pick up some more of these uh white ones right here on the way back because we only have six and i think they look pretty cool so we'll grab some of those as well uh do we have the rose bushes yes we do right it is home time then well you know what that was a pretty chilled out day we didn't really do too much just kind of went and grabbed some flowers now let's hopefully get back before all the ghouls start hunting me down i don't really want to deal with that all right we'll run in we'll head to bed and then we'll place down the flowers in the morning all right, I just chilled in the house for a little minute then just to see if I could get everything that's going to burn to just kind of crisp up a little bit before we go out here. So I'm thinking I don't really want to do it in an order, although would that look good if I just place one rose bush in front of every one of these, right? Like, let's see. Just place these down real quick. 
Um, and then this, this still works, right? If I, yeah, okay, it just duplicates them. Amazing. Does that look good? I think that looks pretty good, to be fair. So I'll just grab a couple more rose bushes, and then we'll throw them down here in front of these. Boom, boom, boom. Beautiful. You can't really see this. It, it, it's fine. You don't see this area. It's fine. I'll block it off at some point, maybe. Uh, and then we want to grab, I'm thinking, maybe we'll do one of each flower in front. So we'll do one of these, and then one of these in front of the things like that. So we'll, we'll switch them up per thing. So we'll do there, 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 like that. Okay, how's that looking? How's that looking? Let me try and, try and get a little bit of an aerial view of it. Uh, you know what? That looks pretty good, actually. Um, and then what we'll do with the other ones, so kind of like these ones as well, we'll just go and place them randomly around just to get a little bit of, you know, randomization. Oh, well, we're out of those. <laughs> Uh, but just to get a little bit more, less order into this thing. Okay, there we go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab some more bone meal when that stuff is composted down. And then we'll add a load of grass and stuff around here. As well as get rid of these torches. Maybe replace them with like the old lantern on a wall. But other than that, this is this is coming together real nice. There we go. Lovely. Uh, and while I'm at it, I'm going to get rid of this crooked tree up here as well. Be gone, stray wood. There we go. Beautiful. Oh, we've got the root of dirt, but I'm, I don't care about that. Maybe we could add some more rose bushes kind of like following the path around like this just randomly placed i think that would look oh yeah, yeah, yeah that would look really good okay well we're gonna need a, a decent chunk more bone meal so i guess i'll just tear through a load of that moss that i brought back uh, and i guess i'll throw away these spore blossoms because then i can't even place them like can i place them in here oh so i can place them oh okay all right well i guess i'll just throw some out of my canopy then why not just throw like one here one here you know no reason not to i've got them <laughs> they add oh no they add the little particles that is pretty cool oh well i'll go throw a few around the villager house as well so we'll, we'll keep these guys we'll keep these guys they're pretty cool oh my god they add particles like everywhere don't they sheesh uh i mean <laughs> they don't look amazing i'm not gonna lie but i do like the particles they add so we're keeping them all right there we go uh the path is now looking much better so I guess I can just throw some bone meal down around here too. Just to add a little bit of density to the grass and whatnot. Don't want it too much though. Don't want to overdo it. But that's actually pretty nice. Damn, I bet this place looks so cool from like a bird's eye point of view. Um, I'm not going to risk the elytra though. <laughs> that's a quick and surefire way to end all of this progress. It ain't happening. But yeah, that, that's amazing. Wow. I should build ponds more often. All right, so I'm going to go and add bone meal um, and then head to bed. So I'll just, I'll see you lot in the morning and we'll see what we're doing. Okay, so I have awoken today and remembered that I own a dog. I, I have a dog and it's stuck in the nether. So we need to go and get that. But um, yeah, here's the finished result of everything that I did last night. I kind of went around and added the azalea little baby trees all the way around because I just thought, well, I have them. They add to it. Now everything looks super, super noisy. And I think it, I don't know. I just think it works really, really well. I'm, I'm really impressed with this one. Take this deep slate and we're going to go and grab my dog finally after like <laughs> 60 days of him being stuck in there. I'll finally get him out. Where you at, buddy? Oh, God, no. No, 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 no. That's not how things work in here, my friend. We don't do that anymore. Thank you. Oof. Oh, there he is. Hello, buddy. How's it going? He's waiting for me right down here. Um, The nether portal should still be here, right? Come on. Come with me. Good. Right. Don't fall in that lava. Don't. Uh, no, stop. There we go. All right. Okay. Come here, and through we go, and through we go, no, and through we go, come on, and through we, and through we go, yes, go, go, why are you not going away, go through, what if I make you sit and then go through, can you go through now, why are you stuck in here, do I need to connect it to the outside, is that why, like, I, I don't understand, where am I, hello, um, I don't have a recall going through that, I think the house should be over here though, yeah, okay, it's right, here what a weird place to put the portal that was nowhere near where i put the original one right will you actually be able to go through there now buddy come on come, no stop you this isn't your home yes yes go go no why won't you go through why won't it work go there yeah he doesn't appear to be leaving go come with me please <laughs> come with me okay well you know what he chose his fate that's uh that's exactly what he wants to do he wants to stay in there it's not like i like 
tried for days to try and get that dog, but it is what it is. He he's staying in there. I'm not dealing with it. Oh, look, there's some bones right here. Is there is there a wolf hanging around? Maybe I can get a new dog. Hmm? Maybe I can replace you. Oh, I'm shouting as if you can hear me. He's in a completely different dimension. Oh, you can come through. Oh wait, no, this is the guy from earlier. I was gonna say he can come through, but my dog can't. How are you doing, buddy? How are you still around? You came through like so long ago. How are you still knocking around, buddy? I think that. I'm angry that my dog can't come through and you came through instead. I was going to burn you, but that really won't do anything. So I guess I'm just going to have to, I'm just going to have to do it. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I could have just like, oh, I don't think you can put them on leads, but I could have put them on a lead and had him like as my new dog. Oh, there we go. Right. Two dogs, Uh, two bones, one for each dog, perhaps. Oh, maybe. Ah, uh, no, of course, you're a greedy one. Okay, well, you're my replacement dog. Come on, we're gonna go check out that mine shaft that I saw, like, a year ago and still haven't been down. Right, can I? I can do this. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, that wasn't fine. Oh, my God. I almost died. All right, go away, buddy. Go away. Oh, he's... <laughs> he did indeed go away. Right, so that's our destination. I can't remember if I came here or not. I know I've been, like, around this area, but I don't think I've ever been, like, actually in the shaft itself. Oh, why'd you do that, man? I don't have any... F oh, I have cooked chicken. That can probably help oh there's a cave spider spawner right there oh and he spawned like six and a creeper we're running we're running we're running we're running we're gone we're gone nope oh my god i'm gonna chase down right let me just get my shield Where, where's my shield there it is right okay hey there we go oh a chest too oh diamond let's go and the gapple yeah Ooh, perhaps what is this? Hmm? No, my dog! That dog's gonna die. Dog, come here. Uh, you should be okay now. Two chicken is enough for you. Where is this? Oh, hello, buddy. I see, yeah, I see you. You're a special kind of guy. Oh, yeah, just... Oh, you don't shoot my dog! Oi! Yeah, yeah, beat him up. Yeah! Double team him! Go on, finish him off, buddy. Come on! There we go. You've earned your chicken. Okay, and you lead to... Oh, the surface. All right, so this is... I, I still don't even remember where this is. Right, so where does this bring us out then? All the way over here. Oh, there was a ravine right here as well. Um, Was it a big one? Oh my god, it was a big... What? How did I never see that? I am so blind. I am so, so blind. <gasps> oh, I'm telling you, feather falling is the only way to live your life. Because without it, you ain't living. Ooh, at least we get a good view of how this place looks from far, though. Oh, that does look pretty cool. Look at that, man. There's so much color. Well, at least now we know that the mine shaft leads absolutely nowhere and is an absolute waste of time. Hmm. So after my very restful sleep last night, I've kind of realized that this area right here isn't very, uh, isn't very protected. It's not very protected and we get a lot of ghoulies coming around and lurking right around here, especially around there. It's, it's like a death trap over there. So what I'm thinking is I might do... A wall? Another wall. I love my walls. There's one over there. Anyways, uh, yeah, I want to kind of maybe push this back a little and do a wall coming from like the back side of my house, maybe around here to like here. I'm not going to do it like that one because that is just too big of a project and I don't need to expand that one out all the way around. So what I think I might do instead is I might do kind of like a similar thing I did in the, uh, I think it was Lucky Block, where I did like this kind of garden wall with cobblestone that was kind of looking decrepit a little bit um wasn't really too fancy but it worked pretty well so i might just kind of encase things in with with one of those walls so i don't need to push it back like an insane amount uh this shovel uh, this shovel should be fine it, it, it'll it'll last for this wall and then i kind of want to connect it maybe to here um things can probably still get in if i do that but it should be okay so it's just get kind of like a layout for it and then we'll we'll go from there so i'll keep switching it up between stone and cobblestone and maybe even a couple stone bricks in there i don't know but i kind of want it to go around like this and then maybe we'll bring it in here go across a couple yeah kind of something like that and then we'll add like some stairs and slabs on top to try and kind of make it look a little bit jankier i think i might want to bring it up maybe one more level or with the stairs uh, the stairs might kind of work you know if i just kind of do that yeah that'll work that'll work pretty well how does that look uh ooh, um yeah that doesn't look too great at all actually that looks pretty bad um 
Okay, well, it's all, it's all good. It's all good. We'll just, we'll just remove this. We'll just get rid of it all. Yeah, that was, that was a terrible design. I don't know where that came from. I banished this thing back to the abyss where it came from. Oh my. Maybe I will just, you know, do the same design at least for that side. So then we block off the, like this side of the house as well. Um, and then kind of, we could just leave that area open and just light it up. Maybe put something there at a later date. I don't know. But I think it would probably be wise to do kind of the same design as we have here. Only thing that worries me is the fact that I think I may run out of stone pretty quickly. So, yeah, I guess it's wall building time again. Now, I'm not actually going to go and walk you through this step by step again, because you've already seen that. It's the exact same process with me building it up gradually and stopping off on occasion to restock on stone. And that's pretty much it, copy-pasted from the previous wall. However, instead, I'll tell you that I've recently actually just got a new kitten, and she is legitimately insane. She just constantly follows around one of my other cats and harasses them, and it's been quite the experience. So, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little cat segment of the video. They're pretty cute. I hope you enjoyed. But anyways, cats aside, let's get back to it. By the end of day 95, once again, the wall was done and it came out looking really, really good. Although I did admittedly end up expanding it out a little bit further than I was initially planning, but you know what? More wall, more nice building happening around the place. Why not? Okay, well, I'm pleased to tell you that the wall is now done and is looking very, very good, um, except the point where it just ends abruptly here, but that's... You won't ever see that unless you're looking pretty much anywhere but that's <laughs> beyond the point so i was like kind of planning on making a bee farm earlier and i'm thinking now we've got this kind of little extra area in this corner that's kind of just like a chunk of grass and it's not really doing too much for me so we're gonna head over here to the like the bees nest that's down here and i'm gonna see if there's any bees still residing around it or in it and then we'll grab ourselves a couple of birch trees i already see there's a couple over there and then hopefully we can get a little bee farm up and running which would look uh, pretty good to end things off here oh and even better there's a bee ah Ah, yeah, there is. There's like three bees around here. Oh my god, four bees! I saw one over there. Look at that! Wow! Oh yeah, there's another. There's another hive down there. Okay, right. Well, I'm gonna grab you, good sir. Oh wait, I also need to actually like get the honey from the hive so I can make a farm, right? Do you still use this one? Any honey in here? No. What about the next one? You got any honey in here? Hmm. Bruh, get pollinated, man. I'm gonna go grab some flowers for you guys, and then hopefully you guys can like actually make some honey in this ne next day so that we can actually make a bee farm. Also, just say right now, I'm so sorry for the long wait for this video. There's been a lot of stuff happening in the past few months, um, and it, it's just been a bit crazy, all right? It's just been a bit crazy. So we're chilling now, we're back, and we're gonna be pumping these bad boys out. So uh, bee, have flour, have more flour. There we go, right. Don't bother with me. Yeah, go to the flower. No, the flower, man, the flower. No, come back, dude. Wait, what, why are you going down there? Flowers. Go, and then go, in there like that all right you suck it up and you spit it out in your hive do it are you doing it are you pollinating hello i'm watching this bee until it until it starts going fluffy oh it did it yes <gasps> yes Ooh, get some honey in there okay well i guess while they're doing their thing then um and just kind of chilling we'll go and chop down a couple of birch trees just to stack up on some saplings and get them planted down <laughs> shut up Right, we'll get these saplings, and then we shall pop them uh, about here, here, here. Just dot them all around, you know, make this place nice and tree. Oh, we'll have to get a load of flowers too. I think, actually, no, I think I still have like a load. They might not all be in here, but I do have some. Yes, yeah, so we've got some oxy daisies. We'll throw them down. We can also probably put down a couple spore blossoms on the trees as well. Oh, and we've got the bamboo too. I completely forgot about this. I guess we could dot this around here. I don't know how good it would look with the bees like, but, you know, bees surely like bamboo to some degree, right? I've never seen a bee and bamboo in the same room, but that's fine. We'll not overdo it with the bamboo because it can get, like, really annoying really quick. Uh, maybe even throw a little bit of moss down, you know, that'd be pretty good. Right, I'm gonna go and try and find, like, the other flowers I had. I understand that I use, like, the majority of them, you know, everywhere around here, but I know that there's some left over somewhere. Oh, I found my gapples from earlier. They were chilling in this chest. I don't know why I put them in here. Hello? What? You know what? I'll take it. I'm not going to complain. Okay, well, we really don't have much flower selection, but it's fine. I'll just, like, kind of grow some grass around here, too, and get that, you know, up and going. So I guess we'll check up on the bees in a little bit, but I'm going to try and see if we can put a spore blossom on this cherry, uh, cherry blossom tree. It's not cherry blossom tree. And no, you cannot. 
What about if I... <gasps> Wait, I think I have a solution to this. If I go here and I grab me some moss, right? And then I say, oh, well, this leaf isn't doing it for me. Let's get rid of you. Put a moss block there so you can, you can tell, but you can't really tell. And then you go, boom. Ooh, yeah, that's kind of good. I like that. I like that. I like that. We'll do that for a couple of the trees around there then, but I don't want particles everywhere because they, um, <laughs> there's a load over there. There's a load over there and they just keep spreading. I think they just get everywhere. All right, you buzzy boys. How's the honey coming along? I'm going to chill around here because I don't think that you're doing it while I'm over there. I'm not going to lie. I don't actually think I have any iron on me for the shears, but we can just run back and get it once this actually has some honey in it. Come on, move quicker. There's like four of you around here. How's that one doing? Exactly the same. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. You get that honey. Yeah. Do a little boogie while you're at it. Yeah, go on. Yeah. There's one in there. Come out. Get to work. Get working. Ooh. He, gee, he just teleported in there. Oh, my God. Enough yet? Enough? I don't know how many trips they have to do. How many trips do you have to do? I hear you buzzing around in there. Come out, man. Please. All right. I'm just going to chill here. Um, <laughs> I guess I'll be back to you with an update on the honey. If not, I'll have spent all day just standing here waiting for honey, but I, I refuse to let this go. I need it. Yeah, he's come back out. See, we're going to get some real soon. I'll see you in a sec. Okay, I've literally just gone and grabbed some shears and it is ready. So I don't want to burn you. So can you just please like get your honey and leave? Like get, get it and leave, please. I don't want to burn you. I don't want to burn you with this campfire. I had to get rid of the other one because it did burn one of them. <gasps> Beautiful, please be three. Yes. Yes, we can build it now. Amazing. We can only get one for now, but that's fine because it'll have a knock-on effect where we can just get like a bunch. Beautiful. Right, let's get this place down over there and then we'll grab the bees and bring them over to their new abode. I'll put you right here. So I'll throw a campfire underneath and then boom. There we go. All right, now time to go grab them buzzy boys. Hello, 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 hello. Right, okay, so there's one of you here. Come, come. Come to me. Come to me. I have flour. Come here. Are you going to follow me? Are you broken? What is wrong with you? The campfire broke you. Like, what? What's happening? <gasps> there we go. Right. Okay. Is there any over here that I can bring back as well? Are they out yet? Like, what are they doing? Oh, they've got honey now, too. Oh, I think at least that looks like they've got honey. Okay. Well, I'll bring you for now. Um, and then when this guy comes out, I'll bring him. But that'll probably be in the morning because I think they kind of like go away in the evening and then come back out in the morning. Wow. Oh, wow. The sun's actually going down right now. I don't know why I didn't notice, but we <laughs> spent like half the day waiting for that honey to spawn in. I don't know how many times they have to go back to it. I didn't count, but I think it was six. No, come back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come back here. What are you doing? Why are you trying to go on the floor? Come over here. This is your new home. You live here now. Come on, look, there's a lovely little hive over here for you. Look at that. Wow. Look at this. This is where you're going to live now. Go in there. If I come back and you've flown away, I'm going to cry. Right, before we head to bed tonight, I'm going to get rid of this little contraption I built here because I hate it just sitting there. It's really bothering me. The original one didn't work, and it's just been sat here since, so it's it's going away. It's going away. I don't need any more villagers up there. I have infinite. Ah, beautiful. There we go. All right. It doesn't look much better without it there, but you know what? It's gone now. I don't have to see it anymore. Oh, <gasps> he's in there. Yes. Okay, we have B. We only have one, but we'll get more tomorrow. All right, let's go grab the last bee from this hive if he's out, and then we'll go over to the other one. Hopefully they're out. We'll get the honey from it, and then we can make another hive. Do I still have the shears on me? Yes, I do. Right, buddy, come on. Come on. It. Oh, I guess he wasn't in there. Um, I didn't know it had one-tapped the, the hive. Oh, no. <laughs> it's okay. I didn't need anything from it anyway. I don't know where that bee's gone then. They usually come out real angry if you break it. Hello? Oh, no, I forgot. It's not... It's not... I didn't... Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't even get your honey. It's still back there. All right, you're not very fast. However, I can use this to my advantage. If you guys just come over to my house, I don't have to use the flower. Come on. Come on. You're actually moving faster than you would if you weren't angry, to be fair. This is... Yeah, this works. This works. Oh, he's not angry anymore. I guess I'll get the flower. All right, come with me, buddy. Come with me. I'm just going to have to run, like, laps around this guy. Oh, there we go. Now you're both chill. Let's go. Okay, well, I don't know where the other one from that hive went. Maybe he died in the campfire. I don't know. But <laughs> these guys are chill again now. So we'll bring these back. We'll go grab that honey, make another hive, and then we're chilling. Well, they move so slow. If that witch laughs at me one more time, I'm telling you, I'm going down there. I'm going down there. Right, that's it. When I come back, when I've got my bees secured, you're going down. Not having this disrespect in my own abode.
Okay, look at this. See, sorry about your your, your old house. I didn't actually destroy it. I just kind of stole your stuff. But now you're chilling over here. It's good. Anything to say? Huh? Anything to say to me this time? No. I didn't think so. I didn't think so. All right, where's that witch? I'm gonna I'm gonna drop lava on it. Hello? You gonna laugh at me again? Go on, do it. Do you have any more food? Ooh, I hear you laughing. I'm just gonna pop one of these just to be safe. Um, and then you're going down. I don't know where you are, but I will find you. <gasps> I see you. Hello. All right, let's make our way down here. I don't want to go in the entrance of the cave. I'm just gonna kind of drop down. Surprise attack. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Goodbye. Goodbye. Heal through that. Yeah, go on. Heal through that. Do it. Go oh, she popped fire us. Oh. Yeah, well, go away then. Go away then. Okay, problem solved. Witch no longer laughing at me. Didn't know they could pop fire us, though. I kind of forgot about that pop. Hey, piggy. Sorry, piggy. Sorry. I couldn't resist the urge. Ooh, what is this place? Nice little hole down there. Did she hit me with weakness? She did. Scoundrel. I'm telling you. Scoundrel. Okay, well, now that we've got our bees and now that that uh, mimicry is dealt with, we shall... Go and ch oh pork chops! <laughs> it's a surprise to see them. I just set the pig on fire. Of course they're gonna be pork chops. What's gonna happen, man? Gave the man a lava bath. <laughs> Ow. Oh god! <laughs> I don't know why I'm finding that so funny. Oh okay, right, I've recovered. I don't, I don't know why that was so funny to me. Uh, <laughs> how are you going, boyos around here? You all chill. You all chill. I'm going to throw some moss down for you just to make this area look a little bit more, I don't know, bee friendly. I, I, I don't know, man. Moss just looks good. Oh, I forgot if you use that on moss, it'll... Oh. Oh, this is going to be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. All right. I could have just done that around the, the pond area. I'm not going to lie. That would have looked pretty good. Okay, so what I'm thinking with the bamboo is I was going to run it behind the wall. Um, kind of all the way along, but I'm not too sure if I want to do it all the way along. Maybe just around here. We'll test it around here, and then if we like it, I'll do the rest of it. Okay, well, we'll let that grow over the next couple days. I mean, it's already shooting up this stuff. Oh, oh God, there's a baby zombie. Oh, God, I don't know why that scared me so bad. <laughs> not again. Okay, we'll let that grow over the next couple days, and then we shall uh, see how it comes out. It'll probably be fully grown by the end of tomorrow. I'm, it grows so fast. Wow, okay, so taking a little step back just to look at our little area right here. I'll go on top of this church. Why did I put so many chests in here, man? Oh my god. Oh my days, look at that. That'd be really good as well if we... I'm not gonna do it, but if we expanded the wall around to like here, and then this one to there as well, and then did like a little gate or an entranceway, we could even make it like pretty big. But that would look real good here, but this is... wow we. I'm liking this. This side does look a little bit, like, dead in the water. Like, there's not really much happening, so maybe add some grass and moss around there. But yeah, wow. Wow, I like that. That's pretty good. So, I guess while that bamboo is doing its thing, um, I'll take down this, like, awful church tower thing just chilling right here. Because I did say I was going to destroy the whole village, but didn't really need to. I'm not going to lie. Okay, there we go. Church is gone. There is some rubble left, but it's just outside of render distance. But yeah, that opened it up. That was, like, a really pointless thing to do, but I said I was going to destroy some of the village, so... There it goes. Okay, so let me make the second hive real quick. Boom, boom. Uh, we'll test if we can put them glowberries down on trees, and then we'll get the hive set up as well. Can I place you on a tree? The answer is no, I cannot. Okay, no, that's fine. That's fine. I didn't want to do that anyway. It's it's okay. Okay, there we go. So we don't want to overdo it with the moss, but we want like a little amount of it. I think I've literally just turned all the grass around here into moss almost. <laughs> Uh, nearly, nearly. We've still got, we've still got some grass, okay? And then, ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, uh, oh, why, why do they go so lopsided? I don't understand why they grow like that. <laughs> that looks so bad. I mean, how's it look from a distance? How's it look from a distance? It's still bad. I, I don't know. Why? Why do you grow like that? It disturbs me in, like, many ways. Go away. Okay, well, I guess we'll just keep them as little baby azaleas then, because the big ones... <laughs> they grow a little funky. Okay, and that that's good enough. That's good enough. I was going to do something else over there, but, like, I can't think of anything that I want to put there. If I still had the bone meal farm, maybe I'd put that over there, but, like, it was atrocious, so we don't want that. I will, however, go and grab this blue dye and change my dog's collar color because it's not on brand, all right? It's not on brand. Hello, buddy. Red is not on brand for me, my friend. There you go. Could have really done purple, but that's... It's close enough. 
Well, would you look at that, man? All this has come together so nicely. Just, just, oh, so beautiful. Although I see that over there does not have any grass. Let's go fix that. I felt the disturbance in the plantology. Ooh, yeah, you know what? I really do like that bamboo coming over the wall, especially when it's like not all level. I think that looks real good. So that's exactly what we'll do in the morning. Then I'll go and grab some more of that bamboo and then uh, get it growing. I'll try and do it all the way around this one too, but that might take I might take a little minute. All righty then, let's get to work on, I guess, chopping up some of this bamboo and then placing it around the rest of it because I am in love with that look. It looks really good. I love this little like leafy bit that kind of like scales the top of it. It's really good. So we'll chop some of this down and then we'll place it around, around the rest of it. I'm trying to like make this uneven because I like the way that some go up higher than others. So I'm going to try and keep this as like janky as possible. It's going to look awful from the back, but we're not going to see the wall from the back, so it's fine. Just get to placing all these down. <laughs> this looks so bad from the back. Oh my god. <laughs> that is horrendous. But you know what? When that grows, the front will look amazing. See, this side's already kind of like unlevel, so it'll look kind of cool when we get this all down. And now we are completely out of bamboo. However, we got the majority of it done. I'm happy with this for now. Oh my god, that stuff's already growing back over there. This stuff grows like crazy. I, I don't know why it grows so quick. I guess what I can do as well is I'm going to go and make like a little sign for the dog that's trapped in the nether. Because I it just took me like a few days to get him. And I really wanted him. And then he got stuck in the nether and now for some reason won't come back out. So I'll just kind of stick this down. At his. I'm assuming this was his entry point. So I'll just put it down here and just be like, R.I.P. Nether Dog. There we go. There we go. R.I.P. Nether Dog, you are not dead, but I shall possibly never see you again. Uh, is there a zombie villager in here? Oh, I forgot about you guys. Um, hey, this is awkward, isn't it? Um, I'm sorry. I didn't. I, I forgot the hole in the house and everything, but I, you guys look like you're chilling. So just stay in there. Stay, stay in there. There we go. All right. Well, I think that that is the base done for the most part now. So we got it done literally right at the end there. But yeah, it's looking good. I'm really happy with this one. I would have made a path coming all the way out to the village, but I never really did much with the village itself. So this will do for now, I guess. I guess what I can do for the last day then is we'll, we'll head into the nether. I'll grab, I think I've got a couple fire resistance potions left somewhere. Um, and we'll go and check out if that was a bastion that I saw like a little while ago. I think it was, but it's worth a look. Okay, so where were you, good sir? Were you over there or was it over like this side? I think it might have been over this side, like uh, over that way. I don't know. Let me... Oh, go away. I, I, I never want to deal with them. I'm just going to turn my render distance up. Hello, buddy. Yeah, this isn't happening. This isn't happening. This isn't happening. Go away. Oh, there he goes. Straight into the lava. Ooh, which one's that? I can never tell from the outside. I want it to be the one where there's the treasure in the middle. I think it's treasure room is what it's called. I, I don't know. But I hate that my least favorite one is stables. I hate stables. It's like the worst thing imaginable. Right, can I? Uh, yeah, we can go and we can go and chill down there. That's fine. That's fine with me. Beautiful. Right, moving a little bit slowly, but we're chilling. We're chilling. Okay, beautiful. It'd be nice if I could see. I'm just going to third person real quick. I hate fire on my screen. Is there a thing that connects to it? It looks like there's a little island that connects over there. So we'll make our way... I guess over to that. This could very easily spell my doom because of those things. Uh, I just completely forgot about them until I heard them grunt at me. Uh, you know what? Let's just go. We'll take a little swim. We'll take a little swim to it, shall we? Oh, I think that one is the bridge one. Because if you look up there, look, they're just chilling on it. And it looks like it could be. Oh, yeah, that's definitely that has to be, right? Those were the days indeed, my good friend. Now I'm ready to get one tapped by a uh, Mr. Brute, man. I hate going in these things, man. He can't see anything. Okay, be careful. I hear someone around these parts. Oh, are they just normal? You chill? You chill? Yeah, they're normal ones. Okay. I hear I hear a pig. Well, everything in here is a pig, but like I hear the big pig, the hoglin. Okay. Oh, oh, hello. Oh, it's only a baby one. It's only a baby one. Uh, you can go away. Go on. Be gone with you. Oh, why are you so loud? <laughs> a little scurrying away around the corner. Don't look at me like that, buddy, with your hollow eyes. Block myself in here nice and safely. Okay, nice and safely. And open his chest. Ew, stinky. I don't want that. Who lurks within here? Oh, there's a brute. There's a brute down there. How's it going, buddy? You okay? Do you get angry if I attack you? Why are you so angry, man? Simmer down. There we go. Maybe tell some bacon. I hear another one of you. Go away. 
No one likes you. There we go. Oh my god, this sounds like there's so many of them. Are they up top here? Oh yeah, you're there. Hey, buddy. How's it going? You okay? We just vibing down here. Ooh, I found the pillars. <laughs> Right, boyos. Uh, don't, don't worry about me at all. Right, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna take this. I'm just gonna take all of this. Hey, buddy. Look, chill, 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 my guy. Chill. It ain't all yours, okay? I want some of it. I want some of it. Go away. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna go back home. There's nothing in this place. I don't want to go any deeper because I know I'm just gonna get one shot. Besides, it, we've been in here like a little while, so. Maybe it is time for us to go home, you know? Maybe it is time for us to eject of this abode, you know? Ah, God, this is all scary! Ah, ow! Oh! Oh! Oh my God! I took damage from that! Oh, I forget you can take fall damage in lava, man! Oh, I think we got off a little bit lucky there! Feather falling coming in clutch! Oh my God! I'll, uh, I'll head back home and then see what we can get up to in our final moments here. Let's say goodbye to my dog. Well, I'd say that that was pretty perfect timing getting back with the sun going down, actually. So yeah, thank you all for joining me on this journey. I do greatly, greatly appreciate it. And I appreciate every single one of you for watching up to this point. And there we have it. A compilation of what I think are the 10 best 100 days videos I've personally made, making up a total of a thousand days. Now, if you made it to this point in the video, then drop a comment down below saying, I don't know, lobster or something. But either way, thank you all so much for everything and joining me on this journey because I really, really could not have done it without you. So as always, thank you all so much for watching. I do really, really appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next video. Adios.